near Venus. Power ring users vitals fading, transmitting location for immediate pickup the green glow a ring shown in space. I have to get somewhere safe or else they will take the ring a green man with three eyes said badly injured from a fight with something. Ring, where is the nearest inhabited world, he asked. Scanners show Earth as the next inhabited world, approximately 207 million miles from here the ring somehow responded. Perfect take me there, it may be time to find a new green lantern. Begin searching for a new user when we are close the mystery person said coughing blood. Earth. Isaac Omidoriya at a young age he was destined to become a nobody losing both parents at the age of four he was given up to an orphanage. Being in the system didn't help bouncing from home to home, family to family, no one wanted him because he was quirkless. Left to suffer alone at the orphanage, even worse at school. He eventually made a friend Bakugo or Kaken he lived nearby so they would regularly play together, but he too would pick on him for being quirkless. As the years went on things only got worse, Izuku eventually came to the realization that he would have no family and no true friends. He found solace with the only person who treated him like a person, Sister Maria, she was a young sister who worked for the orphanage. She would regularly read to Izuku and teach him. Izuku walked home after another day of bullying, his friend Kaken was the worst. He known his since they were little kids but ever since he found out Izuku was quirkless he picked on his Kaken was determined to make sure Izuku's dreams of becoming a hero were destroyed, you will never amount to anything Deku. You got that don't even think of applying to UA, if you do, I will make sure to beat you to a pulp got it. Kaken's voice still played inside Izuku's mind playing over and over, maybe he's right I think I should just give up, I'll ever become a hero Izuku walked down an alley unaware that a villain was slowly approaching him from behind. Got you kid. Before Izuku could turn around the sludge villain had captured him. Easy kid this will only hurt a lot, the villain slowly began to squeeze the life out of Izuku. With every breath he felt the villain tighten his grip on his body. I guess this is it, I always thought I would die of old age. Oh well maybe in my next life I can finally have a quirk Izuku stopped struggling accepting his fate, unfortunately for him fate had other plans for him. Fear not my boy, what? Because I am here. The voice of All Might roared through the alleyway. Detroit smash. All Might punched the villain with such force that Izuku was freed from his grasp. Falling to the ground Izuku gasped for air, All Might, he couldn't believe it his favorite hero of all time had just saved him. All Might quickly placed the sludge villain into a small bottle for easy transport. Can I get your autograph, he asked holding out a notebook he pulled out of his backpack. Of course young man, I always have time for a fan. All Might grabbed the notebook and signed his name across two pages. Handing it back to the Izuku, he couldn't contain himself, it was like seeing someone who just won the lottery. If that's all I will take my leave, crime won't stop itself you known, see you later kid. Izuku quickly snapped out of being starstruck, wait. I have a question I want to ask you. All Might was about to jump away when he stopped. Sure I got time what is it boy All Might tucked away the villain in his pocket making sure he wouldn't get away. I is it possible for a quirkless person to become a hero? Izuku's voice was quiet almost passive. All Might eyes went wide, quirkless. So he's one of the 20% he shook his head, I'm sorry young man but no I don't think so. Without a quirk you couldn't be a hero no matter how hard you try. If you want to help people become a police officer, they accept quirkless people it may not be as glamorous as being a hero but you will still help people. I'll be going now, farewell off he went, all might jumped away, leaving poor Izuku in the ally to his own thoughts. Alone in the ally Izuku didn't move from where he stood, I get it, someone as useless as I am could never be a hero even all might said himself. I get it now why Bakugo and all the other kids picked on me, this is just how things are meant to be I guess Izuku walked down the street with his head down. As he walked down the street he heard an explosion coming from a nearby store, at first he was going to ignore it until he heard an all too familiar voice coming from the store. You bastard let me go. I will blow you apart, it was Bakugo. Somehow the sludge villain had escaped from All Might and captured Bakugo. Izuku watched in horror as his friend was being taken over by the sludge villain, how? All Might should have taken him to the police station by now, so what happened and where is he, he saw all of the pro heroes at the scene did nothing. Why aren't they doing anything? Izuku disliked Bakugo but not enough to let him die. Izuku ran past the pro heroes, throwing his backpack he landed a hit and the sludge villain's eye. Gat. My eye who did that? Izuku ran towards the villain scratching at the villain to release his friend to no avail. Deku? What are you doing here you useless piece of shit? Bakugo yelled. Trying to save you. You know why because I am here. Izuku smiled, faced with his greatest fear, he smiled. How very brave of you young man. You are all that embodies a hero, however why don't you leave this to the heroes? California smash. With another powerful punch All Might blew the sludge villain off of Bakugo. 
this time making sure he wouldn't escape he locked him away with the help of the police. Izuku and Bakugo were both given a good talking to, especially Izuku when they found out he was quirkless. Listen kid what you did was just plain stupid, without a quirk you could have gotten hurt. Lucky for you All Might was nearby to step in and help you, next time you may not be all that lucky. After a few minutes they were both allowed to leave, Izuku walked down the street with a frown on his face. Could this day get any worse? Making it to the orphanage he opened the door to be greeted by Sister Maria. Oh hello Izuku welcome back, how was your day? Maria smiled, a rather tall woman with her long brown hair and brown colored eyes. It was, good, I met All Might when he saved me from a villain he said placing his backpack on the floor. A villain. Maria ran to Izuku checking his body, are you alright? Did he hurt you? Let me check. On no maybe we should go to the hospital to be safe, her muttering never ceases to amaze him. I'm fine Maria, all might save me before anything could happen Izuku smiled knowing that her worrying was a sign that she cared for him. Are you sure, she asked stopping and looking into his eyes, he nodded. All right then go change and get the little ones ready for dinner in an hour Izuku went upstairs where all the rooms were located. Once in his room he closed the door and collapsed onto his bead, I think I should take a nap falling asleep he dreamed of becoming a hero, of what could have been. After 40 minutes he was woken to the sound of laughing, huh, he looked around to find Lisa and Levi about to write on his face. What are you two doing? Nothing. Lisa and Levi were twins who were abandoned by their family for whatever reason. Izuku was a sort of big brother to them, so they would follow him around. Oh really? Then what about that marker in your hands? Izuku pointed at the marker in Lisa's hand. The two just whistled and pretended they had no idea what he was talking about, Fine don't tell me but it's almost dinner time get yourselves washed up he said getting off the bed. All right, the twins said in unison as they ran out of the room. A few minutes later Izuku had called all the other kids to go wash up and head downstairs for dinner. The dinner table was long enough to fit 40 people at once, Izuku let the smaller kids get their share of food first before allowing himself to get something. Usually he would get very little since he would be the last one but he didn't mind as long as the little ones got their fill. After dinner Izuku would walk down to the beach and sit near the cliff's edge overlooking the ocean and watched as the sun set every day. I guess things could be worse, I should always look at the bright side as Sister Maria always says Izuku closed his eyes and the darkness began to take over the sky. Boom. Izuku woke up to a loud sound, what was that, he looked around but saw nothing, until he looked up. There a green ball of something was coming down, burning up as it entered the atmosphere. It looks like an asteroid. Wait is it heading over here? The object got closer and closer, Izuku saw this and began to run for cover throwing himself to the ground, just then the object struck the cliff breaking off a good portion of it. The green glow was still there and pulsating rapidly. Curious and thinking it was an asteroid Izuku app it slowly. As he got closer he noticed that it wasn't an asteroid but rather a person. H hey are you alright, he asked the green man with three eyes. Whoever it was they were badly injured and need help fast, Wait here I'll go get help as he was about to leave a hand reached out and stopped Izuku from leaving. Did not go the green man's voice was quiet. Mustering up his strength he spoke once again, I I need to give you something first before it's too late the man raised his hand up to reveal a green ring with a symbol in the middle. What is that? Izuku asked, before he could ask anything else the ring began to float in the air glowing green. It began to scan Izuku with a green light before speaking. Izuku Midoriya of Earth, you have the power to overcome great fear. You have been chosen the ring flew onto Izuku's right ring finger. Welcome to the Green Lantern Corps. A green ball of energy covered Izuku completely, after a second it disappeared to reveal Izuku in an all green suit with the symbol on his chest and a mask covering his face. What is this? Izuku looked at his hands and legs covered in all green. You are now a Green Lantern, protectors of the universe. You young man are destined for great things, I wish you the best of luck those were the final words that the green man spoke before dying. Izuku stood on the cliff in disbelief, that is until he heard the sound of police sirens approaching. Taking off the ring Izuku dusted himself off, I need to get out of here looking back at the now core he saw a lantern. I should take that, it looks important grabbing it Izuku ran down the cliff towards the beach he'd go the long way to get home. Making his way back to the orphanage Izuku snuck in and went straight to his room putting the ring and lantern on his desk he threw himself onto the bed exhausted. Man what a night, I better sleep it off I'll test what that ring can do tomorrow. It was early in the morning when Lisa and Levi snuck into Izuku's room, See I told you he's still asleep Levi said standing next to Izuku. He should be awake by now Lisa pouted seeing Izuku was being lazy. She then looked around his room and saw the lantern and ring, hey, what's that, she said, picking up the lantern. It looks like a lantern, where did Izuku get this? Levi wondered looking at the ring. It looks expensive, you don't think he stole this right? 
Izuka would never do anything like that. Lisa said yelling at her brother. This made Izuka turn in the bed. See you almost woke him up she said but now in a much lower volume. But you're the one who yelled Levi said putting back the ring. But you're right Izuka would never steal anything. Lisa nodded, that's right, so what do you say you want to wake him up and find out where he got it, she smiled putting back the lantern. Levi nodded knowing what his sister wanted to do. They carefully got on top of his bed without waking him up, ready, one, two, three, go. They both jumped into the air and came down hard on Izuku's stomach waking him up in the most brutal way they could think of, wake up Izuku, they both yelled. Izuku grunted in pain when he felt all that weight suddenly on his stomach, I, I thought I told you two not to do that anymore. They jumped off of the bed, yeah but it's more fun waking you up like this Lisa said laughing. Izuku sighed, what am I going to do with you two? Izuku got up to go to the restroom. Izuku where did you get the ring and lantern? Levi pointed at them. Izuku's eyes went wide, oh I forgot about that oh those things I found them on the beach, they looked cool so I brought them back. I see, well you do have a thing for bringing back junk. Just make sure sister Maria doesn't find out, you already know how scary she can be Lisa said shivering. Yeah I know, now it's almost time for breakfast, Izuku led the twins to the dining hall where they had breakfast. Izuku only ate an apple and a piece of toast but it was enough. Izuku went to school, got bullied, and went back to the orphanage just like any other day. It was now night time when Izuku decided to test out the ring, I don't know how but this ring has some incredible power. I felt last night when I put it on. Taking a deep breath Izuku but on the ring, as soon as he did his body was covered in a green light after a second or two he re-emerged with a green suit, a mask covering his mask, and a mark of the green lantern core on his chest this is awesome. After a minute Izuku calmed down, I wonder if I can fly. That guy from yesterday fell from the sky so I wonder. Izuku looked at the open window, the window was large enough for him to jump out of. Izuku walked to the far edge of the room, taking a deep breath Izuku ran towards the window jumping out. For a split second it looked like Izuku was flying but he quickly realized that he was falling towards the floor, oh asterisk t Izuku yelled as he fell towards the ground. Come on. Come on. Fly. Fly. Izuku closed his eyes and braced for impact but it never came. W what happened opening his eyes Izuku noticed he stopped just short of hitting the ground and was no hovering. This is a start, now how do I fly? Izuku thought about pushing his body upward and the ring responded to his thoughts and made him fly up. Cool so the ring responds to my thoughts. Izuku was starting to get the hang of flying, he decided to fly over the nearby city, wow this is amazing, I wish the twins can see this he went lower flying between buildings. That's when he heard a yell, stopping mid-air Izuku looked around trying to find the source of the yell. Where did that come from? The ring began to glow and created a green arrow pointing to the left. Cool, I better go see what's going on. Izuku hovered over an alleyway below him he saw a girl being chased by two thugs. Oh no she needs help without hesitation Izuku flew down towards the alley. The young girl ran down the alley as fast as she could, holding onto her purse. No I can't let them have it, all my money my dad gave me for the apartment is in here. He's spent too many hours working to get me to UA and I won't let them take it. She ran fast, maybe a little too fast turning the corner she fell twisting her ankle. She tried to get up but couldn't put any pressure on her foot. That's when the two thugs caught up to her, man you run fast the shark faced thug said catching her breath. No kidding I almost gave up chasing you said the thug with sharp scissors for fingers. But now you go nowhere to run, so hand over the bag. As the two thugs approached her, the girl closed her eyes not wanting to see what was going to happen to her. Suddenly a green light shined on the group. The two thugs looked up to see Izuku floating down and getting in front of the girl. I'd leave her alone if I were you. What the hell, what's a hero doing here? The shark-faced thug said stepping back. I've never seen you before and I know every hero in the city and you aren't one of them. So that means you're nobody, get him. The two jumped at Izuku only to get hit by a giant green boxing glove, sending them flying towards the wall. Awesome all I have to think about doing it and the ring makes it happen. Izuku then turned to the scared girl. Hey are you alright? The girl opened her eyes to reveal Izuku in front of her offering a hand, why yeah I'm fine thanks to you. Thank you she took his hand and dusted herself off. Wow she's cute Izuku looked at the girl, and no problem, now I suggest you call the police to come pick these two up Izuku pointed at the now unconscious thugs. Yeah thank you, you mm who are you anyway? She asked. Oh I'm his, Green Lantern he quickly corrected himself when he noticed he was about to expose himself. Well thank you Green Lantern, my name is Yurika Okako you really saved me. Wait where's my purse? Oh no the money Eurika's face began to fill with worry. Don't worry I got it, Ring find her purse with a green glow the ring scanned a nearby area, 
when it found the purse it picked it up and brought it to Eureka. Here you go miss. Eureka grabbed it, then hugged it, oh thank you so much. If you don't mind me asking shouldn't you put that much money in the bank? Izuku asked. I was until those two chased me down. The money is for an apartment I'm renting for when I get into UA said Eureka. I see so you're an aspiring hero then, that's good we need more heroes in this world. Well if that's all I'll be taking my leave then, make sure you call the police Eureka, goodbye, and with that Izuku jumped into the fly and took off. Wow he can fly? He said his name was Green Lantern. Hmm never heard of him, must be a new hero in the city Eureka took out her phone and began to call the police. No more than three minutes had passed when the police showed up along with the pro hero eraser head. After arresting the two they went over to Eureka to take a statement, so Miss Eureka can you tell us what happened a rather talk man in a trench coat said with pen and paper in hand. So I was going to the bank to put in some money when those two attacked me. It seemed they wanted my purse but instead of giving it to them I took off running and ended up here. That's when I fell twisting my ankle, seeing that I could no longer run, the two thugs were about to take my things when a hero came by to help me she said as the detective wrote down everything. A hero you say? Eraserhead said, raising an eyebrow. Yeah he had a green suit with a weird logo on his chest, oh, and a ring that could do some really cool stuff Eureka explained. There was no hero reported in this area. Did he say his name? Eraserhead said. Yeah he said it was Green Lantern Eraserhead and the detective looked at each other not knowing who that was. Looks like we got a vigilante on our hands the detective said closing his notebook. So it seems, great not another one Eraserhead said sighing. Wait so he wasn't a hero? I knew he looked too young to be one. He had to be at least my age, well whoever you are thank you Eureka said looking towards the sky. Izuku made his way back to the orphanage, flying into the window he landed. Man what a day, I can't believe I actually saved someone from real villains as he was talking to himself the ring's green light began to flicker and then disappear. What happened? Izuku was now wearing his normal clothes. Izuku looked at the ring, maybe it has a battery? Great, how am I going to power up a ring? He walked back and forth in his room thinking of a way to charge the ring. That's when the lantern began to glow, what the? Izuku got closer, I can feel it talking to me. He raised the ring to the lantern. In brightest day in darkest night no evil shall escape my might the lantern began to glow brighter and brighter. Let those who worship evil beware my power, green lantern's light. Izuku could feel the power coursing into the ring, the ring glowing brighter with every second until finally it recharged completely. Oh I see so it's like some sort of ring power battery. Good to know. Izuku had enough excitement for one night, Taking off the ring he threw himself onto his bed to sleep. Oh eh. Six blue guardians sat on tall pillars with a giant green lantern power battery in the background. It seems we have a new member of the corp one of the guards said. So it seems, we must have someone bring back the new green lantern. It looks like he's on the planet called earth said another. Very well, Kilowog, take a task force to bring our new lantern here the guardian gestured down to a tall alien with a bulldog looking face approached the guards. Thank you guardians for this task. I shall leave at once Kilowog said before turning around and leaving. Izuku spent the next couple of days secretly training with the ring at night when everyone was asleep. He found that the ring, if pushed too hard, can actually hurt him and his mind, putting a strain on his mind and body. He would fly around a nearby city and stop any villains he would see, soon he would become known as the vigilante known as Green Lantern. The police wanted to take him in for questioning but every time they tried he would just fly off before they had the chance to cuff him. They still didn't know what kind of quirk he had, only that he was a young man in his teens and liked the color green. He has even been given rewards for his good deeds, he once saved an older couple who ran a bakery from a robbery and they offered him fresh bread every day. Izuku graciously accepted and every day he would take the bread back to the orphanage. When Sister Maria asked where he got it he would also say the same thing, donations. However there were people who did not like what Izuku was doing, especially pro heroes. In just a few days Izuku already had a couple of run-ins with some local heroes. This began to catch the eye of more prominent heroes in the area. Police station. We need to bring him in, Nanomasa said sitting around a table surrounded by pro heroes. Other heroes tried multiple times but he always escapes with the help of his quirk Eraserhead said frustrated. You have to admit that quirk is really amazing. I don't know how it works but he can seemingly make whatever he wants with it, he could even fly said midnight. Yes, while his quirk is impressive, what he's doing is not. It's illegal and dangerous he's putting himself and the public in danger. That's why I brought the big gun to bring him in Nisa said, turning his chair to the door. It will be alright my fellow heroes. Why, suddenly the door exploded open. Because I am here, a tall man with a muscular build wearing a bright and colorful costume walked into the room. 
It was All Might the number one hero and he was here to help. Thank you All Might for coming here to help us with this vigilante problem, said Nizu. But of course, I see why you would want my help. This vigilante has been gaining support of the public. If he continues to gain support it would surely spell disaster later. So how can I help? Later that night. Izuku was flying around the city looking for crime he could stop when he noticed someone waving him down from a balcony. I wonder if they need any help flying down his ring shined a light on the person. Need any help? That's when he noticed who it was, oh hey I remember you, yeah you're that girl I saved from those guys trying to steal your bag. You're Erika right? Yeah that's me. Thanks for saving me. Actually do you mind turning off that light it hurts my eyes Eureka said shielding her eyes. Oh right, sorry about that, Izuku said embarrassed. Anyway so have you gotten into UA yet? Eureka chuckled, no not yet, the exams are in a week so I still got time to train. Izuku floated down closer, I see so what's your quirk anyway? Oh my quirk Eureka showed one of her hands. See those little pads at the ends of my fingers. If I touch something with all five fingers I can make them weightless. That's so cool. Izuku sniffed the air. Wait do I smell something burning? Oh no the cookies. Eureka hurried back inside and after a few seconds she walked out on the balcony with a tray of burnt cookies. Man I worked so hard on these and now they are ruined. Izuka floated down and landed on her balcony and grabbed a cookie and proceeded to eat it, hey they're burnt they won't taste good Eureka said shocked. Izuka didn't care, he grabbed one after another until there was none left, they were actually pretty good. It was only burnt on the surface he was too poor to care plus he wasn't a food critic so everything tasted good to him. Eureka's face turned red, why you really think so? Yup of course. Man, I wish I could have some more Izuku smiled. If Izuku learned one thing about living in an orphanage it's never to waste food. Well if you want you can drop by sometime and I can make some she said fidgeting. Izuku's eyes gleamed, really? Can I Eureka nodded. Awesome. I'll make sure to come back real soon. Izuku looked down at the construct watch he made and noticed it was getting late. Crap I should go patrol the city one last time before heading home, I'll see you later Eureka he waved as he took off into the sky. Bye Green Lantern. Make sure to drop by real soon she waved as he disappeared from view. Izuku flew into the city looking for any crime in progress when he found none he decided to rest on a nearby roof, man she was cute, I'm so glad I got to see her again and I get cookies this night can't go any better. Sorry to burst your bubble kid but it's not going to end how you'd like a voice behind him said, scaring Izuku. Jesus you scared me Izuku looked up to see Eraser Head. Is that you Eraser Head? The pro hero that can erase quirks temporarily, he was now in full superhero fan mode. Yeah it's me and tonight is the night I bring you in Izuku watched as Eraser Head's hair began to spike up and wave around. His eyes changed colors signaling the activation of his quirk, now that he's lost his quirk I can take him down myself. However Eraserhead was shocked to see that the green glow around him didn't disappear. What your quirk should have been erased. Yeah about that, sorry but I don't have a quirk Izuka rubbed the back of his head. What no quirk, then how do you explain your powers? Said Eraserhead. I can't really myself but I do know I get it from this Izuku held up his hand, showing the green lantern ring. A support item then, so that means we can take you down Eraserhead smiled. We. Just then his ring went off. Danger alert danger alert Izuku looked around frantically for the danger but saw nothing. That's when Eraserhead wrapped Izuku in his capture weapon, immobilizing him. What is this stuff? Finally, looking up, Izuku saw him, All Might was flying towards him. All Might. Then he pieced two and two together. Oh no. Delaware smash. All Might yelled. At the last second Izuku was able to put up a bubble around him protecting him from the hit. The hit was strong enough to throw Izuku into a wall bouncing off of it, Inside the bubble Izuku gritted his teeth. That's when he saw a crack around the shield. H he cracked the shield he smiled. That's all might for you. Wow I can't believe it's actually him. Breaking free of the binding eraser head put on him, Izuku landed on the ground. With a loud boom all might landed a few feet away. Amazing. You're so amazing. Can I have your autograph he asked eyes gleaming with excitement. Uh you do know we are trying to bring you in right said all might not knowing how to react to this. What? Why I've done anything wrong, said Izuku. Illegal use of your quirk and using it to hurt others, yes they were bad guys but still. You need to go to hero school and have a hero license for that All Might explained. Yeah but that costs money, something we don't have, plus I do this for my family. The less they have to deal with the better, if I can make even the slightest difference in their lives then I'll gladly break the rules clenching his fist a green aura was seen around Izuku as he readied himself for a fight. I see so your motives are pure but that still doesn't change the fact that what you are doing is illegal. 
So I'm sorry but I'm bringing you in. California smash. All Might yelled as he ran towards Isaac ready to knock him out. Isaac pointed the ring at All Might as he created a wall to slow down the hero. Making contact with the wall All Might noticed it didn't break, rather it only cracked. What? Even if I'm not using my full power this wall shouldn't be a problem? What is it made of? Sorry about this All Might Isaac said hovering above All Might. Isaac started to cover All Might in a safe, that should keep you in there until I get away he took off away from All Might. Do you think a safe is enough to stop me? Think again. All Might began to punch the safe from the inside repeatedly. Izuku stopped and looked as the number one hero struggled to get out. That's when Izuku noticed something, those strikes, they're not random, he's hitting the structural weak points. Every time he hits the spot his strikes are getting stronger. At this rate he's going to break out Izuku shot a beam at the safe repairing it. Eraser head landed on a nearby roof and watched as Izuku held All Might in a safe, but found something interesting. Why hasn't he flown away yet? Then he noticed Izuku's face. He's focusing hard, that means he has to concentrate in order to use his power, so that means we have a chance. Grabbing a nearby brick eraser head with the help of his capture weapon launched himself towards Izuku ready to strike him with the brick. Being too focused on All Might, Izuku did not see Izawa coming and with a brick strike to the ribs he yelled out in pain breaking his concentration on All Might. Smash! He yelled out and with one final strike All Might broke out of the safe. Seeing Izawa was falling he jumped up to catch him. Got you. Don't worry about me, take him down. Izawa yelled as All Might put him down on a roof. Jumping back at Izuku, who was still in pain, All Might managed to neck chop him rendering him unconscious. Man he was tougher to take down than I thought, and that quirk really is amazing. I had to use about 50% of my power just to break out of that safe. You can tell me all about it later for now let's get him to the police station and with that the two Hiris took Izuku to the police station. Little did they know the ring around Izuku's finger began to pull screen, sending distress signal. Once there they tried to take off the ring but every time they did it would shoot out a beam of energy knocking back whoever tried to take off the ring. They even tried to take a blood sample to ID him but once the needle got closed the ring would create a shell around Izuku protecting him. Izuku woke up the next morning in a cell with a massive headache, ow why does my head hurt so much looking around he found his surroundings unfamiliar. Where am I? You're in a cell inside the police station a voice was heard. Turning to the source Izuku saw Naya Mesa through the bars of the cell. Izuku tried to get up but noticed that his hands were in a strange instrument, those are quirk suppressor cuffs, so don't try to use your quirk. Now I want to ask you a few questions. Sitting up Izuku stared at the detective, figured as much. First question, who are you, asked the detective with a pen and notepad at the ready. Can't say. Izuku looked away. Naya Mesa sighed, come on kid don't make this harder than it already is Izuku stayed silent. Fine next question, do you want to call a family member or something so they can be here with you? I don't have any family, they're dead, I've been on my own since I was four he said with sadness in his voice. I see, I'm sorry with the help of his quirk Naya Mesa could tell what Izuku just said was the truth. Next question, what's your quirk? From what All Might told me you have quite the quirk. Don't have one, I'm quirkless Izuku looked away. Truth, but that's impossible Naya Mesa's eyes went wide, then how do you explain your powers? To tell you the truth I don't know myself but it has something to do with the ring I have Izuku looked at his cuffed hands. Truth so you really are quirkless. Naya Mesa couldn't believe it, how could a quirkless person have this kind of power? Before he could ask another question the police station started to shake. What's going on? Just then a police officer ran down the stairs, sir we have a problem. Some strange people walked into the station asking where the Green Lantern was. Great, he has a fan club. Alright I'll be right there. Have All Might meet us in the lobby. You will stay here and stay quiet and with that Naya Mesa ran up the stairs leaving Izuku. I have to get out of these things, come on focus. The cuffs began to glow green from inside after a few seconds the cuffs broke, setting Izuku's hands free. Good I got to see who's looking for me. Flying upstairs Izuku heard the sound of gunshots then silence, reaching the top of the stairs Izuku saw All Might being pinned down by two people in Green Lantern uniforms. Hey let him go. Izuku fired a green energy beam that split into two hitting them and knocking them back. Easy kid, we aren't here to fight you, one of them said. Then why are you here? Izuku said, putting up his guard. Just then a kilowatt walked in between them, we're here to take you kid. You need to go to OA. You are a green lantern so the guardians need you to answer a few questions. Can they answer my questions about this ring? Izuku showing the ring. Yes, now will you come with us? Kilowatt said, extending out an arm. Very well I'll go with you but I need to stop somewhere first, 
I will need the lantern battery to charge up my ring Izuku said. All right we go there then you will go to Oe for us said Kilowog. Lead the way. Izuku turned to the police, sorry about this guys but I got to go. Wait. All Might yelled trying to stop them from leaving but it was too late. The group took off into the sky breaking the ceiling as they went. Izuku led them towards the orphanage, telling them to wait outside. Izuku went in and took off the ring. Sneaking past the twins Izuku made it upstairs but to his horror sister Maria was waiting for him just outside his room. He prepared himself for a scolding, but instead he was met by her embrace. Midoriya where have you been? She said as tears fell from her eyes. When you were in your bed last night I started to get worried so I went out looking for you. She spent the night looking for me Izuku hugged Maria back. I'm sorry Maria, I had to take care of some stuff. The important thing is that you're back, safe and sound she said wiping away a year. Now tell me where were you? I I stayed at a friend's house for the night, Izuku lied. A friend, someone from school. She questioned. Why yet? Anyway they invited me to stay for a week so I wanted to tell you if I can. Izuku said, muffling the last part. Normally I would say no way but since I trust you Izuku I will allow it. Izuku was surprised to say the least. This will give you the perfect chance for you to explore what's out there and see what you can become. Thank you Maria. I love you. Izuku hugged her out of excitement. Later Izuku gathered his things and walked outside where the group was waiting for him. Are you ready? Kilowog asked. Izuku nodded, yes let's go. And with that Kilowog created a rocket ship construct and with a loud boom the group took off into space. Off into space. Izuku looked on as they zipped past stars and planets, amazing he said as the other lanterns chuckled at the newbie lantern. As they slowed down Izuku looked outside to find a giant planet just ahead that had a strange green glow surrounding it. We're here kid. Welcome to Oe home of all the Green Lanterns as they entered the planet's atmosphere Izuku watched in amazement. Breaking past the clouds, Izuku saw a grand city with many Green Lanterns flying around. Wow how many members are there? Izuku asked. About 7200 members, and you are the newest, Kilowog said as they landed in the city. Come on kid we are going to meet the Guardians. Izuku was escorted through the building inside he found some many different kinds of aliens, some big, some tiny, others had different colored skin, others with more than two eyes or arms. Kilowog looked at Izuku, what's the matter kid, never seen aliens before. And no never, on my planet we don't even know if they even exist. Well I guess this answers that question, I wonder if they have quirks. What's a quirk? Kilowog asked. Oh it's like a superpower some humans develop, their powers can range from being useful in everyday life or good enough to be a hero Izuku explained. I see, so what's your quirk, asked another lantern. I I don't have one. I never developed one Izuku said with sadness in his voice. Kilowog saw the sadness in his eyes, sorry to hear that kid, but you are now part of something greater. You are now a green lantern he said as they stopped in front of a large double door. Kilowog told the other lantern they can go, all right kid it's time to meet the guardians. As the doors opened Izuku swallowed nervously, walking into the room six large pillars stood around a platform. Kilowog walked Izuku to the center, guardians, I have returned with the new green lantern. On the top the pillars little blue people appeared on top of the pillars, so this is the lantern. He's so young, are we sure he can actually fulfill his duty as a green lantern one of them said. I've heard of these humans, they think they rule the universe and are overly reliant on their technology. I don't believe he could be a good lantern another said. Come now, we can't judge him just because of his birth planet. What is your name boy? My name is Ganthet he said in a soft voice. I Isaac Omidoriya sir he said, sweating from his forehead. Izuku Midoriya I see, we welcome you to the Green Lantern Corp, Ganthet said. I still don't like it, a human wielding a ring it's just irresponsible, another guardian said. This started an argument amongst the guardians if they should allow Izuku to keep the ring. Izuku slumped his shoulders, that's when Kilowog stepped forward, if I may guardians they turned their attention to Kilowog. When we first arrived on Earth Izuku thought we were an enemy and fought us. During that little fight he managed to take down two lanterns with little effort. I know if given the right training he will become an amazing lantern. The guardians spoke amongst themselves, if this is true Kilowog then we have truly found a prodigy Ganthet looked at his fellow guardians and all nodded. We have decided Izuku Midoriya of Earth you are to train under Kilowog until you learn to properly use your powers. Izuku perked up, why yes sir, I will do my best. We will expect nothing but your best boy, however a word of warning Kilowog's training can get a bit, difficult so try to stay alive and with that Ganthet and the other guardians left. Izuku was immediately taken to his new living quarters where he would train with Kilowog. After charging his ring Izuku met with Kilowog in the training grounds, alright newbie it's time to start your training. 
the first thing you need to know is that your constructs are only as strong as your will. Right now your constructs are weak Kilowatt created a giant dumbbell that began to fall on Izuku. Izuku quickly created a platform above him stopping the dumbbell from hitting him but his legs began to shake from the pressure. Letting the construct disappear Kilowatt got up to Izuku, since you already know how to fly we won't go over that but you need to learn how to handle gravity in space he said pointing his ring a bit away from Izuku and created a small black hole. Taken by surprise Izuku's feet began to drag on the floor towards the black hole, thinking for a second Izuku created a jetpack to keep him from falling into the black hole. Izuku grunted as he pushed himself and the ring, man this is difficult. That's what you're going to feel when you travel through space, not even counting suns. Time to move on into combat training, but your guard up boy Kilowog said going into his fighting stance. Izuku awkwardly put up his fists, I've never been in a real fist fight in my life. I need to think about what I'm going to do before he could think about what to do Kilowog's massive fist hit Izuku in the face, sending him sliding back. I know why your constructs are weak Kilowog jumped in the air. You overthink everything, he went in for a drop kick Izuku but he quickly rolled away. You need to stop overthinking everything. Kilowog threw punch after punch, Izuku was barely able to dodge them. That is until Kilowog tripped him up, causing him to fall on his butt, you still have a lot to learn Kilowog said with his hand out. Here let me help you out. Izuku went to grab his arm, once he did a fist hit his face again, you're too trusting of people, your enemy they won't play fair and neither should you. Use every opening you find. Izuku looked more pissed off than anything else, creating a rug under Kilowog and pulled it causing him to fall face first. Yeah that sounds like good advice, thanks. Ha looks like you learned fast newbie Kilowog got up. I think we can make you into a fine green lantern. Izuku spent the next week undergoing extreme training with Kilowog, from sunrise to sunset. He even got to learn about the other lantern core, red symbolizing rage, orange, greed, yellow, fear, blue, hope, indigo, composion, and violet, love. There are two others, one the black lanterns and the other being the white lanterns, he was told to avoid the black lanterns at all cost. Kilowog was a brutal but effective teacher, his methods had some questionable moral dilemmas but no one could say he wasn't good at what he did. At times Izuku wanted to give up but all he had to do was look up and gaze upon the hundreds of stars in the sky. He reminded himself of his past, what he had to go through just to be here and with his resolve strength Izuku continued to work hard. It was now the final day of his training and he was to meet the guardians once last time before leaving. Entering the room Izuku already looked different, he showed a higher level of confidence. It looks like a week really did change you Izuku Midori Yagantit said looking at the boy. T thank you sir Izuku said embarrassed. Izuku Midori from sector 2814, though your training is incomplete we chose to send you back to earth for we fear there will be a great deal of trouble in the near future to befall your planet. With the training you've done with Kilowog, you are ready to face anything that comes your way. Good luck another guardian said. Hearing his name Izuku stood straight, yes sir, thank you. On behalf of the rest of the guardians, make us proud Izuku Midoriya said Ganthet. I will do my very best guardians Izuku smiled. Good now off you go, the earth needs you and with that the guardians left, leaving Izuku with the giant central green lantern power battery. As Izuku turned to leave he heard a voice call out to him, Izuku, Izuku. Turning around he saw no one around, strange, I could have sworn I heard a voice just now, maybe I've been hit too many times in the head during training. Grabbing his things Izuku went to the launch pad outside the main building, Kilowog and a few other Green Lanterns were there waiting for him, well this is it guys. Kilowog walked towards Izuku and without saying a word he drew his fist back ready to hit Izuku. Thinking fast Izuku created a catcher's mitt and caught his fist, looks like you did learn something kid Kilowog said smiling. Well I did have an awesome teacher Izuku replied as the two shook hands. Take care of yourself kid Izuku nodded. Focusing, Izuku created a fighter jet and climbed in, I'll see you guys soon, by, closing the hatch the jet began to float into the air before taking off at a high rate of speed. Earth, UA entrance exam. Eureka was standing in front of a large city, this was going to be the final test to see if she was good enough to get into UA. This was simple, take down as many robots as you can to earn points 0 to 3. Taking a deep breath she calmed herself and with eyes filled with determination she was ready. Bang. As the door opened up she ran in the giant city and began to target robots, everything was going well until she began to overuse her quirk causing her to become nauseous. Taking a short break she stood on the street catching her breath, that's when the announcement was made, warning zero pointer has now been released, better watch out. Eureka looked up to see a giant robot began to appear from the ground surpassing the buildings in height. I isnt that too much, she said as the giant robot swung its giant arms destroying part of a building sending parts of it flying towards the students. 
as she was standing on the street Eurica was caught by a piece of the building pinning her under it causing her to yell out in pain. Damn it my leg is crushed she said trying to pull her leg free with little success. To make matters worse the giant robot was now making her way, is that thing not going to stop? Oh no I'm going to get crushed she tried to activate her quirk but she was already at her limit. Other students ran past as she begged for help but no one heard her as they ran for their lives, D dad I'm sorry closing her eyes Eurica waited for the giant robot to crush her but it never came, all she heard was the sound of it creaking. Opening her eyes she found Izuka facing the zero pointer, man that was close wasn't it he said looking at her. Eurica looked at the robot to find it tangled in a giant green net, green lantern. Hey Eurica, sorry for not coming over for some cookies. I got caught up in some stuff he smiled. I it's fine you can just come by tonight, anyway what are you going to do about that, she pointed at the robot. Oh easy Izuka let the net construct disappear to Eurica's shock. What are you doing? It's going to crush us. Izuka smiled. Not on your life, pointing the ring at it Izuka created a small bullet and launched it at the robot. Piercing its body the robot showed no signs of slowing down. Wait for it. Boom, a large explosion rattled the examination site, Izuka created a giant jar around the robot encasing it and containing the fireball. Good, that was easier than I thought, he said, crouching down to Eurica. That leg doesn't look good, hold on. Ring scan and diagnose a beam of green scanned over Eurica's leg. Analysis complete, identified broken ankle vital signs are normal. Risk to life low, advice to move to secure location and apply first aid. Thanks Ring, now let's get that leg out from under there. Izuka created a green car jack and began to lift the piece of building off of her. Thanks said Eurica as she tried to get up. Hold on what are you doing? Eurica looked at him. You have a broken ankle don't try to walk on it you'll just make it worse pointing the ring at her, Izuku created a stretcher. Just then multiple heroes landed surrounding Izuku, Green Lantern you're under arrest present Mike said. I just saved a bunch of your examines and this is how you treat me. Wow UA students must really have it rough here Izuku put his hands up in surrender. You just broke into the school, do you actually believe we would just let you go, said Midnight. Yes. I mean, realistically I can just leave and you guys won't be able to stop me. The only reason I'm staying is because of her he said pointing at Eureka on the stretcher he created. She has a broken ankle and needs help. Let me take care of that son An old lady with a cane walked in between the heroes. I can heal her up no problem. I is that you recovery girl. Oh wow huge fan of your work by the way Izuka's eyes gleamed seeing her. The one and only now come let me heal her Izuka moved the scrither closer to recovery girl. Kissing Eureka on the leg she was instantly healed. Good you should rest my quirk uses your energy to heal so take it easy for a bit. Eureka nodded, all right now that's all done, I'll see everyone later. However before Izuka could fly away Cementos created a wall in front of him, you think we'll just let you go. Izuka created a giant jackhammer breaking the wall into pieces, I'm leaving. Wait a voice was heard, turning Izuka found a small mouse slash bear looking creature approaching along with a skinny man wearing an oversized suit. Who are you, asked Izuku. My name is Nizu, I am the principal here at UA and if it's alright with you I would like to have a few words with you if you have time that is he said politely. Is this some kind of trick? You're trying to lure me into some kind of trap aren't you? Izuku said, puzzled. Currently not I would never do that promise Nizu smiled. Yeah, I don't know you so I don't trust you. Maybe another day Izuku said, turning away. Very well then another day but how do we contact you? You can't I'll contact you when I feel like talking and with that Izuku jumped into the air leaving the heroes behind. Izuku returned to the orphanage where sister Maria waited at the door, Izuku, she wrapped him in a hug. Welcome back, how'd it go? It went, really good Maria, I think I finally know what I want to do with my life, he said, pulling away from the hug. Really? That's great Izuku, you can tell me all about it later. Right now I need your help getting lunch ready for the kids said Maria. Alright I'll go help you, let me just put back my stuff and I'll go right now. Going up to his room Izuku put his things away and went straight to the kitchen to help Maria prepare lunch for the kid. Once again there wasn't enough to go around so Izuku had a very small serving and let the kids have more. That night while everyone was asleep Izuku once again put on the ring and took to the skies but he had to make one stop before he went to fight crime. Eureka was in her tiny apartment waiting for the cookies to bake when she heard a knock on the balcony's glass door. Looking over she saw Izuku waving at her, getting up to slit the door open. Hey. You actually came, come on in cookies are about ready. As Izuka walked in he noticed how empty her apartment looked, wow this is a nice place you got here. You think so I think it's rather small, she laughed nervously. Take a seat at the table, I'll grab you some tea. Her kitchen is about the size of my room, and she thinks this is small. 
Here Eureka handed Izuku a cup. Hope you like green tea. Thank you and yet it's my favorite taking a sip Izuku noticed it tasted different. Wow this tastes really good. Really? It's just regular green tea. Anyway I just wanted to thank you again for saving me both times she said taking a seat across from him. No problem, sorry I didn't drop by like I said I would, Izuku said, taking another sip of his tea. It's fine really I'm sure you were busy the two awkwardly sat there not speaking for a good minute. So, when do you know if you got into UA? Izuku asked, breaking the silence. Oh I think they said in about a week. I've been meaning to ask what's your quirk? Eureka asked. Don't have one, said Izuku. What don't have one? What about everything you did during the entrance exam, there's no way you did all that with no quirk Eureka practically jumped from her seat. No really I'm quirkless, my power comes from this ring Izuku held up his hand. It's a powerful weapon that can create anything, the only limitation being my own imagination. Tell me to make something, anything. Hmm what about a lighter Izuku pointed the ring towards the table and created a small green lighter. Eureka picked it up and to her surprise it actually worked. Alright how about an all might plushie? Izuku once again created exactly what she told, picking it up. Eureka felt how soft it was, wow and you can create anything you want. I need to be somewhat familiar with the object, but yes anything I want said Izuku letting the lighter and the all might plushie disappear. Wow, that is some amazing power. Why don't you become a hero instead of a vigilante, asked Eureka. That's a little hard to explain but simply put the ones who created the ring play by their own rules, rules that I have to follow. Plus I don't have the money for that. Said Izuku. I see, well regardless of what they label you. You will always be my hero she smiled. Izuku's eyes went wide when she said that, imaginings of Bakugo and All Might telling him that he couldn't be a hero played over and over in his head. And now this girl just told him that he a quirkless boy was her hero, Izuku's heart broke, T thank you, you don't know how many people said I couldn't be a hero. So thank you tears fell from his face. H hey now don't cry Eureka said panic not knowing what to do in this situation, just then she heard a ding. Oh the cookies, running towards the oven she brought the tray to the table. Here have some they will cheer you up. Taking one Izuku took a bite, thank you suddenly his mood changed. Wow these are even better than last time. Eureka chuckled, I would hope so, they aren't burnt this time. Izuku stuck around for a little while longer to just hang out and chat, the more he did Izuku could feel something building in his heart. After a while Izuku looked at the time and decided it was time to go back into the city. Sorry about this Eureka but I should go check on the city before heading home. No I get it, go and keep this city safe Izuku nodded and walked towards the balcony. Oh right, here Izuku created a small pager with a button. A pager? Eureka looked at the green pager confused. Yup if you're ever in trouble or in danger just press the button and I'll be there said Izuku. Really? That's really thoughtful of you Izuku blushed. Anyway make sure to always keep it on you. Bye Izuku jumped into the air still red faced. Bye GL. I'll see you soon she waved as he left towards the city. After a long night of taking some thugs Izuku went back to the orphanage but little did he know just outside of Earth's atmosphere multiple different colored rings floated around trying to find a new host. The great danger that the Guardian said that would happen on Earth was fast approaching. It has now been two weeks since he saved Eureka from the giant robot, it was only one week ago that she started school at UA yet she still found the time to wave Izuku down as he flew across the city to have some cookies and chat. The night before Eureka had told him that today they were going to practice rescues in different environments. Izuku was bored out of his mind in his room, he spent the night saving a sinking fishing ship off the coast of Japan. Man I'm bored he said laying on his bed. Just then there was a knock on the door, Izuku you in there, it was Maria. Yeah Maria opening the door she walked in. What's up? I was wondering if you'd help shop from groceries she said putting her hands together. Sure, give me a second. I'll meet you downstairs Izuku said smiling. Awesome thank you Izuku closing the door Maria went to get her bag. Izuku went to his desk and pulled the drawer revealing the green lantern ring, I better take this just to be safe taking the ring he put it in his pocket. After getting changed Izuku walked down the stairs to find Maria in a white sundress, Izuku's eyes went wide when he saw her. W what? Does it look strange on me? Maria asked, covering her embarrassed face. And no you look amazing it's just I've never seen you without your nun outfit Izuku snapped out of the trance he was in. You really think so? Yeah I wasn't too sure about wearing this but since I'm still not a full-fledged nun I can still wear stuff like this. Well enough of that let's go she said grabbing him by the arm and leading him outside. With Eureka. Eureka was getting along with her classmates, well everyone but a certain kid called Bakugo. He was too hot-headed to even approach, today they were going to a place called the USJ to train in rescue. 
After arriving Eureka was starstruck when she saw her favorite hero 13 was one of the teachers who was going to be helping them. Eureka kept the pager that Izuku had given her, in the pouch of her hero costume. You never know when I might need this, plus he did say to always keep it on me. That's when things started to take a turn for the worse, alright everyone that will be all, we are now going to split you up and assign you an environment. Eraser head, also known as Izawa explained when he felt something behind him. Turning around he noticed a black portal opening up in the middle of the USJ. Sir what is that, asked the electro user Kaminari. More bots. No, those are villains. Izawa said getting in front of the children. Shouldn't UA have security systems in place, the speedster known as Itsa said shocked. We do but they must have someone disable them said 13. Izawa looked at his class, everyone you need to get out of here, 13 protect the students he said, putting down his goggles. Sir what are you going to do? Your quirk works stealth not one-on-one -on -one fights Eureka said voicing her concern. Here's your first lesson, a hero is not a one-trick pony and with that Izawa jumped towards the swarm of bad guys. Alright everyone let's get out of here 13 said ushering the kids to the door but he was quickly stopped by one of the villains. We wouldn't want you to leave so soon, the villain known as Kurojiri said, getting in front of the students and the door. We have a job today and we are going to do it so I would appreciate it if you don't leave until this is over. Kurojiri was interrupted by 13 as she activated her quirk black hole, trying to suck up Kurojiri himself, now everyone run, she ordered. Not so fast Kurojiri opened a warp gate in front of him and one behind 13, causing her quirk to shred her costume and back. This caused 13 to fall to the ground bleeding from her back. The everyone run. She said before falling unconscious. Now that the teacher is out of the picture it's time I do my job before Kurojiri could do anything else Bakugo and Kiri's Hima jumped at him quirks at the ready. However they soon found out that their attacks did nothing. How rude, now be gone. A black mist began to cover the students, sending them away to different locations, Eureka and a few others were lucky enough to escape the portal and were now face to face with the villain. Well it seems some of you are still here, Shigaraki will be very displeased if you manage to escape Kurojiri said about to activate his quirk again. That's when Eureka noticed something, when he activates his quirk that metal part stays in place. That must mean he has a body somewhere in there. Guys aim for that metal thing. If my guess is correct that's his weakness, running in Eureka managed to touch the metal part, making him float into the air. Itza now run for it. Go call for the teachers. Hesitating for a second Itza stood in place not knowing what to do, he was the class rep, he should be here fighting instead of running. Itza, what are you doing move, hearing Eureka yell made him snap out of it and run towards the door. Managing to get free Itza ran as fast as he could towards the main campus that was a few miles away. No. Shigaraki is not going to be happy about this he turned to the group of students. You, he yelled looking at Eureka. You are coming with me opening a portal underneath her Eureka fell through and landed in front of Shigaraki and the Nomua. Oh what's this? Shigaraki said. A new plaything for Nomua. Eureka looked around to find Izawa face down on the floor, blood everywhere. Mr. Izawa. Shigaraki forgive me but one of the students managed to escape, explained Kurojiri. However I did bring the one who came up with the plan. You are lucky that you are our way out of here Shigaraki said, scratching his neck. We should get out of here before the heroes come, but first why don't we leave All Might a few bodies? Shigaraki grabbed Eureka by the neck with two fingers, you don't know this but my quirk allows me to disintegrate anything I touch as long as I have five fingers on what I want to disintegrate slowly he put finger after finger on her neck. And no please no. Eureka was too scared to do anything as the third finger gripped her neck. Wait the pager. I need to reach the pager, the fourth finger, Eureka struggled to reach the pouch on her belt, come come reach. Then to her horror she felt the fifth finger just as she grabbed the pager, you really are amazing aren't you eraser head Eureka looked over to her side to find Izawa looking at Shigaraki with red glowing eyes. Now's my chance. Eureka pressed the button on the pager. Enough of this Shigaraki threw Eureka to the side. Noma deal with him, then kill the girl the Noma grabbed Izawa by the hair and slammed his head to the pavement with enough force to break it. Sliding on the floor. Eureka watched as the giant Noma crushed Izawa's skull, then changed its attention to her. Slowly it began to walk towards her claws at the ready to finish her off, please Green Lantern, help me. The Noma let out a loud roar as it swiped down with its massive claws, closing her eyes Eureka heard the roar followed by something the sound of glass breaking, then nothing. Opening her eyes Eureka saw the glow of green in front of her, hey Eureka sorry I'm late Izuku turned and smiled at Eureka. With Izuku a few moments ago. Izuku and Maria were walking out of the grocery with their hands full of groceries, wow I can't believe we had enough to buy this much Izuku said carrying boxes full of food. Yeah, thanks to those donations you brought we were able to save some money. 
Anyway come on let's head back Maria said. As the two walked down the street Maria looked at Izuku, Hey Izuku is there anything you want to tell me? What do you mean Maria? Izuku said, raising an eyebrow. I mean you come back from your little trip and you have a different aura, it's almost like you're a totally different person Izuku started to get nervous. Could it be, you got a girlfriend? Izuku stumbled when he heard this, W what, no I don't. What makes you think I did? I don't know just this gut feeling, come Izuku you can tell me Maria teased him. Izuku turned red, W well I did meet someone. I knew it. What's her name? Maria sounded excited. Okako Yurika, we met a while back and we've been talking ever since, he said. Oh my little Izuku is growing up and here I thought you were going to end up alone Maria said laughing. Hey that's not nice, said Izuku. Sorry sorry, well anyway just make sure to be careful alright Midoriya. Love is a complicated thing and can make you do some crazy things. Listen to your heart but also remember to think about what you're doing her voice turned so serious. Whoa she almost never calls me Midoriya, only when I'm in trouble or about to get lectured Izuku smiled. I know Maria, I promise I'll be careful. Just then Izuku's ring began to beep and flash green, oh no that's the signal for the pager I gave Yurika, she must be in danger. Izuku what is that? Maria said, pointing at his pocket. Oh that's. Izuku knew there was no getting out of this. Listen I think it's about time you found out. Come with me Izuku pulled Maria to a nearby alley out of the sight of anyone. Putting down the boxes Izuku took out the ring and slid it on. As soon as he did his uniform began to appear on him. I Izuku you're him. You're the Green Lantern Maria dropped the bags of groceries. Yes I am, look I'll explain everything when I get back. Right now Yurika needs me. Ring, where is Yurika? Izuku said, asking the ring. Located, USJ approximately 15 miles from your location Izuku nodded and was about to take off when Maria stopped him. Izuku wait he turned to her. Be careful. I will Maria Izuku created a wagon to help her take the groceries back to the orphanage and with that done he took off into the sky at a high rate of speed. USJ. So who are these guys? Izuku said, pointing at the giant beast that laid below a bunch of ruble. Those are villains they broke into the school, said Yurika. You bastard what did you do to Nomu? We need him to kill all might Shigaraki looked at Izuku. Wait I know you, yeah you're that vigilante everyone is talking about. Yeah that's me, the name's Green Lantern. Now I don't really appreciate you hurting my friend the ring started to glow brighter. Izuku fired a green beam of energy at Shigaraki. Suddenly there was a loud roar and a flash of green, Izuku looked back where Noma was to find it gone, looking back he noticed it was now in front of Shigaraki. Nice try but with the Nomu here you won't be able to touch me. I see then why don't I do this firing another beam Izuku at the Nomu, creating a solid net covering most of his body. Now he won't be able to move. Shigaraki smiled, are you sure about that? The Nomu began to growl as cracks began to form around the net. Izuku focused harder on maining it but every time the Nomu increased his strength trying to break free, he's getting stronger Izuku grabbed his wrist to support himself. Nomu break out, Shigaraki ordered. With a roar the Nomu flexed, breaking out of the net sending pieces of green construct flying. I am possible Izuku put up his hands trying to shield himself from the broken constructs, looking up he saw Nomu appear right in front of him pulling his arm back. SH asterisk T thinking fast Izuku created a bubble around himself as the hit connected. The impact was so great that it forced Izuku to the ground, his bubble shield breaking the ground and causing a crater. Man he's strong he said rubbing the back of his head. Green Lantern look out. Yurika yelled as Nomu jumped at Izuku. With a double fist strike Nomu hit the shield repeatedly, Izuku focused hard as he saw cracks appear. Lifting his fists up high, Nomu brought them down, breaking Izuku's bubble shield causing an explosion of green energy. In the crater Izuku laid seemingly unconscious with half of his mask ripped off and his face bruised, very good Nomu now finish him off. GL no. Yurika yelled as Nomu's claws bared down on Izuku. Suddenly the sound of gunfire was heard, Izuku had created a M16 shooting Nomu filling him with holes. Ha got you the Nomu backed away bleeding from the gunshot wounds. Oh no N-O-M-U. Izuku smiled as Shigaraki yelled shocked at what happened and smiled. Is that what you wanted me to say? Well tough luck, super strength isn't his only power you know. Izuku watched as the holes began to close, he has regeneration. Oh come on that's not fair Izuku switched it up and created a M124 minigun. The green builds hit the monster but it seemed to do very little as it walked towards Izuku slowly but surely. Seeing that the Noma was now in close range Izuku created two swords, slicing at its ankles causing it to fall forward. Seeing his chance Izuku jumped up and stabbed Nomu in the back. As it screeched out in pain it quickly turned around swatting Izuku away. Hovering Izuku wiped the blood off of his lip, 
Damn he's still not going down. Die, a voice yelled out followed by a large explosion. Izuku knew who it was right away as flashbacks when he was a kid played inside his mind. Bakugo managed to hit the Noma with one of his explosions knocking him back, that's when he noticed, who the hell are you? I'm Green Lantern, listen. I appreciate you helping me but this one is mine Izuku said, which only pissed off Bakugo. What the hell did you say? Bakugo yelled out but was cut off when the Nomu let out a loud roar. That voice I've heard it before. You can yell at me all you want later right now let's take care of this thing Izuku created a suit of armor complete with a sword and shield around himself. At least that's something we can both agree on, Bakugo said as explosions rippled in his hands. Oh you want to fight Nomu? Very well, alright Nomu time to show them why we made you to kill All Might with the wave of his hand the Nomu ran towards them even faster than before. Izuku saw the Nomu disappear then reappear behind Bakugo and raise his hand, watch out. Izuku threw himself at Bakugo and raised his construct shield to defend him. But the shield proved to be no match for the giant fist, shattering the shield the Nomu picked Izuku up by the neck and began to choke him. Struggling to breath Izuku raised the sword and jammed it into its arm. Screeching in pain, Nomu let go of Izuku but before falling to the floor he managed to punch Izuku, shattering the breastplate on the suit of armor which sent Izuku flying to a nearby tree. You bastard! Bakugo yelled as he jumped in and fired a full-powered explosion at the Nomu. As the smoke disappeared Bakugo was shocked to see Nomu still standing, I am possible, he doesn't have a scratch using his explosions Bakugo dodged most of Nomu's attacks but they still managed to scratch him. Izuku sat up against the tree, alright Izuku, we saw how charging in got you. Why don't you think first? Ring power at 20%, recommend immediate recharge the ring warned him. Great, now I'm almost out of power, I need to think of something fast. Izuku watched the Nomu fight Bakugo, he analyzed, thought back, trying to look for any weak points. That's when he remembered something, that's it. He obeys the hand guy, if I take him out he shouldn't act on his orders anymore looking over at Shigaraki, Izuku noticed he wasn't paying attention. Rushing at Shigaraki, Izuku managed to tackle and pin his hands making sure they didn't touch him, putting a straight jacket on him. Izuku looked at the Nomu. Hey ugly. The Nomu stopped attacking Bakugo and looked at Izuku, if you want your boss here to live I suggest you stop Izuku made the jacket tighter, which caused Shigaraki to yell in pain. That goes for you too he pointed at Kurojiri without looking. Both the Nomu and Kurojiri stopped, alright, alright easy. We'll do what you want Kurojiri said, looking at the Nomu and giving it a nod. Just don't hurt him. That's more like it, you have two choice, LST is to take your monster and open a portal and walk away. Second option is I beat the hell out you and honestly I really hope you choose the second option Izuku said, holding on to Shigaraki. Actually there's a third option Nomu took a swing at the air but suddenly a black portal opened in front of him just big enough for this first to fly through. Kurojiri had opened another portal in front of Izuku's face. With no time to react Izuku saw the giant fist appear from the portal, hitting Izuku square in the head sending him flying. GL. Yurika yelled out as he slid to a stop, not moving. Bakugo's eyes went wide when he saw what happened. The straight jacket around Shigaraki disappeared, well you certainly caught me by surprise he said getting up. But it seems you are still no match for the Nomu he said walking towards Izuku. Damn it, still alive I see. Bakugo we need to help him. Yurika yelled out. Bakugo nodded but as they tried to run towards him the Nomu jumped in front of them stopping their advancement. Man you are annoying Shiagarki started to kick Izuku's side. Why don't you just roll over and die? After this I'm going to take this Nomu and have some fun around the school. So many students, so many bodies kick after kick he delivered breaking a rib on the last one. What scared everyone the most was the fact that Shigaraki was laughing the whole time. Throughout the USJ the students could feel their blood run cold, that laugh was something straight from a nightmare. Even those at the entrance stepped back in fear. Ring power level 10%. Out in space. The rings floated just above earth, suddenly the yellow colored ring began to glow. New host has been found, scanning for location, identified, Japan in a yellow street the ring flew towards the ground. USJ. W what do we do? Kiri's Hima asked as he stood in front of his class near the entrance. We have to go help the green guy. Mina said but couldn't move out of fear. Why won't my body move? Come legs move. Todoroki said yelling at his legs to move but the fear kept him in place. Suddenly a large explosion was heard behind them, it's alright students, there's no need to worry anymore why? Because I am here. All Might had joined the fight. All Might, they all yelled. Thank goodness you're safe students that's when he saw 13 laying on the ground, looking around he noticed 3 people missing, listen to me, the other heroes are going to be here any moment so stay here. I'll go save Izawa and the others. 
Going to the edge of the stairs he saw two of his students, and in the future he saw someone getting beat up. In an instant All Might appeared in front of Bakugo and Yuriga. Get behind me kids. All Might. Bakugo yelled out, causing Shigaraki to stop beating on Izuku. Well if it isn't All Might, so you finally come to play Shigaraki said, whipping his shoe of Izuku's blood. You bastard. Faster than Shigaraki could track him, All Might got Izuku and Izawa, putting him down beside Yuriga and Bakugo. Take the two and head towards the entrance, the rest of the class is there waiting. Yuriga used her quirk on the barely conscious Izuku and Bakugo carried Izawa over his shoulder, A All Might, wait. Ring analyzes quirks Izuku raised his hand and pointed at the Nomu. Quirks identified, super regeneration and shock absorption the ring answered as Izuku passed out. Thanks kid, I'll handle things from here now get moving you two they nodded and began to run towards the entrance with Izuku and Izawa in tow. He may not be one of my students but he has the heart of a true hero. It's time to pay villains. Nomu get him, ordered Shigaraki, Nomu ran towards All Might at full speed. As the two clashed a shockwave was felt throughout the USJ. Entrance. Bakugo and Izawa were the first to reach the entrance, then followed by Yurika and Izuku. Guys you're all right. Mina said, happy to see her classmates. Wait who that, she asked. This is Green Lantern, he saved me from the Nomu Yurika said deactivating her quirk and putting him down gently. He's the vigilante everyone's been talking about. He's so young, probably no older than us Kiri's Hima said looking over Izuku. Suddenly there was a yell coming from the center of the USJ, where All Might was fighting that thing. Everyone rushed over to see All Might getting pulled into the portal by the Nomu. Oh no. Yurika yelled out. If they close the portal while he's in it. She paused at the thought of what could happen. Out of the way. Todoroki pushed Yurika out of the way, activating his ice. The ice traveled far, until it reached the Nomu freezing the hand that had the grip on All Might. With its grip now loosened All Might managed to break free, but held his weak spot. Thank you young Todoroki. All Might yelled out. Man this guy is tough I need to finish this fast, my time is running out. Nice work Todoroki said Momo. I it won't be enough everyone turned to find Izuku had gotten up, and was limping toward them. Green Lantern. You shouldn't be moving Yuriga said, running to his side. Thank but I'll be fine, it's all might I'm worried about. That thing was designed to kill him if this goes on any longer he's going to die Izuku said looking at the fight. Is there anything we can do, asked Toru the invisible girl. Izuku looked back at everyone. I know you're all scared but I need you to trust me. This fight is going to be over soon to the surprise of everyone they felt a wave of calm befall them. They didn't know why but GL's words were calming. This short moment of tranquility was interrupted by a large boom followed by a strong gust of wind. Looking back All Might had taken a huge hit from Nomu, it was now or never Izuku had to act. Everyone stay back, I'm going back in, he said, taking off. GL wait. You should move, your injuries. Yurika tried to warn him but it was too late. Like a green bullet Izuku flew towards All Might to back him up. All Might was breathing hard, his weak spot was bleeding, and his time was running out. He needed to do something, he watched as Noma once again charged him, putting up his guard All Might braced for the impact. Suddenly a green beam of energy shot across him barely missing his head and hitting Nomu. What the? Turning around All Might saw Izuku heading his way, looks like you need some help All Might. Me? What about you? You're just as damaged as I am All Might said wiping the blood from his lip. Didn't think I would see you again, well at least not here. Yeah, funny how things turn out. Look he has shock absorption right? You think you can overclock his absorption? Izuku asked. Yeah I can do it. You said his quirk was shock absorption not nullification, that means he has a limit on how much he can take All Might smiled looking at the villains. Good, once you feel he's reached his limit leave the rest to me. In the meantime I'll make sure they don't interfere Izuku said, looking at Shigaraki and Kurojiri. Very well let's go. All Might jumped in to fight the Noma once again. Izuku on the other hand powered up once again. Tell me why are you two doing this? Izuku asked, trapping the two villains in a box. We do this to rid the world of All Might Kurojiri created a portal underneath them and popped out in front of the green box. But right now my objective is to kill you, he said running at Izuku. I see, in that case. Izuku dropped his hand as Shigaraki lunged at Izuku ready to disintegrate him. I don't need my ring to fight you ducking underneath his hand Izuku elbowed Shigaraki hard in the stomach. Did you only think my ring was the only weapon I had? I don't need to solely rely on the ring, the guardians and Kilowog trained me in hand to hand combat. That was the one area I excelled in. As Shigaraki fell to his knees, a strong gust of wind was felt. Izuku turned to find All Might punching the Nomu so fast and hard that he managed to lift him off the ground. 
Green Lantern, do it now. All Might yelled. With pleasure. Izuka rocketed towards the Nomu tackling it and he pushed it higher and higher. Sorry to do this to you big guy but if we leave you alive you'll just hurt people later, so now you die. Izuka constructed a large drill that dug into the Nomu's chest. As it reeled in pain Izuka pushed harder, faster the drill spun until finally it pierced the Nomu. Coming out the other side, Izuka floated in the air as it fell to the ground. As it did, the monster split into two halves and fell beside Shigaraki dead. All Might and the students looked on in shock at what Izuka just did, H he just killed that thing. Kirishima said. Yurika herself saw surprised by the fact that he'd do something like that, W.Y., there had to be a reason to kill it. All Might himself was in shock at what Izuka did, as the body hit the floor he could see the now core of the Nomu. Green Lantern. Why did you do that? He yelled out. Izuka floated down in front of All Might, what? I took care of the problem, what's the big deal? You just killed it? All Might shot back. Izuka turned to the body and back to All Might, yeah. He's not getting the message. There was no reason to kill that thing. All Might thought looking at Izuka with a stern look. You Shigaraki voice broke through the face down Izuka was having. That was a present from my master. Suddenly everyone in the USJ could feel the bloodlust leaking out of Shigaraki. I'm going to make you pay for what you did. Go ahead and try it. You'll end up just like that monster Izuka said as his ring began to glow. GL that's enough, in the blink of an eye All Might appeared in front of Izuku. Raising his hand, All Might slapped Izuku across the face sending him crashing towards the ground. Gah! What the hell All Might? Izuku said getting blood dripping from his lip. You won't kill anyone anymore. All Might said standing over Izuku. Narrowing his eyes, Izuku slowly got up, is that what this is about? If I hadn't killed him he would have just come back and then what? Would you leave him to other heroes to handle? Not everyone is as strong as you are All Might. I took one life to save countless others. There are always other ways. If he did show up again we could have handled him. All Might rerouted. 100 people? 500? No, maybe 10 comma 000. Izuka said, staring at All Might. What? How many people would have died if he was allowed to leave, said Izuku. All Might choked on his words, T that's not the problem here. We could have avoided it. Yeah? How many people do you think they can kill? Izuku pointed at Shigaraki and Kurojiri. One has the power to disintegrate things just by touching them, the other can open portals. As the two were arguing something crashed into the USJ, everyone looked up to see something yellow in color float down towards Shigaraki. Tamura Shigaraki of planet Earth. You have the ability to instill great fear. Izuku's eyes widened when he saw what it was, no. Izuku pointed his ring at Shigaraki and was about to blast him when All Might jumped in and grabbed his arm. I said enough. All Might gripped down on Izuku causing him to scream. Let me go. You don't understand if he gets that ring it will mean certain doom, then it happened. Welcome to the Sinestro Corps reaching out, Shigaraki grabbed the ring. When he did, the entire USJ was filled with yellow light. As the light disappeared there stood Shigaraki, in black and yellow suit, and the Sinestro Corps logo on his chest. What is this? So much power Shigaraki looked at himself. F asterisk CK, letting out an energy wave Izuka pushed All Might away from him, and fired a blast of green energy at Shigaraki. Shigaraki didn't even flinch as he created a shield blocking the energy, interesting, this ring is a different color but it has the same powers you have. Kurojiri get us out of here, I want to do some testing. Kurojiri created a portal and warped the two of them out of the USJ. The fight was over, for now at least. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Izuku yelled out cursing at the ground. He has a ring now Izuku began to calm down. Ring power at 3%. I need to get out of here and think about my next move Izuku began to take to the sky but was grabbed by the leg. What the, looking down Izuku saw All Might holding his ankle. And just where do you think you're going young man? All Might pulled and threw Izuku to the floor so hard that it broke. There are things you need to answer for. But right now Izuku wasn't having none of it. Getting up Izuka created restraints pinning All Might to a nearby wall by the neck, arms, and legs. You, you're the reason they got away. If you hadn't stopped me I could have stopped him. All Might tried breaking free of the restraints but found that they wouldn't even move, innocent people are going to die and it's going to be your fault. Suddenly Yurika and Bakugo appeared behind Izuku, GL, let him go, please Yurika yelled. Looking back Izuku saw their faces, just before letting him go three shots rang out. Doting out of the way Izuku was grazed on the shoulder, causing blood to drip from his arm. They're here. At the entrance Itza had come back with reinforcements, every teacher in UA was now standing at the entrance of the USJ. 
Isaac fell to one knee, damn it. Just then Yuriko rushed to his side and whispered, go to my apartment, I'll help you treat your injuries. Isaac looked at her and nodded, releasing all might, this is far from over, expect to hear from me soon and with that Isaac took off breaking the ceiling and leaving the USJ. Isaac flew over the city, bleeding from his injuries, H he has a yellow ring, I need to find him that's when Isaac felt a sharp pain to his shoulder almost causing him to fall out of the sky. Lucky he regained his control before he crashed to the floor, placing his hand where he felt the pain. Isaac noticed that his hand was now covered in blood. Not good, I took too much damage from that fight. Ring power 1% the ring notified him. I need to hurry Isaac pushed himself to go faster, he wasn't that far away. Landing on the balcony Isaac noticed the sliding glass door was closed and locked. Creating a lockpick the ring began to unlock the door, after a second he heard a click signaling the door was now open. As soon as he had one step in the door he collapsed succumbing to his injuries. With Eureka. It was now an hour since the fight as the USJ and the principal allowed them to leave campus early and even gave them a few days off. Man that was scary Mina said as class 1A walked off campus. I know right but at least they gave us these extra days off said Kiri's Hima. We were also lucky All Might and that Green Lantern guy showed up, Ribbit. Although I still don't agree with killing that thing Tsu said thinking back to the USJ. Eureka however was silent, why did he kill that thing? There had to be a good reason. For now I need to hurry home, he probably needs help that's when she turned to her class. Sorry guys I have to hurry back home, my, parents are coming by later. I'll make sure to text you all, bye, she said waving at them as she ran towards the train station. The class waved, hey, did you guys find it weird that Green Lantern appeared and protected Okako, asked Mina. Now that you mention it, I did find it kinda weird Momo said. She's hiding something. I'm going to find out what. I know I heard that voice before. Bakugo said, breaking off from his class. Getting off at her stop Eureka quickly stopped at a convenience store and bought some first aid to treat GL's injuries. Opening the door to the apartment, at first she didn't see him, that is until she went to the living room and found a young boy lying on the floor unconscious. GL, she said running to him. Flipping him over on his back she noticed the blood dripping down his arm, finding the source she quickly ripped his shirt and applied a streal pad stopping the bleeding. Then she moved down feeling at his sides, when she got to his ribs he let out a winds of pain. His ribs are probably broken, she said, removing the rest of his shirt. When she did, she was taken back by the enormous bruise. There's not much I can do about the bruising but I can stabilize his ribs carefully Eureka wrapped Isaac amid section with bandage wrap. She then moved on to disinfecting his open wounds and bandaging them up, after she was done she had burned through all the supplies she bought. At least you look better now. I should move him to the sofa, laying on the floor must be uncomfortable she said, activating her quirk on him, she moved him to the sofa. Going back to pick up trash she noticed a green colored ring, what is this? It must be his, I'll hold onto it until he wakes up. Inside Izuku head. Izuku opened his eyes to find himself floating in an empty void, W what where am I? Oh god did I die? Izuku began to panic, but suddenly the empty void turned green in color, turning around Izuku saw the source of the glow. There standing before him was a young girl around his age, skin glowing green and wearing a green dress. W who are you? He asked, walking closer to her. Izuku, it's time for you to wake up, she said pointing to the sky. That voice, I've heard before on OA suddenly there was a light shining on Izuku that came down from above. He could feel it pull him, wait I have questions, tried as he may Izuku couldn't escape the pull from the light. The last thing Izuku saw was the girl whispering something and with that Izuku woke up from his dream. Wait, he yelled, scaring Yuriko who was in the kitchen making dinner. Rushing to his side Yuriko noticed he was breathing hard and sweating, hey look me it's okay you're safe. Izuku looked around and noticing he was in her apartment he began to calm down, T thanks. Yuriko nodded, no problem GL, how are you feeling? Izuku tried sitting up but couldn't due to his ribs being broken, I'm good thanks to you that's when Izuku could feel his mask was gone. Panicked he began to touch his face, looking down he noticed his GL uniform was gone, as well as as his ring, oh no she knows how I look like. You can relax, I won't tell anyone who you are she said pushing him back down onto the sofa. Why don't we try this again, my name is Okako Yuriko. Can I trust her? I mean she seems like a nice girl, and she did treat my wounds. Until she gives me a reason not to, I'll trust her Izuku side. My name is Izuku Midoriya, you know me as Green Lantern. Thank you for looking out for me Eureka. Eureka shook her head, I should be thanking you. Remember you saved me and my class from that monster suddenly the sound of Izuku's stomach was heard. I'm guessing you're hungry. Izuku blushed, why yes sorry about that. Don't be, 
I was making dinner anyway. I hope you ramen, it's the only thing I can make right now she said as he tried to sit up. Easy now I don't want you hurting yourself any more than you are. Stay here I'll bring you the food. Izuku shook his head, thanks but I think I can manage he said trying to get up, managing to get to his feet but as soon as he tried to walk he collapsed. Lucky for him Yuriko was close by and caught him for he hit the floor, on second thought never mind. That's what I thought, no go sit back down. I'll bring you your food right now Yuriko said, going back to get the bowls of ramen. Izuku looked down at his hand to find the ring was missing, the ring it's gone. Putting the two bowls of ramen on a small table Yuriko sat down beside him and pulled the ring out of her pocket, looking for this, she said holding up the ring. Here she said, handing it over to him. T thanks, he said, taking the ring and sliding it on. No problem, now eat while it's still hot she said slurping up some noodles. Izuku with one arm managed to eat with little trouble, after enjoying the ramen he thanked Yuriko. Now that really hit the spot. You're telling me, after everything we went through at the USJ I needed this. Which reminds me. Why aren't you all green like how you were back when fighting the Nomua, she asked. To answer that you have to know my power comes from this ring. As to why I'm not all green it's because it ran out of battery so to say. I need to charge the ring every 24 hours or it just becomes a regular ring Izuku explained. I see, so do you need a wire or something to charge? Yurika asked, looking over the ring on his hand. Izuku chuckled, no nothing like that. As crazy as it may sound I need a special lantern that I have back at the orphanage. He froze when he said that word. Yurika's eyes went wide, orphanage? Why the orphanage? Izuku looked away, I it's cause I live there. Oh oh. Yeah. The air around them turned very awkward. So can I ask you something? Yurika said breaking the awkwardness. Sure go ahead, Izuku said, turning to her. Why did you kill that thing? You've never killed anyone until now she asked, wanting to know. I did it to protect you, protect your classmates, and protect others. Whatever that thing was, it wasn't going to stop. They could have locked it away sure but then you'll just be waiting for someone to break it out. The Green Lantern Corps taught me to deal with the enemy, and deal with it I did said Izuku. While I am grateful that you saved my class and my friends. The heroes won't let this slide, they will be coming after you. Yurika said with sadness in her voice. I know, that's why I'm going to speak with them, said Izuku but he still saw that Yurika was worried. Don't worry I'll be fine, besides I don't answer to them, I answer to the guardians he said patting her head. She smiled, well as long as you're alright I won't stop you. On an unrelated note, how do you plan to go home? You're too injured to move. That's a good question, if the ring was charged I would be able to fly home, said Izuka looking at the drained ring. That's when Yurika got an idea, why don't I go get that lantern thing you were talking about? A hey, are you sure? You would do that for me Izuku said as his eyes gleamed. Yeah sure why not, it's the least I can do, you for saving me Yurika said getting up from the sofa. You live in the orphanage just outside the city right? Izuku nodded. Good I'll go right now, I'll be back in a bit. Try not to move around too much, the bathroom is down the hall on the right. The TV remote is on the table if you want to watch something she said getting ready. Thank you for doing this Yurika. Oh right before I forget the lantern is in my room, Ask for Sister Maria she'll show you to my room she nodded as she walked out the door. After a bus ride outside the city Eureka was finally at the gate of the orphanage, wow this place is really run down. She said staring at the old building. After a few moments she decided to walk towards the door and knocked. Suddenly the door opened and out popped the two twins, Eureka was shocked she expected an adult to answer. Oh hi she said looking down at the twins. Hello, Lisa said. I is Sister Maria here? I need to talk to her Eureka said. The twins looked at each other and without saying a word left Eureka, after a few seconds the twins came back with Sister Maria. Hello miss, how can I help you? My name is Okako Eureka I am a, friend of Midoriya before she could say anything else Maria grabbed her hands. So you're the girl Izuku told me about, Maria said with excitement in her voice. Why yeah that's me, actually sister I need to talk to you about Izuku is that alright, said Eureka. Yes, that's fine. Lisa, Levi. Can you two give us a minute the twins nodded and went away. So what would you like to talk about? Oh Izuku needs me to get a lantern from his room, I know it sounds weird but he's at my place right now and needs it Eureka said. I see well if Izuku needs something, why didn't he come back here? Maria asked. Does she know who Izuku is? Wait, is Izuku injured? He went off to save her, what if he's hurt? Eureka began to get nervous, oh oh you see he, twisted his ankle and is resting at my place right now. A likely story. Let me ask you something. 
Do you know who Isaac really is? Maria said, testing Eureka. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Midoriya is my friend and I just want to help him out. Eureka's voice turned serious. I see so you do know who he really is. So tell me what really happened said Maria crossing her arms. So I'm guessing you know he's Green Lantern, said Eureka, confirming. I do know, tell me what happened. Eureka proceeded to tell Maria what happened. How Izuka saved her class from villains, how Izuka was badly injured, and how he needed the lantern to get home. After explaining everything Maria led Eureka to his room to get the lantern, there they found the lantern. Good now Izuka can get back here. Oh and don't worry about his injuries, I treated them the best I could Eureka said, holding the lantern. Before you go I want to tell you something Maria's voice turned serious. I don't know you or do I know what your motives are, and quite frankly you rub me the wrong way. That being said since you know Izuka's secret I will trust you, for now. Eureka turned to Maria with a face filled with determination, I owe Midoriya my life so I promise you, I will never tell anyone who he is. I don't much about him but I do know this, he is an amazing person who wants to do the right thing no matter what. Maria smiled, well I can see why Izuka likes you. Anyway you show head out and remember no telling anyone. As Eureka was about to leave a voice came from the window, oh leaving so soon? Why don't you tell me where the Green Lantern is before you leave? They two turned around and from the glass window to find two people floating outside the window, Shigaraki. Eureka said, jumping back. Crashing through the window the two figures touched down on the floor, that's right you don't know who I am. Please allow me to introduce myself, my name is Sinestro. Now tell me where the Green Lantern is Sinestro said as his ring glowed yellow. Maria stepped in front of Eureka, who are you? Like I said my name is Sinestro, leader of the Sinestro Corp. I am here to dispose of the new Green Lantern, so tell me where is he? Sinestro said as his yellow eyes sent fear into Maria's heart. We will never tell you. Eureka said, gripping the lantern. Is that so? Well I do have methods of getting what I want, for example I'm sure you know what Shigariki's quirk is don't you girl? It would be a real shame if something happened to this orphanage Sinestro said grinning. That's when Shigariki stepped up, tell me where he is. I have a score to settle Shigariki said, disintegrating the table. Eureka stayed quiet, while Maria stood frozen in fear. We are getting nowhere, Shigaraki do me a favor and kill everyone in this building. We will find the lantern soon enough Sinestro said, turning his back on the two girls. Shigaraki face twisted into a smile, with pleasure the ring around his finger glowed and created a bomb with a timer that read 10 seconds. Eureka and Maria's eyes went wide, turning to the door the two ran as the timer read 8 seconds, everyone run. Maria said running down the hall, as she did she saw the twins and picked them up. Eureka ran in front of Maria, no no this can't be happening, why is Shigaraki here? That's when her eyes went wide in realization. D did they follow me? No that couldn't be, then how? Two seconds. As Eureka ran the lantern power battery began to glow in her arms. Before she could do anything Eureka was engulfed in a green light and teleported away along with the battery, leaving Maria and everyone else in the orphanage behind. Eureka's apartment. Izuka laid on the couch watching some TV when all of a sudden the room was covered in a green glow. As the glow disappeared he saw Eureka and the power battery, you Eureka? How did you? He was cut off when Eureka pushed the battery to his chest, Midoriya quick, as Shigariki is at the orphanage and he has a bomb. There's another. Izuka's eyes went wide, suddenly there was an explosion that shook the building, and no Eureka's voice was shallow. Grabbing the power battery Izuka slid on the ring and placed the ring on the battery, in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might, beware my power, Green Lantern's light. Wearing his uniform once again Izuka took off at top speed towards the orphanage, pushing past the pain of his injuries that were still not healed. Izuka flew as fast as he could towards the orphanage, please, please be still alive he prayed as he made it to the orphanage now a pile of wood and fire. Izuka looked on in horror at the destruction. Look who finally decided to show up Izuka looked up to see Shigaraki and Sinestro floating high above him. Where are they? Izuka yelled out, his ring glowing brighter. If you are talking about everyone inside, they are most likely dead. Take a look Sinestro said pointed towards the broken building. Izuka floated down and began to dig lifting logs and bricks, tossing them aside until he found something. In between the rubble he found one shoe belonging to Lisa and right underneath the shoe another that belonged to Levi, he knew what had happened to them. Tears began to run down his face, then from his left Izuka heard the rubble move, getting up he quickly had his way towards the sound. There he found a white piece of cloth, this is Maria's dress, he threw the logs away and finally found her hand. Maria. After a few seconds he managed to free her from the rubble. Izuka's eyes widened as he saw the state she was in, 
cuts covered her front, her face bleed from the open wounds. Then he saw her back, it was scorched and her skin turned to black from the heat. I Izuku, Maria said, gasping for air. I'm here Maria, I'm here. Izuku grabbed her arm to which she winced in pain. T the twins, are, are they safe? I tried to shield them she said as he voice began to grow weaker and weaker. Izuku swallowed a lump in his throat, he didn't have the heart to tell her not now, T they are fine, you saved them he said smiling trying to comfort her. Maria smiled when she heard the news, gee good, good, listen to me Izuku, there is something you have to know, it's about your parents. Not now Maria save your breath you need to hold on for just a bit longer Izuku said as panic began to fill his voice. And no listen, you have to know with all her remaining strength Maria managed to push through the pain and sit up to whisper something in his ear. Izuku's eyes went wide as she fell once again to the floor, no that can't be. Her eyes were barely open now, but tears still ran down her face. I'm sorry Izuku for not telling you sooner, I'm so sorry, so sorry. Izuku felt her hand go limp, Maria, no no no. Please Maria wake up. You can't die like this. With her last breath Maria smiled and said one final, I'm s sorry. Closing his eyes Izuku got up, ring, scan for vitals the ring scanned her body. Scanning, scan complete, vitals not detected. Person is deceased. Clenching his fists Izuku turned to Sinestro and Shigaraki who were just floating in the air. They were my family he said as the green glow of the ring began to cover him. Sinestro looked around, oh I'm sorry are you looking for someone to care because I don't. Why? Why did they have to die? Izuku said, yelling out flying up into the air to meet them. Sinestro twirled his mustache, why you say? Simple really, it's because of you and that ring. It's because you are a green lantern. So you're saying this is my fault, that their deaths were caused by me, tears began to fall from Izuku's face. Simply speaking, yes Sinestro said with a cold voice. Izuku said nothing as he hung his head, can we move this along? I want to kill him already said Shigaraki. Oh very well, you may do as you please. Although it looks like he has lost the will to fight Sinestro signaled Shigaraki to attack. Shigaraki pointed his ring and created yellow construct missiles and fired them as Izuku, he didn't move. The explosion that followed was massive, he didn't move, why? Yurika got off two stops away from the orphanage, as soon as the bus left she was knocked to the floor by a strong gust of wind. Looking up she saw the fireball in midair, oh no Midoriya, without thinking twice she took off running hoping to back him up but she was still a mile away. As the fireball disappeared there was Izuku his wounds had opened up again and was bleeding, T this was my fault the glow around Izuku began to flicker. Shigaraki then appeared in front of Izuku and with a powerful right hook to the cheek he sent Izuku flying back. Thinking fast Shigaraki created a wall stopping him flying back farther, getting in close he began to beat Izuku. Punch after punch Izuku didn't so much as flinch, the punches were so hard that the yellow construct wall began to crack. Stopping momentarily Shigaraki grabbed Izuku by the neck making sure no to activate his quirk, Fight back punch come on fight back. Punch blood splattered over Shigariki's face. Still Izuku did nothing, then Sinestro appeared beside Shigariki. It seems he wants to die, odd fellow, why don't you put him out of his misery? Sinestro smiled, with pleasure he said, throwing Izuku to the floor. As Izuku laid on the floor the green light finally faded, broke and bleeding he laid now in his plain clothes. I'm sorry Lisa, Levi, Maria Izuku watched as Shigariki dropped down towards him, with a hand outstretched ready to turn him to ash. At that very moment Eureka arrived, GL, she watched as her friend was about to be turned to ash. Suddenly a green energy beam came in and hit Shigaraki away from Izuku, sending him flying into the trees. Who dares? Sinestro said turning to the source of the blast. Oh no. Flying down Kilowog along with multiple members of the corp, landing in front of Izuku they pointed their rings at Sinestro and Shigaraki who was getting back up. Sinestro, I should have known you would come looking for the boy, Kilowog said, his ring glowing. Kilowog, how nice to see you again. However I do find it really rude that you just barge in here, this is none of your concern Sinestro said putting up his guard. That's where you are wrong Sinestro a voice said appearing behind him. Turning around Sinestro found Ganthet behind him, before he could even speak Ganthet fired a blast of willpower at Sinestro. He quickly created a shield but it would prove useless against Ganthet, the blast engulfed him sending him flying. You should have left the boy alone. Sinestro. Shigaraki yelled after him, creating a net he caught Sinestro. You need to leave now, Sinestro said, breathing hard and as blood ran down his lip. Go into the city and take off your ring, I'll distract them. Shigaraki nodded, all right, I'll wait for your signal. Flying back towards the Ganthet, well it's been a long time Ganthet. Yes it has, why are you on earth Sinestro? 
Ganthet asked. That is none of your business. Siniestro looked over at Izuku who was being looked after by Kilawag. He's a special one isn't he? Ganthet said nothing, well as much as I enjoy a good silent treatment, I think it's time I say goodbye pointing his ring in the air, Sinestro created a yellow ball of energy and when it reached high enough it broke into hundreds of yellow construct needles. Lanterns, deploy shields. Ganthet said as he created a shield over himself. The other lanterns followed suit creating shields over Izuku. That's when Sinestro and Shigaraki made their escape, Sinestro flew into space at top speed while Shigaraki flew towards the city. Damn Sinestro he's getting away. Kilowog said as the construct needles continued to fall. That's when he noticed Uraraka dodging needles. What the? Kilowog created a rope and wrapped it around Uraraka's waist to which he then pulled her under the construct shield. Stay put and look after him, she nodded. After a few seconds the needles finally stopped raining down, Kilowog looked down at Izuku and he was hurt badly, Ganthet the boy. Rushing to his side, Ganthet noticed Uraraka, she had a worried look on her face, step aside for a second, don't worry we are here to help him Ganthet said, this calmed Uraraka down. Ganthet hovered his hand over Izuku, just then a green glow began to cover Izuku's body. Uraraka watched as the wounds began to disappear, amazing. There that should do it, however I fear it will be a while before he wakes up. We need to take him somewhere safe said Ganthet. It's best if we move him off the planet, Kilowog said, giving his opinion. Um excuse me Uraraka said shyly, everyone turned to her. If it's alright we can take him back to my apartment. He can rest comfortably there I promise. Ganthet looked at the other green lanterns, we appreciate the gesture but... Suddenly the sound of sirens was heard. On second thought let's go, it's still too soon for us to show ourselves. Take us there. They carried Uraraka in a green construct bubble, leaving just before the police she directed the rest of the green lantern to her apartment. Once inside they put Izuku on her bed so he could get rest easily. How is he, she asked as she brought them tea. Physically he's fine but it's mentally that has me worried Ganthet said as Uraraka placed a cup of tea on the table. Thank you dear. Losing one family member is hard enough but he just lost everyone he considered family, said Kilowog. Ganthet took a sip of his tea, now he has no family and no place to go. Ganthet what should we do? I I don't know, Ganthet said, hanging his head. He can stay with me they turned to Uraraka. He doesn't have anywhere else, he can stay with me. I know what it's like to lose a family member, maybe I can help him get through this. She does know his identity, I'd say give the girl a chance said Kilowog. Ganthet smiled, Uraraka was it? You have an amazing heart, you my girl are very compassionate. Ganthet there is still the main reason why we came here Kilowog reminded Ganthet. That's right, Uraraka, would you be able to take us to this place called UA? We have been monitoring Izuku's movements since he left OA and it appears we need to have a talk with UA and these so-called heroes Gantet asked. Uraraka nodded, yeah, actually Midoriya was going to do the same thing tomorrow but now. I'm going. A voice was heard from the hall. Everyone turned to find Izuku standing there. Midoriya, are you sure, after what happened, you need to take some time off Uraraka was cut off by Izuku. I'll be fine Uraraka he gave her a smile and she didn't like that. But. She tried to voice her concern but Izuku cut her off. I'm fine, he snapped at her. I'm sorry. She grabbed his hand, it's alright, look if you really want to this then fine, I won't stop you. He nodded, so what's the plan? We just show up at UA. That's the plan, unless you have a better one. Kilowog said. Wait everyone turned to Uraraka. I have an idea. The next day. No one else was on campus except for the teachers, so what do we know about the villains, asked Izawa. Not much, only that they call themselves the League of Villains Nizu a small bear slash mouse looking creature said going over the report. What about the Green Lantern? All Might said. Nothing yet, however there was a sighting yesterday said Naomesa, the police detective. I still can't believe he killed that thing. Honestly I think it was a good thing that he did, Izawa said over the phone since he was still in the hospital. You can't be serious said Midnight the 18 plus hero. I'm always serious, if he didn't kill that thing then it would have killed everyone in the USJ he said as recovery girl wrapped him in some fresh bandages. Even so, there are other ways he could have dealt with the threat All Might said punching the desk. Regardless there is a warrant for the lantern's arrest in place, any and all heroes are to engage him on site Naomesa said. Suddenly the alarms in the school began to sound, what's going on, Nizu, asked present Mike. A screen appeared in the middle of the table, showing inside the quad area. It appears someone is on the campus, oh what's this it seems one of your students All Might and she accompanied by someone you've been looking for. Standing up, All Might looked at the screen and it showed Uraraka with Izuku by her side. 
Everyone follow me. All Might took off to confront Green Lantern. In the quad area Eureka and Izuku looked around, so do you think he's going to show up? Izuku asked. Eureka nodded, he will suddenly something hit the ground hard kicking up dust and debris. Speak of the devil. Green Lantern. You are under arrest. All Might said pointing at Izuku. Look, I'm not here to fight, I just want to talk, Izuku said, putting up his hands. There is nothing to talk about. You murdered and you were going to murder again, I have to stop you right here, right now. All Might jumped at Izuku. But Izuku isn't playing any games, he quickly fired off a blast of willpower knocking back All Might. He slid on the floor until he came to a complete stop a few meters away, Izuku quickly floated above him and pointed his ring at him. I said I'm here to talk, back at the USJ I held back against you out of respect. Don't make me show you what I can do, I'm really not in the mood to play games he said as the ring began to glow. All Might start up looking at the ring's glow, that's enough young man a voice said a few feet away, Izuku looked up to see Nizu walking towards him with the detective and other teacher behind him. You said you had something you wished to discuss. Yes, I'm here to talk about what happened and what he's responsible for. The people he let die he said motioning to All Might. Those are some serious accusations, why don't you let him go and we can discuss this. Nizu said, trying to compromise. What guarantee do I have that you won't just attack me like he did? Izuku said looking back at Nizu. All Might, do you promise not to attack him until we hear him out? Nizu asked the fallen hero. Very well, as long as he doesn't do anything to the school I won't do anything All Might said in a defeated tone. Your word means nothing. That's when Eureka stepped up, GL, trust me when I say he won't do anything, you do trust me right? Izuku turned to her, yeah I do Izuku let the glow of the ring disappear. Fine I'll trust your word Eureka Izuku made his way to Eureka letting All Might go. Nizu and the teacher noticed the shift of tone when GL was speaking to Eureka, very well let's go inside. Wait, I never said I was alone this had the other puzzled. You can come out now, he said, talking to his ring. Suddenly Kilowog and Ganthet appeared in front of Izuku, hello, my name is Ganthet guardian of the universe. We have much to discuss he said, talking to Nizu. After everyone one Ganthet explained who he was and who were the Green Lanterns. So let me get this straight, he's part of an intergalactic police force that goes around helping people on other planets, with weapons that run on willpower, and seem to have no limit to their power. All Might said. In a basic sense, yes, Ganthet said, taking a sip of tea Nizu had offered them. Oh this some good tea. To think aliens exist, Nizu said, falling back on his chair. Well believe it, you're looking at one right now Kilowog motioned to himself. So you see a green lantern is far above your rules and we want you to leave him alone especially now that there is a yellow lantern on your planet Ganthet said putting down his tea. Nanomasa wrote everything down on his notepad, that's going to be difficult, he has to follow our rules that means no killing. No, I won't follow your rules, too many innocent people already died because you stopped me from killing Shigaraki Izuku said slamming his hand onto the desk. You said All Might was responsible for the deaths of some people, care to explain, said Nizu. Do you know of the orphanage that was on the outskirts of the city? Nizu nodded. The people there were taking care of me, they were like my family. But Shigaraki found them and killed them Izuku clenched his hands. He killed every single one of them, all because he stopped me. The room fell silent as Izuku grinned at his teeth, Eureka went over and hugged him from behind trying to comfort him. The actions you took against the lantern resulted in their deaths, all might. You claim to be the symbol of peace but you fail to do what needs to be done to keep this world safe Ganthet said speaking up. Here on earth we believe that everyone deserves a second chance, even villains said Nizu. And what if they don't change? Can you live knowing that they killed more people because you let them free? Ganthet retorted. Nizu was about to speak but stop the words wouldn't come out, as I thought, I am here not to ask you to stop, I'm telling you to stop. Get in his way again and you will all face our judgment he said as Izuku, Kilowog and Eureka began to get up to leave. And what about you young Eureka? Do you believe I made the right choice? All Might said stopping them. Eureka back at All Might, what I believe doesn't matter, what does is that I want to help, no to save people. Take one life to save countless others. I don't know, maybe I'll find the answer someday. Right now he needs my help and I intend to help him, I'll see you all in class and with that she walked away from the meeting. So what do we do, asked Midnight. The police chief will not be happy about this but I think we should leave him alone Neomesa said looking down at his notes. All Might didn't like that, are you crazy? We can't allow him to continue this. I won't allow it. Hmm, maybe there is something we here at UA can do. He wants to be a hero, yes. Then why don't we offer him a spot here at UA, 
as a sort of temporary position, as a work-study kind of thing. That way we can monitor his movement, that is if he accepts Nizu offered. I still don't like it, but it's a temporary solution. I'll get in contact with him All Might said getting up from his seat. No said the voice of Izawa over the phone. He blames you for the deaths of his loved ones, once I'm good enough to walk I'll meet him. Nizu sighed, very well, but you will heal first. Izuka was taken back to Eurika's apartment, they talked about the Green Lanterns and told Eurika how Izuka got this power. Kilowog even told Izuka some tips on how to deal with the Yellow Lanterns. It was now night time and time for Ganthet and Kilowog to leave so can we leave him in your care, asked Ganthet. Yes, I promise you I will take care of him, Eurika said smiling. Good, we'd hate if something bad happened to the twerp, Kilowog said, messing with Izuka's hair. This caused Izuka to smile slightly, thank you for worrying about me. Of course, now if you have problems with the heroes again contact me and I will come down here again. Remember Izuku if a yellow lantern appeared then that means the others will follow Izuku nodded. Oh and one more thing, Izuku, don't hold in your emotions they will only cause you further pain. Izuku and Yuriko watched as they took off into the sky leaving the two on the balcony, they waved goodbye as they flew higher into the sky and disappear from view. The pair made their way inside, as soon Yuriko stepped inside she was immediately hugged by Izuku. This caught her by surprise at first but then she heard the sound of him crying. Yuriko hugged him back. It's okay Midoriya I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. Unknown bar. Shigaraki made it back to his hideout, walking inside he found Kurojiri cleaning cups, oh Shigaraki you're back, did you do it? Did you kill the lantern? No, I was about to when some of his friends showed up and stopped me. Now Sinestro said he would come back but I don't know when Shigaraki sighed. Whatever I'm going to rest for a bit, do not disturb me. Wait Shigaraki, there is actually something waiting for you in your room. I don't know what it is but it's covered in a yellow glow Shigariki's eyes went wide. Going to his room Shigariki found a yellow construct box on his bed, going to it he opened it and inside it had a yellow lantern battery. Shigariki smiled, perfect, with this ring I can help master achieve his goal. Outside of UA. All was quiet, everyone had already gotten home for the day. The outline of something was seen walking along the walls of the school due to there being no lights. You couldn't see what it was but all you saw was the glow of yellow eyes was seen. However these were not the eyes of a person but rather a cat, as it walked out of the shadow a red suit covered its blue fur. Meow finally walking completely out of the shadow. The glow of a red power ring was seen on its tail. It has now been a couple of days since Izuku had lost everything. Just as she promised Gant that she was taking care of Izuku. While she went to school, Izuku would go around the city part rolling. She could tell he was hurting, she could catch a glimpse of him on the balcony staring in the direction of the orphanage. The teachers at UA had a lot of questions for Yurika when she went back to school. The main question being, did she know who the Green Lantern is? She always tried to not answer questions, but this only made the teachers especially All Might mad. They even threatened her with disciplinary action but she would just respond, you can expel me but that wouldn't get you answers you're looking for now would it? Very well Yurika, well if you can at least get in contact with him we much appreciate it Nisa said the last time he saw her. And that's what he said. He's been asking me for the past week to get into contact with you Yurika said, taking a bit of her dinner, Izuka prepared a simple rice and grilled fish dish. Hmm, maybe I should go, just to see what he wants, Izuka said, sitting down to eat. Yeah, you don't think this is a trap do you? Yurika asked with worry. Izuka shook his head, no, I don't think so. He's not dumb enough to do anything, all might on the other hand is another question. Regardless, I'll go with you just in case they think of trying something she said. Izuku smiled. All right, I'll show up at the school around lunchtime. For now let's finish this food up, it's getting cold Yurika nodded. Suddenly there was a knock at the door, you expecting a delivery Yurika? Izuku asked. No, I haven't ordered anything the knocking got louder and harder. Izuku got up and grabbed his ring that was on the table, slipping it on his uniform formed around him, be careful he said as she went to open the door. As soon as she opened the door a loud voice was heard, Okako, Seeing who it was Yurika slammed the door. Who is it? An enemy. Izuku said on guard. And no it's my dad. She said panicked. Oh is that s all Izuku said putting down his guard. You don't get it, he doesn't know you are here. I never told him and if he finds out, he'll make me move back with him. Not to mention what he will do to you. Yurika muttered. That's when it began to click, oh sh asterisk t you're right, what do I do? Okako why did you close the door? It's your dad let me in. Wait, there better not be a boy in there. Mr. Eurika said banging on the door. Eurika began to play every scenario in her mind. Go hide in my room. 
All right Izuka quickly took off the ring and ran into her room and hid under the bed. Finally opening the door Yurika was greeted by her father, Hey dad she said smiling. Okako, why did you close the door on your dad, he said pretending to cry. Yurika laughed, sorry I needed to, change. Yeah that's it. Oh are you sure because I think I heard another voice in here. Mr. Yurika was a tall man, six feet tall at least and full of muscle. A drop of sweat dropped from Yurika's forehead, and no of course not she played with her hair nervously. Mr. Yurika eyed her, well alright then, so are you going let me in. Oh right, come on in dad I was just eating some diner she said inviting him in. As Mr. Yurika walked in and noticed two plates of food, wow you a must have you starving huh, two plates of food. Yurika freaked out for a bit, oh oh yeah the training is pretty intense so I need the extra food. Makes sense he sat down at the table. So Okako, how have you been? I heard what happened at the USJ. I would have come sooner but work had he tied up the last couple of days. Yurika heard the sadness in his voice, Dad, it's alright. I know you're busy working, it's the only reason why I'm going to UA, so don't you dare feel bad. Mr. Yurika smiled, just like your mother, always had a way with words. Yeah, I miss her every day you know, said Yurika, looking down at the plate of food. So do I Okako, so do I. But I still believe she's out there somewhere. Anyway, how's school, I want to hear everything, he said with enthusiasm. Yurika proceeded to talk to her father about school, her classes, friends, the teachers, basically everything. After a few hours it was now about 11 p.m. and time for her dad to leave, well Okako, sorry I couldn't stay for more time. I just wanted to make sure you were all right. It's fine dad, you have work in the morning so go on or you're going to miss the last train she said standing at the door. Well all right then don't forget to call once in a while and with that Mr. Yurika left, Yurika waved him goodbye and closed the door. As soon as she did, she let out the greatest sigh of relief. Oh god that was close. You're telling me, Izuku said, appearing from the room. I don't even want to begin to imagine what your dad would have done to me. Well at least he's gone now said Yurika. Yeah, well I got to patrol, you should get some sleep. Tomorrow I'll go to your school around lunchtime to figure out what Nizu wants Izuku slipped on the ring once again. Sounds like a plan, oh, and be careful alright Izuku nodded as he opened the door to the balcony and took off into the sky. As Izuku flew into the night he thought back to when he was little growing up in the orphanage, his time playing with the twins, and talking to Maria. She was like the mother he never had and to lose her in that manner broke him. Suddenly a loud boom was heard snapping Izuku back to reality, looking over he saw that the rails had been blown up. These rails in particular were elevated over a major road and the train was heading straight for the hole, oh no Izuka quickly flew towards the broken rail. The train was already trying to slow down but it wouldn't make it in time, thinking fast Izuka created green construct pillows in front of the train. One after the other the train crashed into them slowing it down, just a few inches away from the hole Izuka stopped the train. He created a slide to let the people off the train and towards the ground. Izuka flew down to check on everyone, anyone hurt, he asked. And no I think we are all right, thank you Green Lantern a man said. Izuku nodded, no problem walking amongst the passengers he noticed a father and mother hugging their son who was no older than five years old. Are you all right sweetie, his mother asked. Why yeah mom I'm all right he said, hugging her back. That's when the father noticed Izuku, thank you, my family would have died if you hadn't showed up. Izuku smiled, I'm just glad to help, hey kid the little kid looked at Izuku. Remember to love your parents all right you never know. He stopped, thinking back to Maria how she played with him when he was a little kid. Anyway be careful alright. Izuku walked away from the family and went off to the side, he decided to wait until the paramedic showed up to check on everyone. That's when someone came up behind him, you alright kid. Turning around Izuku found a man about six feet tall, with brown eyes looking at him. Hey, yeah, I'm alright. Don't like it, I've seen that look before the man said. You're hurting. I, I lost some people I considered my family recently and seeing them brought back some memories Izuku said, he didn't know why he just said this to a stranger but the aura around felt familiar. I see, I figured it was something like that. I'm sorry for your loss kid, I know that look well because my daughter had the same one when she lost her mother, my wife the man said placing a hand on his shoulder. Thank you sir, Izuku said, wiping a tear away. What you did today was simply amazing. I know whoever you lost is very proud of you the man said smiling. Thank you MR, actually I never caught your name, said Izuku. Kazuya Okako he said with his hand out. Izuku's eyes went wide, I it couldn't be right. Strange coincidence, excuse me Mr. Yurika but you wouldn't happen be related to someone named Okako Yurika. Yes actually she's my daughter. 
How do you know here? He asked, tightening his grip on Izuku's hand. A actually she's a good friend of mine, I actually saved her a while ago, Izuku explained. Oh is that right? Well I should be thanking you, my little girl can be quite the handful. Well I know you're a vigilante but still you're my hero. Izuku's heart tightened. Then the sound of sirens was heard, oh I guess that's your cue to leave, stay safe kid. Izuku nodded and took off into the sky once again, he looks intimidating but he's a good man and a good father. The next day. Yurika was with her friend Itza and Tsu eating lunch talking about, class was tough wasn't it, Ribbit Tsu said taking a bit of her food. You got that right I guess that's all part of being a hero said Yurika. A true hero should be smart and powerful. Itza said, fixing his glasses. Yeah sure but what about that vigilante, Green Lantern said Tsu. The one who saved us at the USJ, while I don't agree with his methods I do believe he is trying to do some good Itza said defending GL. Right. Honestly he looks so cool Eurorika said excitedly that people were accepting him. I just wish we can thank him for saving us. You know Okako I find it weird that he appeared and saved you first. And if I remember, it looked like you two seemed to have some sort of relationship. Tsu said, raising an eyebrow. Eurorika choked on her food, W what no way. Now that you mention it, I do recall a moment when the lantern was speaking to you said Itza, this only caused Eurorika to blush. But before they could ask her any more questions a familiar alarm was heard signaling an intruder, however this time the students did not panic but were surprised to see Green Lantern floated outside the cafeteria. Speak of the devil Tsu commented looking at Izuku. Izuku landed outside the cafeteria to which he was greeted by All Might and Izawa, glad to see our message reached you Izawa said looking at the team. I figured I might as well come. I could feel the heroes looking at me every time I went out on patrol, Izuku responded. Regardless we are happy you are here All Might said with his hand out. Izuku looked at his hand and chose to walk by him ignoring him, let's get this over with, I'll listen to what Nizu has to say but no promises after that he'd still haven't forgiven All Might and honestly maybe never will. Izuku was taken through the cafeteria, he could hear the students muttering wondering why he was here. Looking around Izuku spotted Yurika through the crowd and smiled and Tsu caught a small exchange. However there was one student in particular who was staring at Izuku, he looks like someone I knew Bakugo thought as he followed Izuku with his eyes. Principal Nizu's office. Izuku was ushered into the office, opening the door he noticed Nizu sitting on his desk, AHH Green Lantern so glad you can come, please have a seat. Izuku obliged him and sat down, T. Nizu asked. Sure, thank you he said as Nizu put a cup down in front of him. Izuku took a sip, it's good. Glad you liked it, now let's get down to business. Green Lantern we'd like you to work for us. Izuku was taken back by this, excuse me what? I'd like you to help us with the upcoming sports festival, said Nizu. I is this some sort of trick? Izuku trying to find an alternative motive. No tricks, to be honest with you we couldn't get enough heroes to help guard this event, and well since you have gained the trust of the people I saw it fitting that you could help our students. You know, improve your image Nizu said, hopping off of his chair. Hmm do you think this will help get some of the heroes off my back? Izuku asked. I believe so, what do you think Eraserhead? Nizu said looking at Izawa. Yes I do believe this could help you. I for one am thankful you saved me and my class, yes your actions were different but it resulted in me and everyone in my class walking out alive Izawa said wrapped in bandages. All might remain silent but he didn't have to say anything Izuka knew what he was thinking, yet I'm still not convinced. How about we sweeten the deal, we will pay you for your services Nizu said holding up a finger. Izuka paused, pay me? A vigilante? You serious? Of course Nizu said smiling. Um, I could repair her back for all she's done for me Izuku didn't realize he just said that out loud. Nizu, All Might, and Izawa all heard it, oh there's someone you owe a lot to. Nizu asked. Oh did I say that out loud? Sorry but yes I owe this person a lot, if it wasn't for this person I'd probably be sleeping on the streets now Izuku said with gratitude. I see, then let us help you. Do this job and maybe we can work something out with the police, get them off your back or at the very least get the arrest warrant off you. The Air Force would be another thing but baby steps said Izawa. Wait Air Force. Izuku thought about it, very well I'll help you. So when is the sports festival? Nizu smiled, good, the festival is in a week. We would like you to provide aerial support, we recently had an incident as you know and we need to show that we can still protect our students. That's simple enough, alright then I'll see you all in one week's time Izuku said getting up from the chair. Perfect, all might and eraser head will escort you out Izuku nodded. The two heroes began to walk Izuku out of the office, as they walked down the hall, class 1A was making their way back to class when they noticed him, oh hey it's the green guy, 
a girl with pink skin said her name was Mina. You're right it's the guy who saved us at the USJ, but what's he doing here, asked a red-haired guy, Kiri's Hima. Great, this was what I tried to avoid, Izawa said, sighing. The class all crowded around Izaku. All right everyone back off let the poor guy breath Izawa said pushing his class away. As you know this is Green Lantern, the one who saved us at the USJ. That's when a tall black-haired girl stepped up, my name is Momo Yeyorozu, as class 1A's president I would like to thank you for saving us she said bowing. Please I just did what was right that's all, no need to thank me Izuku said nervously. Spoken like a true hero, if only you'd join the hero program here at UA All Might said with his signature smile. Well it's nice meeting you, I'll see you all at the sports festival Izuku said. You're going to be there, they all yelled out. Why yet I won't participate but I will be there as a bodyguard so to speak Izuku said rubbing the back of his head. That's when Bakugo saw it, that little gesture it's just like Deku's, could it be? Wow really a vigilante as a bodyguard, said Tsu. Well I hope you protect my body cutie Mina said, teasing the poor boy. Izuku blushed while Eurika's eye twitched, I will do my best, he said blushing. Alright everyone head to class, I'll be there in a second Izuku ordered his class. They did as they were told as they went to class. Izuku was taken outside. So I'll see you all in one week time then. Don't be late, Izawa said. I won't just as he was about to leave his ring began to glow. Warning ring bearer nearby Izuku's eyes went wide, was there a ring bearer here at UA? Izuku looked around but found nothing. Hey what's wrong, said All Might. Izuku flew into the air and hovered there for a second, ring find the ring bearer. Energy signature no longer detected, however emotional residue identified. Rage. A red lantern Izuku floated down and turned to the two heroes. Tell Nizu to invite more heroes, there is another ring wearer near the school. Another ring wearer? You mean another yellow lantern? Izawa asked. Izuku shook his head, no this one is a red lantern, my power is fueled by my willpower, the yellow lanterns are fueled by fear, and this red lantern is fueled by rage. Their anger makes them stronger, and in the right hands they can overpower me Izuku said looking down at his ring. Another? This isn't good. We should inform Nizu quick said All Might. Fortunately it looks like they are gone but they could come back so be on alert said Izuku. If it came down to it wouldn't it be better if you fight him? I mean what could we do against them, said Izawa. Izuku thought about it, don't worry one of your students can contact me. For now I'm needed somewhere else. The two heroes nodded and with that Izuku took off into the sky towards a factory fire. He's a vigilante but yet he's not a bad guy Izawa said, as they were about to leave something brushed up against his leg. Looking down he noticed a little blue cat, hey there little guy he reached down and picked it up. It purred in his arms, aren't you sweet, do you have a name, looking at its red collar it read Dex Star. So your name is Dex Star, well you're in luck, you are going to be our official class 1A mascot Izawa said walking towards Nizu's office. Meow Dex Star gave a small evil smile as he was getting taken into the school. A few hours later Eureka's apartment. Izuka was sitting down on the kitchen chair writing in his notebook, so are you actually going to be at the sports festival? Eureka asked as she sat on the couch wearing track shorts and a black muscle shirt. Izuka tried to look away but it was hard keeping up a conversation without blushing like an idiot. Yeah they said it will help me ease tensions with the police, plus they are paying me. Really they must be desperate to keep us safe after what happened, Eureka said, drying off her hair. I guess so, hey Eureka I want you to be careful these couple of days. Earlier I detected the presence of another ring and this one is not friendly to say the least Izuku said looking at her in the eyes. Eureka stopped drying her hair when she noticed his serious look, I see, alright I promise you I'll be careful. But I don't have to worry that much when I have the world's best bodyguard she smiled. Izuku blushed, H hey no teasing me. Oh but it's fine for the other girls in my class to tease you, hum Eureka said in a playful manner. And no, they just caught me off guard, that's all he said, blushing even harder than before. Oh really I saw the way you looked at Mina, I can't blame you though she is pretty enough Eureka said getting up and walking towards Izuku. Izuku turned to find Eureka blending over, her face was just a few inches away, maybe if you're lucky, you'll be able to see us in our hero uniforms. Last time you didn't get a good look she continued to talk but Izuku was not all there. From his angel Izuku could look down her shirt, wwww wow, wait is he and not wearing a bra, his mind was racing, his face turned crimson as he stared down her shirt. Hey. She yelled, snapping him back to reality. Did you hear anything I said? She looked at him with her arms crossed. Izuku got up from the chair and stood up straight, why yes. Of course, he said almost like a soldier. Why are you yelling? That's when she remembered what she was wearing. She quickly threw her arms over her breasts, P 
he pervert, you were staring weren't you she said blushing. Izuka shook his head, and no. He looked at Yurika to find her pouting. Okay, and maybe I was, sorry. Are you really sorry, she asked, Izuka quickly nodded. Well alright then, you are forgiven. Yurika turned to go to her room to change. You know you liked it and with that Yurika closed the door to her room. Izuka stood there, his face still red, I should go on patrol he grabbed his ring and flew off into the night. It was now around 3 a.m. and he was tired, man I should go back, Yurika is probably asleep as he turned to leave a red construct cat appeared slashing at him with its claws across the chest. What the, turning around he saw two more cats flying at him. Thinking fast he created a shield blocking the first cat but the other two had time to react. They went around slashing at his sides, damn it, alright enough of this. Time to send these cats back to the pound. Waiting for them to get close Izuka created a ball around him that had spikes, the construct cats were going too fast to stop. They crashed into the spikes of his green construct and disappeared in a red smoke, constructs made of red light, they are here. Ring scan for red lanterns. His ring glowed green as it scanned the area around him, no red lanterns detected. A sneak attack. No, they would have attacked by now. That must mean this was a test, to gauge my strength or to see my weaknesses. Whoever they are they are smart Izuka then felt his side burn, looking down he noticed blood dripping from the slashes the cats gave him. Man that hurt, since they're not here I should head back and patch myself up Izuka said flying back to Yurika's apartment. Little did he know that a small blue cat was staring at him from afar, meow or to translate, soon. Ismald, homeworld of the Red Lanterns. Flying over a vast red lake a woman with bone wings, blue skin, and a red lantern symbol on her chest was looking for someone, there he is. She landed on a small island in the middle of the blood lake, Sir Dex Star has reported he made contact with the green lantern on earth. Good the alien stood tall 6 feet 7 inches, his eyes yellow in color, his skin as red as the blood lake itself, and his teeth razor sharp. What did he say? Atrocitus said turning around. There are two good candidates, said Blees. Only two. Atrocitus asked puzzled. He said these two just need a push to become red lanterns, also when they become red lanterns they will become the strongest red lanterns we've ever seen Blees said smiling. Really? Very interesting. All right, I will head to Earth and help Dex Star give them a push. However, there is still the other matter. Tell Dex Star I will see him in one week time. Blees nodded and took off into the sky. Earth never ceases to amaze me. The week went by fast and today was the day. The sports festival was about to start. Eureka had to leave early to get ready. Izuka wished her luck and said he would be there before the competition started. Charging his ring, Izuka flew towards UA, but he stopped by a flower shop and bought a single rose. He flew towards the orphanage and placed the rose where the door would have been. After paying his respects he flew towards Yue, Izuku landed at the entrance gates. There he was met by Nizu and Izawa. Good to see you here GL Nizu said. Well I did say I'd be here so here I am Izuku said as the green glow disappeared around him. Good, here take this, Izawa handed him an earpiece. We will use this to get in touch, make sure to always have it on you. Izuku nodded as he put the earpiece on, alright so where do I go? The stadium, you will provide aerial support. If you see anything you can tell us or you can deal with it yourself Nizu explained. Simple enough, I doubt anyone would be dumb enough to attack you guys again when I'm around Izuku said as the glow around him reappeared. Well if that's all, I'll be above the stadium. Izuku took off towards the stadium, looking down he noticed it was packed full of spectators, wow this a lot more people than I expected he said landing on the roof. Welcome everyone to UA's annual sports festival. The crowd went wild, looking down. Izuku saw the pro hero Midnight step up to a podium in the middle of the field. I know you are all excited to start so let's get ready to rumble. Introducing the one, the only, Class 1A hero course students. From the tunnel out walked Class 1A, Izuku instantly found Yurika with her brown hair, but there were two other students that caught his eye. A white and red haired boy and someone he thought he wouldn't see again, Kakan. And now Class 1B. Followed by everyone else. Midnight said as the rest of the classes walked out of the tunnel. Wow, they really don't care about the other classes do they? Izuku said feeling sorry for the other classes. Alright then let's kick this off the sports festival with, the obstacle race. The first 42 people to cross the finish line moves on to the next round, but be careful this isn't your run of the mill obstacle course. The students all lined up at the starting line, ready? Go. Izuku watched as the students all ran, some used their quirks to jump ahead of the pack. This included Yurika who used her quirk on herself to float over the crowd. However before he could enjoy the rest he got a message over his comms, Green Lantern, I know the sports festival is exciting to watch but please try to remember you have a job to do it was Nizu. S sorry, 
you're right I should take this more seriously. Izuka was relieved that he was so high up so no one saw the embarrassed blush. Nisa chuckled, it is quite all right, going by your appearance you looked no older than the students below you. So it is normal for you to enjoy the festival. Why yeah I always heard this was an amazing place, and now that I'm seeing it for the first time it's even better than I thought it would be. Izuka said smiling. That's good and don't worry you'll have your chance to enjoy it soon, over and out Izuka was surprised but thanked Nizu. He's not a bad person, well dog slash mouse slash bear looking thing, said Izuku, suddenly he heard a loud buzzer followed by the crowd roaring. Looking down he noticed people were crossing the finish line, let's see first place went to Shoto Todoroki, I wonder what place Yurika can in. Going down the list he saw her name, 15th place not bad, out of 42. Well done everyone. We now have our top 42 that will be moving on into the next round, said Midnight cracking her whip. Those of you who didn't make it, please make your way to the bleachers. Alright let's move on to the next event, Cavalry Battle. The crowd erupted in cheer. Each student will be given points based on their performance on the obstacle race. The higher you place the higher the points, each team must have a minimum of two people and a max of four. But here is the kicker, our first place winner will be worth one million points, every student immediately looked at Todoroki, he on the other hand didn't really care. You have 10 minutes to make a team with whoever you like. Izuka watched as the students scrambled to form a team. And, teams will be switched around a bit obviously without Izuku. GL do you hear me? Nizu said over the comms. Yeah, I hear you Izuka responded. There seems to be a disturbance outside the stadium, in the food stands. Do you mind checking it out? I'm sure it's nothing just to be safe Nizu asked. Sure. I was getting tired of standing up here anyway Izuku took off towards the stands. As he looked around for what he called for he saw the pro heroes Mount Landy, Death Arms and Kamui Woods chasing after someone. Why aren't they using their quirks, then he saw the people around them. Pedestrians, well in that case Izuku swapped down. Come on Woods. Can't you use your tree branches to get him? Mount Lady said, running after the guy. Not with his many people, and there are no trees to swing around so we have to stick to the ground for now Kamui would said running beside her. The villain was about to reach the exit gates when from the ground a green ball and chain appeared, wrapping around the villain's leg tripping him up. What the, he said as he fell to the ground, dropping the purse he stole. Well well what do we have here? Izuku said landing left to the villain and picking up the purse. The villain looked up to find Izuku, why you, we're that vigilante. What are you doing here at UA, he said scared. Oh me? I'm actually working for the school right now said Izuku. The villain's eyes went wide, w what now way? You're a full-fledged hero now. No, he's still a vigilante. But it's true what he says he is working for the school right now Kamui would said catching his breath. Whoa I heard Nizu said something about him but I just thought he was kidding Mount Lady said looking at Izuku. And he's not that bad looking too. Izuku blushed, w well if that's everything I'm going back. Here take the purse he threw the purse at death arms and quickly jumped into the air and flew off. Aw too bad, maybe next time Mount Lady said as her two colleagues stared at her with a disappointed look. Nizu, the situation has been handled Izuku said over the comms. Ahh good work lantern. Head back to your post, the one on one fights are about to begin. I get the feeling you want to watch these Nizu said, Izuku couldn't help but notice his tone of voice. He made his way back to the top of the stadium just in time to hear the rules, alright this will be the final event. This event would be one on one fights, students win by either knockout, submission, or ring out. No one will interfere with the fight, not even the teachers so give it your best shot Midnight said, cracking her whip. Now let's see who is fighting who. She pointed to a billboard that had the names of those who passed the cavalry battle, to Izuku's delight Yuriko was on that list. However his delight would quickly change to worry when he saw who he would be fighting, oh no she's fighting Kakan he shook his head. No she can do this, I know she can. Her fight was the last one for the first one so Izuku waited and watched the others fight, the duo colored hair kid was strong, the kid with glasses got played like an idiot, the two muscle heads was a decent fight too bad it ended in an arm wrestling match, and the kid with indigo hair, he was interesting. Now it was time for Yurika's fight, Izuka watched as the two fighters stepped up to ring. Hey round face, I got a question, Bakugo said. What, she replied. You know who the Green Lantern is don't you? Bakugo said stretching. Yurika froze up, so you do know, tell me, tell me who he is. I may know who he is but why does that matter? Yurika said ready for the fight. Bakugo sighed, alright then I'll just have to beat it out of you. Ready. Begin. Midnight yelled. Yurika rushed right in trying to catch Bakugo off guard but he simply raised his hands and fired off an explosion pushing her back. I have to find the opening, 
she said running back to him her gym uniform slightly burned. She one again rushed at him, doing the same thing won't work round face, he fired off an explosion kicking up a smoke screen. Seeing her change Eurika went for it, Bakugo saw something move in the smoke and fired another blast. Nice try. However he hit nothing, what? Eurika had thrown her gym jacket as a distraction has helped her get around Bakugo. All I have to do is touch him and I win. Now behind him she reached out to try to activate her quirk but Bakugo while caught off guard would quickly turn around with the help of his explosion and pushed her away. Eurika rolled on the ground before coming to a stop a few inches away from the edge of the ring, just as I thought, you really are strong she said, whipping a bit of blood from her face. So are you going to tell me who he is? Bakugo said, thinking he already won. Eurika scoffed, no. Bakugo started to get frustrated as he saw her run at him again, not this again. He was about to fire an explosion but stopped when Eurika smiled, make you look. Izuku smiled, I see so that's what she had planned just a few feet in front of him tons of rock and debris floated waiting to be dropped. Unfortunately it would have worked on anyone else but Kakan. Release, she yelled. Bakugo looked around but saw nothing. What the heck did you do, he asked, that's when it understood what was going on. Sneaky trick but it won't work on me, he said pointing both hands towards the falling debris. In one massive explosion he managed to destroy all the falling rocks and managed to push Eureka away from him. Letting out a sigh Bakugo but his hands down, that was close I'll give you that. Eureka laid on the floor, and not yet I'm not finished yet, she said pushing herself up. Then you can fall like the rest of them, using his explosions to get in close he pointed his hands right her and fired at point blank rage. Eureka yelled out in pain as she was pushed back hitting the floor hard, Eureka. Izuku yelled out from the top of the stadium. Bakugo then walked towards her, so are you going to tell me who he is? And never she said in pain. Without warning Bakugo fired off an explosion not at her but at the ground around her, this caused her to fly into the air and head out the ring but Bakugo wasn't finished. With his explosions he got next to her and shot her back towards the ground, preventing her from being knocked out of the ring. Tell me, he yelled. And no, she grunted as she slowly began to get up. To the horror of the crowd Bakugo formed a circle with one hand and put it over his open palm and fired off smaller explosions in rapid succession. Each one hitting Eureka throughout her body burning her, all she could do was take the explosions. Yes, that's it, fall into your anger, a voice said inside of Bakugo's mind. Izuku watched as the person that helped him so much was being tortured. T that's enough. If the teachers won't do anything, then I will, he said as his ring began to glow. But before he could fly in there and stop the fight Niza came over the comms, stop GL you can't interfere. What? Why not? She's being tortured, he yelled back. That's when he Eureka yelled again, looking down he saw her fall to her knees. That's it I'm ending this. Go down there and we will be forced to take action against you. Niza threatened Izuku. I'd like to see you try, he said, grabbing the earpiece and smashing into his hands. Eureka. Bakugo continued to fire, come on tell me, it almost seemed that he was enjoying this. That's when Izuku appeared Bakugo tried to stop but couldn't. One last explosion made its way towards Izuku hitting him in the face what the? That's enough. You already won, a voice was heard through the smoke caused by the explosions. There appeared Izuku, his mask half torn off from the explosion he took from Bakugo. You. How dare you get in my way? Bakugo growled. I'll make you pay. Yes. Kill him. Kill the Green Lantern. Bakugo rocketed towards him but Izuku raised his ring and created a large construct box around Bakugo trapping him. Shut up. Izuku turned to the injured Eureka, hey are you alright, he asked in a calming voice. G Green Lantern, her vision was blurred but she could still see the emerald glow. H he's too strong. I know but you did your best, it was a great fight he said smiling. That smile was the last thing she saw before passing out, Izuku picked her up bridal style and began to walk towards the tunnel. I it seems Eureka is unable to fight, Bakugo one midnight said, surprised that Green Lantern had intervened like that. Bakugo continued to blast the green construct box but couldn't break out of it, he was stuck there until Izuku decided to let him out. As she was walking towards the tunnel Izuku was stopped by Izawa and All Might, out of my way, she needs help Izuku said, staring at the two heroes. All Might saw the look in his eyes, this could get ugly if we piss him off. I'm sure Izawa is thinking the same way the two heroes looked at each other and nodded. Alright come with me, I'll take you to recovery girl. She can heal her up in no time, All Might go see if you can get Bakugo out of that box Izawa instructed. Don't bother Izuku let the construct disappear causing Bakugo to fall to the floor. Why you bastard? Where are you? I'm going to kill you for this. Bakugo yelled out looking for blood. Young Bakugo that's enough, 
Yuan All Might said appearing in front of him. Not until the green guy begs for mercy. He said looking around for the lantern. Bakugo that's enough. All Might said, snapping at him. Unless you want to face punishment I suggest you stop. Bakugo took the hint, tisk, whatever but this is far from over he walked back to the bleachers without another incident. Little did they know a small blue cat watched everything, meow, meow translation. Atrocitus will be pleased. It's only a matter of time before he arrives. Izuka with Eureka in his arms walked down heading towards the nurse's office, Izuka was leading them. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I'm guessing she's the one who you owe a lot to, he said. The question caught Izuku off guard for a second, why yes she is he said blushing. When I saw her getting tortured like that I couldn't just stand there and do nothing. You almost sound like a hero kid, Izuka said. Oh you might want to fix that mask of yours, don't want people to know who you are he said stopping in front of the nurse's office. Oh I didn't even notice Izuka focused and fixed his mask, thanks for that eraser head Izuka walked into the nurse's office. Recovery girl was an old short woman who walked with a cane, her quirk was the power to heal anyone with just a kiss. After recovery girl had kissed Eureka on the arm her injuries instantly began to fade, there you are, she won't wake up for a bit but she's out of any real danger now. Izuka let out a sigh of relief, oh thank goodness. Go on back GL, you still have a job to do don't you? Recovery girl said. Izuku nodded, yeah alright but please tell Nizu to tell me when she wakes up. You have my word son Izuku nodded and left the nurse's office, as he walked down the halls he turned to find a number two hero Endeavor. Izuku tried to walk past him but Endeavor blocked his way, wait a minute Lantern, there's something I wish to discuss with you. What is it? Izuku responded coldly. You, you're no older than my son yet I heard you defeated All Might. I would like you to fight my son said Endeavor. Izuku raised an eyebrow at this, fight your son? Why would I ever do that? Because my Shoto has an obligation to become the number one hero. Endeavor said as his flames burned brighter. Yes he will become number one but he can't do that now if someone like you defeated All Might, let alone a vigilante. Izuku's eyes narrowed, that sounds like your dream, not his. What does he want to do? It doesn't matter what he wants. All he has to do is become the number one hero, that is why he was created for. Endeavor said gloating. Izuku was about to say something but was cut off by someone yelling at, I'm not a tool you can use to push your ambitions on, turning around Izuku was met by a very angry Shoto Todoroki. Endeavor scoffed, enough with your childish tantrums, you'll never become number without using your fire. I rather die than you your power. Just because you failed at becoming number one doesn't mean I have to. Todoroki shot back. Listen brat, you will do as I tell you. Endeavor took a few steps forward but was stopped by GL out of my way brat. Calm down or make you Izuku said, almost challenging the number two hero. Is that right? Well I'd like to see you try Endeavor's flames grew in size. Izuku's ring began to glow green, Endeavor that enough turning around they found Nizu walking alongside him was Izawa. I will not tolerate violence against a student in my school not even if they are your son. Endeavor scoffed, he will learn soon enough that he needs to use my fire and with that Endeavor walked away leaving a very angry Todoroki. Thanks for that Nizu Izuku said breathing a sigh of relief. I was this close to beating some sense into him. No problem, now the next round is about to start. Why don't you make your way back? That includes you too Todoroki Nizu said with a smile on his face. Todoroki said nothing as he walked away but he too heard a voice in his head, you are an angry child, good. Let loose that anger and take your revenge against your father. Give in to your rage. What's his problem? Not even a thank you for sticking up for him. Izuku as he began to walk towards the exit. It was halfway through the semi-finals and Izuku was up in his spot when he looked down to find Yuriko walking back to the bleachers, her arm in a sling and her face with some bandages. She looked up and smiled, Izuku smiled back but he could tell even from far above that smile had some sadness hidden behind it. Looking at the bracket Izuku noticed that both Bakugo and Todoroki had both won their fights and would go against each other in the final round. Oh this should be good, he said as the two fighters entered the ring. Are both fighters ready, asked Midnight, pointing at them both. They both nodded, ready. Begin. The two ran towards each other. This would be a fight of endurance, Todoroki created ice spears and threw them at Bakugo. With the help of his explosion he destroyed them all before they hit, hey half and half. Why don't you use that fire of yours? Bakugo yelled out. Todoroki's eyes went wide, how do you, doesn't matter. I will never use that man's power, he yelled out. This made Bakugo angry, come on. I want to fight you at your best, he yelled using his blasts to close the distance. Use it, raising his hands he fired at point-blank range hitting Todoroki. 
His body was thrown back due to the blast and his gym uniform was burned, thinking fast he created a wall of ice behind him stopping himself from falling off the ring. Why do you want me to use it? Do you have something to prove? I don't know, maybe showing that you're better than the lantern? Well news flash Bakugo, you're not. Stomping on the ground Todoroki created giant ice pillars that appeared from the ground towards Bakugo. Jumping into the air Bakugo tried to dodge in the air with the help of his quirk but there were too many spikes and some slashed at his sides and face drawing blood. With one giant explosion he broke the remaining ice pillars and landed safely on the ground, you actually think he's better than me. No one is better than me. No one. Bakugo said with fury in his eyes. You will only be a sad shadow of your father. Todoroki clenched his fists, you know what, FCK my father, FCK the sports festival, and F asterisk CKU. Tadakroki yelled as his eyes burned his rage. Suddenly a voice was heard throughout the stadium, yes, that's what I like to hear. That's when Izuku's ring began to glow brighter, warning. Warning. Energy signature detected, emotional color red, rage Izuku looked around trying to find them. Damn it. Nizu. Come in, he yelled through the comms. What is it GL? Do you know where that voice came from? Nizu panicked. You need to evacuate the arena now. You need to. But before he could say anything else a red portal opened up in between Bakugo and Todoroki. I see so these are the two Dexstar was talking about, good work from the portal out walked Atrocitus with Dexstar following right behind him both wearing their red lantern uniform. So what do you say? Shall we give them each a ring, he asked Dexstar who jumped on his shoulder. Meow. Good, let's get started shall we? Atrocitus smiled as his hands began to glow red, opening them up two red rings appeared. The two rings floated away and stopped in front of Bakugo and Todoroki, the two boys looked at the rings and reached out to grab them. N-O-O-O. Stop them. Don't let them grab those rings. Izuku yelled out as he created a construct hand arm trying to stop the two. All Might heard his yell and quickly jumped from the upper balcony, boys don't do it. But their words fell to deaf ears, they both grabbed the rings, Katsuki Bakugo slash Shoto Todoroki of Earth, you have great rage in your hearts, welcome to the Red Lantern Corp as soon as they did a blinding red light began to surround them. The crowd were in awe at what they were seeing, Class 1A got up from their seats to get a better look, what the hell? What's going on, asked Kiri's Hima shielding his eyes from the glow. Yurika knew who they were, Red Lanterns. We need to get out of here guys, but before they could move a shockwave of red energy pushed them to the ground. The blast was so strong that it destroyed Izuku's construct and pushed him back, it even sent All Might flying back hitting a concrete wall. It's too late. Todoroki snared as he felt his rage take over him, instead of his normal ice he created blood ice in his left side and crimson red fire on his right side. Todoroki smiled as napalm blood poured down his mouth, he looked towards the bleachers and locked eyes with his father. In the ring there stood Bakugo, his mouth spilling red napalm blood, his normal gym clothes replaced by a red lantern uniform that had the symbol in the middle of his chest, and a red mask covering his face just like Izuku's. He then looked at Izuku and then towards his class, he then found her, Yurika. Bakugo smiled and with a mighty roar then launched himself at her. Yurika had no time to react. The crimson red coming Bakugo was the only thing she saw and by then it was too late he was already right in front of her. Be Bakugo, he said nothing as he raised his fist and created a red construct battle maze. Bringing it down, Yurika put her hand in front of her face and closed her eyes but nothing happened. Opening her eyes slowly she found Izuku had jumped in front of her with a green construct shield. Come on everyone get away from here. He ordered as he struggled to hold back the maze. The class didn't move, they were still in shock, that's when Izuku snapped. Hurry get out of here. Now. This snapped them out of it and they quickly made a run for it, that's when Nizu activated the alarm. Everyone please evacuate the arena. Any heroes engage and subdue the enemy everyone then began to run and scream for the exits, only the heroes remained to stay and fight. Shifting the shield to the left Izuku managed to make the mace hit the ground beside him, seeing his chance Izuku used the shield to hit Bakugo sending him back to the ring. All Might, he yelled out. All Might looked up, go help Endeavor. I'll handle Kabakugo. Whatever you do, don't let them take off that ring. All Might looked towards the bleachers and found Endeavor fighting against a possessed Todoroki, got it. Izuku then landed back on the area where he found Bakugo throwing Nepal blood everywhere, come on Kakan. Get a hold of yourself, he said putting up his hands trying to make him see that he didn't want to fight. Bakugo stared at him the pointed, time to die. Guess we are doing this the hard way. Izuku said as his ring began to glow. The crowds ran for the exits, Bakugo was fighting Izuku, the battle between will and rage was waging on in the skies above the ring. Come on Kakan, get a hold of yourself. Izuku said, 
grabbing Bakugo with a giant green construct hand. Bakugo thrashed around trying to break free from the construct, he growled, and smeared as napalm blood spilled out of his mouth. M must kill, kill green, lantern. Bakugo's body began to emit a bright red light, Izuku supported his ring hand as he felt Bakugo pushing up against the hand. Gritting his teeth Izuku tried to hold on but ultimately with a powerful yell Bakugo exploded out of a green construct hand. Izuku shielded himself from the red light as well as pieces of his construct. Man just how strong is he? Bakugo pointed a finger at Izuku, his hand began to glow red as it fired a beam of red energy at Izuku. Removing his hand Izuku barely had enough time to react to the blast, unfortunately for him the blast pierced his shoulder and went out clean. Gah! Izuku yelled out as he put pressure on the wound. Yes. That's good Katsuki Bakugo, now finish this. Artisida said with a smile on his face. As blood dripped down Izuku's arm he created a green sterile pad and put it on the wound, all right I'm done playing games Kakan, rocketing at Bakugo he punched him hard in the stomach causing him to hunch over. At that moment Izuku grabbed Bakugo by the waist and began to fly up. Within mere seconds there were already in the upper atmosphere, Bakugo finally recovered from the hit and double fist slammed Izuku on the back over and over against each strike sending a wave of red energy flying. I didn't want to see you like this old friend but none of that matters anymore. I'm going to stop you right here, right now. Pulling his arm back Izuku hit Bakugo hard in the head sending him flying higher. You always wanted to be a hero and this is what you became. An agent of rage, pull yourself together Kakan. Izuku said, hitting Bakugo over and over, blood began to flow out of Bakugo's nose. Bakugo growled and finally began to counter attack, he created a giant red construct bat and swung it at Izuku, cracking him across the face. Kill, must kill. Blood spilled from Izuku's lip as he composed himself, man he's strong as he looked up, his eyes widened as he saw what Bakugo was doing. With an evil smile on his face Bakugo pointed both of his hands at Izuku and created the gauntlets but instead of sweat they were filled with napple blood. The sky was bathed in the red color of blood as Bakugo fired his blasts at Izuku engulfing him. Izuku tried to create a shield but it would prove worthless as it shattered as soon as the explosion hit it. Gah! He yelled out at the napple blood, burned his costume and seeped into his skin. As Izuku reeled in pain his eyes began to glow red, W what is this? This rage, it's burning inside of me. Atrocities and Dex Star then appeared next to Bakugo, it seems you have great rage in your heart, Green Lantern. So tell me, what do you hate? Izuku gritted his teeth trying to fight against the rage inside of him, Mia. Yes you're right, it seems he needs more help Atrocitus pointed at Izuku and Dex Star jumped on Izuku and spewed Nepal blood on Izuku. No. I don't want this rage. Izuku yelled out that his body was completely covered in blood. Don't fight it, accept it. So tell me, what do you hate? Atrocitus said, creating a red ring. Tell me. Izuku looked up at Atrocitus, myself. I hate myself the most in this world. They all died and it was all my fault. Atrocitus smiled, good, then joined the Red Lantern Corps, the ring left his hand and began to flow towards Izuku. The red ring was calling to him, no rather commanding him to raise his hand. Izuku tried to fight it by closing his fist but the ring forced his hand open. The ring then floated above his finger, no. I can't. Closing his eyes Izuku focused on the memories of Maria and the twins. Then came the memories of that day, the day he failed them, the day he couldn't save them, the day let them die. Maria, I'm so sorry the ring flew onto his finger further. Pictures of the dead twins haunted his mind, then came the final moments where he held Maria in his arms as she died. Become a red lantern. Artisidas yelled out as the ring began to slip on. Izuku was engulfed in a red light as the ring fully slipped on his finger, Atrocitus smiled as he saw the ring begin to consume Izuku but his happiness quickly turned to shock when a green light began to shine through the red. Impossible. The ring should have connected to his heart by now. Then he heard the oath, the oath of Green Lantern. In brightest day, in blackest night. The rays of green light began to pierce the red light. No evil shall escape my sight. Meow. Dexstar tried to lunge at Izuku to stop him but he was repealed by a green blast knocking him back. Let those who worship evil's might, beware my power. Atrocitus himself created a red construct hammer but as he swung it down the hammer shattered into pieces. Green Lantern's light. Izuka broke through the red light and emerged, his suit compellerty repaired and his ring glowing brighter than ever before. How? Your rage was supposed to consume you. Atrocitus said, yelling at Izuku. Opening his hand Izuka revealed the red ring of rage, I may hate myself more than anything in this world but that's one of the reasons why I keep going. The other being my friend Eureka she gave me a reason to reason to keep going. To Atrocitus a surprise Izuka crushed the ring, I will use my rage to fuel my will. First I'll stop the two of from doing any more harm. 
Atrocitus and Dexstar ready their rings, come, and try boy. Faster and they could react. Izuku created a giant hand and grabbed them, pulling them towards him. Just as they got close Izuku let the construct disappear and then created a brass knuckled hand. With a loud boom the two red lanterns were thrown back, but before they could compose themselves Izuku created a green brick wall behind them. As they hit the wall Izuku came in and punched Atrocitus through the wall, shattering it. Turning around he pointed his ring at Dexstar and fired a blast sending him fall back towards the earth. I guess we are doing this hand to hand, Rage vs Will. Atrocitus's huge hand punched Izuku in the nose hard enough to cause blood to run. The two went back and forth but Izuku forgot that there was another lantern there, Bakugo came rocketing towards Izuku, he tried to dodge but he grabbed Izuku by the neck and began to drag him back to earth. Izuku punched his arm trying to loosen his grip but Bakugo was so filled with rage that he longer felt anything but rage. Bakugo. Stop this, he yelled out as they entered Earth's atmosphere. They were going so fast that they began to burn, seeing that they were getting close to the ground. Izuku had to think fast, sorry about this Kakan. Izuku managed to knee Bakugo in the junk, it wasn't enough for Bakugo to let him go but just enough so Izuku could use his momentum to turn Bakugo around. Now it was Bakugo's turn to fall to Earth. Class 1A was taken to the main campus, they stood outside talking to each other, man what happened to Todoroki and Bakugo? Mina asked confused as to what just happened. And those two, who were they? Momo asked, remembering Atrocitus and X star. Eureka stood beside Tsu with a worried look on her face, Okako, what's wrong you worried about those two? Tsu asked, tapping her on the shoulder. Eureka jumped, oh, yeah I'm worried about them but I'm also worried about Green Lantern. Yeah I hope he can find a way to save both of them, Tsu said. That's when Eureka heard something, can you hear that, she asked. Everyone went quiet, Shoji created extra ears to hear from different angles. Above, he yelled out. Everyone looked up to see a ball of fire falling towards them, everyone move. Izawa yelled out. They scattered but they couldn't get far enough, the objects crashed to the ground and with a loud boom it knocked everyone to the ground. Eureka got to her feet coughing as the dust settled, everyone all right. Yes yeah, somehow Mina said, helping others up. So what hell was that? As the dust cleared everyone surrounded the crater that was left behind there they found Green Lantern's hand over Bakugo's face as he lay there knocked out. Izuku got off of Bakugo to catch his breath, Green Lantern. He looked up to see all of Class 1A looking at him, W what are you guys doing here I thought I told you to evacuate. They all looked at each other, we did, we are at the main campus. Izuku flew up and out of the crater and looked around, oh so you did. That's when Izawa stepped up, what did you do to Bakugo? Don't worry he's just knocked out. He won't be waking up for a while Izuku explained. Just then a beam of red energy shot into the sky and it came from the stadium, sh asterisk t they haven't dealt with them yet. Hey wait. Izawa yelled out but it was too late Green Lantern flew towards the stadium. Everyone stay here and make sure Bakugo doesn't wake up, he instructed as he took off running after Izuku. Back at the stadium All Might was on one knee bleeding from his forehead and coughing out blood, damn it we can't stop him, we only slow him down. He then heard a loud explosion, Looking up at the bleacher he watched Endeavor get slammed onto the bleachers by a red construct dragon. Endeavor. All Might yelled out. Letting the construct disappear Todoroki floated above his defeated father, for years you made my life a living hell. You even drove your own wife, my mother to insanity. You don't deserve to call yourself a hero. Endeavor slowly began to get up, why you stupid boy, I'll give you one last chase to turn yourself in and take off that stupid ring he said as blood dripped from his lip. Todoroki's face turned cold, Arrogant even now, fine if you don't repent then maybe losing your career will make me feel better, he pointed his ring at Endeavor and picked him up by one arm. I think the price for your crimes will be an arm said Todoroki as he created a sword. Todoroki don't do this. All Might yelled getting to his feet. Your mother wouldn't want this just as the sword was about to cut his arm Todoroki stopped, please, put the sword away. We can help you. For a second it looked like All Might's words got through, Todoroki gave an evil smile. Not. Nah. This will make me feel better. All Might watched as Todoroki raised the sword again and brought it down, slicing Endeavor's arm off. God. Endeavor yelled out as his now detached arm fell to the floor beside him and blood spilled from his now severed arm. Todoroki smiled as he he let Endeavor fall, quite your yelling is so annoying. Endeavor looked up glaring in pain at Todoroki, what? Does it hurt, without saying a word Todoroki kicked Endeavor in the face. It should, this is nothing compared to what you did to us. All Might couldn't believe it, one of his students had just cut the arm off of the number two hero. No, he yelled out as he pushed himself up and launched at Todoroki with such force that he broke the ground beneath him. 
Taken off guard Todoroki couldn't put up a shield on time and All Might landed a clean punch at his ribs breaking a few on impact. The punch sent Todoroki flying towards the other side of the arena, Endeavor. Hold on for a bit longer All Might said placing a towel on the wound trying to stop the bleeding. Endeavor winced in pain, don't worry about me, take Shoto down. You can't let him get back up. Don't worry he won't get back up so easily after that hit said All Might. I wouldn't sound so sure about that turning around All Might saw Todoroki floating there clutching his ribs. That hurt All Might, now it's time for you to feel some pain. Todoroki created a red construct dragon head, the dragon head was about to bite into All Might when a green construct sword sliced its neck. Todoroki, yelled out Izuku and he flew at him at full speed. Not giving him a chance to create anything else Izuku turned himself into a green bullet and hit Todoroki straight in the stomach knocking him out. Green Lantern then landed in front of Endeavor and All Might, damn I didn't get here in time. GL we need to get him to a hospital All Might said, Izuku nodded and was about to create a stretcher when a blast of red energy hit him in the chest sending him flying towards a wall. All Might and Endeavor turned to the sky to find Atrocitus flying towards them, I don't know what trick you just pulled, but now that you won't join I'm just going to have to kill you instead. Izuku pulled himself out of the rubble, I'd like to see you try, he fired his own blast at Atrocitus, which he countered with his own blast of red energy. The two beams crashed into each other neither giving up ground. With his last remaining strength All Might carried Endeavor out of the stadium. They watched on top of the stadium as the whole area began to be covered in red and green light, the pressure coming off their attacks began to destroy the stadium itself. Atrocitus was then heard laughing, you are literally still green. You have much to learn and one of those is your enemy will use anything to win. Izuku was confused at this, what do you mean, he said, pushing his ring to its limits. The beams of energy then caused a massive explosion bringing down a part of the stadium. That's when Izuku heard someone scream, looking to his left his eyes widened. No. There he found Eureka had been captured by Dexstar and was now bleeding from her side from a scratch she received from the cat. Stop fighting and you can save the girl. Atrocitus said. Izuku looked back at Atrocitus with furry in his eyes, don't you dare. Take off the ring and no harm will come to her, Atrocitus said pointing at Izuku's ring. Izuku thought about it, but once he saw Eureka holding her sides bleeding. He didn't have a choice, fine. He raised his hand and removed his ring, his uniform disappeared showing his casual clothes underneath. Then his mask, All Might and Endeavor saw this happen, so that's how you look like All Might said, just then Izuka appeared. Hey guys, how are you holding up? He asked, landing beside them. My arm is gone, Endeavor said, cauterizing his wound. Izawa ignored him not that he didn't care, but he knew Endeavor would be alright. Then he turned his attention to the arena, what I thought the students evacuated? Wait, why is Eureka there? That kid with green hair is Green Lantern, this is the first time anyone has seen his face all might said as smoke came out of his body. SH asterisk T my limit. Much better, now drop it Atrocita said smiling. I did what you said. Now let her go, Izuku said, dropping the ring. Of course, Dex Star, he motions for the cat to let go of the girl. Dex Star then pushed the girl towards Izuku. He caught her as she stumbled forward, hey Eureka. She looked up to see him without his green mask or uniform, w why did you do that? Why did you take off your ring, she asked in pain. He smiled, because it was the only way they would let you go. Oh isn't that sweet, now the both of you can die together. Atrocitus said firing off a blast that was meant to kill the both of them. Time slowed down for everyone around them, without a second thought Izuku hugged Eureka shielding her from the blast, no. Izuku don't do this. She said looking up at him as a red light slowly began to appear. He smiled as a look of shock filled her face, no, she yelled just as the blast hit Izuku. Detroit smash. Suddenly there was a loud crack, looking back Izuku saw All Might had landed in front of them and punched the construct shattering it into pieces. What? Who dares stop me? Atrocitus said, clenching his fist. All Might. All Might then coughed up blood, don't talk. Grab your ring and finish this. That was the last good punch I had in me he said falling to a knee steam appeared around his body. Izuka caught on quickly and jumped for his ring. Slipping it on he created the biggest construct he's ever made, a giant mecha robot suit that was taller than the arena itself. Izuka sat in the cockpit, I'll tell you this once the head of the mecha fell over him, get the hell off of my planet. You think this scares me? I am Atrocitus, leader of the Red Lantern Corps, he yelled out flying at Izuku. Izawa, All Might, Eureka, and everyone who ran out of the stadium watched as the giant mecha arm swung, hitting Atrocitus back down. As he lay there on the broken ground Izuku lifted his foot and brought it down stomping on Atrocitus. Dexstar tried spewing Nepal blood on the mecha but it did nothing to it, 
Izuku turned and pointed at him. Suddenly green missiles and bullets began to fire at Dex Star hitting him multiple times, the cat tried to create a shield but every time he did the green would smash into it shattering the red shield. All Might mustered up the strength to get Eureka out of harm's way, jumping on the roof he put her down so Izawa could wrap up her wounds. So you knew his name all along didn't you Eureka? Izawa asked as he applied the wraps. Why yeah, sorry. Don't worry about that now but you can bet we are going to have a nice long chat after this is over he said finishing up, she nodded. With the help of the giant mecha Izuku was able to beat both red lanterns to the ground. He then picked him up with his giant metal hand, ready to give up. Atrocitus began to regain his bearings, don't think you've won lantern, we shall meet again his ring began to glow as he created a portal underneath them. As they begin to sink into the portal Atrocitus has one last thing to say, remember two of your friends are red lanterns now and without the blood lake their rage will burn through them and eventually kill them. Izuku's eyes went wide, no. Tell me where I can find this lake he said closing his hand to prevent them from escaping but it was too late only his laugh was heard as the portal closed. Izuku jumped out of the mecha and landed on the ground. Damn it, how the hell am I going to help them, he said, cursing himself. Just then the three heroes and Eureka all landed in front of him. GL. You alright. Eureka said he was worried about him. He smiled, I'm good as long as you are. So care to explain what was that all about? Izuku said. Those were red lanterns, Ring bearers like me but only their rings are fueled by rage Izuku said letting the giant mecha behind him disappear. I see so these rings are all powered by emotions All Might said looking weak. Izuku nodded, yeah but the red lanterns have a weakness. The rings of red lanterns actually replaces the bearer's heart with its ring, take away the ring the user dies. Does that mean Bakugo and Todoroki are stuck like that forever? Izuku asked. It's a very real possibility, yes. But that's not all. When they first become Red Lanterns they lose all sense of who they are and become ruthless machines fueled by rage. That's why Bakugo attacked Eureka and why Todoroki attacked Endeavor, they targeted the person they hated the most at that time. The only to stop them according to Atrocious is to dunk them into a blood lack. I have no idea where it is Izuku explained. Is there really nothing we can do? Eureka asked. I'm afraid not to remove the rings means they die. Let them wake up, they will kill everything around them. For now we should contain them, Keep them asleep until we find a solution Izuku suggested. Izuku nodded, as bad as it sounds it may be our only option. I'll have Midnight continuously knock them out with her quirk. Izuku looked away, I'm sorry, I let this happen. That's when All Might reached and placed a hand on Izuku's shoulder, don't fret young one there is always hope. Izuku smiled, those are some very wise words human a voice said above them. Izuku looked up and readied his ring but stopped when he saw the color. W who are you? The alien smiled. Don't worry I am a friend and all will be well the group was then bathed in a blue light. Izuku stood at the ready, his ring glowing as the blue lantern touched down on the arena, please do not be alarmed, I mean you no harm, he said holding out his hands. His voice was calm but everyone there was still on edge, I see after the red lanterns you are wary of other rings. Then let me prove it to you the blue lantern waved his hand. As he did Izuku's ring began to glow bright, ring at 150%, 200%, 400% power. Izuku's eyes went wide, wait only one core has the power to do this, you're from the Blue Lantern Corps whose rings are powered by hope. The name is Saint Walker the tall alien with white slash gray skin said smiling, Izuku could help but notice the tail like thing coming from the back of his head. I came to this planet called Earth when I sensed Atrocitus's rage and feared that he had created more red lanterns Saint Walker then looked behind Izuku. It seems my assumptions were correct, if you'd allow me I may be able to help them return to normal said Saint Walker. All Might couldn't believe, can you really do it? Can you really turn them back? Saint Walker nodded, when there is hope there is always a chance. Then let's take them inside, the less people find out about this the better Izawa said. Izuku nodded, I agree, let's take them to the nurse's office pointing his ring at Todoroki, Izuku created a bubble around Todoroki's body, lifting him up as he walked towards the locker room. Eraser head go grab Bakugo he will need healing too. Endeavor get to the hospital, you've lost too much blood. Endeavor grunted, I feel fine kid worry about yourself but to his surprise he began to fall over. All Might held him up so he wouldn't fall down. Come on I'll go with you All Might supported Endeavor with his shoulder, he then turned to Izuku. Go on ahead, I'll meet up with you guys later and with that the two heroes went to the hospital. Izuku nodded, all right, Eureka come with me. I'll need your quirk to pick him up. Eureka looked back at Izuku who nodded, go help him, I'll be right here promise. She smiled and walked off with Izuku by her side. All Might took note of their relationship but said nothing, right now saving these two was top priority. 
Unbeknownst to everyone one of the cameras from the stadium was still working, the image was fuzzy on one side but you the other half was crystal clear. For now Izuku walked into the nurse's office and put Todoroki on a bed, Saint Walker was close behind. So how are you going to do this? From what I heard the ring takes over their hearts Izuku said, turning to Saint Walker. With hope, the blue light of hope can do many things, for this to work I must enter his mind and show him hope Saint Walker said, clapping his hands together. I see, something that shows him hope just then Yurika and Izawa walked in with Bakugo. Where do you want him? Izawa asked. Saint Walker pointed to the bed next to Todoroki, there please. Izawa pushed Bakugo above the bed, now he said signaling Yurika to deactivate her quirk. Bakugo softly fell on the bed, still unconscious. Good, now stand back everyone backed away as Saint Walker walked in between the two and touched their foreheads. Are we sure we can trust him? Izawa asked. If he tries anything I'll stop him but I get a feeling he's actually here to help. Besides he's a blue lantern, they are mostly passive but will fight if they need to Izuku said as a blue light began to cover the two red lanterns. The blue light began to shine so brightly that everyone had to put up their hands to shield themselves. Inside Bakugo's mind began to fill with the image of one person, ever since he was child only one person filled him with hope. Hope that he would be an amazing hero, images of all might filled his mind. With Todoroki was a different story, he was so filled with rage that the light of the blue lantern wasn't enough. His anger towards his father was absolute, green lantern come here said Saint Walker. Izuku walked over to him, what's going on? Bakugo looks like he's getting better but Todoroki looks like he's in pain. The anger inside him is so rooted in him it's as if, as if it's the only thing keeping him together. I've never seen anything like this before Saint Walker said, stunned that this was happening. Just then the ring on Bakugo's hand began to crack and finally break. Izuku's eyes went wide, but Saint Walker reassured him, it's fine the purification was a success but he will have to rest for a bit, I assure you he will wake up in a bit. For now we have to focus on this one, I am going to need the power of a green lantern for this. He nodded, of course, just tell me what to do. Place your hand on him and focus your will. Once blue and green are together then there is nothing we can't do Saint Walker smiled. Alright let's do this Izuku shut his eyes and focused, his ring glowed green and began to surround Todoroki in a green and blue colored cocoon. Suddenly Todoroki's body began to emit a blood red color, he's fighting it. Izuku yelled as he gritted his teeth. Focus lantern use your will to help him and never forget there is always hope. Saint Walker said pushing his ring to the max, Izuku in turn did the same. Ring power decreasing, 150%, 100%, 75%, 50% the light around Todoroki red light of rage fought against hope and will. The whole room was soon covered in a blue, green, and red light. Yurika and Izawa watched as lights crashed into each other, amazing Izawa said as he felt the emotional spectrum hit him. Izuku's face was strained, it was taking everything he had just to focus on helping Todoroki. Just a bit more. Saint Walker said and he could feel hope coming from him. God. Suddenly everyone in the room was knocked back by a wave of blue and green energy. Getting up Izuku looked at the bed, it seems it worked he said smiling. Of course, that's why it's always important to have hope said Saint Walker putting his hands together. On the bed lay an unconscious Todoroki but without his red ring. Thank you Saint Walker, I don't know what I would have done without you, Izuku said, extending out a hand. Saint Walker grabbed it and began to shake it, it was my pleasure, now I must leave. I know my time here was brief but I must go after and find the red lanterns. Well if you are ever in any kind of trouble, you know where to find me Izuku said with a smile. Thank you, your path will be difficult but please remember there is always hope. The friends around you can be a main source of hope he looked to Yurika when he said that. Make sure to trust them a bit more. I will, thank you Saint Walker and with that a blue glow surrounded his body, opening the window Saint Walker took off into the sky. As he was leaving Earth's atmosphere he got a message, Saint Walker, are you there? Yes Ganthet, I am here Saint Walker responded. How is the situation on Earth? The red lanterns are gone, there were two earthnings that turned but I've dealt with them. With the help of the green lantern I may add, this one really is special Saint Walker said flying into deep space. I see, that's three rings now that have made their way to Earth. If more appear then it seems my vision will come true Ganthet said with worry in his voice. Ganthet, the war will not happen, said Saint Walker, his voice serious. But what if it does Walker, you didn't see what I saw. The universe itself was in shambles and at the top of everything, standing above everything was Isaac Amidoriya, with a black lantern ring. Saint Walker said nothing. If that does ever come to pass we will deal with him. You can count on that. Back on Earth, the sports festival was immediately cancelled, for the first time since UA opened there would be no first year winner. 
When Bakugo found out about this he was furious, he screamed out that he deserved to win, that he was the best, and if it wasn't for the Green Lantern he would have won. Izuku walked beside Yuriraka as they were led into Principal Nisu's office, what's going on? Izuku asked. You are going to get your pay, remember? Izawa said, walking behind them. All right, but why does it seem like I'm walking into an ambush? Izuku looked at Izawa but he said nothing. It's fine Green Lantern, just pick your money and you can go home. Although I wonder why I'm going as well Yuriraka said, surprised that she was called in too. You'll find out soon enough, Izawa said. Soon they made it to Nizu's office, they found Nizu sitting behind his desk with All Might on his right and police detective Naomasa on his left. A Green Lantern you made you. Why yeah, so is this about my paycheck? Izuku asked. Yes but actually before we do that there is someone here who would like to meet you Nizu gestured towards Naomasa. Hell Green Lantern, my name is Detective Naomasa and I am here on behalf of the police department Naomasa said, taking off his hat. Oh, uh, it's nice to meet you. Sorry if I'm not comfortable around you, vigilante and all that you know Izuku said bowing slightly. Yes we are quite aware of your antics Green Lantern, or should I say Naomasa slid a photo across Nizu's desk. Izuku Midoriya. Izuku's eyes went wide, I, I have no idea who you are talking about, he said trying to play it off. There's no point in lying son, we got this image of you during your fight with Bakugo and Todoroki. Besides, my quirk allows me to see who's lying and who's not Naomasa said smiling. Izuku Midoriya, age 14, father classified, mother, unknown. Records show you bounced around from orphanage to orphanage, that is until you settled at the one outside the city. After the orphanage blew up you have been living in the streets, no. Naomasa asked. Izuku looked over to Yurika, and not exactly, I've been staying over at a friend's house. Who we assume is Miss Yurika here Izawa said, speaking up. I knew you two had some sort of relationship. I just didn't know what kind until now. You are letting Green Lantern stay with you aren't you, he said looking over at Yurika. She panicked and looked at Izuku for help, there's no point in lying now Yurika, might as well tell them he said sighing. Yurika nodded, fine, yes, it's true I have been letting GL stay with me for a while now. I see, do your father know about this? Nizu asked. And no. I made the decision to help him, said Yurika. Nizu crossed his paws, I see, while it is none of our business what you do outside of school ground, we do have some say when it comes to harboring a vigilante. Izuku narrowed his eyes, that sounds almost like a threat sir. Her actions are considered a crime GL, that's something we can't ignore Naomasa said. The ring around Izuku's finger began to glow, she helped me when I lost the people I considered my family. She gave me a place to stay, a place to eat, and most important she gave me someone I can call a friend. If that's the case you could have gone to a local hero agency for help All Might said. You don't think I tried that but no hero wanted to deal with a quirkless nobody, much less an orphan. Yurika saved my life, which is more than I can say about you heroes. When I needed you the most, you shut me out, tossed me aside like I was nothing but trash. So I'll say this once, mess with her and you will have to deal with me too Izuku said. All Might and Izawa were about to say something when Nizu motioned them to stop, I see so Miss Yurika means a lot to you. Izuku nodded, more than you know, that's why I will protect her from anything or anyone. That includes all of UA and the police force if I have to. Your conviction is strong young man, you almost sound like a hero Nizu hopped out of his chair and made his way towards Izuku. That's why the detective and I had a chat with the police commissioner and he's agreed to waive the charges against you. You're lying, there's no way it would be that easy. So what's the catch? Izuku said, staring down the little mouse slash bear looking animal. Nizu smiled, smart one aren't you, the catch is that you stop your vigilante work and come work for us here at UA. You want me, to work here at UA? As what exactly? Izuku said puzzled as to why they would propose this. If you choose to accept, you will be working alongside the hero classes and helping them improve their quirks. You will also act as a bodyguard when they go out on trips and such said Nizu. Izuku thought about it, it doesn't sound like a bad deal, however. I will not be giving up my vigilante work, as long as there are people I can help, I will help them. Nizu turned to Naomasa, well you heard him, what do you say? Hmm, how about this, you limit your vigilante work to nights only Naomasa said, giving a compromise. Izuku turned to Yurika who nodded, alright you got yourself a deal, but my identity remains a secret. If my name gets out, the deal is off. We can do that, Nizu said but Izuku wasn't finished. Also the charges of harboring a vigilante on Yurika, they have to disappear like forever and no secret punishment Izuku said motioning towards Yurika. Seems fair enough, you did just save two of our best students. 
All right there will be no punishment, you have my word Nizu said holding out a hand. Izuka reached out and began to shake it, sounds like we have a deal. After a few seconds Izuka pulled his hand back, so where do we go from here? Now we decide what days you come here and work for us, but first this Nizu went back to his desk and pulled out an envelope. Here, your payment, he said, holding it out to Izuku. Izuka grabbed the envelope, thank you, whoa it's heavier than I thought it was going to be. Nizu smiled, it should be, we gave you a bit extra for saving our students. The total now is 400,000 yen or about $3,800. Izuku's eyes went wide, T this is too much, I can't accept this. Shaking his head Nizu stopped Izuku, after hearing about your past I say you earned this, please accept it. Izuku looked down at the envelope, well most of it I was going to give to Yurika for letting me stay with her so, alright I accept. Good now I do believe it's time for the two of you to go home. We will see the both of you on Monday then said Nizu. Come on Yurika let's go home she nodded and began to walk out of the office. Once the door closed Izuka turned to Nizu, really? Employing him. Yes. It was the only way we could keep him under watch at least for the day Nizu said looking outside his window. Those rings are something a child can't have and they will be ours. Izuka created a green bubble around Yurika and began to fly home, little did they know that class 1A was barely leaving the school when they saw the two fly over them. Is that, Yurika? Kiri's Hima asked, looking into the sky. Mina squinted, yeah and she's being carried by the lantern. Oh do you think they're dating? She said with excitement. Maybe, Ribbit. Okako has been a bit secretive lately. Well ask her at school Tsu said as she watched them disappear. Back at Yurika's apartment, Izuku landed on the balcony and slowly out down Yurika. Final stop, please exit the bubble in an orderly fashion and as always thank you for flying Green Lantern Izuku said as if he were a flight attendant. Yurika chuckled, smooth ride as ever, come on let's go inside and relax we need it after today. Izuku nodded as they slid open the glass door, Yurika threw herself on the sofa. Izuka was about to do the same but he wanted to lose the ring first, sliding it off his green uniform disappeared. As soon as he did he immediately fell to one knee, damn so this is my limit huh he said grabbing his sides. Yurika shot up from the sofa, Izuku. What's wrong? She said checking on him. F fight with red lanterns. He said pointing to his sides. Lifting up his shirt Yurika noticed his sides were all sliced up to what appeared to be claw marks. God, these are deep she said watching as the blood dripped. Yurika threw an arm around him to help him up, using her body to hold him up she put him on the sofa. Hold on, I'll go get the medical supplies. Going into the bathroom she got the supplies, I'm burning through more bandage wrap than anything else in this place she said disinfecting his wounds. Izuka winced in pain as the alcohol touched his wounds, sorry about this he said gritting his teeth. Don't be, just be more careful next time alright. Izuka nodded. Good, now sit up for me. I need to wrap this around you she said holding up the bandage wrap. After applying the wrap Yurika got up, they're good as new, now stay put at least until morning. She turned to leave but Izuka grabbed her hand, wait. Yeah? Oh does it still hurt? Let me get the pain relief but Izuka shook his head. It's not that. Izuka pulled out the envelope Nizu had given him. Here. Yurika looked at the envelope and the to Izuku, that's your money Izuku, I won't take it. Please, it's the least I can do he said, pleading for her to take it. Izuku, you earned that money. Use it on yourself, I'm willing to bet you've never had that much in your life Izuku looked away. Thought so, now keep the money it's yours Yurika said but Izuku wasn't about to give up. You're right it's my money and I can choose to do with it as I please. And I want to give it to you, as my way of saying thanks for letting me stay here Izuku said with a smile. Yurika didn't want to take his money but she knew he wouldn't drop this. That is until she got an idea, all right fine she said grabbing the envelope. Good Izuka was about to lay down when he felt the envelope hit his chest. Looking up he saw Yurika had taken some money but not all of it, you're paying for dinner tonight. You said I had to take the money, you never said how much she said holding a 10,000 yen bill. Izuka sighed, he lost. All right all right, still don't know what I'm going to do with this much. Well go shopping tomorrow for some clothes. You need some new ones anyway she said turning around. Shopping huh? All right it's a date he said laying down. When Yurika heard date her cheeks turned red, D-date. I mean, I don't mind B but still, oh god what am I thinking? He's my friend who is living with me, and is a guy. Looking back at Izuka she noticed the bandage around his ABS, wow I never really noticed but he's really well built, those ABS. Yurika then felt something warm run down her nose. Whipping it away she noticed it was blood. Yurika's eyes went white as she ran to the bathroom, 
you're so stupid Eureka. Getting a nosebleed just by looking at him, she could punch herself. After calming down she leaned against the sink and looked into the mirror, TD's feeling in my chest, I think I like Izuku her cheeks turned pink. I want to tell him but, I have to first focus on school I promised dad I would. After taking a quick nap Izuku woke up to the smell of pork cutlets, as they ate Eureka wanted to know how he fought off three red lanterns. Pure will, there was a point where they almost put a red ring on me. I was this close to succumbing to my rage Eureka. Izuku said, putting down his bowl. Eureka reached over and grabbed his hand, it's alright Izuku, we all get angry once in a while. So how did you overcome it? I thought about Maria, the twins, and most importantly I thought about why. Izuku stopped mid-word, as his brain finally caught up to his mouth. Izuku exploded red, gee good thing I caught myself. Eureka tilted her head out of curiosity, why is he blushing? What or who could he be thinking of? Izuku composed himself, anyway, I just thought of the people I hold dear and by sheer will, I managed to overcome the rage. But that doesn't matter what matters is that both Tataki and Kaken are safe. Eureka nodded, yeah I was worried for a second there. Anyway let's finish out food, it's getting cold. You better be ready for tomorrow, you'll be getting a new wardrobe. You make it seem like I dress terribly, Izuku said looking down at his shirt that had the words shirt written on it. You kinda do Eureka said sarcastically. Hey. That's not nice Izuku said, pouting. Eureka laughed, I'm kidding, well it can't hurt to get a new look. The mall is not that far from here we'll go there. Izuku nodded, I can't wait. Izuku and Eureka would fall asleep smiling, thinking about what tomorrow and their date. Meanwhile in another city a shadowy figure jumped from roof to roof, stopping on the edge of the building he looked down and watched the civilians walk by. Idiots all of them, they live fake lives. All the while as fake heroes roam the street, but I will get rid of the fakes. Standing up the person wore a black combat suit, with metal plating around his body, and a blood red scar around his neck. Just as he was about to leave a yellow light shined behind him, turning around the mystery person upholstered his sword and swung. Hey hey is this how you treat strangers, asked Shigaraki, donning his yellow lantern suit. He created a yellow pole to block the sword. Who are you and what do you want, the mystery man said, pulling away his sword. All I want is to talk, Stain, I have a proposition for you Shigaraki said smiling. I don't work with others, Stain said, turning to walk away. What if I say, I can give you the power to get rid of all fake heroes, said Shigaraki, hearing that Stain stopped dead in his tracks. I'm listening. Izuku went out patrolling during the night and by the time he got back it was around 5 a.m. They both agreed that they would go to the mall around noon. Izuku got a few hours of sleep before he got up around 11, he quickly took a shower. Man that hit the spot, he said getting out of the shower. Eureka was sitting at the table going over some school material, oh Izuku, did you get enough sleep, she asked. Izuku nodded, yup, I feel great. I'm ready to go wherever you are. She smiled, awesome, let me just finish up this work and we'll head out. Izuku went over and sat down in the chair next to Eureka, what are you working on, he asked, leaning over her to look. Just some math homework, I'm not the best at this so I struggle a bit Eureka said embarrassed. Looking at the equation Izuku began to think, do you mind if I borrow your pen really quick, he asked. Huh? Oh sure, here Eureka handed him the pen. Izuku then proceeded to write on the paper. There you go, this way is much easier to understand, Izuku said handing the pen back to Eureka. T thanks. Looking down at the paper Eureka went over what Izuku wrote and she instantly understood it. Wow this way really is much easier to understand. Thanks Izuku, where did you learn to do this? The library, every day they had snacks for those who stayed after 5. Since there was very little to eat at the orphanage I spent most of my time at the library for the free snacks said Izuku. Hearing his answer Eureka regretted asking, I I am sorry I shouldn't have brought back bad memories. It wasn't all bad, I brought food to the twins and the kids, seeing their happy faces made me happy Izuku said with a smile. If you need any more help just let me know. I will. Thanks Eureka went back to work and about an hour later she was finally done. Izuku was sleeping on the sofa. She walked over and bent down to look at his face, looks like he was still tired, to think he saved everyone at the sports festival she giggled. He looks cute when he's sleeping. She reached out to touch his hair, just as her hand was about to ruffle his hair, Izuku began to wake up. Eureka blushed as she stood up in shock, huh? Eureka. Your face is a bit red, you all right? Izuku asked, waking up from his little nap. Why yeah I'm fine. Ready to head out. Eureka asked, changing the subject. Izuku got up and stretched, yeah let's go. 
Eurika grabbed her purse, while Izuka grabbed his green lantern ring and put it in his pocket just in case. The mall was only a 10 minute train ride from Eurika's apartment. Arriving at the mall Eurika grabbed Izuku by the arm and dragged him into the nearest clothes store, come on Izuku, it's time to get a makeover. Izuku wasn't so sure about this but he let Eurika pick out clothes that she thought might look good on him. The first up was a green button up shirt and she also tossed him a pair of black pants. Izuka went into the changing room. After changing Izuka came out and Eurika's reaction said it all, whoa, you look amazing Izuku. Who knew, green really does suit you. Izuka blushed, you really think so? It's a bit tight around my arms, I might need a bigger size his arm muscles were pressing up against the shirt restricting his arm movement. You might be right, now that you're eating properly you've gained a lot of muscle. Alright I'll get you a bigger size for now try this one Eurika said, passing him another outfit. This one was a light purple colored dress shirt and a pair of black dress pants. A little formal don't you think? Izuku said, looking at the outfit. You never know when you'll need one, now go get changed I'll go pick out the next one Eurika turned around to look for more clothes as Izuka changed. As Eurika was looking on the rack of clothes someone called out to her, Hey Okako, turning around to see the girls from class 1A walking towards her. Oh hey girls, what are you doing here? Eurika asked, walking over to them. We thought we have a bit of a girls mall trip, we called you before we got here but you never picked up, said Mina. You did. Eurika pulled out her phone and just as Mina said she had missed calls and texts from the girls. I had my phone on silent, my bad. No worries, it's a stroke of good luck that we ran into you. Would you like to join us? We were just about to go to the arcade said Momo, pointing across the mall. Eh sorry but I'm kinda here with someone Eurika said bashfully. Could it be your boyfriend? Ribbit asked Sue teasing her. Eurika blushed, and no. So why do you have men's clothing? Asked Jiro pointing with her earphone jacks. Unless you're getting more tomboyish with us, which you're not. It has to be a guy the invisible girl Toru said. Come on spill. Who is it, someone from school? Mina said, getting close to Eurika's face. Before she could answer Izuku appeared from the changing room, you know what Eurika at first I didn't like it but now that I see myself in it, I think it looks really good. What do you think? He said looking down at himself and then back up, that's when he noticed Eurika surrounded by the girls. I'm friends of yours. The girls all stared at Izuku, they eyed him up and down. Well where have you been hiding him? Mina said, looking at Izuku in the light purple dress shirt. So you do have a boyfriend? Toru said, poking Eurika. He's not my boyfriend. Eurika said, pushing Mina and Toru away. Let me introduce him, this is Izuku Midoriya. He's a friend of mine. Izuku, these are my classmates from UA. So you are the famous 1A girls, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Eurika has talked a lot about you Izuku said, bowing slightly. Oh has she, that's funny because she has never said anything about you. I wonder why, the name is Jiro by the way said Jiro introducing herself. A secret lover. How scandalous, my name is Mina said Mina teasing Eurika. So why didn't you tell us Okako? Keeping secrets from your friends is a bad idea. Anyway my name is Toru, it's nice to meet you Midoriya Toru said. Izuka couldn't see her due to her invisibility quirk but Izuka could see her sleeves moving. Come on girls it's not nice to tease them. I do apologize for their behavior but this is the first time we see Okako this worked up. My name is Momo, class 1A's president said Momo dignified as ever. Well this trip just became worth it, my name is Tsuyu but call me Tsu Ribbit she croaked out with a smile. Izuka smiled, so you girls were talking about an arcade. Yurika said, hoping the subject would focus away from her. Yeah there's a new dancing game so we wanted to see if you wanted to join us Mina said. Beaut since you're on a date with your boyfriend I guess it's a no. Eurika blushed, I told you he's not my boyfriend. This isn't a date, we came here to pick out some new clothes for Izuku. Calling him by his first name already wow you sure move fast Okako Jiro said with a smug smile. If it's not a date then why don't we bring him along? It will keep those pervy guys off our backs Toru suggested. That would be a good idea, so what do you say Midoriya? Care to accompany us to the arcade? Asked Momo. Well. Izuka looked over at Eurika who gave him a smile of approval. I'd be happy to, let me just pay for this and we'll head out. Izuka quickly went back into the changing room and put back his plain clothes. After paying they all went over to the arcade, and just as Toru said some guys tried to hit on them but Izuka was there to make them back off. They broke off into little groups, Izuka stuck with Eurika and her friend too. They played an ice hockey game, basketball ball game, street fighter, target practice game and many others. 
For the first time in a while Izuku was happy, playing with his new friends, something he hasn't done since kindergarten. After a while Izuku, Yurika, and Atsu went to sit down, man there sure are a lot of games here Yurika said sitting back on the chair. There sure are, but it seems Mina is only interested in the dancing game Ksu said pointing over to the game, Mina was there dancing to the rhythm and stepping on the arrows that came up. She's already beaten every one of us, and now she's challenging random people. Just then Jiro came back tired, she had just come back from the dancing game, man she has unlimited stamina, plus she is ridiculously good at it too. I'll pay for lunch if any of you can beat her. Yurika give it a shot. Yurika shook her head, yeah, no, Mina is too good besides I'm not a dancer. Ksu. Maybe next time, I don't want to get humiliated again, Ksu said, taking a sip of her drink. Really can no one take her down? Jiro said as another person failed to beat Mina. Just then Izuku stood up, I'll give it a try. Izuku, you know how to dance? Yurika asked. Nope not really, Maria wanted to teach me but we never got around to it Izuku said stretching his legs. Don't worry though, I'm a fast learner, Izuku said as he began to walk towards the dancing game. Come on is that everyone that dares challenge me? Mina said standing proud, that's when she saw Izuku walking over to her. Oh looks Okako's boyfriend wants to lose. Izuku smiled, we'll just see about that. Mina was surprised was that confidence or pride talking, alright let's see if you can keep up. Dance dance revolution. Are you ready? Select music. Mina selected the music. Ready, go. Mina took off, stepping to the arrows as they came on the screen. Izuku at first struggled to get the hang of it, looking over at Mina he saw her give an evil smile. Izuku refocused back to the screen and began to gain a rhythm, soon he was matching Mina step for step. The crowd cheered as they saw Izuku catching up to her, Yurika and the girl all looked on in amazement. Whoa Okako, your boyfriend has some bite to him, Jiro said, watching Izuku twist and spin his body to match the arrows. First of all he's not my boyfriend and second of all, yes he does, I never knew he could adapt to a situation that quickly Yurika said smiling. Now the score was tied and it was the last minute of the song, Mina knew the super hard part was coming up. Izuku's eyes widened as he saw so many arrows appear on the screen, this is it. Izuku stepped on the first arrow, twisting his body he spun and hit the back arrow. With little time to react he had to hit both side arrows at the same time, leaning back he stepped on both but began to lose his balance. Twenty second left Izuku struggled to hit most of the arrows but Mina wasn't doing any better. She too was struggling, she even had her hand on the railing behind her. Oh it's going to be close. Toru said, watching the score going up. Come on Izuku. Yurika cheering on Izuku. With one final step the song was over and both dancers hit the floor tired and sweating, M man you actually kept pace, I even picked the hardest song too Mina said trying to catch her breath. T thanks just then the dance area below Izuku began to flash and beep. Looking at the screen it said winner on Izuku's side. The crowd erupted in cheer as Izuku had beat Mina by two points. Mina smiled as she saw the score, well I'll be damned you actually beat me she stood up and extended out her hand towards Izuku. Izuku grabbed it and stood up, that was a heck of a dance off Mina, we should do it again sometime. You bet. Come on let's go with the others and relax for a bit the two walked off the game and towards the others. That was amazing Izuku, are you sure you've never danced before? Yurika asked, handing him a drink. Wait what? You've never danced before. Mina couldn't believe it she lost to someone who has never danced before. Nope never Izuku said. Okay now I'm really impressed, you have some kind of stamina quirk don't you? Jiro said. Izuku froze up and Yurika looked at him with worry, W well actually, I, I. Just then Yurika came over and put a hand on his shoulder. It's okay Izuku, you don't have to tell them if you don't want to, she said, trying to reassure him. Momo could see the discomfort on Izuku's face, it's alright if you don't want to tell us, we were just curious. Izuku shook his head, no it's fine, alright, I'm actually quirkless. The girl's eyes went wide, they said nothing for a few seconds. Then from out of nowhere they all rushed Izuku, wow. You did all that without a quirk. That's even more amazing. Mina said, smiling. You must be super talented then, what else can you do? Toru asked impressed. Izuku's face turned red, you uh. Suddenly Yurika grabbed him by the arm and pulled him away, all right all right let the poor guy breath she said pulling him close. I never knew you were the jealous type Okako, making sure we don't steal your boyfriend, Ribbit Ksu said, teasing her. Yurika blushed as she let go of his arm, he's not my boyfriend. How many times do I have to tell you? Well if that's the case. Mina walked over and locked arms with Izuku. How about we go out, 
she said seductively. From his angle Isaka could look down Mina's shirt, I I don't know, we only just met he said blushing. Mina then leaned in and whispered into his ear, that's fine, why don't we go somewhere more, private and get to know each other. Eurika's eyes went wide as she caught the tail end of that conversation, no. He's mine, she yelled, catching the attention of both Izuku and Mina. Her face exploded red, I I mean, you shouldn't tease him like that. Mina couldn't contain her laugh any longer, I'm sorry I just wanted to see your reaction. Don't worry I won't steal him away, at least not yet. If you don't hurry Okako I might just steal him she said winking at Izuku. Mina. Yeah yeah I know, come on I'm hungry let's go for lunch Mina said walking away. Yurika sighed, sorry about Mina she can be a bit, annoying sometimes. Izuku smiled, it's fine I knew she was playing for the most part at least. Come one if I remember right Jiro said she was going to pay for lunch. Oh yeah, I did say that, oh well come on I know just the spot Jiro treated everyone to some sushi. After they ate their fill they decided to help Izuku with more of his clothes shopping. After trying what felt like hundreds of clothes he walked out of the stores with multiple bags of clothes. It was now late in the afternoon and it was time for everyone to start heading home, man today was fun Toru said stretching her arms. You can say that again but we should probably start heading home, Jiro said. Aw do we have to? I want to hang out with you guys some more Mina said, disappointed. Don't worry girls, we can hang out some other day, you should get home before your parents start to get worried Izuku said with a smile. Yeah I guess you're right, alright bye Izuku it was nice to meet you. I do hope we meet each other again Momo said, waving goodbye. Izuku nodded, I get the feeling we'll see each other real soon. The rest of the girls left, leaving only Izuku and Yurika, well shall we head home? Izuku asked. Yurika nodded, let's go home. As they got off the train they began to walk home, unbeknownst to them someone was following them home. Behind a street light the shadowy figure of a woman was seen, her green eyes piercing the darkness, after all this time I finally found you, my son a single tear fell from her eye as she saw the two walking down the street. As he was talking Izuku suddenly felt a chill run down his spine, turning around he looked around but found no one. Izuku what's wrong? Yurika asked. I felt someone staring at me. Izuku said. Is it a villain? Yurika asked on guard. Izuku shook his head, no I don't think so, this might sound weird but the stare felt, warm. It was probably nothing, come let's keep walking. League of Villains. Stain and Shigaraki were training in a warehouse, with the help of yellow constructs Stain slashed and stabbed through them. Very good you've improved, Shigaraki said as his ring's glow began to fade away. Stan sheathed his weapon, those yellow party tricks really helped me out, as I am now I think I can even take on all might. Suddenly Stain felt something press against his neck, opening his eyes he was met by yellow constructs scythe, all might is mine to kill remember that. Stain glared at Shigaraki, relax I was only joking, besides for me all might is a true hero. The yellow construct disappeared, Whatever, now I think it's time for you to receive your true power Shigaraki held out his hand. His whole hand began to glow yellow, opening up his hand a yellow ring was seen floating, here take it and become a harbinger of fear. Reaching out Stain grabbed the ring and began to slide it on his finger, as he did this costume began to change to yellow. Whoa. What is this? So much power, this is amazing. Stain said as he felt the power coursing through him. However his celebration quickly changed to shock when ring began to spark, host incompatible for ring, commencing self-destruction. The ring began to glow brighter and brighter, Stain eyes widened. Taking off the ring he threw it aside as it rolled to a stop it blew up in a yellow fireball. As the dust and debris settled Stain turned to Shigaraki, what the hell was that? I don't, that's the first time I've seen a ring just blow up like that. You strike fear into the hearts of everyone, you should be the perfect candidate for the yellow ring Shigaraki said, puzzled as to why the ring rejected Stain. So that's it, Stain said standing up. What is? Did you figure out why it rejected you? Asked Shigaraki. Yeah I need more people to fear me, the rings runs on fear, then the more people fear me, that means I just have to kill more heroes right? Stain said with a smile. You really don't have any compassion do you, well whatever do as you please. Master needed to speak to me anyway said Shigaraki. Stain grabbed his equipment, if you need me I'll be on host of this whole week. There are some pests I need to get rid of in that city. Get that portal guy to make me a portal to Hosu. Kurojiri, if you would appearing behind Stain was a black portal. If we need you we'll call you. He nodded and went through the portal, Shigaraki, master wishes to talk to you now. Going into the bar, Shigaraki found a TV with the words AFO on the screen, Shigaraki my boy, how did it go with Stain? It went well but the ring rejected him, Shigaraki said, sitting down. 
I see so there are still things we don't know, continue your research, things will turn around. In the meantime the production of the mid-tier nomus are ready. I want you to take them and remind Japan who we are AFO said. Yes of course and I have just the city in mind. I swear master I won't let you down. I know you won't, spend these couple of days resting and planning. You attack on Wednesday and with that the screen turned all black. Izuku had to get up early today, for today was his first day working at UA. They have called Yurika and told her to inform Izuku that he was to report early to get a feel for the school. Alright Yurika I'll be leaving now, make sure to eat something before you leave he said, slipping on his ring. Yurika was still in bed barely waking up so all Izuku heard was her groaning. He laughed as he walked to the balcony, here goes nothing he said, taking off into the sky. Since he was in a hurry Izuku made it to the school in record time, zooming past the train. He did stop beside it to wave at the kids going to school. Now near the campus he slowed down and landed near the gates, there he was greeted by Nizu and Izawa. Ah you're here and right on time Nizu said as Izuku walked towards them. Morning Nizu, so why am I here this early? I had a late night of patrolling Izuku said, yawning. Yes well we thought it would be better if you'd familiarize yourself with the campus. Also we want you to teach our students a thing or two Nizu said with a smile. A lesson? What kind of lesson? Asked Izuku, confused. You'll see, for now let's go check out the campus Izawa said escorting Izuku into the campus. Izuku was shown the classrooms, gymnasium, and offices, it seemed like they were trying to get Izuku to become a student rather than a teacher. It was now time for school to start, Izuku was led into the teacher's lounge where he sat down at a table with Izawa. Don't you have a class to teach? Izuku asked. No, not until the afternoon. I teach the hero students, other than that I stay here and take a nap Izawa said taking a sip from his coffee. So I have to ask, why become a vigilante? Why not apply here to UA or any other hero school? With your power you easily could have gotten in. Izuku blinked, money mostly, to even apply here there is a fee. Money isn't something Maria or I had. You could have asked for a waiver, all you needed was your parents, permission Izawa then remembered that he lived at an orphanage. I I didn't mean. It's fine, that's actually the second reason why. With no one to sign off on things I could never go on school trips or even apply for a damn job Izuku said sitting back on his chair. But now that I have this ring I can do almost anything he said looking at his ring. But this ring is also a curse. A curse? Something that powerful can't be a curse Izawa said. It can and it is, with all its power I still can't be at two places at once. There will always be someone who I can't, someone who dies because I wasn't there Izuku said thinking back to the day Maria died. Izawa was surprised, he's so young yet he's already experienced so much trauma most heroes experience in their whole careers. Izawa sighed, listen kid you can't blame yourself for someone's death. Not even the strongest heroes can save everyone, look at all might. But before he could say anything Izuku slammed his fist on the table startling Izawa. Don't mention his name, Izuku said glaring at Izawa. What I'm trying to say is no matter how strong you are or how strong you think you are, you're not omnipresent. You can't be in two places at the same time, we are human, we make mistakes, people die from those mistakes but that's what makes us who we are. Honor those people by becoming a hero that they would be proud of Izawa said finishing his coffee. Izuku said nothing, enough of that, relax for now you'll need it for the afternoon. Are you guys going to tell me what I'm doing exactly? Izuku asked. You are going to help the students in choosing who they intern with Izawa said. Izuku was confused, how am I meant to do that? Izawa smiled, you'll see. Later in the afternoon. Izawa was vague when he said there was special training, so what is this all about, asked Yurika in her hero costume. No idea, I thought we were going to pick our internships today, Tsu said, the class was walking to Gamma Gym. This gym was large and was empty, only the cement walls and floor. This must be some sort of test. Aitsa said, adjusting his glasses. Let's hope not, I can't deal with any more stress, Mina said. Yurika laughed but as she looked around she noticed Bakugo was quiet. Looks like you are all here Izawa said as his class walked into the gym. Sir what exactly are we doing here, asked Kiri's Hima. I'm glad you asked, today we brought in someone to help train you guys, Izawa said. So we are going to fight someone. Momo asked. Izawa nodded, in short yes, as many of you know your internships are just around the corner and before you make your choices I want you all to see your strengths but most important your weaknesses. I see, that way we can make an informative decision when it comes to our internships Itza said. That does make sense, so who are we fighting? Is it an upperclassman, asked Kaminari. Not exactly, we employed someone here and they will be fighting you Izawa said. Yurika's eyes went wide as she knew what this meant. 
Aizawa saw the expression on her face and smiled. You can come in now he said looking towards the door. The class turned around as the doors to the gym swung open, oh you're kidding Mineta said as he stepped back in fear. Bakugo's expression turned to rage as he saw who it was, him. In walked Izuku, his ring glowing green as he did, whoa, I never thought they would bring him in Mina said. Not that I'm complaining. It's nice to see you all again, Izuku said bowing slightly towards the class. That's when Momo stepped up, as class 1A's president I'd like to welcome you to UA she said with a smile. Thanks, as you already heard I'm kinda like a teacher here now Izuku said rubbing the back of his head. I call first dibs fighting him. Kiri's Hima said through the crowd. Oh didn't I tell you? You aren't fighting him one on one, you are all fighting him. Well you can start now if you want Izawa said, walking to the wall. Why you mean everyone at once? That's not really fair Kaminari said, looking at Izawa walking away. But before he could say or do anything else a giant green construct fist hit him, sending him flying across the gym. The class looked back at Izuku, he was now floating slightly off the ground. First lesson, never look away from your opponent Izuku said with a smile. The class already themselves for a fight, everyone surround him, yelled out Momo. The class quickly surrounded him, Izuku looked to his left and then to his right. Kiri's Hima was the first to run in, his plan was to bulldoze through Izuku. You're mine, he yelled out activating his quirk. A hardening quirk not bad but with all that power comes a drawback Izuku created a green rope that extended from wall to wall. Kiri's Hima, not being able to stop in time tumbled and crashed into a wall. You aren't the smartest, alright who's next? The students all gulped, we are so dead they all thought, charging at Izuku. Five minutes later. Debris and craters lined the gym floor from the aftermath of the fights. By the end of it all only Yuriko was left standing, everyone else was beside Izawa watching. Well 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 it looks like it's just you and me. Yuriko was it? Yeah that's right Yuriko said putting up her fists. Well come on, let's get this over with Izuku said, daring Yuriko to attack. Just as she was about to move Izuku got an idea, you know what, I think I'll make things a bit even. I saw you during the sports festival and you are a close range fighter so I'll fight you without using my ring he said as the green glow around him faded. Yuriko's eye twitched, how thoughtful of you. Don't regret it now. She then ran at Izuku. She probably thinks I'm looking down at her but that's far from the case Izuku thought as she ran at him. Yuriko went to try to touch Izuku but he simply dodged out of the way. She went in for another try but stopped when she felt something touch her face, Izuku had one finger on her forehead. Nice try but your moves are too linear he said flicking his fingers. Yuriko stumbled back as her forehead was flicked, ow. Care to try again? Izuku asked. Yuriko rushed at him again but this time she'd use her quirk on the debris on the gym floor. Take this. She yelled out throwing the rocks at Izuku. Not expecting it Izuku was taken completely off guard as a rock zoomed past his head, just enough to scratch him. Hum looks like you're learning. Ducking under most of the rocks Izuku managed to catch one and throw it back at her. However once he looked up to see where she was, she was nowhere to be seen. Huh? Where did she go? He said looking around to no avail. Izawa smiled as he knew what she was doing, you learned from your fight with Bakugo. Here a voice said behind Izuku. Before he could turn around Yuriko placed him in a hold preventing him from moving. This is the move I taught her Izuku thought as he tried to free himself. You got me in a hold but now none of us can win. Yuriko smiled, that's where you're wrong. I have you just where I want you she managed to touch her fingertips while still keeping Izuku in the hold. Looking up Izuku saw rocks hurtling towards them, you wouldn't, would you he said looking at her. Oh god you would, you'd take yourself out too you know that. Oh I know, that was the plan the whole time she said as the rocks began to fall on top of them. This isn't what I thought you'd do Eureka, stop this. Izawa said as he reached for his capture weapon but he was too slow. The class watched as the two were buried by rocks, Eureka. They yelled out. Shit, Itza go call recovery girl Izawa said, jumping into the pile of rocks to dig them out. One by one he removed the rocks until he saw the green hair of Izuku. Hey GL, can you hear me? As he removed more rocks he was surprised to see Izuku on top of Yuriko. He had shielded her from the rocks. I'd also know you'd protect me, Yuriko said with a smile. I guess we'll call this a tie then. Izuku sighed, I guess so, just don't do anything like this again. All right. All right fine she said rolling her eyes. That's when she saw blood dripping from the back of Izuku's head. GL. You're bleeding. Reaching back Izuku touched the wound, huh, guess I am. Just then the class began to help remove the rocks. That's when Mina saw the two of them, one over the other. Come on guys this isn't the time to be flirting. Besides, 
Don't you already have a boyfriend Eureka? Mina said, holding back her laughter. Izuka finally saw the position he was in and quickly got off of Eureka, his face blushing as he did. S sorry. Eureka shook her head, and no, it's my fault, I shouldn't have used such a dangerous move she said blushing as well. The girls all looked at Eureka, oh there's something definitely going on between them. And we are going to find out what. Other than GL here getting injured everything turned out alright. I hope you all learned something about yourselves, if you did choose the hero you in turn with carefully. Back at the classroom you will have offers from a wide range of heroes, look over them and choose by Wednesday. Alright go get changed and head back to class. Lantern, meet me at the teacher's lounge there's something I'd like to discuss with you Izawa said as he walked out of the gym. As he left everyone began to crowd around Izuku, man you took out all of us so easily. That was so manly. Kiri's Hima said. I agree, you didn't even break a sweat. Just how strong are you? Momo asked. Also how does that ring work? Everyone began to bombard Izuku with questions, guys. Remember he's hurt, let him go to recovery girl and then we can ask him all the questions you want Eureka said. Oh yeah that's right, I am injured. Well I'll see you all at lunch we can talk then and with that Izuku took off heading straight to the nurse's office. After getting patched up Izuku went to the teacher's lounge, there he found Izawa waiting for him. Sit he said simply. Izuku sat down, so what is this about? I did what you told me to. Yeah you did but you also played favorites, you know who I'm talking about right? Izawa said. Izuku looked away, listen kid, I know you like her and she likes you and outside school you two are free to do whatever you want. However when you are here, you have an obligation not only to her but also the entire class. Yes sir Izuku said in a soft voice. Well don't dwell on it, you are young and it's only natural for you to put your girlfriend above everyone else Izuku said with a smile. She's not my girlfriend, not yet at least Izuku said under his breath. After his little lecture the lunch bell rung, Izuku was allowed to go eat in the cafeteria with the other students. Izuku got his food and began to look for a place to sit but before he did someone called him over. Hey GL. Over here. It was Mina waving him down. Walking over he noticed she wasn't alone, Eureka, Mina, Xu, Aitsa, and Momo all decided to have lunch together. Hey guys, sorry about earlier. I didn't mean to go so hard Izuku said as he sat down. It's fine. Thanks to that fight we saw our weaknesses and now when we chose our internships we can focus on that, Ribbit Xu said. Well I'm glad I can help. Izuku said nervously, he then began to eat. Everyone at the table couldn't help but notice the amount of food he was eating. Whoa GL you eat a lot don't you? Mina said, surprised. Izuku's tray was filled to the brim with food, sushi, rice, soup, beef, chicken, you name it he had it. Yeah. Up until recently I haven't really been eating a lot so I guess I'm making up for all those hungry days Izuku said while taking a bit of food. You went hungry? Why, didn't your family feed you? Ask Mina. Izuku put down his chopsticks, and no, I was homeless until recently. The table fell silent, I I am sorry I didn't mean to. Mina looked down in shame. Hey it's fine he said with a smile. I'm not homeless anymore, lucky for me a really amazing friend took me in. So don't feel bad. Things are looking up Izuku said with a smile. Eureka blushed knowing that it was her that took him in, that's good GL, so this person must be really special Momo said. Izuku nodded, you're really special, she's amazing to say the least. Oh it's a girl? Oh well it looks like you have some competition Eureka Mina said looking over at the blushing girl. W what? What do you mean Mina? Eureka said blushing even harder than before. So do the two of you have a thing or something, asked Sue. We all saw you two during the exercise. So spill you two are dating aren't you? Now Izuka was blushing, Tifsu. It's not like that. Remember I told you, a few weeks ago I was attacked and Lantern came to rescue me. Why yeah that's right. Izuka said, confirming the story. However Mina wasn't convinced, sure, so what about Izuku? You two seemed really cute together. Mina. Eureka yelled out. All right. All right but this conversation is not over and with that they enjoyed their meals, they continued to talk but about other stuff. For example their quirks. The final bell rang out and normally teachers would stay behind but since Izuku wasn't a teacher officially he was allowed to leave with the other students. Izuku offered some of class 1A a ride to their houses and all of them accepted. Who wouldn't want to fly over the city, one by one Izuku dropped them off at their houses. The last being Eureka, landing on the balcony they went inside to relax after a long day. I feel as if the front door has become useless now, Eureka said, chuckling as she began to loosen her shirt. Izuku on his part took off the ring, 
I can use a drink, want anything Eureka, he asked, walking to the fridge. Oh some melon tea please she said sitting up. Catch Izuku tossed her the tea. So how was your first day, Sensei Eureka said in a playful tone. Izuku choked on his drink, P please don't call me that. Eureka got up, why Sensei? Because it's weird. Izuku said blushing slightly. Izuku, you're blushing. Did you enjoy me calling you Sensei? Eureka said, walking over to him. And no. Okay maybe I did but I shouldn't have Izuku said, turning away. Well think of this as payback for earlier, you could have taken it easy on us during the exercise Eureka said poking at Izuku's sides. Ow, maybe I could have but how would you learn if you don't see your mistakes? Which reminds me, you have until Wednesday to pick your intern hero any idea who you will be interning with? Izuku asked. Eureka nodded, yeah we went over them in class, I had a few offers and I decided to go with the pro hero gunhead. Oh a close quarters type hero is not a bad choice. If you use martial arts and your quirk, you'd practically be unstoppable in a one-on-one -on -one fight Izuku said agreeing with her choice. Yeah. So next time I'm going to kick your butt Eureka said, punching the air. Oh yeah that reminds me, we picked our hero names today. Izuku's eyes went wide, really? Tell me what did you pick? Eureka smiled, I had this name picked out since I was a child, I went with Eurovide. Eurovide huh, I love it. Izuku said, causing Eureka to blush. Thanks, I thought you'd like it. Just wait until you hear the other heroes names Eureka smiling. Three days went by fast and it was now Wednesday, the day the hero internships were set to start. At the train station Izawa and Green Lantern stood before class 1A, all right everyone settle down, I know you are all eager to start but there are a few things I want to say. First is listen to the heroes, I will not tolerate any misbehavior during the internships. Second of all, take this seriously, I doubt any of you will see any actual combat but you never know so be prepared. With that in mind, each of you will be given one of these, GL if you will. Izuku stepped forward and created small green devices, these are devices that will send a distress signal to me. So if any of you are in danger make sure to press it and I'll be there before you know it Izuku explained. Whoa these are so cool Mina said inspecting the gadget. Yes yes we all think so, now come on get going your trains are about to leave Izawa said. Yes sir, they all responded before heading down to the lobby. Izuku watched as Eureka walked away while carrying a small suitcase, looking back they made eye contact. Stay safe Izuku mouthed out. Eureka picked up on it and nodded. When she turned back the girls were all looking at her with smug looks which made Izuku laugh. That's when Izawa leaned down, so any progress. Izuku blushed, S shut up. I'll take that as a no. Listen kid, a word of advice, don't leave things for tomorrow because today could be your last Izawa said. Anyway come on, we are heading back to UA, there is someone we'd like you to meet. Sure, got nothing better to do. Want a lift? Izawa nodded, walking outside of the station Izuka created a flat surfboard under them. Focusing the board began to rise into the sky, hold on. Hold on to what? There's nothing to hold on to. But before Izawa could say anything else Izuka took off towards UA. In Hosu, the hero killer stain jumped from rooftop to rooftop, stop. Get back here criminal a hero said chasing after stain. Thinking fast stain jumped down into an alley, you're not getting away the hero said jumping down. However as he did stain sword stabbed into his neck killing him instantly. The hero fell into the alleyway as blood stained the cement around him. With a blood dripping sword stain jumped back onto the roof and looked down at his work, that makes three, now there are only a few more. Next is that hero Inigium but that will have to wait until later tonight. Izuku landed inside the gates of UA, all right we are here he said, turning around. Never, ever, do that again Izawa said with wobbly legs. Oh do you not like heights? Sorry, you should have said something then. All right enough talk, where are we going again? Izuku asked. We are going to Echo Gym, like I said there is someone we'd like you to meet Izuku followed Izawa into the gym. There they found a tall, skinny man that was wearing glasses. He was accompanied by a muscular blonde haired student that had one million written across his costume. So this is the vigilante you guys decided to hire the tall man said looking at Izuku. You said he could defeat All Might? I find that highly unlikely. Izuku's eye twitched, and who the H asterisk LL are you supposed to be? Wilt from the Foster's home of imaginary friends. Trying to hide his laughter, Izuku turned away, not quite, the name is Night Eye and this here is Mirio Togata. Call me Mirio, it's nice to finally meet you Green Lantern, Mirio said, holding out his hand. Izuka reached out and shook it, right, so what am I doing here exactly? You didn't tell him. Night I said, looking at Izawa. If I did, 
He wouldn't have come, Izawa said, his eyes half shut. Izuku started to get frustrated, all right someone tell me what's going on or I'm leaving. We want you to test Mirio's abilities a voice said coming from the entrance. Turning around Izuku found a tall skeleton looking man with blonde hair. Skeletor? And you are? GL asked confused. Oh right you don't recognize me in this form the man said. Suddenly a puff of white smoke appeared around the man and as the smoke disappeared All Might was seen. Izuku's eyes went wide, you. All Might stopped in front of Izuku, I know you don't like me son and I'm not here to try to change your mind. I'm here to ask for your help, nothing more. Why should I? I still blame you for the deaths of my family. Why in the world, would I ever help you? Izuku said, staring at the number one hero. Because GL, I'm dying All Might said to the surprise of Izuku. What you saw a few moments ago was the result of a battle I had with a villain years ago. Right now I can only be a hero for a few hours, so I need a successor. Mirio here has agreed to it but I still think he needs to be tested. Will you help us? All Might said bowing. Izuku couldn't believe it, All Might was dying and he was bowing right in front of him. I I don't know what to say, I still don't fully understand the situation. How about this GL, agree to help All Might this one time and we will owe you one favor. No matter what day, time, or place, just tell us what to do and it shall be done. Izawa said, hoping that this would convince Izuku to help. One favor? Anything I want? Oh, you are going to regret that. Izuku said with a smile. All right fine, I'll agree to help you just this once but after that don't ask me for anything else. Especially if it relates to him Izuku said, turning away from All Might. Very well, as we said before we want you to test Mirio's abilities and judge him accordingly. Naitai said, adjusting his glasses. So I fight him. Izuku said plain and simple. In lame man's terms, yes, we want you to fight Mirio, Izawa said. All right let's get this over with, come on Izuku walked over to the center of an arena. Mirio followed suit, his costume consisted of a white skin tight top, red gloves, blue pants, white boots and a yellow tinted visor. Are you ready? Asked Mirio. Yeah, ready when you are, Izuku said as his ring began to glow green. Mirio ran towards Izuku, floating slightly above the ground Izuku readied his ring, but before he could create anything Mirio disappeared under the floor. What the? Izuku looked around but couldn't find him, ring, scan the area for active quirks just then the whole gym was lit up by a green pulse of energy. Quirk signature detected, behind you Izuku turned around to find Mirio appearing from the ground ready to kick him. SH asterisk T with so little time to react Izuku created a green construct wall. However to Izuku's surprise, Mirio's leg phased through the construct wall and hit Izuku across the face. The kick was so hard that it managed to send Izuku flying into the gym wall shattering it. Izuku was stunned, so that's his quirk, he can pass through things, he then felt something warm run down his nose, reaching up he noticed it was blood. Sorry but I was told not to hold back against you, Mirio said. Guess I was taking this too lightly, alright let's switch things up. Izuku pushed himself out of the wall, floating in the air he created several green construct copies of himself. Get him boys. The green constructs of Izuku all ran towards Mirio, you think this is enough to stop me? Mirio said smashing one of the constructs into pieces. One by one Mirio destroyed them all, Izuku on the other hand was analyzing his fight patterns. Every kick, every punch, every activation of his quirk Izuku would take mental notes, he needed to find an opening. Then he saw it, a chance, there, he said, firing off an energy blast at Mirio. Mirio was fighting the constructs when all of a sudden they jumped out of the way, and from in between them a green beam of energy appeared. Mirio quickly activated his quirk letting the blast pass through him, nice try but my quirk allows me to pass through objects. I know a voice said behind him. But quirks are like muscles so that means there is a slight delay in which you activate your quirk. And in that split second your body goes tense, almost as if you are holding your breath. Turning around Mirio was met by a fist to his stomach, knocking the wind out of him. Take away your breath and your quirk becomes useless. Izuku said pointing his ring at Mirio. Checkmate he said, firing a blast that completely engulfed the young hero. The blast sent Mirio flying towards the wall completely destroying it. His body tumbled outside of the gym and finally rolled to a stop. The heroes watching were in awe, Izuku just took down one of the big three. Even amongst the pros, Mirio had the best chance of taking the number one spot. And GL just took him out, he scanned for weaknesses mid-fight. No one. Not even myself could do that, at least not that fast Izawa said as his eyes widened. Sir Naitai was even more surprised, T this kid just took down Mirio. Impossible. Izuku looked back at the heroes, what? Did I go overboard? 
Just then Mirio appeared from the hole in the wall, man you really are strong, well it's my loss. It was good fighting you Green Lantern, maybe we can do this again, he said, holding out his hand. Izuka grabbed it and smiled, sure, any time and any place. Just then All Might and Naitai walked towards the two, so GL, what's your assessment? Do you think young Mirio is worthy of becoming my successor? Hmm honestly, yes. I could tell while he was fighting, he is a good man, he has a strong will and wants to be a hero for all the right reasons. So yes, I do believe he is worthy said Izuku, the heroes all smiled. Good, I knew he would be worthy. So All Might will you accept Mirio as your successor now, asked Naitai. Very well, Mirio will be my successor but not yet, I will wait until he graduates to give him my power All Might said. Naitai nodded, very well, and thank you GL thanks to you the world will now have a symbol of peace once All Might retires. He said, extending his arm for a shake. Izuka grabbed it and looked directly into his eyes, no problem, glad I can help. In that instant Naitai used his quirk of foresight on Izuku. What he saw scared him, but he didn't show it on his face. Well I think it's time for me to leave. Eraser head, need a lift somewhere. No thanks I rather walk, anyway you're free to go we don't have much to do around here now that the students are at their hero internships said Izawa. Izuku nodded, all right well, you know how to reach me if anything comes up. Later. And with that Izuku took off, through the broken wall and into the sky. Once he did Naitai fell to his knees, sir. What's wrong Mirio said rushing over to his side. T that boy, he's going to bring about the fall of everything. Naitai said sweating profusely. What do you mean? Asked All Might. I used my foresight on him and I saw GL on a throne, with the lifeless corpses of every hero at his feet. He didn't have the green color ring, he had one that was pure black Naitai said with fear. B but GL only hurts bad guys and besides he seems like a good kid Mirio said, helping Naitai up. What I saw was the future, that is his destiny. The heroes all looked at each other, they didn't know what to do with this information. A few hours later with Izuku. Izuku sat in Eurika's apartment board, since he was given the day off he spent working out and sleeping. It was now around 10 p.m. and soon it would be time to go out on patrol. That's when he decided this would be a good chance to talk with Eurika. Charging his ring, he created an earpiece and instructed the ring to call Eurika. I hope she's not asleep yet he said as it began to ring. Hello. A voice said through his earpiece. Hey Eurika, it's me, Izuku said with a smile. Oh Izuku. I was wondering when you would call me said Eurika. Oh missing me already. Izuku said in a playful manner. Eurika blushed, and no. I was just, bored that's all. Right, well how was your first day? Izuku. It went really well, Gunhead showed me around the office and we even sparred for a bit. I worked up a good sweat so I just got out of the shower said Eurika with only a towel around her body. Izuka could picture her in nothing but a towel, and just the thought made him blush red. Oh oh, well you must be tired, I'll let you get some sleep. Yeah I am pretty tired, well good night Izuku. Try not to stay out too late alright Eurika said with a bit of worry. Izuku nodded, I'll try, no promises though. Eurika smiled, well I guess that's as good as I'm going to get. Good night. Good night, Izuku said. Oh and Izuku, no naughty thoughts of me alright she said giggling, she then hung up before Izuku could say anything else. He smiled, how did she know? I really can't hide anything from her. I guess it's time to go out on patrol Izuku took off into the night sky. In Hosu, Shigaraki and Kurojiri stood on top of a building with three mid-tier Nomuas, are you sure the hero killer is here, asked Shigaraki as his ring began to glow yellow. Yes, this is the city where he asked to be transported to, said Kurojiri. Good. Then let's begin shall we? With the amount of fear these nomus will spread, I will only grow stronger. Go my nomus and spread fear into the hearts of everyone in the city. With a mighty roar, the three giants jumped off the building and began their rampage. Meanwhile in the same city, Aitsa was doing his hero internship with his brother the turbo hero, Ingenium. Now pay close attention Aitsa, there might not be any big crime in the city but you still have to stay alert. No matter how big or small the situation may be, it is your duty as a hero to treat every situation as if it was life or death Ingenium said. Aitsa nodded, of course brother, I will take every situation seriously. Ingenium smiled seeing how dedicated his little brother was, just then a voice came in through their helmets. SOS. Any heroes in the Hosu area please converge to the downtown district. We are under attack by strange creatures. They have already taken down a few pros, we need backup now. Aitsa. Ingenium yelled out. Let's go we can get there the fastest. 
Once we get there you are free to use your quirk freely in order to protect yourself and others. Right, with that the two ran towards the downtown area. Turn here, we can take this alley to get to the highway, Ingenium said, turning into an alley. As the two speedsters ran down the alley a shadow of a man was seen above them, there you are and right where I want you reaching into their pocket the man pulled out knives and threw them down towards the two heroes. As they were running down the alley Itza saw the glimmer of the knives coming down towards them, brother, look out, he said, yanking his brother back. As he did, the knives dug into the ground where they would have been. Knives. Just then the man jumped down onto the alley. Who are you? Ingenium said on guard. Someone who plans to cleanse this world of the fake. Unfortunately that includes you, the man suddenly ran towards them with a sword at the ready. Ingenium knew who this was, Stain. Itza look out. Ingenium pushed Itza out of the way as Stain sliced down. Fortunately Ingenium used his quirk to dodge but the blade still managed to cut him across the chest. Brother. Itza yelled out as he saw blood pour down his brother's chest. I I am fine, listen you need to get out of here Ingenium said, grunting in pain. No I won't run. I will fight alongside you. Itza said running at Stain. Itza don't. Ingenium tried to stop him but it was too late Itza was already running at full speed at Stain. Itza jumped up and tried to deliver a kick to Stain's head only to have him dodge under it. So you're a fake as well, alright then I'll take care of you first pulling out a small hunter's knife Stain stabbed into Itza's shoulder. Itza pushed through the pain and managed to use his quirk to kick downwards. Stain saw it coming and jumped back, barely dodging the kick he looked at the two wounded heroes. Not bad kid, if that kick had landed I would have been in some real trouble. Well doesn't matter now, I think I've wasted enough time with the both of you. Raising both sword and knife Stain proceeded to lick the blood off of them, as soon as he did both Itza and Ingenium fell to the floor. W what is this? I can't move my body Itza said, laying on the floor unable to move. This must be his quirk, he can paralyze people with just their blood, so this is how you've taken down so many heroes. Ingenium said thinking back to all of the reports he read about fallen heroes. Exactly, predators don't play with their food so I'll just kill you first Stain said walking over to Itza. No. Please, don't hurt him. Kill me instead. Ingenium said pleading for his brother's life. Stain stopped and turned around, you are willing to go that far? Very well, I will kill you first. Ingenium smiled, Itza listen to me, no matter what happens I want you to know that I'm so proud of you and I am sorry that I won't be there to see you when you become an amazing hero. Itza was in tears as Stain stopped in front of his brother, please someone help us. Wait, the device GL gave us. It's in my pocket. Come on, body move. Itza's hand slowly began to move down towards his pocket. Keeping his eyes on Stain, his face turned to one of horror when he saw Stain lift the sword. So long hero. Stain brought down the sword ready to kill Ingenium. Press. Just as the blade was going to pierce Ingenium a bright green light appeared blasting Stain into a nearby wall and away from the hero. Looks like I got here just in time a voice said. Itza smiled as he recognized this voice, GL. Itza right? It's a good thing I gave you guys that device, so what's the deal with him? Izuku asked, pointing to Stain. He's the hero killer Stain, Ingenium said. Is that right? That means I can just take him down and not worry about anything Izuku said while walking towards Stain. Stain pushed the pieces of rubble off of himself, what the hell? Who the hell are you supposed to be? Wait, that ring, you're just like Shigaraki Stain said as blood ran down his lip. Doesn't matter, you are only a pebble in my way, so move. Faster than Itza and Ingenium could track Stain launched himself at Izuku, you're mine kid, he said, swinging his sword. However, Izuku simply raised his hand and created a sword of his own. Once Stain's sword made contact with the green construct one, it shattered. Stain's eyes went wide as his sword was now in pieces, what? Impossible. Nothing is impossible for me, Izuku said, creating two walls and smashing them into Stain from either side. Stain was now completely knocked out, now that he was, his quirk was starting to wear off. Itza was the first one to get up, running to his brother's side he helped him. Thank you GL, you saved us, Ingenium said as he was being held up by Itza. Izuku smiled, no problem, let's get out of here. We can let the other heroes handle him he said heading to the end of the alley with the both of them walking behind him. Not so fast, a voice said behind Izuku, turning around he found Stain had gotten back up and was now pointing a dagger to Itza's neck and a sword to Ingenium's back. Izuku raised his ring prepared to fire but stopped when he noticed that Stain was using Itza as a shield, damn it. I don't have a shot. Shut up and listen, since you ruined my hunt, I think it's time for a bit of payback. Stain pushed the weapons deeper into their skin, 
enough to draw blood. Stop. Izuku said wanting to blast him but couldn't. Don't worry you'll be able to save one of them, but only one. Now choose, who do you want to live and who do you want to die? Stain said with an evil smile. Izuku gritted his teeth, how about both, he said as the ring began to glow brighter as Izuku was done playing games. However seeing this, Stain gripped the weapons even tighter, that ring is based on thought, and in high stakes situations your response times are slowed. Not by a lot but just long enough where I can slice one of their necks. Are you willing to risk it? Izuku stayed silent. That's what I thought, now choose. L listen GL, choose me and save Itza, Ingenium said. Itza eyes went wide, and no. Choose my brother, he's already a established hero and does more good than I do. Izuku couldn't think straight, there were so many things running through his mind, P please don't make me choose, I can't, he said, his hand now shaking. Stain smiled, come on hero, you now have five seconds before I kill the both of them. 5. Lantern save Itza. 4. No, save Ingenium. 3. Choose. 2. Stop it. 1. Time's up. You both die. 0. Izuku yelled out, firing a blast of energy at Stain. At the last second Izuku fired towards the direction of Itza, knocking the dagger out of Stain's hand he quickly pointed his ring towards Ingenium but it was too late. The sword pierced Ingenium's back and came out through his front. Stain stood there as Ingenium's body fell to the floor, no. In a fit of rage Izuku created hundreds of green construct fists and launched them all at the same time towards Stain. One by one the fists hit Stain breaking bones in the process. After it was over Stain was a bloody, beaten mess. Izuku ran over to where Ingenium was to check on him, the sword had pierced some organs and he was now bleeding heavily. With half his face bruised, Stain gave another evil smile. I it looks like you've, made your choice lantern. Izuku snapped when he heard those words, running over he kicked Stain across the face. Do you just don't care? Have you ever thought about the people you've killed? The lives you've ruined? And no, not even once. Stain said, spitting in Izuku's face. And I never will. I see now. Izuku wiped the spit off his face. You have no compassion, that means there is no hope for you throwing Stain aside, Izuku pointed his ring at him. That's it? Kill me. If you don't I'll just kill some more. Stain said laughing hysterically. Izuku was about to fire a blast at Stain that was meant to kill him but stopped when he heard Ingenium grunt out in pain. Lantern we need to get him to a hospital now. Itza said, yelling at Izuku. I get it. I want him dead too but now is not the time for that. We need to save my brother first. Fine. Izuku ran towards Ingenium and began to form a bubble around him. Itza quickly jumped on and off they went towards the hospital. Landing they made their way into the emergency room, blood from Ingenium was starting to stain Izuku's hands and hospital floor. The nurses quickly placed Ingenium onto a stretcher, as they did he started to lose vital signs. Itza and Izuku watched as they pushed him into the surgery room, looking down, Izuku noticed his hands were covered in blood. It was now around midnight and they were yet to receive any word on Ingenium's condition. Itza had already contacted his family and were now in the waiting room with them. Just then the doctor came out, Itza's family quickly got up. Doc, how is he? How is my son? asked Itza's mother. The doctor had a sad look on his face, I'm sorry, but the sword managed to pierce his intestines. There was a lot of internal bleeding, we did everything we could but the cut was too much. I'm truly am sorry, but he's passed away. Izuku's eyes went wide when he heard the news, Itza's parents were in tears when they heard the news. T this is my fault. Izuku looked down at his blood-stained hands. And no. Not again. The events of Maria's death began to flash in Izuku's mind. Aitsa turned to Izuku to find a look of horror and disgust on his face, GL, wait. He tried to talk to him but it was too late. Izuku powered up and rocketed out of the hospital. Back in Hosu, Stain managed to climb the fire escape on the side of the building, now crawling on the roof he began to think of his next move. What to do well first things first I need to heal. After that I think I'll move on to the next city. Standing up he was about to jump to another roof when a ray of indigo light fell behind him. Turning around Stain saw a woman with light purple colored skin and long black dreadlocks. She was wielding a staff with the indigo color coming out of it. Who the hell are you? Stain asked. Not the woman said pointing her staff at Stain. Suddenly a beam of indigo light engulfed Stain completely, the whole city watched as the sky was illuminated by this light. As the light disappeared Stain stood there with his head down, Looking up it was slowly revealed that his eyes now bared the mark of the indigo tribe. 
The woman smiled as Stain's attire began to change into one that was indigo in color, Nak. Tor Lorik San, Bor Nak Amur, Natro Mofon Tornik Wadur. Tur Lantern Kurlo Abin Sir, Ton Lek Lek Nak Formaro Sir. Stain said in an unknown language, he held his hand up, showing the glow of a power ring. Without saying a word the two flew into the air and into space. That day Stain was never seen again and he was rumored to be dead after a month of no activity. With Shigaraki. Did you accomplish what you wanted Shigaraki? asked Kurojiri. He nodded, yeah, I can feel the power of the ring growing. It's a shame that we lost the three Nomas but with this much power it is of little consequence. So is it time to move on to stage 3? Kurojiri asked. Yeah begin stage 3, it's time we find some new members Shigaraki said as his eyes glowed bright yellow. After leaving the hospital Izuku took off into the skies, going to Yurika apartment he quickly took off the ring and threw it aside. Running into the bathroom he began to wash the blood off of his hands, as he did flashbacks of Ingenium played in his mind. Three days had passed since everyone had last seen GL and people were starting to get worried, especially Yurika. She found out what happened to Itza's brother and that Izuka was involved. Yurika tried calling him every chance she had but every time it would go straight to voicemail. Come on Izuka please pick up. I need to have someone check on him, but who? Wait, of course how could I forget? Yurika dialed a number. Back in Yurika's apartment Izuka spent his day sitting on the sofa, with the curtains closed. As he was sulking there was a knock at the door, Izuka got up to see who it was. Looking through the peephole he saw Izuka standing there. He didn't want to talk to anyone so he turned to go back on the sofa, I know you're in there Izuku, if you don't want me to break down this door I suggest you let me in. Izuku turned around, all right have it your way, doors are expensive to replace so it's coming out of your pocket. Izuku raised his leg ready to kick down the door. Just as his foot was about to hit the door Izuku opened it. Izuku was shocked at Izuku's appearance, his hair was a mess, his eyes were completely dead, and it seemed as if he hadn't seen the light of day. Izuku. Izuku. What are you doing here? Izuku asked, his voice was quiet. I heard what happened in Hosuo said Izuwa. Oh. Izuku said looking away. What do you want? I want to talk about what happened, Izuwa said. Yeah? Well I don't. Izuku went to close the door but Izuwa stopped him by placing his foot in between the door. I'm not leaving until we talk about what happened, Izuwa said insisting. Izuku glared at him, you want to talk about what happened, fine I'll tell you what happened. I let Ingenium die. Is that what you wanted to hear? That I let a hero die because I hesitated, that a hero is dead because of my actions. Izuku said, fighting back the tears. Izuwa sighed, is that what you think happened? Of course. If I didn't hesitate, Ingenium would still be alive and Itza would still have an older brother Izuku said with pain in his voice. That's not what I heard happened, said Izuwa. Huh. Itza told us what happened. Izuku you were put in a position that most pro heroes never have to go through. So no one is blaming you for what happened, not even Itza or his family. Ingenium's death is a tragic one but you saved Itza's life. Without you there, both of them would have died Izuwa said. Izuku looked up in disbelief, I, and no. That's wrong. Remember what I told you GL, you are human, we make mistakes. The actions you took that night saved my student and countless other heroes and for that I thank you. This wasn't your fault Izuwa said. Then whose fault was it then? I was the one with the most powerful weapon in the universe and I couldn't save him. Izuku said going back into the apartment. Your ring isn't what makes you Izuku. Listen, the power of that weapon, any weapon, Izuwa pointed to his ring. Comes from here he pointed to Izuku's heart. But only when tempered by this he pointed to his head. All you have to do is become better, you think you made a bad call but you saved people's lives? So pick yourself up and get back out there. Izuku stopped. How can I do that when I can't even use the ring anymore, raising his hand Izuku showed Izuwa the power ring was on his finger. However, although he had it on, the glow of green was gone. That's impossible, you charged it right. Izuwa asked, shocked that the ring wasn't working. Of course I did but after that night it just stopped working. Izuku said, putting the ring down on the table. Izuku, this isn't just about Ingenium's death is it? Tell me, what's stopping you? Said Izuwa. Izuku looked back at Izawa, I'm afraid Izawa, afraid that if I use my powers again that I will just end up hurting someone again. No, that's not it. You are afraid but not of that, you are afraid that you don't deserve that much power. That nobody does, well guess what you have that power now. You've done so much good with it, don't let this stop you from doing more good Izawa then stopped. You know what, go take a shower we are going out. Out? To where? Izuku asked. 
Doesn't matter, you don't have anything else to do, so you are coming with me said Izawa. He was right Izuku didn't have anything better to do, so he did just that. After showering Izuku quickly changed and followed Izawa to the train station, from there they went to Hosu. Getting off the train they went straight to Ingenium's hero agency. Go to the fire escape and listen in, Izawa instructed. Izuku did as he was told and climbed the fire escape. From there he could hear Izawa's voice, Aitsa. Ah oh, Mr. Izawa, how are you? Aitsa asked. I'm good, I'm here to ask if you need any help with anything, said Izawa. No not really we have everything pretty under control here, wait there is one thing. Can you help us find the green lantern? Aitsa said. Oh, can you tell me why? Said Izawa. Izuku frowned when he heard that, I knew it, they do blame me for his death. I should just leave. Izuku got up to leave, because I want to thank him he stopped. Thank him? Don't you blame him for your brother's death? Asked Izawa. Aitsa shook his head, no. Of course not. He saved me from Stain. My brother's death was caused by Stain, not by the Lantern. If it wasn't for him my parents would be burying two sons. I saw a look of despair on GL's face when he was at the hospital, he has to know that it wasn't his fault. Izuku was sitting on the fire escape when he started to cry, what would you tell him? I wouldn't tell him anything, it looked like he needed a hug. I bet he's thinking that it was his fault but that couldn't be more wrong. He saved me and for that I will always be grateful Aitsa said with a smile. Outside Izuku pulled out his ring, look at me, I became so pathetic, so powerless. But no more. Izuku slipped on the ring. I will honor Ingenium's memory and keep helping others for his sake. He said as a green glow began to shine from the ring. Well said Aitsa, I'll see what I can do. Call me if you need anything Izuku said leaving the building. As he did a small piece of green paper fell from the sky. Thanks Izuku, I needed this, now I can keep on going on. Izuku smiled, damn brat. Wait did he just leave me? He could have offered me a ride. Well whatever it's good to see him back on his feet looking up Izawa saw a streak of green shoot across the sky. Yuriko was working out with Gunhead outside of the office. Keep those arms up Yuravidi, Gunhead said, throwing a punch at Yuriko. Dodging out of the way Yuriko countered with a hard right to Gunhead's glove. Good, now again. Yuriko repeated the process over and over until she was covered in sweat. All right take ten. Then it's on to endurance training Gunhead said putting down his training gloves. Yurika nodded and turned towards a bench where she had her towel and bottled water. Taking off the gloves she was about to reach for her water when something landed behind her. There you are, a voice said. Before she knew it Yurika was picked up bridal style, H. Hey. She yelled out surprised. Looking up she noticed it was Izuku, GL. Hey Gunhead. I'm borrowing her for this afternoon, I'll bring her back at night Izuku said before flying into the air. W wait, GL Yurika tried to tell him something but Izuku didn't listen. Gunhead stood there shocked, but then he smiled. A-H-H, young love. Enjoying the view? Izuku asked. Yeah, it's incredible, wait a minute. What are you doing here Izuku, I've been trying to reach you for the last couple of days. I started to think something happened to you Yurika said, pinching his cheek. Ow ow, a lot happened these last couple of days Izuku said looking down at Yurika. It has to do with Aitsa's brother right? Izuku slowly nodded. Izuku. I know Yurika, I know, thanks for calling Izawa, said Izuku. Yurika smiled, sorry I couldn't be there for you, now where are you taking me? Ever been into space? Izuku asked. And no. Yurika said nervously. Just then the green glow of the ring began to surround Yurika in a thin layer, you're going to love this Izuku said flying up at a high rate of speed. Closing her eyes Yurika screamed out in fear as they flew into space. After a few seconds she felt her body stop moving, all right Yurika, open your eyes. Slowly opening her eyes Yurika saw the gleaming of hundreds of stars, wow, this is amazing. Izuku nodded, yeah it is. Why did you bring me here? I mean, I'm not complaining but still Yurika said, turning to Izuku. I come here to clear my mind. Izuku sighed, listen about what happened with Aitsa. Izuku explained what happened the night of the Hosu incident, Yurika said nothing but she listened to everything Izuku had to say. After a couple of minutes Izuku turned to the stars, and there you have it, now we are here. Without warning Yurika hugged Izuku, I'm sorry you had to go through all that. It's okay, I'm fine now thanks to Izuku and you Izuku said with a smile. Yurika broke the hug, me? I didn't do anything though. Izuku shook his head, that's where you are wrong, while I was, sulking. I couldn't stop thinking about you. Yurika, you mean so much to me. Every time I closed my eyes I pictured you in my arms dead, 
I grew afraid. Afraid that because of this power that I will lose you one day. But after hearing Aitsa, I now know that I can and will protect you no matter what. I Izuku. Yurika grabbed his hand. I'm not going anywhere, you can count on that. I want you to use that ring's power for not only my sake but for others. Always remember this, I'm not going to die anytime soon, so stop worrying about that. Besides, if I die, who's going to take care of you she said, placing her other hand on his cheek. Yurika. Izuku leaned his head on her hand. Her eyes gleamed with the stars in the background, Izuku leaned closer. Her lips sparked in the moonlight, Yurika blushed as she saw him closer but she didn't shy away. Closing their eyes they both leaned in, their lips met. After a few seconds they pulled away from each other, Yurika ran her fingers across her lips. W we just. Izuka blushed, why yeah we did, you didn't like it? And no, I liked it, I just wasn't expecting it, Yurika said blushing. Izuka began to laugh, what's so funny? Yurika asked. If you think about it, since I am working for UA and teaching you guys. You just kissed a teacher Izuka said laughing. Yurika blushed even harder, H hey. That's not funny, but I guess you are right. Won't this mean you'll get fired? Only if they find out, Izuku said, grabbing Yurika's hand. Come on, let's get you back to Gunhead. J just a bit longer, please. This place is just too beautiful Yurika said, pleading with Izuku. Izuku sighed, all right, just a bit longer. Hours later. Gunhead was starting to get worried, it was now almost night time and Yurika still hadn't come back. GL said they would be back soon but it's already been hours. I hope nothing bad happens to them he said standing outside his office. Just then a green light began to fall from the sky, as it got closer he noticed it was a green ball. It landed in the outside exercise area, looks like you two are back he said walking towards GL and Yurika. He also noticed that they were holding hands, oh? What's this? When did the two of you become so lovey-dovey? He said teasing the poor kids. They quickly let go of each other's hands, I it's not what it looks like Yurika said embarrassed. Gunhead laughed. I'm just teasing, well come on you Ravidi you can hang out with your boyfriend later. Right now you are still in the middle of an internship and don't worry about this, I won't say anything. Yurika nodded, I'll see you soon, make sure to call me. Izuku nodded, of course, later and thanks Gunhead, for keeping this a secret. Anytime GL Gunhead said as Izuku took off into the sky. So, did you two kiss? Yurika blushed as she thought back to the event, and no. She looked up to see Gunhead staring at her. M maybe, yes. Oh how cute, just remember you Ravidi, GL technically speaking, is still a vigilante. So please be careful Gunhead said, warning her. Yurika nodded, I will sir. Good, now go get some rest. Tomorrow you will be working twice as hard said Gunhead. Yurika nodded and went back inside. The week went by fast, Ingenium's funeral was a small private one, only reserved for family and close friends. Izuku didn't want to attend but he knew he had to. Aitsa saw him land in front of the church. Izuku stood there waiting for him to yell, scream, or even punch him but none of that happened. Instead Izuku received a hug from Aitsa, thank you GL for coming today, it means a lot to my family that you are here. Don't worry none of us blame you for what happened Aitsa said breaking away from the hug. Izuku nodded and followed Aitsa inside, there he found his mother and father. He bowed as they walked towards him, I'm sorry for your loss. They looked at each other and smiled at Izuku, come on GL. Let us remember our son's heroism. The funeral was nice, after saying his goodbye and apologizing to Ingenium one final time. They went to lay his body to rest, Izuka followed from the skies. On the street he saw people lined up, just to say their goodbyes. Now in the cemetery they lowered his coffin down and began to cover him up. That's when they brought out a cauldron that was meant to light up. GL, if you would, please ignite the cauldron, Aitsa said. Izuka nodded and fired a blast inside. The flame was green at first but then changed to yellow. Everyone's hero internships were now over, and they all were now back in school. Class 1A knew about Aitsa's brother's death and gave him their condolences. Aitsa was given the option to take some more time but he decided it would be best if he went back to school. Izuka was in the teacher's lounge waiting, Class 1A was doing a rescue training race with All Might and he refused to go with them. That's when Izuka walked into the room, Ajiel there you are. Izuka looked up, hey Izuka, you needed me for something. Nah, just wanted to follow up with you. So how are you doing? Izawa asked. I'm doing better, thanks to you, Aitsa, and Yurika, Izuku said smiling. It's good to see you back on your feet kid. Listen, 
we are going to have final exams in a couple of days and we were thinking of having you participate said Izawa. Izuku wasn't too sure, you think that's a good idea? I kinda beat them all really easily last time, not to mention Lemillion. True, let's see, maybe you could help train some of the students then. Maybe something after school. Izawa suggested. Hmm that could work alright I'll do that. Every day until the day of the exam I'll help them out. Izuku said. Izawa nodded, good, now if you'd excuse me the rescue training should be over. From what I saw Eureka has shown the most improvement, especially when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's good, I knew she could do it, Izuku said, trying to hide his smile. Izawa left, leaving Izuku to his thoughts. Two days later. Today was going to be when Izuku was going to start helping the students train. He was given Alpha Arena to help train them. Izuku was already in the gym when the whole class walked in, all wearing their hero costumes. Izuku was surprised, whoa I didn't think all of you would show up. We talked about it and we all agreed to come, you did kind of kick our butts last time. So it's clear that we still have a lot to learn Momo said. Yeah. No way we can let you beat us again. Kiri's Hima said excitedly. Izuku smiled, alright then, let's get started shall we? I'm guessing that you are most likely going to go up against some of the teachers. So I'm going to have you fight some of my constructs. They won't be too strong but if you are not careful they will hurt you, so keep that in mind. If I see that it's too easy for you I'll increase their strength, and if you need help with anything let me know. Everyone nodded, good Izuku pointed his ring towards the empty part of the gym and created solid green constructs of himself. Take your pick. The class went to work, with no restrictions on their court they had a field day. Bakugo blew up construct after construct, Kiri's Hima smashed through them, Todoroki froze and burned them where they stood, Yuriko was fighting hand to hand with her constructs. Izuku watched from above and gave pointers when he saw someone struggling, Ajiro. When you use your tail make sure to twist your body fully. If you do that your tail will have more power to it. Momo, try creating small denser objects, that way you can use your quirk for longer Izuku gave advice. Just then Izuku heard someone yell out, looking down he saw Mina had been knocked back by one of the constructs. Man, I can't seem to get it right Mina said, picking herself up. Just then Izuku landed in front of her. Everything all right Mina? Izuku asked. Yeah, I'm just having trouble with a move. I can't seem to get my footing right Mina said frustrated. Hmm, all right let's see if I can help. Show me Izuku instructed. Mina began to execute her move, she ran at construct jumping into the air she created multiple acid balls and threw them at the construct. She managed to hit it but when she landed she would lose her balance and fall to the ground. See, I don't see what I'm doing wrong. Mina said. Izuku walked over to her, I think I know what's going on. Let me try something he held out his hand to help her up. Mina grabbed it and was pulled up, really? You know what I'm doing wrong? Please help me. Show me your form again Mina did just that. Your form is off, this may be a little uncomfortable but please bear with it. W what are you going? But before she could say anything else Izuku went behind her, kneeled down and grabbed her thigh. G Green Lantern. What are you doing? As sorry but bear with it for a couple more seconds Izuku began to shift her legs slightly. You aren't using your full mobility. Use your hip joint, since women have shallower pelvis. This gives you a much wider range of motion and lateral motion. If you move your entire body using your hip joint then it will make your moves faster and sharper. The class stopped what they were doing and looked at what GL was doing, Yurika's eyes went wide. Hey, are you almost done? Mina asked, embarrassed. Almost, all right there. You go Izuku said letting her go. Mina turned, her face was bright red, I it feels tight. You'll get used to it, now do that same move again Izuku said backing away. Mina got ready and did the same move, this time she actually landed it perfectly. Whoa, my body feels so much lighter and it's as if I just became ten times more flexible. Remember that feeling, do that and you shouldn't have that problem anymore Izuku said with a smile. Just then Mina ran towards him, thanks GL. But maybe next time buy me dinner first she said getting up close and personal. Izuku blushed, I I didn't mean for that, I mean. Suddenly the sound of a construct shattering was heard, looking over Izuku watched as his clone faded away. Izuku's eyes went wide when he saw who did it, uh oh. Yuriko looked at Izuku before turning away, wow Okako, when did you learn that move? Gunhead taught me how to use my quirk when fighting one on one. Hey Lantern, can I get another construct over here Yuriko said, with a bit of jealousy. As sure, no problem Izuku created another clone for Yurika. After a couple of hours Izuku decided to call it a day. Alright everyone, make sure to get some rest. 
If you want I'll be here at the same time, same place tomorrow with that Izuku took off into the skies. Yuriko watched him leave, to make it less suspicious for Izuku, they planned out that Yuriko would go to the station and wait for Izuku there. Now at the station Yuriko went to the back alley and waited for Izuku to show up. Hey, ready? he asked, landing in the alley with her. She nodded, L let's go then, usually Izuku would create a bubble around her but this time she threw her arms around him. UMM Yuriko. Go, she said simply. All right. They took off to head back to the apartment. UMM Yuriko. Everything okay? Yeah everything is fine she said looking away. Everything was not fine, are you sure? Yuriko sighed, why did you touch Mina like that, she asked, puffing her cheeks. I I was only helping her with her form, that's all Izuku then realized. A are you jealous? Yuriko blushed, and no. I'm not jealous she said, poking at his sides. The poking tickled Izuku, you Yuriko stop, I won't be able to focus but she didn't stop. Oh okay, okay you win, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that with Mina. Please stop, have mercy. She stopped, good, now buy me some mochi. Izuku relented, fine. Let's stop by for some mochi. Izuku did everything he could leading up to the final exams, he trained everyone, taught them what to do, and even helped improve their quirks. While he wasn't participating he was watching, it was as he said, class 1A was up against the teachers. Hovering above the testing area Izuku watched them go in pairs of two against their teachers. He was pleasantly surprised to see most of them pass, however there were those who did. They just have back matchups, oh well maybe next time Izuku said landing beside Nizu and the other teachers. And that concludes the final exams, while it is true some of you didn't pass we've seen great improvement when it comes to your quirks. I suspect this is because of the lantern here Nizu said motioning to Izuku. Yeah. GL helped us a lot. If it wasn't for him some of us wouldn't even pass. Kiri's Hima said. That's correct, it was thanks to GL's guidance, and for that we are grateful Momo said bowing slightly. Izuku blushed slightly, it's nothing, you guys did most of the work. I just gave you some tips. Don't sell yourself short GL, you did good helping these students, said All Might. Izuku glared at All Might, well I guess you're right, now that it's summer break I don't need to be on campus anymore. That means more time to relax Izuku said, putting his hands behind his head. Actually GL, the students are going to quirk training camp over the summer, Nizu said breaking the news. Izuku's eyes went wide, no. Come on GL, you signed up for this. You have to accompany the students Izuku said. Be but my break. Izuku said, turning to the class. See can they go without me? Sorry but no, with the improvement they showed thanks to your training, you must go Nizu said with a smile. Izuku then looked Yuriko, she had a look of sympathy on her face, fine, I'll go. The class cheered when Izuku said he would go, good, now get ready for the trip. We leave in a few days. Yes, sir, the class responded. Now that the day was done Izuku went back to the apartment to relax for a bit, it was now the afternoon hour when Izuku heard the doorknob begin to jiggle, then open. Izuku. I'm back. Yuriko yelled out. Izuku got up from the sofa, welcome back Yuriko, so what do you want for dinner? I was thinking maybe we could go out to eat. That sounds awesome. Actually Izuku, the class made plans to go shopping tomorrow and I was wondering if you wanted to go with us. Yuriko said, throwing her bag on a chair. Izuku thought about it, sure why not. They can finally meet Izuku instead of the lantern. Cool, I'll let Mina know you're coming. She's the one who planned it. Yuriko pulled out her phone and messaged Mina. Almost instantly she felt her phone vibrate. Well it seems Mina can't wait to see you again. Ha, if only she knew I was teaching her. So where are we going anyway? Izuku asked. The mall, the guys want to get camping supplies but all I really need is bug spray. Yuriko said, taking off her jacket. I'm going to take a shower real quick, decide on a place to go eat. Izuku nodded, you got it? After showering and resting for a bit Yuriko and Izuku went out for dinner. After that they walked along the beach for a bit before heading back home. Izuku went out to patrol at night, he promised to get home early so he would be well rested for the shopping trip with her class. It was now the next day as Yuriko was getting ready to meet her friends, come on Izuku, they are going to be waiting for us she said sporting a yellow shirt, a white skirt, and black leggings. All right, I'm ready. So how do I look? Izuku asked, walking out of the room. He was wearing a green shirt with a black jacket over it and black pants. Yuriko eyed him up and down, you look amazing Izuku. Good, now I won't be as embarrassed when you introduce me as your boyfriend, Izuku said, 
blushing slightly. You'll be fine, they are going to like you I guarantee it. Now come on, let's go Eurica said grabbing his hand and walking out the door. After a quick trip by a train, they were now at the mall. Hey Okako, a voice called out, turning around Eurica saw her class waiting for her. Hey guys sorry we are late Eurica said walking towards her friends. We, ask Mina. Eurica cleared her throat, guys I want you to meet Izuku Midoriya, my boyfriend. Izuku then stepped forward, hi it's nice to meet you all he said bowing slightly. Everyone was stunned, we knew it. You're the same guy as back then. Mina said pushing her way to the front. Why yeah, we started going out recently and I figured since we were all going to be together might as well introduce him Eurika said. The girls already knew who he was so there was no need for them to introduce themselves. So now it was only the guys, one by one they introduced themselves, everything was going smoothly until Bakugo saw who it was. Dideku. A voice cut through everyone. What the hell are you doing here? Bakugo said, walking up to Izuku and grabbing him by his shirt collar. Bakugo. What are you doing? Kiri's Hima said, trying to restrain his friend. Back off spiky hair. Bakugo said, pushing him away. Answer me Deku. What the hell are you doing here? Long time no see Kakan, would you mind letting me go? Izuku asked but Bakugo didn't loosen his grip. Bakugo, enough, let him go, Eurika said, stepping up to him. Shut it round face. Bakugo raised his free hand towards Eurika, it looked like he was about to blast her. Izuku saw this and reached out and grabbed Bakugo's wrist, I wouldn't do that if I were you he said staring at Bakugo. Shut up. You don't scare me, you orphan f asterisk ck. You don't even have a quirk. Just then Bakugo felt another hand on his other wrist. Looking down he noticed Izuku grabbed his other hand, the one he had on Izuku's collar. As he grabbed his wrist Izuku began to overpower Bakugo. W what? Before he knew it, Izuku managed to free himself and was now twisting his wrist. The sound of bones cracking was heard as Bakugo grunted out in pain. I'm not the same worthless person you used to bully around Kakan. I won't take you hurting me or Eureka lightly. So back off Izuku said, pushing Bakugo away. Bakugo grabbed his wrist, it wasn't broken but it was bruised. Why you little, he once again lunged at Izuku. Izuku had the ring in his pocket in case he needed it, but he knew if he used it his identity would be revealed. Bakugo readied his explosions, but before he could hit Izuku, Kiri's Hima grabbed his arm. That's enough man, if you use your quirk here you'll get in trouble. Not only with the school but with the cops too. Bakugo scoffed, whatever, I'm out of here he said walking away from the group. Kiri's Hima bowed towards Izuku, sorry about him, he's usually more calm. I should go check on him, it was nice meeting you man, even though it was for a bit. Izuku nodded, no problem, I'll see you soon he then turned to the rest of the class. Sorry you had to see that, so shall we get going? From what Eureka has told me, you guys still need a lot of stuff to buy for your trip. Seeing that Izuku wanted to put this behind him the class nodded and went on their way. Izuku quickly made friends with them and even got their numbers. After buying what they needed the class decided to have some lunch. During all of this one student couldn't stop staring at Izuku, Todoroki was always the guy who had very little to say but something about Izuku caught his attention. Alas as they were eating lunch and talking, Todoroki couldn't take it anymore. So Midoriya, was it true what Bakugo said, that you are an orphan? The class stopped and stared at Todoroki, just then Momo who was sitting beside him took a jab at his side. Todoroki. Why you shouldn't ask stuff like that? Izuku chuckled, out of everything that went down, that was the last thing I thought someone would ask. To answer your question, yes it's true. I bounced around home to home until I finally decided to leave and live in the streets. The class fell silent, oh don't feel bad guys, it was a blessing actually. I got to meet Eureka because of it. Besides I got a job now and my own place so things couldn't be better he said grabbing her hand. Oh yeah we've been meaning to ask, how did you two meet? Ask Mina. I bumped into him while walking on the beach, he looked like he needed help so I helped him. Ever since we've been meeting at the beach and just talking. Eureka said blushing. Oh how cute, a certain green colored vigilante is going to have his heart broken when he hears about this. Tsu said. Oh yeah the lantern. Now that you're unavailable I can have a shot. Mina said excitedly. The girls all gave her a look, honestly you may have a chance, but don't get your hopes up said Momo. Izuku finished his meal, I'll be right back, I just need to go wash my hands. He went to the restroom and washed his hands but as he left a voice called out to him, Hey Green, mind if we talk for a second. Izuku recognized the voice, turning around he saw Shigaraki standing there wearing a black torn hoodie. You. Izuku tried to reach for the ring. 
Take out the ring and your friends die, Shigaraki said, showing Izuku the yellow glow of the yellow ring. Izuku pulled his hand back, what do you want Shigaraki? Let's go sit down shall we? Shigaraki said, walking towards a bench. With no other option Izuku sat down beside Shigaraki, only to be grabbed by him by the arm. You remember what my quirk does right? So you know what happens when I put the last finger on you, right? Izuku swallowed a lump in his throat, why yeah, I know. Good, now don't try anything. Even if you could stop me, I would still have enough time to kill a good amount of civilians with the ring. Shigaraki said with an evil smile. Izuku felt the grip around his arm tighten, why are you here? He asked in pain. I needed to clear my head, the voices, they kept yelling at me, do you hear them? The voices. Shigaraki asked. And no, I don't hear anything, Izuku responded. Don't lie to me. Shigaraki yelled out, almost placing the final finger on Izuku. I know you can hear them. You have a ring too, why don't you hear them? That's when Izuku had an idea what was going on, the ring, it's fueled by fear. What you're hearing is probably the screams of those that felt your fear. You need to take off that ring. No. 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 I can't, I can't, I need this power see. I need it to kill All Might, we are planning something real soon so you'd better be prepared for that lantern. Shigaraki said with a twisted smile on his face. Maybe maybe if I kill you the voices will stop, yeah that's it, all I have to do is kill you right here, right now Shigaraki said as he lowered the final finger. Izuku's eyes went wide, just as the finger was about to touch him, a voice was heard. Hey you alright, looking up he saw Shoto Todoroki. Why yeah I'm fine, don't come any closer. Izuku yelled out. Shigaraki then let Izuku go, oh I didn't know you were here with friends. I'll leave now, nice talking to you. Hey hold on. Todoroki tried to stop Shigaraki but Izuku put his hand up. Tell me Shigaraki, what are you planning? Izuku said, holding his bruised arm. Todoroki's eyes widened, Shigaraki, he's the one who attacked us at the USJ. Looking back, Shigaraki's expression was blank, the destruction of All Might and his so-called hero society. And there are none who can stop me, follow me and people will die. Izuku gritted his teeth as he watched Shigaraki disappear into the crowd, damn it Shigaraki, no matter what you have planned I will stop you. No matter what it takes. Midori you're right. We need to go talk to the police, that was Shigaraki. He's the one responsible for attacking us at the USJ said Todoroki. Izuku nodded, yeah, alright go ahead and call them. A short while later the police closed off the food court and began to speak to Izuku and Todoroki about what they saw. Izuku explained that he was coming out of the restroom when Shigaraki grabbed him and he didn't know why. Class 1A was worried, especially Yuriko when they took both of them to the police station. Izuku told them not to worry, he would see them again. Yuriko tried to go with him to the police station but they refused citing security risks. She relented and told Izuku to call her the second he was out of the station, he agreed and went with the police. In the station Izuku was taken to a room and was told to wait, after a few minutes Izawa walked into the room. Looks like trouble follows you everywhere you go ha kid, he said, taking a seat. Izuku shrugged, it's part of my charm I guess. Apparently, well what did Shigaraki tell you? We both know the reason why he targeted you but what did he say? Izawa asked. He needed to clear his mind, but this is the weird part, he said something about hearing voices. Before he almost killed me, I asked what he was planning. He wants to see all my dead and the destruction of our hero society. He didn't say how he would do that, but I can tell you this, he was serious about that Izawa. The look in his eyes said it all, and honestly I think he can do it Izuku said thinking back to when Shigaraki grabbed him. I see, this must have been terrifying for you, go home and get some rest, we'll take it from here. Remember you still got to go with the students to the training camp. Izawa said standing up. Izuku nodded, yeah, I'll see you on Monday then he was escorted out of the station, some of the officers offered to give Izuku a ride home but he just said he would take the train and relax for a bit. As he walked to the station Izuku turned into an alley and slipped on the ring. His costume appeared, I swear Shigaraki, I am going to make you pay for threatening my friends. With that Izuku took off into the air and headed straight to Yuriko's apartment. It was already night time when Izuku landed on the balcony, opening the sliding door he walked in. Yuriko? Are you here? He announced himself to a dark room. Just then someone jumped out of the shadows, panicking Izuku almost blasted whoever that was but stopped when he noticed it was Yuriko hugging him. You Yuriko. You scared me. The grip around him tightened, Izuku. Thank goodness you are alright. When I saw you being taken away, I, I. Izuku smiled and hugged her back, it's alright Yuriko, 
I'm here now and nothing happened. She nodded, all right, no patrolling today. Tonight you stay home with me. All right all right, no patrolling today Izuku took off the ring. There, better, he asked, lifting Yurika's face by the chin. Much better, now come on let's get some rest. It's been a long day said Yurika. Izuku agreed and went straight to sleep. The next couple of days went by quickly, Izuku would spend his nights looking for Shigaraki but couldn't find him. It was now the early morning and Yurika had already left for school, Izuku on the other hand was told to go in a little later. Since this trip was going to take more than a day Izuku took the power battery with him, creating a belt he latched it on and off he went. In a few minutes Izuku landed in front of class 1A, hey guys. Everyone turned to see GL land in front of them, hey lantern, glad you can make it Izuwa said, walking towards Izuku. Izuwa, where are the buses? Izuku asked, looking around. The buses already left, class 1B took them he said. This confused Izuku, what about class 1A? How are they meant to? Izawa smiled, you got it, so if you would. We'd much like to leave already. Izuku sighed, fine. Step back a bit. Izawa backed away, pointing his ring towards an open part of the school, he began to create a V-22 Osprey aircraft. The class was in awe when they saw the giant aircraft appear in front of them, I is that thing safe? Aitsa asked. The ring only allows those with pure hearts on, if you don't have a pure heart it will shock you Izuku said turning to the class. The class wasn't sure about this anymore, Izuku couldn't hold his laugh anymore. I'm just kidding guys, it's safe. Come on you guys, you can trust me. They all looked at each other, Yurika was the first one to step onto the aircraft. Putting a bit of pressure on her foot, she saw that it was solid. It's alright guys. It's safe, come let's go. The class quickly followed, and soon enough they were all on board. Izuku sat in the front, while Izawa sat beside him. Do you even know how to fly this thing? asked Izawa. Nope not one bit Izawa's eyes went wide. Don't worry, I'll get the hang of it soon enough. It's just like a video game right? Um, maybe this was a bad idea. Let me call Nizu. But before Izawa could unbuckle himself Izuku fired up the engines. Don't be such a worry wart Izawa, just sit back and relax. We'll get there in no time Izuku said as they began to levitate off the ground. Izuku then reached for the radio, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are all strapped in and holding onto the safety rails because we are about to set off on our trip. So as most of you say, plus ultra. Izuku pushed a button, which transformed the rotors into jet engines, pointing them towards the horizon he stepped on it. Green fire began to spew out of the engines, everyone inside felt g-force as the aircraft began to gain speed. Normally the trip would take about 3 hours on a bus, but with Izuku it would only take 30 minutes. They were now over a large forest, we are here gl, set her down there Izuwa said pointing to a cliffside. Izuku put down the aircraft slowly and carefully, all right everyone we are here. Grab your things and head on out, single file please. With wobbly legs everyone grabbed their stuff and got off, so how was the ride? Izuku asked, making the aircraft disappear. GGL, we like you but, let's not do that again, Kirishama said, holding back the urge to barf. Was it really that bad? Izuku asked the rest of the class. They all nodded, huh, my bad. Next time I'll take it slower. They should be here any minute now, Izawa said looking at his watch. Who should be here, asked Izuku. Who other than the wild, wild, pussycats, two women suddenly appeared near the cliff's edge. In front of class 1A stood two women, one had blonde hair and blue eyes, the other had brown eyes and reddish hair. They were both wearing cat paws and tails. Class meet your instructors for this training camp, these are the wild wild pussycats. They are heroes that specialize in mountain rescue and they can teach you a thing or two. Over the course of this week they will be overlooking your training, of course along with GL here Izawa explained. So this is the famous vigilante, but he's just a kid. Pixie Bob said eyeing Izuku. You can't judge a book by its cover, Pixie Bob, anyway it's nice to finally meet you GL I hope we can get along, Mandalay said with a smile. Izuku nodded, nice to meet you too, so who's the kid, he asked, pointing to a small boy with a red hat. Oh that's my nephew Kota, we are taking care of him Mandalay said. He's a bit shy but he's a good kid. Now that introductions are out of the way, Mandalay, Pixie Bob, I think it's time to start said Izawa. They nodded, alright everyone listen up, see that mountain over there. Pixie Bob said pointing behind her. We have a campsite at the base of that mountain, it's 9 a.m., so you have until 12.30 to get there. B but that's so far away. Mina said, backing away. Yeah. No way we can get there in time, 
I think I'll ask GL for a ride said Kiri's Hima. Mandalay then jumped behind him, sorry but you guys are taking the scenic route today placing her hands on the ground it began to rumble and break apart. Before long she created a giant wave of rock and dirt. Some of the class tried to escape but Izuka created a construct wall around him, GL. Why? We trusted you. Izuka smiled as the wave of earth launched them off the cliff, sorry but this is how you learn. I'll see you all at the campsite. Thanks for the assist GL, now it's time for my creations. Pixie Bob said, activating her quirk. Izuka looked down to see giant rock creatures begin to form, oh that is so cool. Yes, yes it's most impressive, now can we head to the base camp? Izuka asked. Oh yeah sure, come on I'll take you there. Let's go Kota Mandalay said but before they left Izuka stopped them. Izuka created a large green construct platform, my way is faster he said, taking off into the sky. Hold on. He said flying towards the base camp. Unknown location. Kurojiri, are the new members ready to go? Asked Shigaraki. Yes sir, they are waiting for your orders, said Kurojiri. Good, tomorrow we finally show that pesky class 1A that we mean business. They won't leave that mountain alive he said as the glow of the yellow ring shined. That reminds me, we received an interesting message from an unknown source. They claim to be part of the Green Lantern's family said Kurojiri. Oh, I thought we already investigated his family. So who are they to him? Shigaraki asked curiously who it was. Master said to bring them to you, so give me a second Kurojiri said, opening a portal beside him. The portal opened up to reveal a woman with long green hair and emerald green eyes. Your boss says you know where my son is. Izuku landed near the base camp, thanks for the ride GL said Mandalay stepping off of the green construct. No problem, so now we wait for them. Izuku asked as he put the student's luggage neatly stacked to the side. Mandalay nodded, yup and knowing Pixie Bob she isn't going to make it easy for them. So expect them to arrive until sunset. I see, that bad huh? Alright so what do I do in the meantime? Izuku asked. That's when Izawa spoke up, nothing actually, we have to wait for the students to show up. Actually GL, if you don't mind, do you want to help us prepare the food? I know that's not part of your job but we could use the extra help Mandalay said hoping Izuku would agree. Izuku smiled, sure, I don't mind. It beats just sitting around and doing nothing as he followed her into the building Izuku noticed that the small boy was giving him a stare but not one of anger but rather of sadness. He was introduced to the rest of the wild wild pussycats and as Izuku was helping he couldn't help but ask about the kid. So about the kid, who did he lose? Mandalay eyes went wide, how did you know? His eyes... I lost the family not that long ago so I know that look well, Izuku said as he peeled another potato. Mandalay sighed, his parents were the hero team known as Water Hose. They died more than a year ago fighting a villain. Ever since then Kota has been really cold towards two heroes, if I had to guess why I think he blames them for not being to save his parents. Just like me, I too blame one hero for my family's death said Izuku. Do you think you will ever forgive them? Mandalay asked. Izuku stopped peeling, I I don't know but I am trying to. I really am but that feeling will always stick with you. Kota is still young just give him time he will come around, I have a friend who is helping me. Oh? Could this friend be a girlfriend? Mandalay said, teasing him. Izuka jerked, blushing he turned away, why yet? Mandalay laughed, oh how cute, wait don't tell me it's someone from class 1A. Izuka said nothing as he peeled another potato, oh it is. So who's the lucky girl? Come on tell me. W we should finish prepping the food. Izuku said, quickly dodging the question. All right then but don't think this conversation is over said Mandalay. The sun was setting when the students finally arrived covered in dirt and dead tired, W we finally made it Mina said, collapsing on the floor. Good job everyone, you did a lot better than the last group that came here, Mandalay said, trying to make the students feel better. I know you guys are all tired so get your luggage inside. Once you are out you will all eat dinner here thanks to the pussycats and GL. Izuka said pointing towards the suitcases. Everyone nodded and went to grab their stuff, Izuka felt a bit of regret for throwing his friends off the cliff, just a bit though. Izuka then went back into the building and with the help of his ring he grabbed everyone a plate of food. All right guys, here's your food, pork cutlets and some rice, Izuka said, creating a long table with benches for them. Be grateful guys for this is the only day we are going to make you dinner. After you finish we have a hot spring in the back so feel free to use it said Pixie Bob. After dinner the students went to take a bath in the hot springs, for obvious reasons the boys and girls were separated. Izuka wanted to go into the hot spring but if he went in with the others his identity would be revealed. Izuka told him to stand guard on the roof since he knew there was at least one student that would try to peek. 
Standing atop the roof of the building Izuku kept an eye out and sure enough a short purple bald student began to climb the wall. Izuku flew over and stood at the top of the wall waiting for him, as Mineta reached the top Izuku just smiled at him. Sup Mineta, you going somewhere, he asked with a smug look. Mineta froze, oh hey GL fancy meeting you here, I know what you are thinking. So why don't we work together and all of us can enjoy the sight of beautiful women? What do you say? Izuku's ring began to glow green and Mineta knew what that meant, but before he could create anything Mineta was slapped down. Izuku turned to find Kota beside him, if you are going to do something just do it, don't just stand there like an idiot. Yeah you're right, anyway thanks for the help. The name is Green Lantern Izuku said, holding out his hand. Kota smacked his hand away, I don't care who you are, all you heroes are all the same anyway. Thanks for the assist guys, a voice said coming from the girl's side. Looking down, Izuku blushed when he saw the girls naked, Mineta really is the worst, Jiro said, covering herself. Izuku then made eye contact with Yurika, she quickly submerged herself into the water as her face turned bright red. Izuku quickly looked away, hey GL, I personally don't mind you looking but you might want to look after him Mina said pointing. Confused Izuku looked to his side to find Kota red faced and wobbly, oh snap, guess it was too much for him. Thanks for the heads up girls, I'll put this up in the meantime so Mineta won't try it again as he picked Kota up, Izuku pointed towards the wall below him and created an even taller green construct wall. Thanks GL we appreciate it, Momo said, waving at him. With that Izuku took off to find Mandalay, she laughed when Izuku told her what happened. After all of class 1A finally got out of the hot spring Izuku went in by himself. Undressing he took off the ring and went in, man this feels amazing after soaking in the water for a good bit Izuku decided it was time to get out. The room was steaming, as he was changing Izuku heard a noise coming from the door, he quickly put on the ring and went to check the door but found no one. Strange. I could have sworn I heard someone, guess I might be tired little did he know that Toru had actually tried to see who GL's identity was. She ran back to the room where all the girls were at, girls. Girls, she yelled entering the room. They were all wearing bathrobes, some of them were brushing their hair, others sitting down, and others already in their futons. Toru. What's wrong and why are you naked? Momo asked. Oh that, not important, what is important is that I went back to the girls changing room to pick up something I forgot and while I was going back I heard a noise on the boys side Toru said, putting on her bathrobe. That's strange, all the guys should be done by now Jiro said, playing with her earphone jacks. It wasn't one of the guys in our class, I opened the door to see GL naked. Toru said with excitement. The girls all stopped what they were doing and turned to Toru, what? I saw him naked, no clothes and no ring. Yurika looked on in horror. Oh oh no, his identity, if she found out. Mina's eyes gleamed, oh. Details now. How was he? Did you see who he was? He's skinny but he's really well built, I'm talking six pack and everything. If he didn't notice me I would have jumped on him said Toru. Oh my, I kinda want to see this for myself now Momo said blushing. Did you see, you know, down there? Mina asked pointing down. Yurika blushed, even though they've been living together not once has she seen Izuku naked, shirtless sure but never naked. No sorry didn't see that, but judging from his body it has to be impressive. The girls blushed, so, did you see his face? Ribbit. Asked Sue. Didn't see that either, it was too foggy I could only see his torso. But man did that get me heated. Said Toru fanning herself. Yurika breathed a sigh of relief, good she didn't see who he really is, still seeing him naked. Her mind began to be filled with naughty thoughts. What the hell am I thinking? We are dating so it should be fine, right? After some more talking the girls finally went to sleep, they had a big day tomorrow and needed their rest. Izuku went to bed too, but he was allowed to stay in the main building in his own room. It was now the next day and Izawa woke everyone up early, even Izuku. It was 5.30 am when everyone went to an open field. Come on wake up everyone. Today officially your training starts, we are going to focus on one thing during our week's stay here. That is your quirks, Bakugo catch he said, throwing a ball at him. Bakugo looked at it, this is the same as the entrance exam. Yes, now throw it, let's see how much your quirk has really improved Izawa said taking a few steps back. Bakugo with the help of his explosions launched the ball. He smirked as he thought he just shattered his old record of 750 meters. 758 meters, said Izawa. Bakugo's eyes went wide. You may have improved mentally and physically, however you all failed to train your quirks. For the next few days you will train and train until you can't stand anymore and after that we do it all over again. Whoa that sounds pretty intense. 
Glad I'm not a student. Izuka thought to himself. Izawa smiled as he saw the looks on everyone's faces, don't worry though, the lantern and the wild wild pussycats will be helping you every step of the way. Now prepare yourselves cause things are going to get crazy fast. The students were all given exercises they needed to do in order to improve their quirks. Yurika was given the objective to increase the duration she can use her quirk without getting nauseous. Izuku helped by creating whatever the class needed. It was now around midday when Izawa came back to check on everyone. What he saw surprised even himself, Izuku was relaxing on a construct chair under an umbrella and with a drink in his hand. What the hell? Oh Izawa you're back, come on sit down for a bit said Izuku creating another chair. What are you doing? Izawa asked, ignoring the chair. I'm relaxing. What I can't. I'm still helping them, and besides, Tiger is already taking care of the physical stuff. Also I can create constructs of myself if he needs the extra help Izuku said taking a sip of his drink. Izawa sighed, well I guess you're right, just stay alert all right. Izuku raised his drink, always Izawa. The students did this all day, even class 1B joined them in their training. Vlad King was the pro hero in charge of class 1B and he too put his students through the same routine as class 1As. They did this all day from sunrise to sunset, the whole point was to increase the power of their quirks. It was now the third day of the training camp and it was back to the same routine but this time Izuku was helping with hand-to-hand -hand combat. Keep your hands up and back straight, Izuku said, dodging Yurika's punches. Yurika swung wide but as she did Izuku tripped her up causing her to fall. However as she fell Yurika grabbed his arm and pulled him down with her. So how was that, she said looking up at Izuku. You're improving, said Izuku on top of Yurika. Thanks. Yurika said, wrapping him in a hug while on the floor. Now help me up. Izuku sighed and lifted her up while she still had her arms around him, thanks Yurika kissed him on the cheek. Izuku smiled as he said her go, how did you improve so much? Yurika smiled, I had a great teacher. So anyway, the girls told me something interesting the other night. Oh what did they say? Izuku asked creating some construct boxing gloves. Toru saw you naked. Yurika said blushing. The gloves in Izuku's hands crumbled as he lost his concentration, huh. The other day while you were getting changed she peeked at you while changing said Yurika. Izuku blushed, oh oh. Yeah, oh don't worry she didn't see your identity, so that's safe at least. Just be more careful alright, I'm the only one who can see you naked Yurika said, teasing him. You Yurika. Izuku's face was now redder than a tomato. Yurika giggled, I'm just messing with you, now come on. I still got some fight left in me she said going into her stance. Izuku smiled, alright let's do this as the two sparred against each other, Izuku watched from a distance and noted their behavior. It was now the night time and time for dinner, however as they explained on the first day the pussy cats would not be cooking for them anymore so that meant the students had to cook for themselves. Today on the menu was curry, Izuku helped by using his ring to cut the ingredients. After a while it was finally time to eat, Izuku sat with Izuku and the other teachers. That's when Izuku noticed Kota wasn't with them, hey Mandalay where is Kota? He is usually by your side. He's probably at his secret spot, if I remember it's somewhere in the mountains or something said Mandalay. I see, then he hasn't eaten anything. He's probably hungry, I'll see if he wants a plate Izuku said, creating a green arm that reached and grabbed a plate. I'll be right back, he said, taking off into the sky. GL really is a nice guy isn't he, said Tiger watching him fly away. He is. I still don't understand why he doesn't become a hero. Ragdoll asked. Izawa sighed, he thinks by becoming a vigilante he can do more good. And honestly maybe he can, we heroes are held back by rules, rules that he doesn't follow. He's doing a good job as a vigilante and as a teacher to these students, we are lucky he is on our side. Izuka flew around the mountain looking for Kota, he then spotted him sitting at the cliff's edge. Stupid wannabe heroes, they are all just pretending to be heroes Kota said throwing a rock over the edge. Hey now, I know there are some bad ones but not all of them are bad, Izuku said landing behind Kota. Startled Kota got up, W what are you doing here? Izuku lifted up the plate, I wanted to give you this, it's good I promise. I don't want it, leave Kota said, turning away. Izuku sighed, look I get why you hate heroes, they failed you and your parents. I feel the same way, there is a hero that I absolutely hate. Because of his actions, I lost the only family I ever knew. I held the closest thing I had to a mother in my arms as she died protecting my brother and sister. Kota turned to Izuku, you're just like me. Izuku nodded, yeah, so I get it kid. So if you ever want to talk to someone or something just let me know. I'll leave this here for you he said putting down the plate of curry. 
Kota watched Izuka leave, he then looked at the food, so stupid he said picking it up. Izuka made his way back to the campsite where he found Class 1A standing around with the wild wild pussycats. Hey what's going on, he asked, landing next to them. We are having a test of courage. Mina said excitedly. Yeah this is going to be fun. Kiri's Hima said just as excited as Mina. Sorry but those who failed their individual scores in the final exams need to take some extra lessons, Izawa said. Mina and Kiri's Hima froze. So with that said, Mina, Kiri's Hima, Kaminari, Siro, and Sato. You five are coming with me. Mina and Kiri's Hima fell to their knees, and oh oh oh. The test of courage. Izuka gave them a pity smile, sorry guys but next time try a bit harder. Tell you what do this now and I'll give you guys special lessons for later. The five looked up at with tears in their eyes, GGL? Thank you. Thank you so much, they said hugging him. There, there. Izuku helped them up and off they went to their extra lessons. Now the rest of you will be paired up in groups of two. Except you GL, you will be in the air in case someone gets lost said Pixie Bob. Izuku nodded, well have fun everyone. What was meant to be a night of fun would soon turn to one of horror for the students and especially the Green Lantern. For there was someone who would stop at nothing to make sure Izuka fears him. Shigaraki was waiting in the bar for Kurojiri to bring the new members of the league to him. His ring and costume pulsing yellow with power. As he waited he couldn't help but think back to yesterday when they spoke to the lantern's mother. Flashback. Your boss says you know where my son is, the woman with long green hair and emerald colored eyes said. Shigaraki stood up, you look just like him, tell me, who are you to him? The woman sighed, I am or rather was his mother. The name is Inko. His mother. Shigaraki lunged at her and slammed her to the ground by her neck. Four of his five fingers were around her neck. Your son has caused me a lot of trouble. Maybe I should kill you and send him your ashes. Inko smiled, even if you did that he wouldn't care. I abandoned him. I doubt he even sees me as his mother. However I want to make things right, so I can't go dying just yet. Suddenly the bar was filled with the sound of bottles breaking, Shigaraki looked around to see razor-sharp bottles pointed directly at him. I've heard what your quirk can do, but let's see who's faster. Your hands or my quirk. Shigaraki narrowed his eyes, that look in your eyes, it tells me you haven't been a good person have you? That's all in the past, all I want is my son and I will stop at nothing to get him back. So are you going to test my resolve? Inko said making the bottles get closer. Seeing the seriousness in her face Shigaraki got off of her, stop at nothing huh, alright we can get you your son back. I have plans tomorrow to attack the camp he's going to be at, you can go there and bring him back yourself. Inko got up, perfect, after that you leave us alone and most importantly, he leaves you alone, forever. Shigariki's eyes went wide at her last statement, you have something else planned don't you? This is not just about your son. That is none of your concern, your friend knows where to find me so come and get me when it's time Inko said walking out of the bar. She doesn't want her son back out of regret, she wants him back for some other reason. Shigaraki thought to himself. Back in the present. Shigaraki, I have brought them, Kurojiri said, opening a portal. And out walked eight people, this included Inko. She was wearing a green costume with a respirator slash mask, think of Izuka's original costume just Inko wearing it. Good you are here, Shigaraki said. We attack in a few minutes so I want to go over our targets again. I want you all to bring me these two. Holding up two pictures, the faces of Bakugo and Todoroki were seen. These two recently had an encounter with the Red Ring and I need them for something. Just then a tall person who was wearing a mask and black trench coat that covered him from head to toe spoke. What about the other kids and the pros? Shigaraki smiled, kill them, they are of no use to me. Do with them as you please. Underneath the mask the mystery person smiled, good. Now go and do what you were assigned to do, Shigaraki said. Just as they left through the portal Shigaraki saw Inko staring at him. I can't read her, what is she up to? Training camp. Izuka floated in the air watching Class 1A go through the maze, looks like fun, too bad I can't join them, wait, I smell something, smoke. Turning around Izuka's eyes went wide, the forest was on fire but not any normal fire. This fire was blue in color. This isn't regular fire, this has to be from a quirk. That means we are under attack. Izuka quickly created a flare gun and fired, a green flash of light filled the sky catching the attention of everyone. Before coming to the camp Izuku and Izawa agreed if GL fired off a green flare it would mean that something was wrong. Izawa who was giving the extra lessons along with Vlad King watched as the sky turned green. Oh no. Izawa what's going on? Vlad asked. We are under attack, stay here and guard the students. 
I need to go see if they need help Izawa said, rushing to the door. However as he did someone's outline appeared, and a massive fireball blew the door off its hinges. With little time to react Izawa Matrix dodged the door that was now stuck in the wall. Leaving so soon a racer head? I haven't even started having my fun yet said a tall slender man covered in scars and stitching. The wild wild pussycats also watched the sky turn green, does that mean, what I think it means? Pixie Bob asked. We are under attack, but by who? Tiger asked. By us a voice said from beyond the trees. Suddenly Pixie Bob was pulled by an unknown force towards the trees. From within the trees out jumped a lizard looking person and a white framed glasses wearing person. A loud thunk was heard, turning around they saw Pixie Bob knocked out and bleeding from a head injury. Hello my pretties, we've come to have some fun. Walking through the forest was Eureka and Tsu. I don't like this Tsu, Eureka said, holding onto her sleeve. It's fine Okako, we'll just head back. Still don't know what that flare meant but it had to be something important. Besides, with GL here there is no need to worry, Ribbit Tsu said trying to calm her friend. Suddenly from out of nowhere Eureka began to levitate off the ground, what's going on? She said panicking as she flew towards the trees. Eureka looked up to see a gleam of a knife swinging down. She tried to dodge in mid-air but the knife still caught her leg, Okako. Tsu yelled out as blood ran down her leg. Oh this one is cute, I wonder how her blood tastes. Said Himiko Toga, licking the small amount of blood off of her knife. These aren't who we are looking for, said Inko, appearing from the trees. Looking down she saw who it was they just attacked. Her eyes widened, you. Eureka was now face to face with a green-haired and green-eyed woman. Her eyes are just like Izuku's, who is she? On the nearby cliff Kota watched as the forest began to erupt into blue flames. W what's going on? Well well well, look at what we have here. You're not one of the students, so who are you? Doesn't really matter though, you'll be dead soon enough. A tall man wearing a mask and trench coat said walking out of the shadows. Kota stepped back in fear, W who are you? The tall man took off his mask revealing a prosthetic left eye that had a scar running down it. Someone who enjoys killing he said with a twisted smile. Raising his massive fist the man was about to kill Kota. Suddenly a massive green fist knocked the man into the mountain, sorry but not while I'm here said Izuku appearing in front of Kota. Hey Kota, sorry I'm late. GL. Kota said, surprised to see Izuku standing in front of him. Hey Kota, you alright? Izuku asked, turning around. Kota nodded, good, so what do you say? Shall we get out of here? Izuku picked up Kota and turned towards the cliff's edge. However before Izuka could take off he heard a rumbling coming from the mountain. Where do you think you're going, asked the man pulling himself out of the mountain. You know, it would have been better for you if you just stayed there, said Izuku. The man smiled, yeah that ain't my style and besides it's not every day you get to kill a vigilante. Just then Kota knew who this was, that smile, there was no mistake, I it was you, you killed my parents, you're muscular. Muscular smiled, oh you're the son of those weak ass heroes, what were their names? I don't remember them, must have been some weak heroes. Kota began to be filled with rage, you bastard. I'll f asterisk and kill you, just then Kota's eyes flashed red with rage. Just then the ring around Izuku's finger began to flash green, caution. Emotional level rising, requirements for red lantern 80% complete. Izuku saw this and quickly knocked Kota out with a quick neck chop, what did you do that for? Laying him down Izuku put up a bubble shield around him, he was falling into his rage, if I didn't stop him he would have been consumed by it. But that doesn't matter right now, what does is that I'm going to kick your ass Izuku said as he clenched his hand. Muscular smiled, I heard you are strong, time to see how strong, suddenly muscle fibers began to sprout from his body. Before long his entire body minus his head was covered in muscle fibers. Izuku smirked, are you done? Pity, those bloated muscles won't help you. This only made muscular mad, why you? Try not to blink or you'll miss it, he said jumping at Izuku. He launched himself with so much force that it broke the ground under him. Izuku stood unfazed as Muscular drew closer, die, he yelled out punching Izuku. The punch was so hard that it broke the cliffside sending rocks down the mountain and caused the ground to shake. All throughout the camp everyone felt the tremor, a cloud of dust blanketed the area around Muscular. Seems like the stories of you were all fake, you weren't so tough Muscular said with a smile. Is that what you think? We'll just have to see about that. Izuku said through the dust. Suddenly a green light began to shine. The light shined so bright that it pushed the dust away, revealing Izuku standing there with a green construct shield and several cannons all pointed at Muscular. Muscular's eyes went wide, boom with a snap of his fingers the cannons all fired. 
Each cannonball hit muscular square in the chest, spitting out blood muscular was sent into the mountain once again. Idiot, coming here to kill a kid. I'll let you out here like the trash you are Izuku said walking away. The glow around him faded as he thought the fight was over. As he did he heard rocks falling, turning around he was met by a giant car-sized boulder that slammed into his side. You didn't think it would be that easy did you? Muscular said holding two large boulders in each of his hands. Turning back around, blood ran down Izuku's head, big mistake he said, spitting out blood. Oh I'm so scared. Muscular said taunting. Here are some more boulders. Izuku's hand began to glow green as the boulders approached, creating a construct sword he jumped at them. The sound of slicing was heard, just then from the other side Izuku landed with the sword at his side. Muscular stepped back in fear, you damn monster. Suddenly a green construct saw flew by Muscular, slicing at his sides. He fell to one knee as he held his bleeding side. Me a monster? That's rich coming from you. Tell me do you even know how many people you've killed? Izuku said walking towards him, the green glow of his ring burned bright. As he walked Izuku created another saw that sliced his arm. Muscular screamed out in pain, fuck. The families you made cry, the friendships you ended, the sons and daughters that won't grow up without their parents because of you. Izuku's eyes began to glow green as he created a giant hand. Picking Muscular up he slammed him back down to the ground. Why you bastard, I'll kill you. Muscular said spitting out blood. I'm going to make you suffer for what you did to his parents. And I have just the idea Izuku said, creating multiple pairs of scissors and knives. Muscular screens echoed throughout the forest as a flashing green light appeared from the mountain. Then there was silence. With Eureka. Eureka was face to face with Inko. Why are you just standing around for? Kill her. Toga said, slicing her knife at Ksu. Snapping out of her trance, Inko picked Eureka up with her quirk and hit her across the face. The hit was enough to send Eureka flying towards a nearby tree. Okako. Ksu yelled out dodging Toga's attacks. Sliding down the tree Eureka hit the floor, the back of her head bleeding thanks to the impact. D damn it, she's strong looking up she saw Inko walking towards her. Inko stopped in front of Eureka, sorry kid. Nothing personal Inko suddenly reached behind her back and pulled out a hunter's knife. She brought it down ready to kill Eureka, however Eureka saw a chance. There. She said kicking at Inko's shins. This caused her to fall forward. Taken by surprise Inko let go of the knife as she fell. Eureka caught the knife and while Inko was on the floor she pressed it against the back of her neck. Don't move, I don't want to hurt you but I will if I have to. Inko gritted her teeth, damn it, I underestimated you. Eureka smiled. People always do, now what are you after? Wouldn't you like to know? Inko said with a smile. Don't play games with me, now tell me. Is it because the lantern is here? Eureka said, pushing the knife up against Inko's skin. Yeah that's part of it, at least for me that is. Said Inko. What do you want with him? Asked Eureka. That's when Inko heard a slight change in Eureka's voice, Oh, I see now, you know who he is don't you? Keeping his identity a secret huh? Well let me you in on a secret too. Under the bright full moon Inko uttered four words. Eureka's eyes went wide, and no, you're lying. She said now visibly shaking. Seeing her chance, Inko used her quirk to rip off a branch and send it towards Eureka. The branch slammed into Eureka's side, now disoriented Inko managed to roll herself around and grab Eureka by her wrists. The two rolled on the ground fighting for control of the knife. Unbeknownst to them there was a small hill right beside them. The two continued their struggle until they both tumbled down the hill. After a few seconds they both slammed against some trees. On the floor Eureka slowly began to look around, her vision blurred as she scanned her surroundings. Just a few steps away was Inko motionless, I it can't be true. Eureka said, crawling on the ground. She had to be lying, after all this time why is she back? Why did she leave Izuku like that? And why is she with the villains? Just then a foot stomped on Eureka's back causing her to yell out in pain, that is none of your concern Inko said, pinning Eureka on the ground. Who are you to him anyway? Eureka struggled to speak, I I am his girlfriend. Inko's eyes went wide, what? Feeling the foot on her back loosened, Eureka turned and grabbed Inko's leg and twisted it. Inko fell face first into the ground, Eureka managed to gain some distance. What you said, was it true? Eureka asked. Inko got up and turned around, the respirator slash mask broke off, Eureka now had a perfect view of her face. Yet it's true, I'm here to get him back. No matter who or what gets in my way Inko said raising her hands, with her quirk she pulled Eureka in. This again. Too bad it won't work on me a second time. Eureka said letting herself get pulled. 
This time things would go a bit different, Inko threw a punch at Eureka once she was close. However this time Eureka used her quirk on herself causing her to float up and out of the way of the punch. What? Inko said following Eureka with her eyes. Release, said Eureka, touching the tips of her fingers and allowing herself to fall. Reaching out Eureka grabbed Inko by the neck and wrists, the momentum knocked Inko to the ground. Looks like my training with gun had paid off Eureka said as her breathing became heavy. Inko tried to fight against Eureka but found that she had a death grip on her. Damn it she got me again and this time I can't use my quirk to free myself, I need to escape and find my son. Suddenly from the shadows of the trees Toga jumped out with a needle in her hand. Eureka didn't even have time to react when Toga tackled her off of Inko, why don't you just relax while I take this? Toga said stabbing a needle into Eureka's thigh. Eureka yelped out in pain as Toga got on top of her. Oh your blood is so good. I can tell this is the blood of someone in love. Come on tell me, who is it that you love? Toga said with an evil smile. If she's here, what happened to Tsu? Does that mean Tsu is, no I can't think that way. I need to get out of here. Eureka thought as she gritted her teeth. However before she could move Toga plunged a knife into her shoulder, come on tell me. I want to know, who do you love? Inko got up holding her wrist, Toga enough you don't need to kill her. Toga turned and gave Inko a death glare, shut up, I'll do what I want Inko could feel her bloodlust and backed away. You never did answer my question, who is it that you love? Toga said, twisting the knife. Eureka screamed out in pain, I, I love Izuku. She said in a quiet voice. Huh, I couldn't hear you. Say that again, Toga said, leaning down to listen. I love Izuku Midoriya. Eureka yelled out. See was that so hard? The person I love is the hero killer Stain, even though he is missing I can still feel him out there. The way he killed, the way he moved, it was love at first sight Toga said blushing. That's not love, that's obsession Eureka said through the pain. Toga's eyes turned dead, oh is it? Tell me then, why do you like this Izuku guy? Izuku is a kind person, he's been through so much, suffered so much. He lost the only family he's ever known, and was given ultimate power. He could have become a villain, used his powers to improve his own life. Instead he decided he wanted to protect people, stop others from suffering the same fate he did. He's been nothing but loving towards me and friendly towards my class. That's love, not your warped perspective of it said Eureka, surprising even herself. Toga fell silent, I see, you really do love him. However, my obsession is just another form of love. Just then a beam of violet light crashed down engulfing both Eureka and Toga. The whole forest was bathed in this violet color. Tsu, who was just a few meters away and bleeding from her arms and tongue was knocked back by this light. Oh no, Okako. Izuku was flying over the forest with Kota in his arms when he too saw the violet light. Is that, no it couldn't be he said, stopping in the air. Just then Izuku's ring began to shine, emotional spectrum detected, violet light of love. Don't tell me one of the villains got a power ring. I need to find Mandalay fast and then go help out the students Izuku said, making his way towards Mandalay. Inside in the light Eureka and Toga stood up, what is this, asked Toga. This light. Eureka reached out, she could feel it. Love. Suddenly two bright violet balls of light appeared in front of them, Okako Eureka slash Himiko Toga of Earth, you two have great love in your hearts. Welcome, to the star sapphires the two reached out and grabbed the balls of light. Eureka closed her eyes as the light began to reform itself into a ring. It made its way to her left hand and attached itself on her ring finger. As soon as it did, Eureka's body began to glow violet, Izuku. She muttered out. For Toga the light did not turn into a ring but rather a crystal that embedded itself into her body. Shielding themselves from the light, Inko and Tsu then began to hear voices, four hearts long lost and full of fright, for those alone in blackest night. Accept our ring and join our fight, love conquers all with violet light. The one pillar split into two, and from the two lights Eureka and Toga both walked out. Eureka was wearing a variation of her hero costume that was violet in color and without the wrist guard or the big boots. It was still skin tight but her costume now had a violet color scheme, where the black used to be it was now violet and the white turned into a lighter shade of violet. However most notably she was now wearing a mask that covered her eyes, very similar to what Izuku had. Toga walked out, her stomach exposed, where her belly button was now a violet colored star. Her costume almost looked like armor but was still thin, it was basically one piece of black fiber with violet arm sleeves and violet leggings that reached up to her thighs. There was also a part from her stomach going up just under her breasts that had exposed skin. However the most noticeable thing was Toga was now sporting what appeared to be a crown slash armor piece that went around her face. 
Think of Justice League, Doomstar Sapphire. Tsu couldn't believe what she was seeing, oh Okako. Yurika turned around and smiled, hey Tsu. W what happened to you, asked Tsu. I'm not too sure myself but I do know this. Everything will be alright now Yurika said, turning back to Toga. What is this? This power, I can feel it inside me. Toga said as a thin layer of violet energy formed around her. She then looked at Yurika, I don't know what happened but with this power I can defeat you. The violet ring around Yurika's finger began to glow, you can try. The two star sapphires fired off a beam of violet energy, the two beams crashed into each other which created a shockwave of violet light throughout the forest. Izuku was flying around the forest when he spotted Mandalay in a clearing, there they are, he said making his way down. As he got closer he noticed the pussycats were fighting villains. So annoying he said, pointing his ring at them. On the ground Mandalay didn't know what to do, Pixie Bob was down thanks to Magna. Tiger was trying his best to land a hit on Magna but she was too fast. Just then a lizard looking villain known as Spinner jumped into the air with a massive sword. Take this you so called heroes. No. Mandalay. Tiger went over to help but was kicked away by Magna. Mandalay braced for the attack but instead she heard the sound of metal shattering, looking up she saw Spinner's sword shatter into pieces by a green hammer. Mandalay instantly knew who it was, GL. Izuku landed and quickly fired a blast at each of the villains, which turned into nets as they made contact. So these are the guys who are causing the trouble. GL. Have you seen Kota? I can't reach him with my telepathy Mandalay said panicked. Don't worry he's fine, see Izuku turned around, Kota was in his arms asleep. He was attacked by a villain but I stopped him before he could get hurt. Oh and he's just knocked out, he'll wake up soon Izuku said handing over Kota to Mandalay. Oh thank goodness, thank you GL. Without you here I don't know what we would have done Mandalay said, hugging Kota. Izuku nodded, not a problem, now I have to go see what that violet light was all about. Head back to the buildings, Izawa should be there, have him round everyone up. Once he does we can get out of here. Just as Izuku was going to take off the earth began to shake, what the? What's going on suddenly a violet beam of energy shot across the sky. SH asterisk T, go Mandalay. I'll take care of that Izuku took off into the sky. Once in the air he saw two violet balls of light crashing into each other. There. Yurika created a violet colored fist and hit Toga across the face with it. This sent Toga flying back, composing herself she created hundreds of violet colored knives. Take this, she said, throwing her arms forward, sending the knives at Yurika. With little time to react Yurika created a giant dartboard, the knives plunged into the board. Having successfully stopped them all she then flinged it at Toga. H-A-A-A-A-A-A-A, with a powerful yell she sent the dartboard flying. Toga managed to dodge it and pointed her hands at Yurika, why don't you just give it up? Toga said, creating massive construct snakes. Yurika countered by creating several hawks, because I am a hero and heroes don't give up, she said as the constructs battled in the air. The hawks screeched as their massive claws sliced the snakes, the snakes hissed as they wrapped around the hawks, squeezing them until they broke. As this was going on Toga and Yurika engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat in mid-air. However thanks to Yurika's quirk she was more used to fighting in mid-air. Yurika began to punch Toga repeatedly in the face, she finished it off by getting behind her and slamming her in the back. The hit was so hard that it sent Toga crashing into the ground. Toga struggled to get up, you be asterisk tch, I'll make you pay for that. Yurika landed in front of her, you won't get the chance. Just then Izuku arrived, what's going on here, he asked looking around, that's when he saw Yurika. And no way, Yurika, you're, you're a star sapphire. But how? See come on gl, you should be able to figure that out Yurika said blushing. That's when it hit Izuku, oh oh. Yurika nodded, yeah, so I guess I'm like you now. Guess you are, so who's this? Izuku said, pointing at Toga. A villain that attacked me and Su, she also became a star sapphire Yurika explained, however she was interrupted when Toga lunged at Izuku tackling him to the ground. Izuku looked up to see Toga's eyes were glowing violet, why you? Your blood it smells so good. My name is Toga Himiko, what's your name? Hey let him go. Yurika said running towards them but stopped when Toga put up a bubble around them. Shut up will you, you're interrupting, Toga said glaring at Yurika. Izuku managed to kick Toga off of him, what is wrong with you? Are you crazy or something? Toga slid to a stop a few feet away, crazy? Yeah I'm crazy, crazy for you, she said creating ropes. Izuku tried to dodge but there were too many of them, the ropes began to coil around his body. Got you Toga said, walking towards him. Yurika was punching the bubble with all her might but she couldn't even crack it, 
Come on. Come on. Izuku struggled against the ropes but couldn't escape, Toga then floated up to his face. W what do you want from me? Izuku asked as she was now a few inches away from his face. Toga smiled, I want you she said in a seductive voice. Eh sorry but I already have a girlfriend, said Izuku. That doesn't matter, I will make you forget all about her Toga said, leaning in to steal a kiss. Izuku tried to pull back his face but Toga locked his head in place as she stole a kiss. On the other side of the bubble Eureka's eyes went wide when she saw what Toga was doing. Eureka clenched her fist, let him go, her fist glowed violet. As her fist made contact with the bubble it shattered, turning around Toga was met by Eureka's fist. She then turned to Izuku who was now free from the ropes, we'll talk about this later for now, let's take her down. Izuku nodded, all right, let's go he said flying towards Toga. Side by side the two lantern core fired off a blast at Toga. Izuku's green blast began to intertwine with Eureka's violet one. Toga tried to counter it but her blast was quickly overpowered, what? No, she yelled out as the blast completely engulfed her. Izuku and Eureka smiled, we did it. We sure did, Eureka said, turning to Izuku. Now about that kiss, did you like it? And no of course not. Izuku quickly saw waving his hands in front of his face. Eureka giggled, yeah I know out of nowhere Eureka leaned in and gave Izuku a kiss on the lips. A few seconds later she pulled away, that one you can like. Izuku smiled, am I interrupting, said Tsu appearing behind them. The two jumped, Tsu. How long have you been there? A while now, so are you two ready to leave or do you two need more time? Ribbit Tsu said, teasing them. No we're good, come on let's go said Izuku, creating a platform for Tsu to stand on. However before they took off there was a noise coming from the bushes. My son, a voice called out. Izuku turned to the voice, there he found Inko, who are you, he asked. Of course you wouldn't know me, it's me Izuku. I am your mother Inko said walking out of the bushes. Izuku felt his heart drop, and no, that can't be, what Maria said was true. Izuku thought back to the day Maria died, holding her in his arms she whispered something into his ear. Izuku, your mother is alive and she is looking for you. If the time comes when you meet her, do not trust her. Remember Project Cadmus. I know this is a lot to take in but I need you to come with me. Let me take you home, we can be a family again Inko said walking towards Izuku. Izuku took a step back, W what? Come with me son, let's become a family again Inko said with her arms open. Suddenly Izuku raised his ring towards Inko, stay back. I'm not going anywhere with you. You think you can show up and tell me to go with you? Where were you all these years? Why are you with villains? Are you even my mother? GL. Eureka tried to reach out to him but stopped when she saw his arm shaking. Please Izuku, I know I've wronged you but I need you to come with me. Please son. Stop calling me that. I am not your son. You lost that right to call me that when you abandoned me. You are not my mother, my mother was Maria and she's dead Izuku said now in tears. Inko stopped, Izuku. Just then Eureka reached out and touched his arm, GL, please there are others that need your help. We can deal with her later. For now we need to focus on getting everyone out of here safe and sound. Eureka's touch calmed Izuku down, taking a deep breath he turned and smiled, why Yuri right? She nodded and trapped Inko in construct ropes. Suddenly both lantern rings began to flash their respective colors, warning. Emotional spectrum detected, fear. Eureka. Put a shield up now. Izuku yelled out. Without hesitation Izuku and Eureka put a shield in front of them, and not a second too soon. A beam of yellow energy slammed into the shields. Eureka struggled to hold the shield, it's too much, she yelled out as her shield shattered sending her flying back. Eureka. It was now only Izuku's shield that held back the yellow blast but that too was starting to crack. Can't, hold on, much, longer. Izuku said, gritting his teeth. The cracks on the shield began to grow and before long it too shattered, sending his body flying. Izuku's body rolled to a stop, so you're the one responsible for this, he said picking himself up. Why of course, who else could pull this off, said Shigaraki floating in the air, his yellow ring shining under the darkened skies. Toga also floated behind him, she was badly injured thanks to Izuku and Eureka. You know, you're really testing my patience here Shigaraki. If we're going to fight, let's go, I am ready when you are Izuku said as he began to charge up his ring. Oh I'm not here to fight you. No no no, you see I was just leaving. I already picked up my associates and got what I came here for explained Shigaraki. What did you want? Izuku asked. Oh nothing much, 
just these two Shigaraki set as yellow construct chains began to appear behind him. Izuku's eyes went wide, let them go Shigaraki, he said as Bakugo and Todoroki appeared wrapped in the yellow construct chain seemingly knocked out. No, for you see I have plans and they involve these two. Not to mention I now have another ring user on my side. For now I bid you farewell Shigaraki said as he opened the portal behind him. Toga waved at Izuku, I'll see you real soon Izuku dear she then went into the portal. Come back. Izuku yelled out rocketing towards Shigaraki. However before he could even reach him a beam of yellow energy shot into Izuku's chest. Izuku. Yurika yelled out as the blast pierced him. The green surrounding Izuku flickered before disappearing, don't get in my way. I hope you survive so you can see what I am going to do to this world Shigaraki said, disappearing through the portal. Izuku's consciousness began to fade as he fell towards the earth. S. Shigaraki. Yurika flew up and caught Izuku before he hit the ground. The blast had hit Izuku near his heart, Yurika could hear Izuku wheezing with every breath he took. Blood began to stain her costume as she held him in her arms, come on Izuku. Stay with me. Stay with me. The last thing Izuku saw was the forest burning and the violet color coming off of Yurika. Yurika was panicking, Izuku had just been struck in the chest by a beam of energy that shot right through him. She landed beside Tsu in tears, Tsu. W what should I do, she asked as tears ran down her face. Stop the bleeding. Use that ring you got and stop the bleeding. That should buy us enough time Tsu said looking at the bleeding Izuku, she didn't even care that Izuku's identity was revealed. Yurika nodded, all right, she quickly created a violet colored gauze pad. She may have stopped the bleeding temporarily but Izuku was still bleeding internally. We need to get back to the others, they should be back at the main building. Can you carry us? Tsu asked. Why yeah I think so Yurika then looked at Inko who was still wrapped in her construct. If he dies I will make sure you pay she said creating a construct platform for Tsu and Izuku. Inko didn't have that luxury and was dragged along in the sky. Izawa was standing outside the main building with most of his students, Vlad went to check on his students as soon as Dabi attacked. Mr. Izawa, we still can't find Yurika, Tsu, Bakugo, or Todoroki, said Aitsa. Damn it, they still might be in the forest. I'll go look for them, have everyone head inside and do not come out no matter what. Izawa ordered, he was about to run into the forest when he saw a violet light touch down just a few feet away. It took a second but Izawa registered who it was, Yurika, he yelled out surprised. Inko landed on the ground hard as she was not able to move at all. The whole class turned to see Yurika in her star sapphire uniform, Okako. You're just like GL. Mina said, happy to see her friend. Speaking of which, where is he, as she got closer she noticed Yurika holding GL, then the blood. Oh no. Mr. Izawa, I need to get him to a hospital, Yurika said, running towards Izawa with Izuku in her arms. Izawa was shocked to see the state he was in, H how did this happen? No there's no time for that. Go, take him to the hospital near UA. I'll have recovery girl meet you there. Thank you Mr. Izawa the violet glow of her ring began to shine around her as she jumped into the air. The class watched her leave with Izuku in her arms, so Tsu, who's that, asked Izawa. She's one of the villains that attacked us, Yurika managed to catch her before GL got her, said Tsu glaring at Inko. Inko struggled against the construct ropes, please all I wanted was to take my son back. Izawa's eyes went wide, son? GL is your son. Inko nodded, yes. The class began to mutter, we have a lot of questions for you then. For now we need to get going, everyone head toward the bus Izawa wrapped Inko in his capture weapon just in case the ropes around her came undone. Several years ago. Izuku was six years old when he sat on the roof of the orphanage, he'd just gotten out of his eighth failed adoption interview this month. At first it seemed as if it was going good, that is until they found out he was quirkless. The people who wanted to adopt him no longer wanted to, thanks to Izuku's quirklessness. Just then Maria came up from the roof door, Izuku. There you are I've been looking all over for you. How many times do I have to tell you, not to sit so close to the edge it's dangerous. Now come on let's. However before she could finish Izuku cut her off. Hey Maria, why doesn't anyone want me, he asked looking down at the ground. The question burned a hole into Maria's heart, here was the six-year-old kid thinking no one wanted him. I get that I'm quirkless, but that doesn't mean I am a bad kid, does it? I mean, I eat everything that's on my plate, even the greens, I go to bed on time, I wake up and do chores, so why? Everyone else in school has a mom and a dad but I don't, did I do something wrong? Izuku said, turning to Maria with tears in his eyes. Maria wrapped her arms around Izuku and pulled him in tight as he cried into her chest. Tears were seen falling from Maria's face as she held Izuku, no Izuku, 
you didn't do anything wrong and don't ever say something like that again. You are the smartest, kindest, most selfless person I know, even at your young age. So don't you dare think that you did something wrong, I won't let you. I believe, no, I know that one day you are going to meet some amazing people, that are going to accept and love you for who you are. If by chance you don't, just know that I will always stay with you. I will love you, no matter what. I promise. Just then a flash of yellow light covered everything in the landscape, Izuku opened his eyes to find himself much older and in an all too familiar scene. He was wearing his green lantern uniform, surrounded by the wreckage of the orphanage, and in his arms was the now dead Maria. Izuku's eyes went wide, Maria? Hey wake up he said, shaking her a bit. Maria, come on you promised to stay with me, remember? Maria, Maria, Maria. Maria, he yelled out towards the sky. Hospital. Yuriko landed just outside the emergency room and ran in pleading for a doctor. Within seconds some of the nurses went and got a stretcher, Yuriko placed him on it with her costume stained in his blood. His blood pressure is dropping, one of the nurses noted as they checked his vitals. Running alongside them Yuriko held Izuku's hand for as long as she could. We need to get him to the operating table, now. He's losing too much blood the doctor yelled out. That's when one of the nurses grabbed Yuriko, sorry miss, you need to stay out here. She didn't want to leave but she knew they needed to do their jobs in order to save him. Yurika nodded and slipped off Izuku's green lantern ring, she held it tight as they took him into emergency surgery. It was now the next morning and Izuku still wasn't out of surgery. Yurika sat in the waiting room holding onto his ring, please Izuku, I don't want to lose you she said as tears fell from her face. Just then Izuwa followed by Nizu and All Might entered the waiting room, how is he? Izuwa asked. Yurika looked up wiping away the tears, I don't know. I've gone to ask them about him but they keep saying he's still in surgery. At least I know he's not dead, his ring would have flown away if he was. I see, so that's at least some good news, Nizu said. Speaking of rings, it looks like you got one. Yuriko looked down at her ring, yeah, it's the violet color of love, I became a star sapphire. However I am not the only one who became one that night, one of the villains, Toga got one too. I see, we need to be careful. If Toga was working with the League of Villains then that means they now have two lanterns on their side. All Might explained, he then placed a hand on Yurika's shoulder. You need to get some rest, you've been through enough. We will call you if anything changes with the lantern. However Yurika shook her head, thanks but no thanks, I'm staying here. I'll rest when he gets out of surgery. Just then the doctor walked into the waiting room, Yurika stood up as he approached. How is he doc, asked Izawa. The doctor removed his mask and smiled, there's no need to worry, we stopped the bleeding and managed to close his injuries with the help of recovery girl. Lucky for him whatever pierced his skin barely missed his heart and missed his lungs. He just got out of surgery so he's being sent over to the recovery bay, I don't know how but he's alive. He must be too stubborn to die, anyway you can go ahead and see him now. Eureka breathed the biggest sigh of relief, he's not stubborn doctor, he just has the will to live. Thank you for everything doctor she said bowing. The doctor nodded and began to walk away. The four went over to where Izuku was, there laying in a bed was Izuku hooked up to every wire and breathing through a mask. Yurika went over and grabbed his hand, Izuku, thank goodness. The other three saw that Yurika needed some alone time and decided to give it to her. However before they left Yurika spoke, all my, Mr. Izawa. She turned around. When you find out where they are, I want in. All Might's eyes went wide, young Yurika, I really don't. However he stopped when Izawa lifted up his hand. You want in, fine you'll get your chance said Izawa. Yurika nodded, thanks, I won't disappoint. That I swear. The rest of the day Yurika watched over Izuku and only left his side to go eat or to go see how some of her friends were doing. Recovery girl came in a few times to heal Izuku and some of class 1A students, this included Momo who encountered a low tier Nomu. The class wanted to check up on GL, he was a friend after all. Yurika didn't want them to know his identity so she drew the curtain so they could only see his body and not his face. How bad is he? Asked Kiri's Hima. Doing better, recovery girl has been making rounds to heal him said Yurika. How did this happen? I mean he's usually untouchable. Jiro said, surprised at GL's condition. It was Shigaraki. Yurika clenched her fists. I don't know how, but he's even more powerful than last time. His ring is fueled by fear so I can only imagine what he's done to obtain that power. The class fell silent, come on guys we should go. GL needs to recover. You coming Okako? Asked Mina. Nah I think I'm good here, I want to be with him when he wakes up she said reaching for his hand. Mina nodded, 
as the class began to leave. However Tsu stayed behind, she waited until everyone left to talk. So Izuku is GL, I would have never guessed. Thank you Tsu, for not telling anyone, said Yuriko with a smile. She nodded, it's not my place to tell. Besides he must have a good reason to not reveal himself. Yuriko nodded, yeah, he thinks by not telling anyone he could save the ones closest to him. But what happens when he's the one needing saving she said kissing his forehead. So that's how you got that ring, if green is will, and yellow is fear. That must mean violet is love, you really do love him don't you? Ribbit. Asked Sue. Yeah I do, he's one of the reasons why I want to be a hero. Said Eureka. Yet when he needs me the most, I can't do anything. I feel so useless. Don't beat yourself up so much, you did what you could. Now what you can do is watch over him, until he gets better. Said Tsu. I will. So whatever happened to that lady, the one claiming to be his mother? Eureka asked, curious. Tsu shrugged, don't know, I know she was taken to jail but that's about it. They got a DNA sample but they need to cross-reference it with GLs in order to confirm if she's really who she says she is. I can help out with that, said Izawa, walking into the room. Turns out we don't need a sample because he is her son. Records show she was admitted to a hospital years ago and had a child, the birth certificate has the child under Izuku Midoriya. As much as I hate to say it, Inko is Izuku's mother. Yurika gritted her teeth, what? Why is she back after all these years? That's what I intend to find out, we have her in a holding cell. I'm actually going down there to watch her interrogation. I wanted to see if there were any changes in his conditions before I left, if he was awake maybe he wanted to speak to her. Izawa said, rubbing the back of his head. No changes yet but the doctors say he should wake up soon enough. And if he would want to speak to her, I don't know. Having your mother show up out of nowhere after so many years, I know he would have questions. Yurika looked at Izuku. I don't think he needs another emotional outburst. I understand, well I'll be off Izawa said, turning to leave. Just as he was out the door a voice called out to him, wait, I'm going with you. Everyone turned to the bed to see Izuku sitting up, Izuku. You're awake. Yurika said, wrapping him in a hug. Izuku smiled, hey Yurika, sorry I made you worry. How are you feeling Izuku? Izawa asked. And in a lot of pain but could be worse. I could be dead. How is everyone, he asked. A few of them fell victim to some sort of gas but are expected to make a full recovery. Besides you, Momo was the only one who sustained any serious injuries but she too is expected to be fine. Izawa explained. Izuku nodded, thanks, that's good to hear. About what you said, are you sure about meeting her? Izawa asked with concern. Yes, I have a few questions I want answered, said Izuku. No Izuku. You need to stay here and rest said Yurika. You almost died for God's sake, please just rest. Izuku placed his hand on her cheek, I'm fine Yurika really, right now all I really want or need are answers and I won't get them here. Yurika saw that look in Izuku's eyes, he wasn't going to give up on this. Fine, but I'm going with you and I won't take no as an answer, got it? Yeah, yeah I understand, said Izuku. Good, oh you might need this she said reaching into her pocket and pulled out his green lantern ring. Izuku smiled, and raised his hand, calling back the ring. The ring flew from Yurika's hand and onto Izuku's finger, soon his green lantern uniform appeared. All right let's go he said standing up. Yurika nodded, right, you coming Izawa. Oh great, I forgot, now I have to deal with two of you. Izawa said following after them. If we are going to fly, can you at least make something less fear inducing? The two lanterns looked at each other, we will try, but no promises. Izuku's doctor saw them leave and tried to force him back into bed, however after some back and forth and Izuku promising to come back he was allowed to leave. With Izawa strapped to a green construct jetpack the three flew towards the police station. The three landed at the police station, as they did Izawa fell to his knees, I thought I told you to take it easy. Yurika laughed and Izuku smiled, sorry Izawa, just trying to lighten up the mood. Izawa sighed, fine, let's just get this over with. Just as they were about to enter the building Izuku grabbed his chest, Izuku. Yurika saw him hunch over. I I am fine, come on let's do this he said walking into the building. The three of them entered the building and were escorted down to the holding cells. They were brought into a room with one way glass, on the other side was a metal table and two chairs across from each other. Just then Naomesa entered the room and sat down at one of the chairs. All right, bring her in, Izawa said, pressing a button. Izuku was nervous, his hand trembled as he waited for his mother to enter the room. Yurika saw this and quickly grabbed his hand, 
He didn't say anything but she could feel him squeeze her hand tight. The door to the interrogation room opened and in walked Inko handcuffed. Inko was told to sit down on the chair, Inko Midoriya, quirk, attraction. Says here you've been missing for years, no paper trail, or records of any kind. Tell me where have you been, and why did you suddenly appear with villains? Naomasa asked, placing a folder on the table. Inko looked down at the table, where is my son? Right your son is Isaac Midoriya, I was told he was badly injured and is in intensive care now. They don't know if he's going to make it Naomasa said to Inko's shock. And no, 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 no. That can't be right. After everything we did to make sure he was in my grasp, it can't end like this. Inko said bringing her hands towards her face. Naomasa noted her choice in words, we. Inko stopped, I want to see him, I want to see my son. Sorry but that won't be possible, not until you answer some questions we have. Let's start by trying to understand why you abandon your son at an orphanage. Naomasa said, narrowing his eyes. This was it, Izuku was going to finally get some answers, Inko took a deep breath and stared at Naomasa. Cause I didn't need him anymore, not after I found out he was quirkless. Izuku's eyes went wide, I was going to kill him but that would have only made me a wanted woman. So I did the next best thing, I gave him up. Both Izawa and Yurika turned to Izuku, his face was so filled with despair. He was holding out for a little bit of hope that it was all just some sort of mistake, but after hearing that. Izuku. But now, now he has that ring. Now he has a use for me, no to us said Inko, this only infuriated Yurika. Once I'm out of here, I'll take him far away from here. We will train him, mold him into something I can take pride in calling a son Inko said with a smile on her face. That was it, Yurika couldn't listen to Inko any longer. Pointing her ring at the glass she created a giant violet colored hand that smashed through the glass. The wall came down, what the, was all Inko could say before the massive hand grabbed her and slammed her against the wall. From the broken wall Yurika stepped through, why you, her eyes burned violet as she approached Inko. Ahh it's the girlfriend. However before Inko could say anything else Yurika placed a metal plate over her mouth. Shut up, you don't get to talk anymore. You don't deserve to call yourself a mother. If you would have never shown up Izuku would be just fine. Yurika said, causing the hand to squeeze. Thanks to the metal plate around her mouth Inko couldn't yell but her eyes said it all, she was in pain. Yurika stop, you don't want to do this Izawa said, shocked at what he was seeing. Yurika pressed the hand further, that is until she felt someone's hand on her shoulder, turning around she found Izuku. That's enough, Yurika, let her go he said, his voice so empty of life. Yurika's eyes reverted back to her brown color, but. Please don't do this, not for someone like me said Izuku. With a sad look on her face Yurika let go of Inko. She hit the floor grabbing her sides, that's when Izuku walked up to her. My son, I knew you would come around. Inko reached out to Izuku. All my life I thought about you. There wasn't a night in that cold lonely room of the orphanage where I didn't think about you. Hoping, praying that one day you would show up looking for me, so we could be a real family again. Now I know that was all the dreams of a child, a little helpless child that just wanted a hug from his mom. Izuku turned away. But no more, I don't need you and honestly I don't think I ever will. You didn't give up that boy that night, you killed him. Izuku said walking away from Inko. With her arm still outstretched Inko reached out for Izuku but missed, Didanti walk away from me Izuku. I am your mother, you listen to what I tell you. She yelled out but Izuku kept on walking. Defeated Inko slammed her fists towards the ground, I was the only thing standing in their way, I was the wall protecting you from them. If you reject me now then there will be nothing I can do to stop them, you will have to face them alone. I don't know who you are talking about but I will not be alone. Izuku said, turning to Inko with Yurika by his side. I have her and my friends in class 1A, whoever they are we will face them. I at least know that they won't abandon me like you did, with that Izuku and Yurika walked out of the interrogation room. Inko watched them and felt pity, no, no you won't. You don't know how much power Cadmus holds. My son you will quickly find out just how strong they are when he reawakens. Judgment day is coming. Izawa said nothing as the two walked past him, now outside Izuku took off into the air and into space, Yurika followed close by. Izuku landed on the moon and sat down looking back at the earth, Yurika took a seat beside him. Hey, how are you holding up? Yurika asked in a soft, gentle voice. I'm fine, I just need some time. What about you? It looked like you were about to crush her said Izuku. Yurika looked away, yeah sorry about that, I lost my cool. Don't be, it just shows how much you care about me and thanks for looking out for me. 
Izuku said with a smile. Well someone has to, we both know you would be completely lost without me Yuriko said while nudging Izuku. Yeah I guess you're right. Izuku fell silent as he stared at the earth. So what now, asked Yuriko. Izuku thought about it, now, we get ready. Once they find out where Bakugo and Todoroki are, we strike. And this time, Shigaraki won't catch me off guard like he did last time. Yuriko nodded, right. The two looked into each other's eyes, the moment was right. Yuriko put her hand on his chest and leaned in but stopped when she felt something warm. Huh, removing her hand she saw blood seeping through his costume. Izuku. You're bleeding, your wound must have opened up again. That's it we are heading back to the hospital said Yuriko leaning back. Ah oh, but my kiss he said disappointed. Yuriko rolled her eyes, we can do that later for now, let's head back to the hospital. Back on earth. Bakugo woke up to an unfamiliar place, ah look who's finally awake Davi said sitting across the room from him. Where am I? Bakugo asked, still dazed. You are with the League of Villains, and you my friend are in for a world of hurt? Davi said with a smile. Just then the screams of Todoroki were heard echoing through the walls. What are you doing to him? Bakugo tried to break free from the restraints but couldn't. Don't worry you'll know soon enough. In the other room Todoroki was strapped to a table as yellow construct needles dug into him. Thanks to your little run-in with the Red Lantern, your body managed to absorb some of its emotional energy. It buried itself deep within your heart, waiting for another rage-inducing moment but with my, tools, your rage as well as the others, will soon be mine. Shigaraki said as his yellow ring began to shine brighter. In the background a giant container was seen with blood-red light coming from it. My son, are you sure this will work, asked a monitor with the words AFO written across it. It will master, once I have the power of fear and rage, there will be no stopping us. Shigaraki said with a smile. The heroes, they won't take the sitting down you know that right. They will come for you. AFO said. Let them come, we will be ready for them Toka said walking into the room with her star sapphire uniform. On the other side of the monitor AFO smiled, you really have grown haven't you Shigaraki? Police station. After the incident Inko was transferred into another room and they were about to continue the interrogation when a woman wearing a blue dress walked in. Who are you? Nanomasa asked, getting up from his chair. That is none of your concern, all you need to know is that she is coming with me said the woman with a commanding voice. What? Like hell she is, you can't just take her just like that. Nayamasa approached her only to have a piece of paper pushed into his face. This letter says otherwise Nayamasa grabbed the paper, as he began to read it his eyes widened. Now if you excuse me, we have places to be the woman then walked over to Inko. Inko you have broken Task Force X's rules. You are to return to base and await future orders. Do I make myself clear? Count yourself lucky I don't blow up your head. Inko nodded, yes ma'am she then turned to the one-way glass. Tell my son that I will see him real soon. That's when Izawa came storming into the room. Who are you? Izawa asked, stepping up to the woman. That's classified and if I were you I wouldn't probe the situation too closely, we wouldn't want someone to end up like your friend did all those years ago now would we? Izawa flinched when the mystery said that. The two men watched Inko and the mystery woman walk right out the door. What the heck was that Nayamesa? You just let her walk out of here, I'm going after them Izawa then began to leave when he was stopped by Nayamesa. You can't, take a look at this he said handing over the paper. Izawa grabbed it and began to read over it, who the heck is Cadmus? And what makes them think they can just walk in here and take her? Look at the signatures on the bottom, said Nayamesa. Izawa's eyes went wide when he saw the Prime Minister's name and the name of the Hero Regulation Commissioner. There's no way. It seems whoever Inko was talking about just made their move. I don't know what's going on but something big is about to happen, I can feel it Nayamesa said leaving the room. First on the agenda was making sure Izuku was completely healed, after some kisses from Recovery Girl, Izuku was back to 100%. The police and heroes were hard at work trying to find out where the League of Villains took both UA students. In the meantime Izuku was training Yurika on how to use her ring, even though she already had a good understanding she lacked focus. Nizu was kind enough to let them use one of the gyms so they could practice and train. Since the ring ran on love she needed to focus on what she loved, in this case what she loved was her parents and especially Izuku. Focus Yurika, your constructs are strong, maybe even stronger than mine but it means nothing if you don't focus said Izuku. Firing blasts at Yurika. Creating shields, Yurika blocked every blast Izuku sent her way. Feeling a bit overwhelmed, Yurika created several violet-colored bats, with a swipe of her hand Yurika managed to send all the blasts back. Not expecting it Izuku didn't have a chance to shield himself, the blast hit exploding as they hit Izuku. GL. 
Yuriraka yelled out running towards him. From the smoke Izuku appeared with a few cuts and bruises, man you really are strong. Remind me never to get into a fight with you. Are you alright, she asked. Izuku nodded, yeah, nothing some rest won't heal. Come on let's take a break he said creating some recliner chairs. Do you think they found Bakugo and Todoroki yet, asked Yuriraka. I hope so, it's been three days and there still hasn't been any news. I've even gone out looking for them but the ring can't pick them up. I just hope they are okay. Izuku said, staring at his ring. I can't help feel that I could have done something more to stop them. Izuku, you did everything you could. Although I get what you mean, I had all this power and I just stood around doing nothing. And because of that Bakugo and Todoroki got taken, not to mention you got injured as well. Yuriraka got up from the chair and walked up to Izuku. So don't go blaming yourself for what happened. We will get them back, that I can promise you. Yuriraka said, grabbing his face. Izuku smiled, yeah, guess you're right. Do you want to continue your training or do you want to do something else, he asked, picking her up by the waist and placing her on his lap. Well, that depends on your definition of something else. Yuriraka said leaning in for a kiss. Just as their lips were about to meet, a voice called out to them. Am I interrupting, the two got off of each other and turned to the entrance of the gym. There they found Izuka walking their way. W we weren't doing anything. Izuku said, blushing through his mask. I didn't ask if you were, anyway I got some news for the two of you, said Izuka. We found them. Izuku and Yuriraka's eyes went wide, really? That's great let's go. Hold on Yuriraka, we can't go just yet. This is going to be a two-prong attack, we found two locations they could be at. Momo managed to place a tracker on Anoma but our investigation found another place where they can be at. Explained Izawa. Two. Oh I see, so you want us to take one location each? Asked Izuku. Izawa nodded, exactly, normally we don't allow vigilantes to participate, much less my own student. He said, looking at Yuriraka. But things are different, we are going in completely blind on this one. Not to mention two villains are now ring holders. The police chief has made an exception and will allow you two to participate, if you choose to. Said Izawa. Without giving it a second thought they both responded, yes. Izawa smiled, good, the operation begins in a few hours so get yourselves ready and meet us at the police station. He said, turning to leave. Oh just so you know, we have security cameras in the gyms. So I would think twice before doing anything naughty in here Izawa said pointing to one of the cameras in the ceiling. The two blushed as they looked around and saw the different cameras. Shall we go home and rest for a bit? Asked Izuku. Yuriraka nodded, yeah, we'll need the energy for later tonight. This is it Izuku, let's get them back. A few hours later, police station. After recharging their rings Izuku and Yuriraka flew over to the police station. Walking in they were escorted to a large conference room. Inside stood some of Japan's top heroes. All Might, Endeavor, Edgeshot, Kamui Woods, and MT Lady to name a few. Quite the lineup we have here. Said Izuku. OGL, Stat Sapphire, glad you two can make it. Said Nomisa walking up to them. Of course, we wouldn't miss this for the world. Said Yuriraka. Good then let's get started. Just then the lights dimmed. Alright everyone let's go over this one more time. We have two possible locations where the students can be located at. We are going to split you into two groups. Group 1 will handle the first location, it's located in the warehouse district just east of here. The group will consist of Star Sapphire, Best Genist, MT Lady, Gang Orca, and a task force of police officers. Explained Nomisa. The group all looked at each other and nodded, good, the second team will handle location 2. A picture of a bar was shown on screen. We have reason to believe that this bar is where the League of Villains hang out. Since this area will pose the most danger, the team will consist of All Might, Endeavor, Edgeshot, Kamui Woods, and Green Lantern. Said Nomisa. Any questions? No one raised their hand, good, then we leave in 10 minutes. Good luck everyone. Izuku turned to Yuriraka to find her taking a deep breath, you nervous? Yuriraka nodded, a bit, but I should be fine. Just then Izuku felt a touch on his shoulder, looking back he found Endeavor. Ah Endeavor it's been a while. Yes, yes it has. I didn't think you would actually show up, I am genuinely surprised to see you. With you being a vigilante and everything. Said Endeavor. Yeah well some of my friends are kidnapped so it only makes sense I'd be here. Explained Izuku. Endeavor nodded, I see, well let's hope we can save your friends and my son. With that Endeavor turned away, as he left though, Izuku noticed his arm. 
he lost it back when Todoroki was a red lantern and in its place was an arm completely made out of fire. He seems to have mellowed out. Yuriko commented. Izuku nodded, I guess having your own son take your arm will do that. We should get ready. 7 p.m. Location 1. Yuriko used her ring to drop everyone off at Location 1, all right everyone let's go she said, creating a slide for them to get down from the building they were on. One by one the heroes landed on the ground and quickly made their way towards the warehouse, hold on I'll check for traps. Yuriko then pointed her ring towards the warehouse. Ring, scan for any traps. Suddenly a violet light shined on the building, no traps detected. Good, looks like it's safe for us to go in reaching the door, Yuriko created some bolt cutters and cut the lock. Running in the heroes were immediately met by several gnomas. They roared running towards them, empty lady. Give us some room, yelled out gang orca. Activating her quirk empty lady began to grow giant sized and blew the roof right off the warehouse, now with room to move around she did quick work of the low tier nomuas. Looking around the heroes saw what this warehouse was, spread around were these large tubes filled with a green liquid. Is this where they made the nomuas, asked Eureka, shining a light at the tanks. Looks that way, who can even think of doing something like this? Gang Orca asked disgustedly. Now, now, there is no reason to be mean about it. Why can't anyone appreciate the work they were doing here, a voice said coming from the shadows. Not giving whoever this was any chance, Eureka encased them in a violet colored cage. Hey Star. What are you doing, it could be a civilian said MT Lady. No, she's right. Why would there be a civilian here? Identify yourself. Best genus yelled out. Ah, so this is the constructs Shigaraki has been talking about, the man said, placing his hand on the construct. Suddenly cracks began to form all around a violet colored box. Eurika's eyes went wide, what the? She quickly focused on repairing the box, but every time she did more cracks began to appear. Eurika held her ring arm and put everything she had into the box. Sweat began to drip from Eurika's forehead, see can't he hold on, much, longer, she yelled out. Suddenly the construct box exploded sending pieces of the construct in every direction. Shielding herself from the shards Eurika didn't see the man's arm scrunch up and fire off massive blasts of air. With little time to react Eurika put up a shield up in front of her but it proved useless as the blast shattered it. The blast hit Eurika square in the stomach, the impact was enough to send her flying into the nearby wall. Star. Best genus yelled out. Turning back the villain he used his quirk to tie him up in his own clothes fibers. Do you really think this can hold me? asked the man stepping out of the light. He wore a black mask and a suit. He can move, even with my fibers holding him back, just then the man once again began to scrunch up his arm and fire another air blast. Unlike Eurika, Best Genus didn't have anything to protect him. The air blast ripped through his costume and his abdomen causing blood to splatter all over the place. Now, let's deal with the rest of you, shall we, the man said turning to the rest of the heroes. Location 2 Izuku adjusted his ring as he stood in a construct helicopter he created, they were several hundred meters in the air. They were going to jump down right on top of the villains, are we ready, he asked. The heroes nodded, all right, let's do this. Izuku then walked over to the door, swinging it open the wind blew in his face. Jump. One by one the heroes jumped out of the helicopter and nose dived towards the bar. As they got closer Izuku created parachutes for everyone, as they glided down Izuku could see the police getting into position outside the bar. All right guys here we go, release, he yelled, letting the construct parachute disappear. Inside the bar the League of Villains were sitting around Bakugo and Todoroki who were tied to chairs. So what are we going to do with them, asked Dabi. Bakugo and Todoroki were barely conscious but they can still see and hear. We should just kill them. Or maybe we could let them go. Said twice. Maybe you're right. Maybe we should kill them and send their body to Yue. Shigaraki said in his yellow lantern costume. As they were discussing twice noticed that Toga was quiet. Everything all right Toga. She nodded, yeah, I'm just missing GL that's all. He was so close yet I couldn't have him. If only that bitch didn't show up, I could have had him all to myself. Her violet colored ring began to shine bright as memories of Izuka flooded her mind. Just then it began to flash, Toga what does that mean? Asked Dabi. Toga's eyes went wide, he's here. Just then the roof to the building came crashing down around him. Toga managed to shield herself from the falling debris by creating a bubble around herself. However the rest of the league were in disarray, that's when they heard a voice. Your days are numbered villains. Why, because we are here. All Might announced landing. Damn it. It's All Might. Spinner yelled out. However before they could do anything most of the league were immobilized by a shot and quickly knocked out by the hero known as Gran Terrano. 
The only ones left awake were Shigaraki and Toga. Give it up Shigaraki, it's over. You lost. Lost? No, I'm just getting started. He yelled out as himself and Toga pointed their rings towards the heroes. However before they could do anything, green colored chains pinned their hands against the wall. Sorry you too but no, it's over Izuku said floating down from the open hole in the roof. Ahh the lantern is here. Shigaraki said watching Izuku land beside the heroes. GL. Baby. I knew you'd come to me. Toga said with some crazy looking eyes. Izuku ignored her and directed his attention to Shigaraki. That's when the heroes saw the two students tied up in chairs. Their bodies were all covered in bruises, and their eyes were empty. What did you do to them? Shigaraki smiled, just some experiments. Creating some scissors Izuku cut Bakugo and Todoroki free. My son. Endeavor said looking at the state his son was at, no parent ever wanted to see this. Just as he was getting closer a voice was heard, Ah All Might, you finally decided to show up. All Might and Gran Torino instantly recognized the voice. All for one. It's been a long time, All Might. Tell me how are your injuries? AFO asked in a condescending voice. All Might grabbed his side, who the heck is this guy? Asked Izuku. Oh it seems the Green Lantern is there with you, how convenient. I have someone here who would like to speak to you. Go on, speak he said talking to someone. Just then the painful grunts of agony were heard, G Green Lantern. The voice was shaky and weak but Izuku recognized it. And no, it can't be. Izuku said, shocked. Oh but it can be young man, don't worry though, I won't harm her, yet. All I want right now is to make sure Shigaraki is safe said AFO. He's not going anywhere. Izuku yelled out tightening the chains around Shigaraki. I don't think I need your permission to take them with me. Just then Black Sludge began to come out of the villain's mouths. What is going on? Endeavor yelled as he saw the sludge come out of Todoroki and Bakugo's mouths. They are being teleported away. Izuku said, trying to hold the villains in place. However everything he did proved useless when they suddenly disappeared from the bar. No. All Might yelled out trying to reach out to his two students. Just then AFO's voice was once again heard, Your friend's life is now forfeit lantern, if you wish to see her again, well I'm sure you know how to find us. I almost forgot, here are some parting gifts for you. Where the villains once stood several Nomus began to appear, Endeavor. Take care of the Nomus here. Me and All Might will deal with them. All Might punched a Nomu across the face before turning to Izuku and nodding, Ring, find Eureka. Izuku's ring began to glow green, scanning, Star Sapphire located, location 1. They're back at the first location? You two head over there, we will catch up Gran Torino said. GL. Let's go, you didn't have to tell Izuku twice. Creating a bubble around All Might they took off into the sky and towards the first location at lightning speeds. With All for One. Shigaraki landed beside All for One, that was a lot easier than I thought he said adjusting his ring. That it was, to think we are going to get rid of the two pests in a decisive strike. I couldn't be more proud of you my son All for One said placing a hand on his shoulder. So what are we going to do with her? Shigaraki asked, pointing to Yurika who was on the ground bruised and bloody. Let me take care of her a voice said. AFO and Shigaraki turned to find Toga walking towards them. If I get rid of her, then GL will be all mine she said with a twisted smile. Yurika pushed herself, standing up she clenched her stomach, be bring it, I won't let you have GL. AFO smiled, very well Toga, you can do as you wish. Shigaraki, did you get what you needed from those two? Shigaraki nodded, yes sir, all that's left is to wait. Just then there was a twinkle of green in the sky, speak of the devil. All for one. All Might, yelled out. GL, throw me. Izuku nodded, shape-shifting the bubble he created a hand, get ready for a fast ball, he said, launching All Might towards AFO. All Might threw a punch to which AFO caught, causing a massive shockwave that pushed everyone on the ground away. Ah All Might, you've grown weak, said AFO holding back his massive fists. We'll just have to see about that. All Might yelled out delivering a hard knee to AFO's stomach that pushed him back a few meters. Hey F asterisk CK face, a voice yelled out. Looking up AFO saw Izuku flying towards him, where is she, he said, firing a blast that knocked AFO on his back. Izuku quickly jumped on him and pointed his ring right at his face. I'll ask you once again, where is she? Izuku asked as his ring began to glow green. The black mask over AFO's face broke exposing his horribly disfigured face, I wouldn't be worrying about her now, boy. Just then a blast of yellow energy hit Izuku in the side sending him crashing through several buildings. I would be more worried about what's about to happen to you. Shigaraki said, 
floating down beside all for one. Master, let me take care of him. Very well, I will deal with All Might. Afo said turning his attention towards All Might. Shigaraki made his way towards where he sent Izuku, just as he approached the building shined an emerald green color before exploding. Izuku appeared his costume slightly damaged and with a cut across his cheek, T throw me into another building and we are going to have a problem. Shigaraki smiled, we already have a problem, now come on let's do this, he said, charging at Izuku. The two flew at each other, as they met in the middle green and yellow light shined in every direction. With Eureka. Eureka was currently being dragged by the hair through building walls. Toga was going to make sure Eureka paid for getting in her way, tossing her towards a wall. Eureka hit the wall and began to fall but was suddenly grabbed by the neck. Looking up at Eureka, was Toga, her eyes had turned completely violet, I thought you would put up more of a fight. Pity. Why you can't kill me, if you do you're going to break GL's heart Eureka said struggling to get out the words. Toga thought about it before tightening her grip, that's fine, I'll be there to pick up those pieces. I will make GL love me, even if it means manipulating him. Eureka could feel her consciousness fading, H have to do something, can't let her. Yes. GL will be all mine. Toga said as Eureka stopped struggling, none of them knew but for a split second Toga's teeth turned razor sharp, almost like a predator. Just then the wall on the other side of the room collapsed, and before Toga could do anything she was hit by several green colored boxing gloves. Eureka. Izuku yelled out landing to check on her. Opening her eyes, Eureka saw Izuku's face covered in bruises, I Izuku. He smiled as he held Eureka in his arms, hey, how are you holding up? You look like hell. Eureka scoffed. Speak for yourself, so what happened? Yeah about that, we should probably get moving. Izuku said looking around. Huh. Just then Izuku picked Eureka up bridal style. I Izuku. What are you doing? Just then three yellow construct dragons destroyed the wall behind them, Izuku quickly went through the wall in front of them. Flying into the night sky, everyone watched as Izuku was chased by the dragons. Eureka looked down and noticed they were getting closer, Izuku. I know. Let me think. Just then Izuku stopped and pointed his ring at the dragons. He then created three green-colored tigers that lunged at the dragons. The constructs fought in the air but Izuku knew his constructs wouldn't last long. Going down at a nearby roof where he set down Eureka. Izuku was on the verge of collapse, the only thing that kept him upright was Eureka. Easy now Izuku, take this time to rest for a bit. I can't rest, he's coming, I need to defeat him. He said watching his constructs get ripped apart one by one. Then let's take him on. Together Eureka said standing beside him. Izuku looked at Eureka, how did I land a girl like you? Eureka smiled, you got lucky. Oh luck had nothing to do with it. Izuku leaned in and kissed Eureka on the lips. That wasn't luck either. Just then yellow and violet colored light shined on the roof they were on, if you two are done, why don't we get this over with, said Shigaraki floating in the air with Toga by his side. Izuku and Eureka's rings began to glow bright, let's do this, they yelled out flying towards them. Shigaraki and Toga fired off blasts towards them, Izuku and Eureka quickly created a giant shield of green and violet color. What? They can do that. Toga yelled out, just then Eureka appeared cracking Toga across the face with the right hook. Izuku on the other hand tackled Shigaraki, they crashed through the roof of the building where they went down until they hit ground level. You're going to have to be better than that. Shigaraki said. Plan on it. Izuku said as a green construct bomb fell. Locking Shigaraki in place. Izuku made sure he couldn't escape. The bomb exploded in a green fireball, completely destroying the building they were in and leveling the nearby buildings. Izuku's body was thrown out of the building before it collapsed. Izuku rolled to a stop near another collapsed building, he looked up to see Eureka beating on Toga. From his angle it looked like he was winning, at a girl, keep it up he said proud of Eureka. However in his moment of admiration Izuku was caught off guard, just then four construct harpoons pinned Izuku into the broken wall behind him, God. He yelled out in pain. Eureka heard him yell, looking she saw Izuku pinned against the wall, GL. Hold on, I'm coming, but just as she was leaving to help Izuku. Toga came up out of nowhere and created a giant violet construct needle. With her back turned Eureka was stabbed through the back with the giant needle. Eureka let out a cry of pure agonizing pain as Toga pushed the needle even deeper. Just then Toga got close to Eureka's ear, you should have let me have him she said whispering. With a quick flick of her hand the needle began to fall towards the ground with Eureka still impaled. Crashing into the earth Eureka lay there motionless as blood began to run down her back. Eureka. Izuku yelled out trying to free himself of the spikes. As he freed himself from one, 
two others took their place. Uh, uh, uh you aren't going anywhere. Shigaraki said, pointing his yellow ring at Izuku. Izuku gritted his teeth, why you're not going to get away with this Shigaraki, in the background loud booms were heard signaling the fight with All Might and Ofa was still going on. Oh and why is that? You don't have the strength to beat me and your little girlfriend is down for the count. Not to mention All Might is no match for Master, at least not in his current state. It's over and there isn't a damn thing you can do about it? Shigaraki said laughing. Izuku smiled, maybe you're right but who said I was the only one? Shigaraki was confused, what do you mean? Just then the city began to turn green in color, Toga was inches away from killing Yuriko when she stopped. Her eyes widened as the light got brighter, F asterisk CK. Shigaraki was suddenly hit by a giant beam of willpower, the beam was so intense that it burned a hole into the earth. Took you long enough. Izuku said as the yellow constructs began to disappear. Green construct bandages began to wrap around Izuku's injuries, sorry kid we would have gotten here sooner but traffic out in space was a V asterisk TCH. So what seems to be the trouble? We got your request for help. Landing beside him were four members of the Green Lantern Corps, this included Kilowog. From the crater Shigaraki began to rise, his yellow lantern suit was ripped in various places, his body cut and bruised in multiple places. T that hurt. He said, bleeding from his lip. We need to take him down. Izuku said looking up at Shigaraki. Kilowog smirked, this jump? He doesn't look like much, but if he managed to best you then he could prove a challenge. All right we'll deal with him, sit back and relax. Wiping the blood off of his lip Shigaraki smiled, so you brought friend, isn't that nice? I think it's time for me to show you what I got from yours he said a red light began to shine from Shigaraki's pocket. Kilowog stepped up to Shigaraki, hey you three go take care of the girl with the violet colored ring, Yuriko was her name I think. She's currently injured, get to her and capture the other one he ordered. The other lanterns nodded and went to help Yuriko, that's when Izuku walked beside Kilowog, think we can take him. Kilowog smiled, with me and you fighting together? Easy, just follow my lead kid. Cover me, while I take him at close range he said jumping at Shigaraki. Izuku quickly flew to a nearby roof and created a green construct sniper rifle. Laying down he looked through the lens, in his sights was Shigaraki. Izuku took a deep breath and fired, the shock wave shook the building as the bullet left the barrel of the gun. Shigaraki created several yellow construct snakes that launched towards Kilowog. Seeing them coming he quickly created several knives cutting the heads off the snakes. Tsk. Alien bastard. Shigaraki yelled out pointing his ring at Kilowog. However before he could do anything a green construct bullet shot by his arm causing his arm to recoil back. Off in the distance he saw Izuku perched up on a building, you. They dry face. You're looking the wrong way. Kilowog yelled out as he created green construct gloves with spikes near the knuckles and cracking Shigaraki across the face. Shigaraki tried to defend himself but every time he raised his ring Izuku would fire another shot causing him to cancel the construct. Damn it, I need some distance. But with their combos I can't even think straight. Kilowog continued to pummel Shigaraki, finally getting tired of it Shigaraki let out a massive yellow blast of energy, enough, he yelled out, pushing Kilowog away. Izuku took this chance and fired a shot, however now that he wasn't getting beaten Shigaraki created a pair of chopsticks and caught the bullet in midair. He then turned to where Izuku was and smiled, my turn. Izuku's eyes went wide as he created another green bullet and quickly tried to reload, as he pulled back the bolt a yellow construct rock smashed through the lens. The green rifle shattered in Izuku's hands, looking up Izuku saw several rocks heading his way. Move kid. Kilowog managed to grab and pull Izuku out of the way of the yellow constructs, the two green lanterns managed to escape. Turning back they saw the building that Izuku was on crumble, thanks Kilowog. Don't thank me yet kid, we still aren't out of the woods yet, Kilowog said, turning back to Shigaraki. Floating in the air Shigaraki smiled as blood dripped from his mouth, now it's time for some payback, he said, extending out his hands. His ring glowed yellow as the ground beneath them began to rumble. Just then the earth was split apart by a giant yellow construct worm-like monster appeared, it opened its mouth revealing razor-sharp teeth lining the top and bottom. Ah hell! The monster roared as it lunged at Izuku and Kilowog, here he comes. Izuku yelled out, firing a blast of willpower at the monster. The two green lanterns began to fly in circles around the monster trying to blast it but they were doing little to no damage. We aren't doing any damage, said Kilowog. Suddenly the worm monster turned around and managed to hit Kilowog with its massive tail. Kilowog smashed through several buildings before smashing into the ground. Still think you and your friends can win? Shigaraki asked, floating in mid-air. Izuku clenched his fists, Shigaraki, he yelled out flying towards him at full speed. With Yurika. 
Toga watched as the other lanterns arrived, I should deal with her before they show up, she then created a large violet-colored knife. So long Okako, I'll make sure you are nothing but a distant memory from GL's mind, Toga said, licking her lips. As she brought down the knife, three blasts of green hit Toga in the side, sending her across and into a wall. Landing beside Yuriko were three green lanterns, check on her, I'll secure the target, one of them said, creating green chains around Toga's arms and legs. One of the female green lanterns leaned down to check on Yuriko, hey are you alright, she asked, that's when she noticed the wound. We need to stop the bleeding, she then created a patch stopping the bleeding. GGL, where is he? Yuriko asked, her voice was weak. Don't worry about him, Kilowog is with him, another lantern said. Toga stared at the green lanterns, why you dare get in my way? My love for GL can't be chained or bound. She then smiled. Only released. Just then Toga's body began to glow violet, the other green lanterns saw this and began to reinforce the chains. However Toga's power began to crack the chains, GL will taste my love. And none of you will get in my way, she yelled out shattering the green construct chains holding her arm. Reaching over she grabbed the other chains and crushed them. The green lanterns were in shock, T that's impossible. Toga's eyes burned with violet energy, faster than any of the green lanterns could react she appeared in front of one of them. Let me show you my love, she said reaching out and grabbing one of them by the neck. The lantern tried to lift their ring but before they could Toga squeezed snapping the neck of the green lantern. The others looked on in horror as they saw the green light fade from the ring of the lantern, how dare you, the female lantern yelled out firing a full powered blast of will power at Toga. Toga tossed the lantern aside before facing the blast, my love is absolute, she yelled out, taking the brunt of the blast. The green beam engulfed Toga and destroyed the buildings behind her. Getting to her feet Yuriko watched in awe at the destructive power of the ring. Just then from within the blast a violet color began to shine, and Yuriko knew what this meant. Look out, she yelled out but it was too late. From within the blast Toga appeared just inches away from the female lantern, W what? Without hesitation Toga fired a blast at the lantern, piercing her heart. The female lantern dropped dead, now it was only Yuriko and one other green lantern. Now then, who's next? Toga asked, walking towards them. The last remaining green lantern took a step back in fear, G get away. You damn monster, he yelled out cowering for his life. Just then his ring began to flash green. Lantern of Sector 478, you are experiencing great fear that you cannot overcome. You are now unworthy of the green lantern ring, immediate replacement must be found. The lantern's eyes went wide, and no. No 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 no. Please wait, no matter how much he begged it to stay it began to leave his hand. He tried desperately to hold onto it but it was no use, the ring left his hand depa worrying him. Just then Toga appeared before the now former Green Lantern, looks like you lost your will, how about some love, she said, placing a hand on his head. Toga stop. Yuriko yelled out. However her words did not reach Toga, Yuriko watched as the alien began to turn into nothing but violet colored dust. Toga has just killed three Green Lanterns like it was nothing, just then all three rings began to glow and float in the air. Ring status report, Green Lanterns of sectors 478, 1729, and 2,962 deceased. Scanning nearby sectors for suitable replacements. Yuriko watched the rings leave, hey where do you think you're looking? I'm still here. Toga yelled out, hitting Yuriko with a blast that sent her flying back. However before she hit the wall Toga created chains that attached themselves from building to building and stretched her limbs to the max. Yuriko yelled out in pain as her arms and legs felt like they were going to get ripped off, she hung in mid-air for everyone to see. Toga then appeared in front of her, Hurts doesn't it? The sensation of your arms and legs being stretched, all I need to do now is give it some more kick and. Raising her finger Toga pulled on the chains causing Yuriko to yell out in pain. However she stopped, Yuriko glared at Toga, her purple eyes seemed to enter Yuriko's mind. Before I kill you, I want you to say something, say that you never loved GL renounce your love over him. Blood poured down Yuriko's open wound, and never, you can go ahead and kill me because there is no way I would do that. Just then the chains tightened causing more pain to Yurika, say it. Toga screamed in Yurika's face. Yurika gritted her teeth, never. Her refusal to do so even when she was in pain pissed Toga off, fine, then die. Toga created a large violet colored sword. Gripping the weapon Toga began to thrust it forward aimed at Yurika's abdomen. Time seemed to slow down for Yurika, closed her eyes as the sword approached her, but I will say this. Toga's eyes went wide. I love GL. More than anything in the world. No matter what you do to me, I will always love him. 
At the last second Eureka opened her eyes revealing that her usually hazelnut-colored eyes had turned violet, but it was the same as Toga's. No, instead the symbol of the violet core appeared. The sword shattered as it made contact with Eureka's abdomen, what? Toga yelled out holding the now shattered sword. Just then the chains holding Eureka began to fade, Toga looked up to see a bright violet-colored aura surrounding Eureka. That aura? Those eyes. What did you do? Eureka looked at her hands, I I don't know, but this warmth I'm feeling. This is my love for GL. Toga began to tremble with anger, don't F asterisk CK with me. I am the only one who has the right to love him. Not some B asterisk TCH like you. Pulling back her fist Toga went in to punch Eureka in the face. However Eureka caught her fist before it hit, she then began to twist it causing Toga to grunt in pain. My turn, pulling Toga close Eureka punched her in the face sending her flying back to the ground with so much force that the ground caved in. Toga struggled to stand as blood poured from her now broken nose. Why you, I'll make you pay for that. Turning around, Toga fired several blasts at Eureka. However the blast simply bounced right off of Eureka doing no damage. Seeing that they were doing nothing, Eureka decided it was time to counterattack. From her hand a chain began to appear and at the end attached was a massive wrecking ball. Gripping the chain Eureka flew down towards Toga and swung the chain with all her might. Toga tried to put up a shield but it shattered on contact. The wrecking ball hit Toga in the side, she managed to put her arm up but it broke in the process. The wrecking ball sent Toga across the street and through a building. Her arm was a mangled mess as she laid on the ground. Just then Eureka landed a few feet away. Why you must really love GL given the amount of power you have now. I'm almost jealous, said Toga coughing out blood. Eureka began to walk over to Toga without saying a word. Well? What are you waiting for, kill me and be done with it? Eureka raised her ring and pointed it at Toga, the ring began to glow as she prepared to fire. Toga's eyes widened, Eureka could see the fear in her eyes. No. Said Eureka, lowering her arm. Toga was shocked, W what do you mean no? It's over Toga, you're beat, there's no reason for me to kill you. Besides if I do GL would see me differently. He'll see me like you, and I'm not like you. Eureka said, staring at Toga. So you're just going to let me go? You know if you do, I'll just come back over and over again. I won't stop until I make GL mine. Said Toga with a smile. Eureka nodded, I know that, so that's why I'll take your power. She then created cuffs and bound Toga to the ground. Now unable to even move Toga knew what she was going to be, and no. Please. Don't, anything but that. Eureka crouched down near Toga's stomach and saw the violet-colored marking on her belly button. She then reached in causing Toga to yell. Then she felt it, pulling the object out. Eureka held a star sapphire gem in her hand, the source of Toga's power. This was something good and your love corrupted it but no more. Eureka began to squeeze. No. Please. Toga yelled out pleading for her to stop. Toga watched as the gem shattered into pieces, just then her costume began to disappear revealing her old villain one. You won't be able to hurt anyone anymore. Why Yuri a monster? Toga said before falling unconscious. Sorry Toga but you shouldn't have this power, love is meant to be something pure. Eureka said, turning around. Yes. That is correct, love is powerful if in the right hands. But those who are corrupted by it aren't worthy of such love a voice said. Eureka looked around but found no one, who said that. In time I will reveal who I am but for now you must go. The one you love is in trouble. Just then a massive explosion of will hit Eureka, knocking her down. I Izuku. With Izuku. Hey 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 hey. Izuku yelled out as his construct guns began to fire several rounds at Shigaraki. Creating a shield Shigaraki began to fly towards Izuku. Then the clicking sound of empty magazines were heard, Izuku looked back to see his construct gun smoking, sh asterisk t. Looks like you're out of bullets and out of time. Shigaraki came in with his fist pulled back. Just then a yellow construct of a lion's head appeared around his fist. With a mighty roar the construct bit down towards Izuku, thinking fast he created a crowbar and stuck it into the lion's jaw stopping it. Izuku was being pushed back as he struggled to hold back the construct. Give it up, lantern. You don't stand a chance. Izuku grunted, never, I will not give up. Too many people are depending on me, I can't lose, not now, not ever. Shigaraki smiled, very well, then you can just go ahead and die. Falling back slightly, Shigaraki then created the lion's claws and brought them down towards Izuku. He quickly put up his construct crowbar but the yellow claws cut through them like they were butter. What? With nothing to hold them back the claw slashed Izuku across the chest, 
ripping his costume and causing blood to splatter. Izuku's eyes went wide as he fell to the earth, crashing into the ground Izuku struggled to get up. That's when Shigaraki appeared a few feet away, now you see it was all pointless. There is no way you could have beaten me he said walking towards Izuku. D damn it, he's too strong. Come on Izuku there has to be something you can do, he thought to himself, just then Izuku saw Kilowog appear from one of the buildings. Hey kid. Maneuver 47. Kilowog yelled out landing behind Shigaraki. But you said never to do that. Izuku yelled back. Just shut up and do it. Kilowog then pointed his ring right at Shigaraki. Izuku did the same and pointed his ring right at Shigaraki. Ready. Do it, he yelled out. Both rings glowed bright green as they fired a blast at each other. The two beams met in the middle where Shigaraki was engulfing him between both beams. Shigaraki at the last second managed to put up a yellow shield on either side stopping the blasts, is that the best you got, he asked, gloating. Full power kid. Kilowog yelled out pushing his ring to max. Hey 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 With a ferocious battle cry Izuku put every last drop of all he had into that blast. As they did the yellow construct shields that Shigaraki put up began to crack, what? Impossible. Izuku's ring then began to speak, ring power, 50%, 40%, 30%, 20%, 10%. With the two beams increased power the shield began to crack even faster, However that wasn't the only thing Shigaraki had to worry about. Every person's will is not the same and no Green Lantern can manipulate others, what this meant that Izuku's and Kilowog's beams weren't just going through each other. They were actually collecting in the middle and building, a massive ball of green will began to gather in the middle. Shigaraki saw this, well it seems you two have done well in pushing me this far but unfortunately for you, I have something else up my sleeve, he then reached into his pocket and pulled out something that glowed crimson red. Just the massive ball of will exploded outward shattering Shigariki's shields and sending both lanterns away. The resulting explosion was so massive that it leveled the surrounding buildings, reducing them to nothingness and shattering every building's window in the city. Izuku was buried underneath dirt, Izuku, 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 a voice called out to him. He opened his eyes but saw nothing but darkness that is until someone removed the dirt from his face. Izuku coughed as he was pulled free from the dirt, looking up he saw Kilowog and Yurika down up at him. H hey guys. How are you doing, he asked, smiling. Yurika smiled, idiot. Did we get him? Asked Izuku, as Yurika helped him up. Kilowog nodded, yeah we got him, there wasn't even anything left. Damn it, I didn't want to kill him but there was no other way, Izuku said looking down. The group fell silent, don't worry Izuku, come on let's go help All Might. Yurika said, holding up Izuku. He nodded as they began to walk over to where All Might was. However before they could get there a beam of red energy shot into Izuku's shoulder piercing it. GL. Yurika yelled out. That was the blast of a red lantern? But how? There shouldn't be any more red lanterns on the planet. Kilowog yelled out surprised. That's when Shigaraki appeared, I am possible. Oh but it is possible, you're looking at living proof. Shigaraki yelled out, spewing out napalm blood. In his right hand glowed the yellow lantern ring of fear and on his left hand burned the crimson red of the red lantern of rage. The one Sinestro core symbol on his chest was now half red lantern, D did he just fuse fear with rage, asked Eureka. Yes, two of the strongest emotions one can feel are now working together. This isn't going to end well. Izuku said, holding his now bleeding shoulder. What do we do? Can we even fight against him now, asked Eureka in fear of what Shigaraki has become. I I don't know, but we have to try. If he learns to control that rage he will become unstoppable, Kilowog said. Firing a blast, Izuku and Yurika followed suit. Shigaraki stood still as the blasts disintegrated as they made contact with him, T this rage, this fear. I feel it burning through my veins. It's amazing. Time to test out what I can do he said flying towards Izuku, Yurika and Kilowog. Nothing that they threw at him was working, Yurika move. Izuku yelled out, pushing her out of the way. Shigaraki dive bombed Izuku and tackled him to the ground, you are weak lantern. Always have been, always will be he said slamming Izuku over and over into the ground. He then opened his mouth and spilled napalm blood all over Izuku burning him and his costume. Izuku yelled out as the napalm blood burned him, just then Kilowog and Yurika appeared behind him ready to blast Shigaraki off of Izuku. However Shigaraki turned around and pointed the red ring of rage and fired a beam at them. They both put up shields but they proved useless, Yurika was sent into a building while Kilowog was sent flying into the sky. Why don't we go see how All Might is doing shall we? Shigaraki grabbed Izuku by the arm as he flew towards the fight. 
with All Might. All Might wasn't going so good, all for one knew exactly where to hit where it would hurt. All Might was bleeding from his lip and breathing erratically, give it up All Might you can't win, not with that weak body of yours, said AFO standing unfazed. Shut up. I will never give up, not when people are relying on me. I will not let you ruin the lives of so many innocent people. I won't. All Might yelled out running towards AFO. AFO lifted up his hand to activate his quirk but All Might stopped him by grabbing his wrist and squeezing it hard. Texas, smash, he yelled out punching AFO in the face so hard that he sent him down into the dirt. The black mask that AFO was wearing shattered but as All Might looked down, his fist began to steam, along with half of his body. All Might's true form was starting to show and AFO knew what this was, looks like you've reached your time limit, All Might. Seeing a chance AFO activated his quirk and with a massive explosion, he sent All Might flying back. All Might dug his feet into the ground, slowing his momentum down he finally stopped as his entire right side was now skinny and frail. Well this is just a pathetic show, one more blast should do it, AFO said raising his hand. If I can dodge this, then I can counter attack. All Might thought, but that's when he saw a smile on AFO. I know what you are thinking, if I just dodge this then I can counter attack right? But will you really dodge? AFO asked preparing his attack. That's when All Might heard it, H help me, a woman was stuck in the rubble behind him. Now, what will you do? AFO said firing off a massive shockwave attack towards All Might. All Might clenched his fist and pointed it right at the blast, he was going to take it head on to save the woman behind him. The blast hit All Might and a massive explosion sent pieces of buildings and dust everywhere. As the dust settled the world watched as All Might stood with his hand a mangled mess and in his skinny form. AFO began to laugh. Do you see this Japan? This is your number one hero, your so-called symbol of peace he was nothing but a lie. Now you all know, any hope you had is now gone. All Might fell to his knees as he coughed out more blood, don't forget about this one master, a voice said above them. AFO looked up to see Shigaraki now donning the red and yellow, my son, it seems you have accomplished what you wanted. And you brought over a friend I see. Shigaraki nodded, this is the vigilante known as Green Lantern and as you can see he has fallen. Not even the ones posing as heroes can save you, he said holding the bleeding body of Izuku. Japan watched as Izuku's broken body was now on every TV screen and every smartphone. Even he lost. Is there anyone who can beat these two? Man is there no one we can trust now, the crowd began to ask. Why you wrong? What he and I are can never be changed, for we are both heroes. I am the symbol of peace. A beacon of hope for everyone, and I will not let them down. Hear me, and do not fear, what? Because I am here. All Might said transforming his right arm into his muscle form. Come on All Might. You can do it. Beat this guy. Save US. You can't give up. The people all yelled out for their hero. Just then somewhere in space a ping was heard, new host has been found, destination Earth the object then quickly took off leaving a blue trail behind it. Uh uh, uh if you want him to live All Might then just stand there and die Shigaraki said creating a red construct saw blade and pressing it up against Izuku's neck. All Might gritted his teeth, cowards. Make your choice All Might, your life, or his. Choose or you both die. AFO said with an evil smile. Izuku struggled to keep his eyes open but he managed to look up to see a shine of blue light. All Might didn't know what to do, time's up. Kill him Shigaraki. AFO yelled out transforming his arm with the ultimate combinations of quirks. He then jumped at All Might ready to kill him, Shigaraki raised the saw ready to slice Izuku's neck. However before they could a blue light came crashing down right in front of All Might, Toshinori Yagi of Earth, you have the power to instill great hope. The ring then slipped onto All Might's hand. Welcome to the Blue Lantern Corps. Instantly All Might turned back into his muscle form, turning to AFO he raised his hand and created a blue fire that erupted from the ground. Master. Shigaraki yelled out as he saw AFO get swallowed up by the blue flames. That's it, this one dies, he said, turning to Izuku. All Might then raised his hand toward Izuku, all will be well. Izuku could feel it, ring power, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%, 120% All Might was charging Izuku's ring to the max. Opening his eyes Izuku let out a blast of will that pushed Shigaraki away. No. You were as good as dead. This fight was over, we had won. Not while hope exists. And especially if I have the will to fight, said Izuku now fully recharged. Hope. F asterisk CK hope. Power is the only thing that matters and I still have more than you do. Shigaraki said as the red and yellow rings began to glow. As much as he hated to admit it, Shigaraki was right, 
even with his ring recharged he was no match for Shigaraki who had two rings. That's when he heard a voice call out to him, GL, he looked down to see Yuriko bruised and bleeding atop a roof. Catch, she yelled out throwing something. Yuriko then fell on the roof, her violet colored costume disappeared, take my love. Izuka grabbed the object, opening his hand he saw what it was, the violet ring of love. Izuka smiled, thank you Yuriko, I love you too he said, putting on the ring on his left ring finger. He could feel it, Yuriko's love for him, just then violet colored stars appeared on the back of Izuka's hands. Love and will working together, who would have guessed, Kilowog said looking up to see Izuka surrounded by a green and violet flame. Bring it Shigaraki, I will show you the power of Yuriko's love and my will. Izuka said as the two rings began to glow. Izuka floated in midair as a violet and green flame surrounded him. Shigaraki stared as napalm blood spewed out of his mouth and a yellow flame appeared behind him. Kick his ass Izuku. Kilowog yelled out. Your two rings are nothing compared to mine. Shigaraki said firing blasts of fear and rage at Izuku. Countering Izuku created a green and violet shield and withstood the blasts. I am possible. This ends now Shigaraki, I'll make sure of it. Izuku said, clenching his fists. Is that right? Then let's go then. Shigaraki said, firing off a blast from both rings. Izuku did the same, the beams of light crashed into each other illuminating the sky in a bright, red, yellow, green, and violet colors. All will fall under my rage. Shigaraki yelled out as napalm blood spilled from his mouth. Love will conquer all. Izuku yelled out as the stars on the back of his hands began to brighten. The beams then shattered and the two dual lanterns flew at each other. Izuku made a green battle axe and a violet colored shield. Shigaraki created a red construct scythe and yellow construct battle hammer. With his rage burning behind him Shigaraki swung a massive battle hammer. Izuku quickly blocked it with his shield, the impact so heavy that it created a shockwave. You will learn to fear me. Shigaraki said, twirling the scythe in his other hand before slashing it down. Izuku countered with his axe, the two weapons clashed. And you will know to love above all else. Izuku yelled out as he slid the shield down, causing Shigaraki's grip on the hammer to falter. Seeing a chance, Izuku then thrusted the shield up, knocking the hammer out of his hands. Izuku then let go of the shield, throwing his fist forward he created a spike boxer's glove and cracked Shigaraki across the face. Shigaraki was sent flying back as violet rays of light were sent flying in every direction. Kilowog looked on in awe, amazing, so this is the power of two different core working together. Regaining his composure Shigaraki, created a massive red construct dragon. Burn. He yelled out as the dragon opened its jaws and began to spill out napalm blood all over the place. Yuriko who was still laying down on the roof unable to move watched as the blood began to fall right over her. However before it could burn her Kilowog came in and picked her up. Can't have you dying on us. What would the kid think? Yurika gave him a weak smile, T thanks Kilowog. Just then the roar of a lion was heard, the two looked up to see a massive green construct lion that wore violet colored armor. Holy, that's cool, said Kilowog. The lion ran through the napalm blood and bit down on the dragon's neck. The dragon roared out in pain as it was being dragged down to the ground. The two constructs smashed through several buildings as they fought. The dragon used its tail to hit the lion's armor right off. The lion slashed at the dragon's wings with his massive claws. While the constructs were busy fighting, Izuku and Shigaraki battled in the sky. Izuku swung his battle axe only to have Shigaraki dodge and counter with his scythe. The scythe stabbed into the shield that Izuku created. Giving the scythe a twist Shigaraki shattered the shield, Izuku's eyes widened. You're mine. Shigaraki yelled out as he brought down the scythe. Izuku raised his battle axe up but it proved useless against the scythe filled with so much rage. The scythe sliced through the handle of the axe, Izuku barely managed to escape but not unscratched. As Izuku retreated a small trail of blood began to fall from a cut on his cheek. Wiping away the blood Izuku looked at Shigaraki, ha ha ha, now do you see? With my two rings, nothing in this universe can stop me. Hmm alright I think I got a feel for this power now, I think that's enough of a warm up, wouldn't you say, said Izuku, cracking his neck. Shigaraki smirked, please, you actually expect me to believe that you. Before Shigaraki could finish Izuku appeared in front of him with his arm pulled back with violet and green colored boxing gloves. What? Shigaraki tried to block but it was too late, with burning love behind it Izuku punched Shigaraki hard in the stomach causing him to hunch over in pain. And with his violet colored glove he hit Shigaraki with a powerful uppercut sending him flying into the air. Izuku looked up and followed Shigaraki with his eyes, then the rings on his hands began to glow bright. Closing his eyes Izuku began to build, to construct a weapon, after a second a green construct railgun appeared pointing right at Shigaraki. He then began to charge it, from the barrel of the gun a violet light began to shine, 
dim at first but it soon turned into a blinding storm. This is over, said Izuku as he snapped his fingers. With a loud krakum. The gun fired. The beam of pure violet energy shot out of the green construct railgun with so much force that the ground beneath the gun broke apart. Shigaraki finally regained his bearings, H he wasn't bluffing, he's really gotten used to the power. He said wiping blood off of his lip. That's when he heard the krakum, looking down he saw the massive beam of violet energy, surrounding it was green lightning as it traveled through the air. Oh hell. The beam completely engulfed Shigaraki. The beam was so bright that it was seen throughout the entirety of Japan. Yuriko watched in awe at what Izuku just did, I Izuku. As the beam disappeared, Izuku watched and waited for any sign of Shigaraki. After a few seconds of waiting he got his answer, with the glow of both red and yellow Shigaraki emerged. His costume was completely ripped to shreds and he had bruises all around his body. I'm impressed Shigaraki, you actually withstood that, said Izuku. Shigaraki's breathing was heavy, s shut up. Oh what's wrong, doesn't feel good does it? Now that the tables have turned, this game you played isn't fun huh? Well too bad, now it's your turn to know what it's like to lose. Said Izuku with a smirk on his face. Shigaraki then began to laugh hysterically, nice speech, but talk is cheap lantern. You of all people should know that. Just then the glow of red and yellow covered Shigaraki's body and magically his costume was fully repaired. Now then, shall we continue, asked Shigaraki as his construct dragon roared behind him. Izuku couldn't help but smile and with his construct lion behind him giving a mighty roar they once again charged at each other. The two dual-wielding lanterns crashed into each other in a flash of color. With all might. The blue flames engulfed all for one, all might now in his blue lantern core uniform watched the blue flame burn. Just then AFO used one of his quirks to back out of the fire. The suit he was wearing was now burnt in various places. That ring, it's the same as Shigariki's, but obviously different in color. How did you get that? All might looked down at the ring, I do not know, but what I know is that this fight between you and me is meaningless. Let us fight no longer, we should put aside our differences and show the people that there is still hope. All Might extended in hand, almost welcoming AFO to take it. However AFO scoffed, please, I rather die than help you. Closing his eyes, All Might looked down, very well, I gave you a chance and you rejected me. In order to bring peace and hope back to the people I will make sure you can't rob them of that ever again. Opening his eyes, all Might created the UA symbol behind him as he flew right at AFO. All for one threw his massive fist forward ready to counter but his fist never landed. Instead All Might created a blue chain and wrapped it around his arm. Yanking on the chain All Might caused All for one to miss. As AFO was now within punching range All Might outstretched both of his hands. Texas slash Wisconsin. Just then two blue constructs of each state appeared from either side of AFO. Smash. Bringing both of his hands together. All Might caused both state constructs to slam into AFO. The impact was so hard that the two constructs shattered, AFO put his arms up but it did little to stop the constructs. AFO fell to his knees but before he could even look up All Might created a harness around AFO's torso, picking him up All Might then slammed him into the ground. All Might then walked over to the fallen AFO, it's over all for one, you can't beat me anymore. I will save everyone from your rule. AFO coughed out blood, like you saved your teacher? You the number one hero couldn't even save her, but you want to know something funny. You couldn't even save her grandson. All Might's eyes went wide, what are you talking about? My master never had a family, she told me herself. Is that what she told you? Oh I see, she didn't want you to find out her deep dark secret. The truth is All Might that Shigaraki is Nana's grandson. I took the last living member of her family and turned him against you. AFO said with a twisted smile. Taking a step back All Might couldn't believe it. Why you relying? Oh I wish I was, you, the symbol of peace have failed your teacher once again. First by letting her die and now with her grandson. You inspire him yes, but it wasn't hope, it was hate said AFO. The blue glow of the blue lantern core began to fade as All Might fell to his knees. I I don't deserve this power. All Might then reached out and grabbed the blue ring from his hand. He then began to remove the ring, now off of his finger he held it in his hand. However, the blue costume around him did not fade. W what's going on? The ring gives the user power while wearing the ring, so why hasn't the power left me? Suddenly a voice called out to All Might, because you are truly a symbol of peace but most importantly, you are a symbol of hope for all those in this country said Saint Walker floating down towards All Might. You, you're from back at the sports festival. Saint Walker if I remember correctly said All Might. Saint Walker nodded, yes. What are you doing here, asked All Might. I am here to see the newest member of the Blue Lantern Corps. 
and to see if you are truly worthy of the ring, for you see any and all new blue lanterns must first undergo a three-day trial back on our home world. Think of me being here as your official first day, as such I will not be interfering so do be careful said Saint Walker with a smile. I'm still a bit confused but right now this world needs my help and I intend to give it to them, All Might said, turning back to AFO. Very well, just then Saint Walker turned to see Izuka fighting. AHH it seems he has improved with the green ring, wait, no it can't be, he has two rings. Violet, the power of love, but where did it come from? With Izuku. In the sky Izuku and Shigaraki went punch for punch, now that they were wearing two rings it seemed as if they were equally matched. Izuku created a green bat and swung it at Shigaraki, only to have Shigaraki created one as well. The two constructs crashed into each other and shattered, Shigaraki then got in close and grabbed Izuku's wrists. You will fear me, he yelled out spilling napalm blood in Izuku's face, burning him. Izuku was being pushed back down to the ground as he was getting burned, gritting his teeth he managed to create a violet colored hand and placed it on Shigaraki's mouth. Get off of me, he yelled out leaning back, causing Shigaraki to flip over him. Taken by surprise Shigaraki was then kicked in the stomach, sending him crashing into a building. Wiping the napalm blood off of him and with burn marks across his face Izuku then rocketed down towards the building. However as he was flying down a yellow construct missile suddenly appeared from it. With no time to react Izuku was hit by the missile, it exploded out in a yellow fireball. Izuku's body was thrown back from the explosion, however Shigaraki was not done. The building crumbled as fighter jets of yellow and red color flew out and fired missiles and bullets at Izuku. Izuku had just regained his composure when he saw the missiles and bullets heading his way. Pointing his hands to the missiles he created a surface-to-air truck and fired violet-colored missiles. The missiles shot through the sky and hit dead on with the jets and red missiles. Through the explosion of colors Shigaraki appeared, Izuku went up to meet him. Crashing into each other they engaged into a deadlock. Shigaraki and Izuku created construct hands which locked as they landed on the ground, What's wrong lantern? Are you running out of steam, mocked Shigaraki. Izuku pushed hard so as to not lose ground, ha. Huh? I can do this all day. That may be true but let's see how you do without the use of one of your arms. Shigaraki said as his eyes began to turn red with rage. With the sudden increase of power he then began to overpower Izuku. Shigaraki swiped at Izuku's legs, hitting one, he knocked Izuku down. Looking up, Izuku saw a yellow construct spiked hammer head in his direction. He tried to raise his arm but as he did red spikes pinned his arm back down. Then the hammer came, hitting Izuku it broke his radius and ulna. Izuku heard the crack, then he screamed out in agonizing pain. Eureka, still on the roof, saw Izuku's arm get crushed, Izuku. The green glow around Izuku's body began to fade as he now solely could only focus on the pain. Izuku then began to hyperventilate from the pain, oh what's wrong? Does that hurt? Then how about this? Lifting his foot off the ground Shigaraki brought it down right on top of Izuku's broken arm. Izuku gave out an agonizing yell, however Shigaraki didn't stop, on the contrary he began to twist his foot causing Izuku more pain. Izuku tried to point the violet ring at Shigaraki but as he did a yellow construct stake stabbed into the palm of his hand causing it to bleed. Ah, uh, uh, I'm not going to give you a chance to try anything said Shigaraki, locking his hands completely in red construct restraints. Now, I can have my fun, Shigaraki said creating several construct knives. W when I get out of this, I'll make you pay. Izuku said grunting in pain. When you get out? No, you're not getting out, I am going to take out all my rage on you. Once I'm done with you, I'll go and do the same to any who oppose me. Starting off with that little girlfriend of yours. Shigaraki said with a smile. Izuku's eyes went wide, why you, will not touch her, he yelled out as a violet light began to shine from the red construct restraints. Izuku's eyes began to burn violet. Then it shattered, the red and the violet took over. With the yellow stake in his palm Izuku pushed forward, blood poured out from the wound as he lifted his arms. Suddenly Izuku's body erupted into a green and violet wave. Shigaraki jumped back as Izuku stood up with blood pouring down his wound. And not while I'm still standing, I will always fight till the very end. Izuku said as the green glow of his ring began to reappear. Clenching his fist Izuku flew at Shigaraki and with blood running down it, he punched Shigaraki across the face sending him flying back. Shigaraki dug his feet into the ground, well this is a surprise. Is this your final stand or your dying breath? Doesn't matter, you will soon be dead. Izuku and Shigaraki ran at each other, their fists crashed into each other sending color throughout the battlefield. Shigaraki then jumped into the sky, Izuku quickly followed and began to fire off blasts of will and love. Shigaraki dodged them, stopping and looking down he sent all the knives he created down towards Izuku. Thinking fast Izuku created a cutting board and stopped the knives. 
Izuku then got in close and kicked Shigaraki in the stomach, as he flew back Izuku created a brick wall behind Shigaraki. Slamming into it Shigaraki suddenly stopped, what, as he looked back he was met by a violet colored bat hitting him through the wall. Shigaraki then created twin blasters of rage and fear and fired at Izuku. Maneuvering in the sky Izuku dodged the blasts but Shigaraki was not letting up. Stopping abruptly, Izuku pointed and fired off green and violet blasts, hitting and destroying the blasters. Shigaraki growled as he flew right at Izuku and kneed him in the stomach. Hunching forward, Shigaraki then struck Izuku's back with his elbow causing him to fall. Close to the ground Izuku created a green trampoline, jumping on it he springed back up. With the momentum behind him he went straight for Shigaraki. Creating brass knuckles he punched Shigaraki in the face before pointing his ring and firing multiple energy blasts. Gah! Shigaraki yelled. Enough, letting out a red bubble he stopped the blasts. Getting in close he grabbed Izuku by the neck and began to squeeze. I'll see you in hell. Izuku could feel his consciousness fading, why you, first. He said struggling to breath. Just then Izuku began to recite the Green Lantern Oath, I in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might, beware my power, Green Lantern's light, green light then began to radiate out of Izuku pushing Shigaraki away. Izuku's fists then began to glow as he charged up his rings, with unstoppable will in his right, and undeniable love in his left he pointed them right at Shigaraki. Izuku could feel the power in his rings collecting, rising with every second, you won't hurt anyone anymore. Izuku then fired off two massive blasts of will and love right at Shigaraki. The two beams soon became one as they intertwined with each other and merged. The night sky was lit up by green and violet as the beam burned through it. Shigaraki collected his power and created several layers of shields of rage and fear in front of him. As Izuku's beam hit the first shield it shattered, then came the chain reaction. One by one Shigaraki's shields began to shatter. With the final shield failing Shigaraki created a bubble around him as the blast hit him. I won't lose, he yelled out as cracks appeared around his bubble. Izuku narrowed his eyes and let out a battle cry. Shigaraki struggled as his bubble began to fail him. I, will, not, lose, he yelled out as the bubble shattered. His eyes widened as Izuku's beam hit him, engulfing him completely. Kilowog and Eureka, along with everyone watching at home, stopped and stared at the beam that shot across the sky. Stopping the attack Izuku floated in the air exhausted, D did I do it, was all he could say before falling out of the sky. Meanwhile the red dragon was pinned to the ground, Izuku's construct lion stepped on its face as it tried to get up. With a powerful roar the lion bit down on the dragon's neck shattering it. With pieces of red construct in its mouth the lion let out a victorious roar. With all might. AFO gave it everything he had, lightning, wind, shockwaves, gravity, quirks of all varieties weren't working. Damn you all might. Fight me like a man. All might dropped the blue shield around him, very well, let's end this. The two longtime enemies stood face to face, blinking they ran at each other. AFO was going to use every last quirk he had in his disposal to take down All Might. All Might on the other hand focused on the trust and hope others have given him. He could feel it, one for all was all but over but this ring was fanning the fire within him for one last punch. Duh. AFO yelled out activating all his quirks at the same time. United States of Smash. All Might yelled out as blue flames erupted behind him. The two fists clashed and for a split second, it looked like they would tie but All Might put his back into this attack and with the hope of all of Japan on his side he managed to land a decisive hit to AFO's face. AFO fell to the ground unconscious, All Might had won, it was over. However as Japan cheered All Might could feel the last embers of one for all die out within him, thank you one for all, for everything. With Izuku. Both of his rings let out what appeared to be flames as he fell, Izuku. Yuriko was about to jump off the roof she was on to help him but couldn't thanks to her injuries. Lucky for her Kilowog created a green construct bed and caught Izuku. With his eyes barely open Izuku looked up to see Kilowog, oh oh hey Kilowog is it time for training. Kilowog let out a small laugh, no kid, I think you earned a break. Or I would like to say that but I think you should talk to someone before you do. Landing on the roof Izuku immediately fell to his knees, Izuku, limping up to him was a teary-eyed Eureka. Izuku gave a weak smile, H hey. Standing up he tried to take a step but stumbled. Lucky for him Eureka caught him and he even had some cushion thanks to her fun bags. Eureka wrapped him in a hug, you did amazing Izuku, I'm proud of you. Izuku felt something he thought he would ever feel again, T this warmth, I felt it before. I see now, Eureka really is just like you. Loving just like you, Maria. You did well GL All Might said landing on the roof. 
All Might, what about AFO? Izuku asked as he was being held up by Yuriga. Do not worry all will be well said Saint Walker. Izuku smiled, Saint Walker, it's good to see you. Saint Walker nodded, same to you. Now All Might was it? You have proved today that you are capable of wielding the Blue Ring. However if you are to keep the ring, you still need to come with me back to our home planet. All Might looked down at the ring on his finger, it's an honor to have been given this chance, Saint Walker. With this much power, I can continue to fight crime and give people hope suddenly All Might slipped off the ring and reverted back to his skinny form. However, I think it's time for others to take up that responsibility. Besides, the future is secure with these two. All Might said looking at Izuku and Yuriga. Hey All Might? Are you sure about this? asked Yuriga. All Might nodded, yes, it's not like I'll stop helping people, it's just that it won't be as the number one hero he then handed the blue lantern ring back to Saint Walker. Please, find someone else to wear this ring. Saint Walker grabbed the ring and smiled, I'll hold onto it, but something tells me this won't be the last time you wear it. Suddenly something came crashing down beside the building they were on, everyone looked down to see Shigaraki. I am possible, he's still alive. Izuku said, grabbing at his sides. Wait look. Saint Walker pointed down. There laying on the ground was Shigaraki spitting out napalm blood. What's happening to him, asked All Might. It's the effects of the Red Ring, if a new Red Lantern is not submerged into the blood lake on his mall they will die. Said Saint Walker. So Bakugo and Todoroki could have died? Yurika said in shock. Did you already forget? The blue light of hope can cure him. Come with me. Saint Walker said as they all went down to where Shigaraki was. Saint Walker then placed a hand on him. Suddenly his body was engulfed in a blue light. As the light dissipated Shigaraki came out wearing only the yellow lantern ring. Turning around he revealed the red ring, it suddenly began to crumble and turn to ash before disappearing. It is done. No, it's not, he still has a yellow ring. Said Izuku looking down at the bloody and beaten Shigaraki. Yes, but unfortunately it's going to stay with him. All you can do is contain him but even that I think will prove difficult said Saint Walker. As the group waited for the authorities to show up a loud boom was heard. Suddenly a portal appeared beside Shigaraki, whatever this was it began to suck Shigaraki through it. No. Izuku yelled out as he created a green construct rope. Wrapping it around Shigaraki he began to pull with what little strength he had left. Before anyone else could help him the rope suddenly snapped and in fell Shigaraki. With another loud boom the portal disappeared leaving nothing but the ground scorched. Where did he go? asked Yurika. Ring, search for Shigaraki. Izuku yelled. Scanning, cannot locate. Damn it, he got away, said Izuku, cursing himself. We will find him gl, no matter what. All Might said trying to comfort Izuku. For now you two need to get your injuries taken care of. Come on Izuku, let's get you to recovery girl, suggested Yurika. Izuku nodded, alright but first Izuku removed the violet ring. I think this is yours he said presenting her the ring. Yurika smiled, care to put it on me. Izuku then slid the ring back onto her left ring finger. As soon as he did Yurika's star sapphire uniform returned. Izuku, the guardians are going to want a report on what happened here today said Kilowog. Izuku agreed, and they will get one, for now go back and tell them what happened. If they want me back then call me and I will be there. Good, you take care alright kid, said Kilowog, turning away. Izuku smiled, I will. See you soon Kilowog with that Kilowog took off into the night sky to return to OA. What about you Walker? You sticking around? asked Yurika. No, I need to report back to the others what happened to our newest member he then turned to All Might. Although our time was short it has been an honor to see you fight, he said extending out a hand. All Might grabbed it and shook, the honor was all mine sir. This is not a journey's end, only the start of a new one. Wise words, farewell everyone. And always remember, all will be well with that Saint Walker took off into space. Izuku and Yurika waved goodbye, well come on let's get ourselves patched up and call it a night. I don't know about you but tonight was exhausting, said Yurika. Izuku smiled, all right then let's go. Need a lift all might. Nah, I'll stick around here for a bit and see what if they need me for anything. Besides, Izawa has told me you fly crazy said all might. Damn it Izawa, well whatever. Later all might, and with that Izuku and Yurika took off into the night sky. As they took off the ground beneath them was destroyed thanks to the fights but where the portal was a symbol appeared scorched into the earth. A symbol of power a symbol of an alpha, no rather an omega. Shortly after the fight Izuku, Yurika and All Might were all emitted into the hospital. Out of the three All Might had the less serious injuries. 
In all the excitement and confusion Eurika completely forgot that she was stabbed through the back thanks to Toga. Recovery girl kissed Eurika a few times and after an overnight stay in the hospital she was allowed to go home. Yue had given all the students the week off to deal with the retirement of All Might. Eurika went to check on Izuku before she left. Izuku's injuries were severe, he took quite the beating from Shigaraki. During the fight Shigaraki had actually managed to break one of Izuku's arms. Recovery girl managed to heal him but he still had to keep his arm in a sling for a day or two. As the two were about to head home they were stopped by Izuwa who was accompanied by the police. Eurika, GL, there is someone who wishes to speak with you said Izuwa. Izuku looked at the police commissioner, who was actually a dog. So you are the famous Green Lantern he said staring down at Izuku. Yeah that's me, so what do you want? I'm really tired right now and just want to go home to rest, Izuku said, narrowing his eyes. The commissioner grinned, oh? Is that how you talk to the person who can literally decide if you are labeled a criminal? Izuku's ring began to glow green, huh? Yurika who was in her star sapphire uniform grabbed Izuku's hand, GL, please don't strain yourself. Calming down Izuku let the glow around his ring subside, I'll ask you again, what do you want? I came here to thank you, both of you he said bowing his head. Izuku and Yurika looked at each other, your actions that night saved the lives of countless people and for that I can't thank you enough. Izuku smiled, please raise your head commissioner. We just did what anyone would do, so there is no need to thank us. Yurika nodded, GL is right, our actions don't merit your praise commissioner. The commissioner lifted his head, even so we in the police department want to recognize you both for your achievements. That being said, please take these he then handed them medals. Izuku's eyes went wide as he grabbed one of them, thank you, really thank you. But the real heroes deserve this, so please give it to them he said, handing back the medal, Yurika did the same. The commissioner was surprised but smiled, I'll hold on to them for you. Anyway that was all, if you ever need any help please don't hesitate to come and visit me. Izuku watched as the commissioner walked away leaving only Yurika and Izawa with him. Oh that reminds me, GL Nizu wants to formally invite you to join UA as a student said Izawa. Nizu has already given permission, and most of the teachers have agreed to it, all that is needed is your decision. Izuku was taken back by this sudden surprise, I I don't know what to say, I mean going to UA has always been a dream of mine but. Don't feel pressured to accept right now. Think it over, just know that if you accept your identity will be revealed. If you don't accept, you will just go back to being a mentor to the hero class. Explained Izawa. Yeah, I should think this over. But for now I just want to go home and rest, Izuku said with a smile. Izawa nodded, teenagers, always the lazy bunch he said, turning around from the two. Izuku smirked, says the guys who sleeps during lessons. Yurika then squeezed his hand, turning around he found Yurika yawning. Come on GL, I need to rest. All right, all right. Let's go then. I'll see you later Izawa said Izuku as they began to float in the air. Izawa turned as the two took off into the sky, later kid. With that Izuku and Yurika took off into the sky leaving behind a trail of green and violet. Making it back to Yurika's apartment they landed on the balcony and went in. As soon as they did they both took off their rings. They then breathed a huge sigh of relief and threw themselves on the sofa. Izuku grabbed Yurika and wrapped his arms around her waist. This is heaven. Yurika giggled, me or the sofa. Both said Izuku burying his face into her chest. Izuku stop, that tickles she said playfully pushing him. However she stopped when she noticed Izuku with his eyes closed. Yurika smiled, looks like he fell asleep, he must have been really tired she then hugged him. Rest well Izuku with that Yurika kissed him on the forehead and made herself comfortable. The two drifted off to sleep, it may have been sunny outside but they didn't care. It was time to rest and that's what they intended to do. It wasn't until the late hours of the night when Yurika woke up. Where Izuku once laid asleep was now empty, she got up and looked around but couldn't find him. Walking over to the table she found a note that read, went out for a flight, I needed to clear my head. He must be still thinking about the offer he got about attending UA. Wait a minute, he still has a messed up arm, he shouldn't be using his powers. Said Yurika crumpling up the note. However she then sighed, oh well, it's not like I can stop him. She then walked over to the balcony. Just stay safe alright Izuku. Over the city Izuku floated in mid-air in a construct bubble. If I go, I could be closer to Yurika without worrying about the whole teacher thing. On the other hand if I go everyone would know who I am. Izuku grabbed his head, oh man this is a tougher choice than I thought. He then looked up to the starry night. God I wish you were still here Maria, you always gave the best advice. One week later. During the week of break Nizu thought it would be a great idea to make Yue into a boarding school. 
throughout the week All Might and Izawa went to everyone's homes and got the permission of everyone's parents. This included Eureka, much to Izuku's dismay. This meant that Eureka would be moving out of her apartment, which also meant that Izuku had nowhere to go. Even so, Izuku helped Eureka move all of her stuff and some of the other students' stuff into the new living area. Thank you again GL for doing this, Izawa said standing outside of the new dorms. Izuka created green construct golems to help move with the move in process. No problem, happy I could help. Although with Eureka moving out it means I have to find a new place to stay. Right, you stayed with Eureka. Well you don't have to worry about that, Nizu actually thought about that and is allowing you to stay with the students said Izawa. Izuka lost focus causing his constructs to shatter, hey. GL what gives? Mina yelled out as one of her boxes was now on the floor. S sorry about that, refocusing Izuka created the golems once again. Now, you want to run that by me again. Nizu said you can stay here in the dorms. Given your circumstances and the fact that you helped us a lot, it's the least we can do said Izuka. Izuka smiled, someone wants me close by, you guys are trying to keep an eye on me aren't you? I will neither confirm or deny that but just think of this as a reward said Izawa with a grin. I have to thank Nizu later, so where is my room, asked Izuku. The layout of the dorms was simple, it was five stories tall with two wings, guys in the left wing and girls on the right, with a common area where they could hang out on the ground floor. Izuku's new room was about at least five times bigger than the one he had at the orphanage, I is this all mine, asked Izuku looking around. Izawa nodded, sure is. We thought you'd still want to go out and go do your vigilante stuff so we put you and Eureka on the top floors. That way you can come and go without worrying about the other students. Thank you, really thank you. This is more than I deserve, Izuku said, sitting down on his new bed. If only Maria could see me now, she would probably tell me to make sure it stays clean, share the room with the twins, or... Izuku then felt something wet run down his face. GL, you're crying. Said Izawa. Izuku wiped away the tear. S sorry, I was just remembering my past that's all. I may not know what you went through in your past but I do know this, you're not alone anymore. If you ever feel like talking to someone don't hesitate to talk to me or anyone for that matter. Izawa said placing a hand on Izuku's shoulder. Izuku nodded, thanks, I appreciate that. Anytime, so have you given it some thought about joining UA, asked Izawa. I have, but I'm still not sure. I like to keep my identity a secret but I know that won't last forever. So I came up with a compromise of sorts, the student's exam for their provisional license is coming up right, asked Izuku. Izawa nodded, that's right, it's next week actually. What do you have in mind? I will train them like I always do. If they all pass I'll join UA as a student but if even one of them fail I'll just go back being a regular mentor to them said Izuku. Izawa thought about it, that sounds fair he then got up. All right now that that's out of the way, where is your stuff? I know you may not have a lot but you must have something. Not really, besides some clothes, all I have is this ring and the lantern battery, Izuku said holding the lantern battery. You should really buy some stuff, well I can't really say anything I'm a minimalist so I like how things are. Come on, some of the students still might need your help. Said Izawa as they both made their way back down to the common area. As they got off the elevator they found everyone around Eureka, come on tell us. Is Midoriya really GL, asked Mina. Eureka waved her hands in front of her face. I I don't know what you are talking about. Don't play dumb with us Okako, we have evidence. Toru said, sticking her phone in Eureka's face. Pressing play, a video of Eureka's fight with Toga began to play, I love GL. More than anything in the world. No matter what you do to me, I will always love him. The video cut out, see. You said you love GL. But we've met your boyfriend, so unless you are cheating on him. Which I highly doubt you are, that means Midoriya is GL. Mina said, poking Eureka. Eureka blushed, she didn't know that someone was recording. I I, well you see the thing is she then looked over at Izuku. Izawa smirked, yeah I thought this would happen. Some of these students aren't the smartest but they can put two and two together. So what are you going to do? They won't stop until they have answers. Izuku sighed, how troublesome. He then walked over to them. That's when Mina saw Izuku, so are you really Midoriya? No, if you want proof. Then have Eureka call him, I'm sure she has his number. Izuku said motioning to Eureka. Mina thought about it, fine, but put your hands up. I don't want to see any funny business. Eureka, call Midoriya. Fine, but I'm only doing this so you can leave GL alone. Eureka then reached into her pocket and pulled out her phone. W what does Izuku have planned? Once I call him his identity is going to be revealed. 
Putting it on speaker the phone began to ring, after two rings Izuku picked up, Hey Okako, what's up? Yuriko was shocked, H hey Izuku, nothing much, I was just wondering if we are still on for Friday. The class all looked at Izuku, they made sure his hands were up and his lips weren't moving. Yeah of course, I wouldn't miss it. Actually I was just about to call you, I saw the news and wanted to make sure everyone was alright. Yuriko smiled, yeah, all might, Star Sapphire, and GL managed to save the two that were captured. Just then someone else's voice was heard, Midoriya. Get back to work. Why yes sir. Sorry Okako I'll call you once I'm out alright, said Izuku much quieter than last time. Alright, be careful alright, I don't want you getting hurt like last time said Yuriko. No promises, alright Okako, talk to you later and with that Izuku hung up. Yuriko put down her phone and turned to her classmates, happy. Mina looked at Yuriko and back to GL. For now, something fishy is going on and I'm going to find out what. Can I put my hands down now? This feels like I'm getting arrested. Izuku said still with his hands up. Oh right, sorry about that. We just had to make sure you wouldn't try anything funny with that ring said Momo. Speaking of rings, Okako, where is yours? Ribbit asked Sue. Oh I have it somewhere safe. I got talking to Mr. Izawa and he said I should train with my own power before relying on the ring explained Yurika. I see. So can you use it during the provisional license exam, asked Jiro. Sadly no, the judges deemed it too powerful and unfair for me to use against others. Which I guess they are right, but still I wish I could have used it said Yurika. True the ring is powerful but the ring itself isn't powerful. It's the person wearing it that makes it powerful. Remember what I told you, the ring is only limited to your imagination. Set your mind free and you can do just about anything said Izuka walking towards the group. Wise words GL. What he just said also applies to everyone here, your quirk is only as strong as you want it to be. That is why GL is going to put you through hell this week in order to help you guys get ready for the provisional license exam. Izawa said with a smile. Izuka smirked, oh I got something special planned for you all the whole class felt a cold shiver run down their spin. The training was brutal, the last session couldn't even compare to this one. Izuka wanted to make sure that everyone passed. However halfway through the week he got a call on his ring. Ganthet had called him to let him know that the Guardians wished to speak to him about the events that transpired on Earth. Izuku agreed, so halfway through the class's training he had to leave. Izuku apologized, but the class understood and told him to be safe. Yuriko watched on in worry as he disappeared into the sky and into deep space. On OA Izuku was questioned about what happened and on how he was able to wield two rings of different emotional spectrums. Truthfully Izuku had no idea how he was able to wield the violet ring. He assumed it was because he had a relationship with Yurika and she allowed him to wear it. Four days later. After four long days of answering questions and training with the other Green Lanterns, Izuka was allowed to leave. Although before he left Izuka swore never to wear another colored ring, and most surprising was that Ganthet was the most adamant about this. With little option Izuka agreed never to wear a different colored ring. As he prepared to leave Izuka was stopped by Ganthet, Midoriya, a word before you leave. Sure Ganthet, what's up? Asked Izuku. Tell me, how did you feel wearing another colored ring? Izuku raised an eyebrow to this question. How did I feel? Hmm, stronger I guess, I could feel my power growing as soon as I slipped on the ring. Said Izuku, looking at his hands. Interesting, did you perhaps feel, superior? Like you can control anything? Asked Ganthet. Why yeah, at that moment I felt invincible. Creating a fist Izuku gave a smirk. Ganthet saw his change in facial expression, Midoriya. Izuku shook his head. Sorry, I let my mind wander, don't worry Ganthet, I already promised never to put on another ring. Ganthet nodded, very well. Off you go then, I do believe someone back on earth is waiting for you, are they not? Izuku blushed, H how did you? I am a guardian Midoriya, I know everything. Ganthet said with a smile. Back on earth. Class 1A was tired. They had just gotten done with their provisional hero license exam. To the delight of Izawa only two of them failed, the rest passed. Man, thank God that's over. Mina said, throwing herself onto the sofa. Tell me about it, if it wasn't for GL's training I would have failed. Kaminari said slumping on a chair. Yurika smiled at her class, yet it was pretty tough, but we made it guys. Well not everyone. Kiri's Hima said standing in front of a very pissed off Bakugo. Bakugo and Todoroki were the only two students that didn't pass. Test was rigged from the start. He barked out. Todoroki said nothing as he walked up to his room, guess he's not taking failing the exam well. 
said Momo watching him leave. He'll be fine, I hope. In the meantime we should go celebrate. Who's up for some pizza? Mina said sitting upright. The class all raised their hands, hey, is no one going to invite me to this party? A voice said coming from the entrance. Turning around they found Izuku standing there with pizza boxes in each hand. GL. You're back. Izuku walked over to the table and placed down several boxes of pizza, sure am. Sorry I couldn't be there to see you guys but I brought this, so hopefully it makes up for it. The class all began to grab slices, thanks GL. No problem, enjoy it while it's hot. Izuku then turned his attention to Yurika. He smiled as their eyes met. So, I guess you heard who passed and who failed, asked Yurika with two slices, one for Izuku and one for herself. Izuku grabbed the slice, thanks, and yeah I did. Shame really, I made a deal with Nizu. If all of you passed I would have joined UA as a student. Wait what? The class all yelled out in unison. GL could have been a student if we all passed. Man, now I really feel bad that those two failed. It would have been cool to have him as a classmate. Siro said. Right, damn, we also would have found out who he really is. Mina said, taking a bite from her slice. Better luck next time, for now I'll keep my identity a secret. Izuku said, winking as he grabbed another slice. However all throughout the day Bakugo stared at Izuku from across the room. It was now around midnight and everyone was about to get some sleep but as Izuku and Yurika were going upstairs Bakugo stopped them. You two come with me. Why? asked Yurika. I have something to say to you two and I rather not say it out here. Izuku and Yurika decided to humor Bakugo and followed him outside towards ground beta. All right Bakugo, you dragged us out here, now what? said Yurika stopping in the middle of the road. Bakugo who was a few steps in front of them stopped and turned around, how long were you going to keep it from me, he asked, pointing at Izuku. What are you talking about, questioned Izuku. Stop. You can trick the others but you can't trick me, I still remember your stupid face. You disappeared after middle school and I've always wondered where you ended up. Bakugo said yelling. Izuku sighed and let the green mask around his face disappear, revealing his face. It's been a while Kakan, just one question. Since when? Since the USJ, I recognized your voice while you were fighting the Nomu. Even then I still wasn't sure, but that all changed during the fight with All Might and All for One. That bulldog looking alien yelled out your name during the fight and I was close enough to hear it explained Bakugo. So now what? Are you going to expose my identity? asked Izuku. Bakugo stepped up to Izuku. Yurika readied herself to jump in if Bakugo tried anything but instead she was shocked when Bakugo suddenly hugged Izuku. You damn idiot. After I heard what happened to the orphanage I thought you died. I thought I lost the chance to say I'm sorry. Yurika was taken back by Bakugo's sudden change, you wanted to apologize. For what? I used to pick on him, call him useless but during the time when I had the red ring I could feel it. His hatred towards me, at first I didn't know why but once I figured it out who he was it all began to make sense. I'm sorry Midoriya. Bakugo said, breaking from the hug. Izuku sighed, look Bakugo. I don't hate you for what you did to me. I was angry but like you, I learned that hate isn't the way. He walked towards Yurika and grabbed her by the waist. I found another way thanks to some help. Bakugo smiled, I see, well I do hope one day I can make it up to you. Don't worry I won't tell anyone who you really are. Izuku nodded. Good, now to deal with the other thing. Izuku turned around. You can come out now. Yurika and Bakugo were confused, that is until they saw all might creep out of the shadows, I'm surprised you noticed me. Most powerful weapon in the universe, remember, said Izuku lifting his ring up. All Might scoffed, right, how could I forget? What do you want All Might? I know you followed us for a reason said Izuku, getting slightly annoyed. I honestly thought you two would fight, apparently I was wrong. All Might said stopping in front of Izuku. Always the teacher aren't we All Might? Well doesn't matter, let's go back to the dorms. Izuku put on his mask and created a platform for everyone to stand on. Yurika and Bakugo got on but All Might didn't. What's the hold up old man? Listen Midoriya there is another reason why I followed you, it's about the day that it happened. Izuku's eyes went wide. Izuku gritted his teeth, don't. I know you still hate me and I honestly don't blame you, but please understand. Stop. I know you won't forgive me anytime soon or ever for that matter but. All Might paused for a second. I don't think I ever said I'm sorry, about your family. Izuku's ring began to glow brighter, almost as he was charging up an attack but All Might kept going. I'm sorry I stopped you at the USJ. I'm sorry you had to go through all that pain. 
Eurica saw Isaac's hand tremble, she then turned to All Might, I think that's enough All Might, now is not the time for this. All Might looked down at the floor, very well, another day. Please take care. Isaac didn't say a word as they took off into the sky leaving All Might behind at the training ground. The group landed in front of the dorms and went inside, Isaac went straight to his room. Eurica wanted to comfort him but she knew he needed some time for himself, what she found odd was that he didn't even go out patrolling that night. Unknown location. In the halls of an underground base a tall man with a plague doctor's mask walked, he then stopped in front of a door. Punching in the security code he walked in, inside was empty. Nothing but a bed decorated the room, on the bed sat a small child. The child wore a short plain white dress, she also had bandages covering her arms and legs. She had red colored eyes and a small horn coming from her head. Hello Airy, it's time to have a bit of fun again the man in the mask said. Airy shook her head, and no, please, I don't want to. But the man ignored her please. The man dragged her out of the bed and out of the room she was in. Airy was taken into another room filled with surgical tools. P please, someone, anyone, help me. A few days had passed since the night all might try to talk with Isaac Lu. A normal day for Isaac would usually involve him training the students but today was different. He was instructed to meet Class 1A at Gym Gamma, Isaac landed outside the building, walking in he saw all of Class 1A in their gym uniforms. Hey GL, a voice called out to him, looking over he saw Mirio, he was standing alongside two other people. Mirio, it's been a while. Who are your friends? Isaac asked as he walked over to them. Standing beside Mirio was Nejair Hando, a girl of average height, she had long blue hair and wide, curious eyes. So this is Green Lantern, he's a lot cuter than in the videos, she said getting close. Leave the kid alone Nejair, you're getting into his personal space said a tall pale looking boy. He had short indigo hair and very pointy ears. Nejair backed away and began to pout, that's when Mirio stepped up, sorry about them, these are some of the third years. Her name is Nejair Hando and his name is Tamekai Amajiki, together we are known as the Big Three. The Big Three? So are you three the strongest in all of UA? asked Izuku. That's exactly right GL, these three are the pride and joy of our school said Izawa. Cool, so what's going on? Why is everyone here? asked Izuku. Izawa sighed, I wanted these three to talk about hero work studies but Mirio here, decided it's better to show them rather than talk about it. By what, a fight? Izuku asked. Mirio smiled, well this is the best way to learn, first hand experience he then began to walk over to the class. Oh GL about our last go about, you might want to pay close attention this time. Izuku watched as Mirio faced off against Class 1A, what is he talking about? Wait, All Might wanted to make him his successor, does that mean he's even more powerful than before? Guys. Don't let your guard down, yelled out Izuku. Don't worry about us GL, there's only one of him. Kiri's Hima said, activating his quirk. Alright you first years, come at me with everything you got, he said getting ready. As soon as he finished speaking the long-range fighters all attacked Mirio, once the dust and debris stopped the class noticed he was gone. All that remained was his gym uniform, where did he go, asked Siro. Just then Mirio appeared behind Jiro, completely naked. Jiro let out a scream as she saw him naked in front of him, he teleports, yelled out Kiri's him running towards Mirio. Izuku watched on as yellow lightning crackled around Mirio's body, T this power, it's nothing like when I fought him. Don't tell me All Might gave him his power this early on. Izawa nodded, he did, it happened after the fight with All for One. All Might's career is over and the world needs a new symbol of peace, and Mirio is just the person to take his place. Wait if this is an exercise, why aren't those two taking part? Izuku asked, pointing at Todoroki and Bakugo, who were standing against the wall. They didn't pass the provisional license exam, this is a sort of punishment. Plus they both agreed to sit this one out. Explained Izawa. Just then a yell was heard, power. Mirio had just taken out over half the class in a matter of seconds. The only ones standing were the close range fighters. This guy is unstoppable. Aitsa said in awe. We can't win like this. We have to find a weakness said Eurika. But can we find that mid fight? asked Hagakure. If we can't we'll lose so there's that. Let's just give it all we got. Kiri's Hima said, putting up his hands. Mirio smirked, standing there will get you nowhere. So I'll come to you. Mirio then ran at the remaining students with yellow lightning surrounding him, the students watched as he slipped underneath the ground leaving only his pants. He's gone again. Eureka then began to think, if he's planning to take us down, and he's not doing it head on, then that means. Turning around Eureka saw Mirio appear from the ground. There. 
she threw a punch towards Mirio, smart girl, she predicted where I would show up. Unfortunately, I've thought of ways to defeat someone like her. Mirio phased through the punch and targeted her eyes, I crush her attack. Eureka closed her eyes as his fingers passed through her face. Mirio took this chance to twist his body and punch her in the stomach. Mirio then made quick work of the rest of the students, hitting them in the stomach and rendering them unable to fight. Eureka was on the ground grabbing at her stomach, D damn, he's so strong. Might as well use it she reached around her chest and grabbed at a necklace around her neck. Now with everyone down Mirio went to pick up his pants, power. Well that takes care of all of them, now take this as a learning experience. Mirio. Look out. Nejire yelled out. Mirio quickly activated his quirk as a beam of violet energy hit the wall in front of him. So it seems the rumors were true, the first year with the power ring, is you. Turning around Mirio saw Eureka standing up, her fist glowing violet. Soon her entire body was covered in a purple color, she then re-emerged in her star sapphire uniform. This fight isn't over yet. Izawa was surprised, I thought she put that somewhere safe. Of course it's safe, with her. The ring chose her, so she is the most capable of using it and protecting. Although I think this fight is getting a bit out of hand. Izuku said as Eureka and Mirio ran at each other. I have to show Izuku that he can rely on me. The ring around Eureka's finger began to glow bright as she charged up a blast, Mirio's body began to emit red-colored streaks. Pulling back his fist Mirio yelled out, one for all, 50%. Eureka gritted her teeth and fired off a massive blast of violet light which completely engulfed the gym in said color. Everyone inside shielded their eyes as the two attacks approached each other, however before they could hit Izuku appeared in the middle of them both. He created a green mirror for Eureka's blast which shot through the roof of the building. For Mirio he created a ball and chain around his arm, causing his fist to hit the floor with so much force that it created a crater. That's enough, I think this exercise has gone a bit too far said Izuku looking at them both. Eureka took a deep breath and removed the ring which went back to being a necklace. Mirio depowered as well, man, that got out of hand fast. I thought I was fighting you again GL he said smiling. Izuku agreed, yes, yes it did. So I suggest we move on to the next part. After calming down the class all lined up still holding onto their stomachs, I do hope you all learned a valuable lesson, said Mirio with a smile. W what? Don't get punched in the stomach by a naked man? Or that your quirk is too overpowered, the whole class said in pain. Well, my quirk is not all powerful, I simply made it that way. You see my quirk is called permeation, it gives me the power to phase through anything, including the ground. But it's all about control, in order to use it effectively I can't breathe, and once I phase through something I can't see or hear anything. Once I deactivate my quirk I get repelled towards the surface at lightning speed. The point I'm trying to make is that thanks to my work study I learned to control and master my quirk. So make sure to learn as much as you can cause even the so-called weakest quirks can be amazing. With that the class left the gym, however Izuku still wanted to talk to one of the students. Eureka, a word please he said, stopping her. She nodded, the two waited for everyone to leave the gym. What was that all about back there? You could have gotten hurt. Eureka looked away, I know, I just got caught up in the moment that's all. Izuku didn't believe it, Eureka, what's going on? You've never rushed into a fight before, so what gives? She sighed, I wanted to show you that you can rely on me. Izuku was surprised, but I already rely on you. I mean in a fight, I know things are only going to get even more crazy and I want to fight alongside you. But, I could end up being a burden towards the end of the fight said Eureka. A burden? Who said that? Okako, you were no burden, if it wasn't for you I wouldn't have been able to take Shigaraki down. Plus I get the feeling I will be needing your help a lot more, so can I rely on you when the time comes, asked Izuka with a smile. Eureka couldn't help but smile, yeah of course. Good, now go on, you have to get in contact with some heroes for this work study thing with that they both made their way out of the gym and back to the class. One week later. The students were given a week to get in contact with various heroes, most went with the heroes where they did their internships. Unfortunately for Eureka, Gunhead was unavailable, fortunately for her Nejire offered her and Tsu a chance to work study under Ryukyu, the dragon hero. On the first day Tsu and Eureka managed to help take down two giant villains. Even Ryukyu was impressed with the two. On the other side Izuka was asked by Izawa to join him in a conference, he didn't say the reason why but from the tone of his voice Izuka could tell it was important. Izuka landed atop of Sir Naitai's agency with Izawa in tow, and here we are. Izawa fell to his knees, nauseous, H how many times do I have to tell you to take it easy while flying? Exactly 25 times now, so are you going to tell me why I'm here? 
I was enjoying my vacation asked Izuku. Suddenly the door to the roof opened up and out walked Sir Naitai, you are here because we need your help gl. Izuku turned to the hero, Naitai, good to see you. So what's this about you guys needing my help? You'll find out soon enough, please come with me, the others are already here. Naitai said escorting Izuku and Izawa down to a meeting room. Once inside Izuku found several pro heroes and even some of UA students, including Yurika, Su, and Kiri's Hima. Hey GL. Yurika said, walking over towards Izuku. Hey Yurika, what are you doing here, asked Izuku. Honestly we don't have a clue. One second we were in the middle of our hero study, the next we are here with Ryukyu, Ribbit Su explained, appearing alongside Kiri's Hima. Must be something serious if there are so many pro heroes here, said Kiri's Hima looking around. Seems like something is going down said Izuku as his eyes glanced over Mirio and the big three. Even Mirio is here, something happened, but what? That's when Naitai stood in front of a podium, alright everyone please take a seat, I am going to get the meeting started. Everyone took a seat, first I would like to thank you all for coming in such a short notice. I am not going to waste any time, we have evidence to suggest that the Akuza and the League of Villains are working together. Izuku's eyes went wide, Shigaraki. Yes, but that's not the only thing. Naitai pressed a button on a remote, behind him a picture of a man wearing a plague doctor's mask popped up. This is Kai Chisaki, leader of the Yakuza. According to our information network, he is working on something that can bring society to its knees. Izawa was confused, wait, you mean the Yakuza have that kind of power? That shouldn't be possible, the Yakuza have been long in decline. They only deal with drugs and such now. That is true but now we found something even more dangerous. During an incident that involved Fat Gum and his work-study students, the student known as Tamaki was hit by a bullet. However this was no ordinary bullet, it somehow managed to erase his quirk explained Naitai. Everyone in the room gasped, although we did find that the effects are temporary, this can still prove a challenge for us. Now that the Yakuza are working with the League of Villains they can amplify that bullet making it possible to erase quirks, permanently. That's when Fat Gum got up, on another note, Kiri's Hima here was also hit by the same bullet. Thanks to his quirk the bullet bounced right off, so we have a sample of the drug. And what we found was horrifying to say the least. We found traces of human DNA in the sample. The heroes looked around confused, what does that mean, asked Ryukyu. Izuku knew what it meant, it means they are using someone's body to make the drug. The lantern is right, which brings me to my next point. Chisaki has a daughter, Eri is her name. There are no records of her but we know she exists. That being said we believe she is the source of this drug said Naitai. So what do we do, asked Izawa. Do we have a location? Naitai stood up, no, but we do have a general idea where they could be. That's why I brought you all here, once we find their hideout we attack and rescue the girl. Everyone nodded, sounds like a plan, but why am I here, asked Izuku. Don't get me wrong I want to help this girl as much as you, but why ask a vigilante for help? Because GL you are most active at night, the same time the Yakuza are. We would like for you and one other to search from the skies at night. If you find them I want you to follow them and report their location said Naitai. Izuku nodded, sounds good to me. Wait, you said another, no offense to you heroes but you'd only slow me down. Naitai smiled, we are aware, that is why we are pairing you with someone with the same power set as you. Izawa has told me that there is another ring wielder here he turned his attention to Yurika. Yurika looked at Naitai and to Izuku, the kid. Come on we can't send kids to do pro a hero's job said Rock Lock. Izuku smirked, I can assure you, she is more than capable of handling the worst villains. If anyone could find the girl it's us. Yurika smiled, good, you move out tonight and do please be careful. The rest of us will be on standby for when they find a location. That night. Yurika and Izuku flew around the city in their respected colors, during the night they decided to split up and cover more ground. They did however keep in touch the whole time in case they needed the other's help. Hey Izuku, do you think we could find her, asked Yurika flying over the suburbs of the city. I hope so Okako, I don't even want to imagine what they are doing to the poor girl. Izuku said flying over the downtown area of the city. After a couple of hours of searching they still didn't find a girl, much less a location to the hideout. It was now around 3 am, the new batch of heroes were supposed to come and relieve them at 4 am. Want to start heading back to the meetup point Izuku, asked Yurika as she sat on a roof sipping some coffee. Izuku had just tangled up some thugs and was waiting for the police to show up, yeah I think that would be a good idea. It's a shame we couldn't find her tonight. After the police showed up Izuku took off into the sky, as he was flying he heard the sound of whimpering. Looking down Izuku found someone crying on the roof of a building, hey Okako, 
I'll be right there. I just have to help someone out over here. All right I'll be at the meeting point. Let me know if you need any help said Eureka. Copy that, Izuka then flew down towards the person and shined a green light on them. The person cowered in fear as the light fell over them. Seeing this Izuka quickly turned off the light, sorry about that. He approached the person and noticed it was a little girl. Hey, are you alright, he asked, landing on the roof. The girl had silver hair, red eyes, had her arms and legs covered with bandages and had a small pointy horn on her forehead. She peeked out from her bandaged arms, and no. She said in a quiet voice. Hey it's okay, my name is Green Lantern. What's your name, asked Izuku kneeling down to the girl. She's no older than the twins, all these bandages, she's so skinny too. The little girl removed her hands from her face, Eerie, my name is Eerie. Izuku's eyes widened, Eerie, that's a nice name. Hey why don't we go down to the police station, I think they've been looking for you. However Eerie shook her head, and no, they are going to follow me. Who's going to follow you, asked Izuku. But before she answered Eri ran towards Izuku and hugged him, P please, don't let them take me again. She said crying into his chest. Izuku was shocked but soon hugged her back, hey I won't let them take you. Eri looked up as tears ran down her face, P promise. Izuku nodded, promise, now come on. Let's get you somewhere safe he said, picking her up. He then began to contact Eurika, hey Okako, I think I found her. Found who? asked Eurika. The girl, Eri. I found her, have her in my arms right now said Izuku, smiling at Eri. That's great. We didn't find a location but at least we found her. Eurika said ecstatic. Where are you? I am heading towards the meeting location, I'll be there in a few, said Izuku as he flew across the sky. Izuku made sure not to fly too fast so as to not scare Eri, after a few minutes they landed on the roof of a building and there was Eurika waving them down. Eri cowered at the sight of another person, so this is little Eri. Eurika said as she approached Izuku. Eri buried her face into Izuku's chest, Hey Eri, this is my girlfriend, her name is Okako. You can trust her, she's really nice. She then peeked at Eurika, Are oh, really? Eurika nodded, Of course, you must be cold, here take this she said, creating a violet colored blanket and placing it over Eri. Eri felt the warmth of the blanket, Ah it's so warm. Thank you mama. Eurika's eyes went white as she blushed, Eh mama? And eh, no, dear I'm not your. However before Eurika could finish the sentence Eri looked up at Eurika with little tears in her eyes. Eurika couldn't say no to this child, not after giving her that adorable look, I mean, you're welcome sweetie. Wow Okako, you're a mother already, congratulations. Izuku said with a smug look on his face. Eri smiled, turning to Izuku and pointed, you too papa, thank you. Now it was Izuku's turn to blush, w wait now, I'm a bit too young to be your papa. What's wrong Izuku? You're telling me you're going to turn down this sweet little girl and say you aren't her papa. Izuku said, holding Eri in her arms. Izuku could tell Eurika was making fun of him but he didn't mind. He sighed and placed his hand on Eri's head, you're welcome Eri he then looked up at Eurika. Guess we are parents now. Eurika giggled, guess so, wait until my dad finds out about this. The two ring wielders smiled, any EDA on the other heroes, asked Izuku. They said they would be here in a few minutes, but that was right after I called you. They should have been here by now, I hope nothing happened to them. Eurika said with a bit of worry. I'm sure they are fine, they probably stopped for some food or something, said Izuku, playing it off. Suddenly Izuku and Eurika got a message on their comms, GL. Eurika. Come in, can you hear me, it was Izawa. Izawa. What's wrong, asked Izuku. We were ambushed by the Yakuza while we were headed your way said Izawa as an explosion went off in the background. All right, we are heading over there now to back you guys up, said Eurika about to jump into the air. No, don't. You need to leave the meeting location as fast as you can. I think they set Eri as a trap so that they could follow you said Izawa. Follow us? Wait then that means this was all a trap from the beginning. Izuku yelled out in surprise. Yes, so you need to get out of there before. However before Izawa could say anything else a blast of yellow energy hit their communication devices, shattering them. Before they could turn around Izuku was hit by a blast of yellow energy which sent him crashing into the building he was standing on. GL. Eureka yelled out, she was about to create a construct but before she could the shattered remains of the building reshaped into razor sharp spikes. The spikes flew directly at Eureka and Eri at a high rate of speed. Eureka quickly created a bubble around Eri and herself, and just in time, as soon as she created the bubble the spikes hit sending them flying back. 
Eureka hit the building across the street, what was that, she yelled out pushing herself off of the wall. That was me, a voice said from the roof she was just at. Walking towards the edge was Chisaki, better known as Overhaul. Eri's face turned to one of horror upon seeing him. Eureka held Eri tighter as she cowered, Overhaul. So you know of me, good that makes things easier for us. Hand over the girl and I might spare your life. Overhaul said, holding out his hand. Eureka narrowed her eyes, never, I've heard what you've done to this girl. I won't let it happen again. Under his mask Overhaul smiled, I expected as much. Just then Shigaraki floated behind Overhaul, think about it girl, do you really want to punch your way out of this one? Eureka knew full well she couldn't take on Shigaraki, even if she could, with Eri here there would be too much of a risk. Eureka looked down at Eri, she had tears in her eyes, Eureka then looked up at the two supervillains. Without hesitation she lifted her arm and pointed her ring at the two and fired a beam of violet light at them. Overhaul jumped out of the way but Shigaraki simply slapped the blast away with ease, so be it, I'll take the girl from your cold dead hands, he yelled out flying towards Eureka. With Eri in her arms, Eureka put up a protective shield around them both, taking off into the sky she tried to gain some distance but only a few meters up she felt something wrap around her leg, stopping her progress. Looking down she noticed a spiked yellow construct rope around her leg, Shigaraki pulled hard on the rope. Eureka flung down with Eri in her arms, as they did Shigaraki pulled back his fist as it glowed yellow. Eureka put up a shield but it proved useless, Shigaraki shattered the shield and punched Eureka hard in the back. At the last second Eureka managed to twist her body shielding Eri from the hit. Spitting out blood Eureka was sent flying, however before she could even regain her center, yellow construct cobras began to slither towards her. As they opened their giant mouths Eureka created violet colored beams and stuck them into their mouths, preventing them from biting down. With that out of the way Eureka turned towards the city, hold on to me tight Eri, we are getting out of here. Eri held on tight but before they could move Shigaraki appeared, not so fast, with his fist glowing bright yellow he smacked Eureka across the face sending her crashing down to the ground. Eureka and Eri hit the ground so hard that they broke it, as dust and debris settled a violet colored ball was seen embedded into the ground. With one arm around Eri and the other maintaining the ball around them she looked at Eri, you alright Eri? Eri gave a slight nod, good, we should. Before she could finish Shigaraki came in and smashed the ball with a yellow construct bat. Eureka fell to one knee as a result of the impact, damn it. Shigaraki continued his attacks, what's wrong girl? Can't keep this shield up, he asked as cracks began to appear around the ball. Eureka focused and repaired the shield but with the constant attacks it would only be a matter of time before the ball shattered. Gritting her teeth Eureka turned to Eri, Eri, sweetie, get behind me. Eri looked up confused, no. Eri. Eureka said louder as the ball was now covered in cracks. Shigaraki lifted his construct high, it's over, he yelled out and brought the bat down. The shield exploded in an array of violet light, Eureka laid in the crater atop of Eri, bruised and bleeding. Eri managed to get free and saw Eureka on the ground with her eyes closed, Mama, Mama, get up, Mama, she said shaking Eureka a bit, no response. That's when Shigaraki landed behind Eri, looking back Eri saw him looking down on her. Move, Overhaul wants you alive. However Eri refused to leave, instead she threw her arms around Eureka's body almost as if she was protecting her. And no. Leave my mama alone. This only pissed Shigaraki off, stupid kid. Eri's eyes widened as Shigaraki pointed his ring at her, don't say I didn't warn you Shigaraki's ring began to glow as he prepared to fire. However before he could Eureka got up and grabbed his fist, why you, won't touch her. She said as blood trailed down her lip. Shigaraki was impressed, still conscious are we? Fine, you can watch as you both die together, he yelled out as yellow light began to come out of Eureka's hand. Like hell we are dying here. Eureka yelled out letting violet light shine against the yellow. Eureka got to her feet and pushed against Shigaraki, the area around them began to light up in violet and yellow colors as their struggle amped up. For a second it looked as if Eureka had the upper hand, unfortunately she was too injured. Shigaraki felt her slipping and concentrated, hey 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 with a powerful yell Shigaraki pushed Eureka away. Having lost the struggle, Eureka's body was flung to the other side of the crater. Shigaraki smiled as he walked over to the fallen hero, you fought well, but it wasn't enough. Eri went to check on Eureka, mama. Eureka could barely move but she gave Eri a soft smile, hey there Eri, listen. I need you to run away. Get as far as you can from this place, can you do that? And no, I won't leave you said Eri, as tears fell from her eyes. You have to Eri, please go, find somewhere safe. I'll find you after I finish him, so go. Eureka said, 
patting her on the head. Eri didn't want to leave, she just met Eureka but she could already tell she was different from everyone else. She was kind and was one of the few people to show her kindness. And no. I won't leave. Just then the glow of a yellow lantern shined behind the two, looking back Shigaraki stood with his ring glowing and pointed right at the two. I can't tell if you are being brave, or just really stupid. Either way, this is where you two die. Eri closed her eyes as Eureka mustered what little strength she had left and wrapped Eri in a hug just as the yellow light became blinding. Shigaraki fired the blast of fear, and at the very last second a flash of green appeared in front of the two girls. Izuku appeared creating green construct mirrors that redirected the blast back at Shigaraki. Shigaraki's body flew back through several buildings, Yuriko looked up to see the green glow coming off of Izuku. I Izuku. Izuku turned around, sorry about that, it took me a while to get back up and take care of the other guy. You two alright? Yuriko nodded, for the most part, Eri is fine too. That's when Izuku saw the blood on Yuriko's face, reaching out he wiped it off. I'm sorry, if I arrived here sooner you wouldn't have. Forget about that Izuku, right now we need to take Shigaraki down or if not we should leave said Yuriko looking directly into his eyes. Izuku nodded, leaving would be better for all of us. Come on let's go, I'll hold Eri. Can you still fly? Yuriko pushed herself up as the violet glow around her body returned, of course. Good, let's go with that the three of them took off into the sky. Little did they know this was all part of Shigariki's plan, he could have dodged that blast but chose not to. Instead he landed on a nearby roof, perfect, now to see if what Sinestro told me was true. Shigaraki clenched his ring hand and began to focus all of his power through his ring. The roof turned yellow as the yellow ring began to shine brighter. As two lanterns flew Izuku suddenly got a warning from his ring, spatial anomaly detected. Izuku's eyes widened, what, suddenly in front of him a yellow construct portal opened up. Izuku tried to turn around but the portal began to pull him and Eri in. Yurika created a harness and pulled with all her strength but the line snapped in two. Izuku created a jetpack but it too proved useless, where did this even come from? The jetpack shattered, Izuku and Eri began to fall in but at the last second Yurika reached out and grabbed one of Izuku's arms preventing them from falling in. Yurika's muscles strained as she fought against the suction of the portal, see can't he hold on, much longer, she grunted out as her injuries bled. Eri screamed out in fear as Izuku's grip on her slipped, Eri. Hold on, I got you. Izuku reached out and grabbed her arm, but he could feel his grip slipping. But it wasn't only his grip that was slipping, Yurika's grip on Izuku was weakening. Almost as if the portal knew, yellow construct hands appeared from within the portal. Wrapping around Izuku they began to drag him into the portal. Okako. You need to warn the other heroes. B but what about you two, she asked as her cuts began to open wider. We'll be fine but if you get dragged into this there won't be anyone who knows what happened. Let go, he said as his feet entered the portal. No. I don't know if you'll be fine or not, said Eureka, gritting her teeth. Izuku looked down at the portal then back to Eureka, if we all get dragged in then it will all be over. Taking a deep breath Izuku gave Eureka a smile, sorry about this. With the construct arms around his arm, Izuku managed to point his ring at Eureka and fire a blast at her. It wasn't meant to hurt, only push her off which succeeded. Yurika was pushed back, Izuku. Eri, she yelled out reaching out for them. Izuku's body was now halfway through the portal. Mama. Eri yelled out. Izuku hugged her tighter, we'll be fine, Mama will find us, I promise he then looked at Yurika one last time. I know you'll find us, I believe in you. With that Izuku and Eri were completely in the portal, as soon as they were the portal closed and disappeared. Yurika floated in the air in disbelief, Izuku. Eri, she yelled out. Unknown location. The yellow portal opened up and spit out Izuku and Eri. They hit the concrete floor of the room, Izuku looked around to find nothing but darkness. Where are we? asked Izuku. Eri knew where they were, W we are back. Back. Back where, before Eri could answer Izuku began to feel very dizzy, almost as if he was drunk. Eri quickly fell unconscious, Izuku managed to stay awake but he couldn't think straight. I is this a quirk? he asked. Just then Izuku began to hear footsteps, looking up he saw the violet glow of someone's uniform. Oh Okako. Not quite. Want to guess again, said a woman's voice. Izuku managed to look up and staring down was Toga in her star sapphire uniform. She bent down and ran her fingers down his face seductively. T Toga, how? I thought Okako destroyed your power source. Toga's eyes burned with violet energy, oh she did, but love is not so easily erased. Now come my love. We have so much catching up to do. But first. 
pulling out a knife from her back Toga cut Izuku on the cheek. A drop of blood fell from the open cut, Toga ran her finger on the wound collecting the blood. With the blood now on her finger she then began to lick it, her face blushed as she gave a wide smile. Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is it, I've been waiting so long to get a taste of you and now, you're all mine. Now, now you can bleed for me and only me, and only me. Izawa was finishing up taking care of the villains that ambushed them, that takes care of these guys. We should hurry and get to GL and Yurika. Instructed Izawa Tutsu, Kiri's Hima, and the big three. However before anyone could even move Yurika came crashing towards the ground. Yurika, yelled Tsu as she ran to her friend's side. Blood dripped from Yurika's wounds as they flipped her over, what happened, asked Izawa, handing medical supplies to Tsu. I it was as you said, we were ambushed by Shigaraki and Overhaul. They took the girl and GL, there was some sort of yellow portal said Yurika wincing in pain. Mirio clenched his fist, damn it, while we were tied up here they got both GL and Eri. Can't you locate them with your ring, asked Nejire. Yurika tried to lift her ring but thanks to the pain she immediately brought it down, see can't he, hurt so much. Izawa stood up, Frippa, Nejire, get her to recovery girl, the rest of us will go to the scene and see if we can find any clues. Everyone nodded and went on their way. A few minutes later Izawa and the rest of the heroes arrived to where Izuku and Yurika had been attacked. The buildings around them had severe damage to them, whoa, looks to me GL didn't go down without a fight said Mirio. Spread out, look for any clues ordered Izawa. Everyone went their separate ways, after about 45 minutes of searching Kiri's Hima searched inside a destroyed building to find blood. Guys. I found something. Everyone came over to find blood splattered across the rubble, is this the lanterns, asked Mirio. I don't know. Looking over Izawa found a torn piece of a jacket. Call forensics. We need to ID this blood. For now there is nothing we can do, GL will have to survive wherever he is. Wherever you are kid, just hang on, we'll come for you. It had now been 24 hours since Izuku and Eri had gone missing. Once Yurika got her wounds patched up she immediately started searching for them. She spent all day, even missing classes to go and find them, she spent all night above the city but nothing. She tried using the ring to find Izuku but it kept saying unknown location. However in spite of this Yurika would not give up on him or Eri. Wait for me Izuku, I'll find you. It had now been three days since the two had gone missing and some of the heroes were starting to wonder if GL was even still alive. Izawa had gone to the UA dorms to check on Yurika, she had been going out every night and spent all night looking for them without taking breaks. Yurika was starting to fall asleep in class, something that she had never done before. Izawa knocked on her door, Yurika it's me. After a few seconds Yurika opened the door, oh Mr. Izawa, any news on GL? Izawa shook his head, no not yet, but that's not why I am here. You're getting tired Yurika, you have to take a break, your body won't last. Let me ask you something Mr. Izawa, have you stopped looking for them, asked Yurika with her tired looking eyes. No, never said Izawa without hesitation. Good, so neither will I said Yurika. Izawa sighed, listen I'm going to be brutally honest with you, the heroes won't be able to find them. Yurika's eyes widened, be but. I wasn't finished, they won't be able to find them. But you can, Izuku once told me that those rings are the most powerful weapons in the universe. It's time for you to use it to its full potential said Izawa. Iibe tried but something is blocking the ring said Yurika walking into her room. Izawa followed her, what's blocking you? Yurika took a seat on her bed, I don't know, I've tried focusing on Izuku but nothing. Your ring runs on love doesn't it? Are you saying you don't love Izuku anymore, questioned Izawa. Yurika looked up, no. I do, I will always love him but. That's when Izawa realized what was going on, you're afraid aren't you? Yurika nodded, I'm afraid for Izuku, it's been three days since he disappeared. The power of a ring only lasts for 24 hours, right now he has nothing to protect himself with. Izuku is more confident with that ring, but take the ring away and he becomes a completely different person. Izawa crouched down to Yurika, listen Yurika, Izuku can, is, a difficult person to deal with. But he's not powerless without his ring. Look I did some digging into Izuku's past, I found that he was abandoned at a young age, he spent most if not all of his childhood bouncing around foster homes and orphanages. But everywhere he went he kept a smile on his face, even now, as you know he lost the closest thing he had to a family. Yet he's here smiling, helping everyone out, but most important he has you. He believes in you, so don't let him down. Dig deep into your heart and use the ring to find him. Yurika felt more determined than ever before, reaching up she grabbed the ring around her neck and began to recite the Violet Lantern Oath, 
for hearts long lost and full of fright, for those alone in blackest night. Suddenly violet light began to emanate from her hands and shake the entire dorm room. Accept our ring and join our fight, love conquers all with violet light, the room was bathed in blinding violet light. Eureka opened her eyes revealing the symbol of the violet core on them. Isawa shielded his eyes, amazing. Eureka then focused hard and asked the ring for one thing, ring, show me where Izuku is, show me where the man I love is. That's when Eureka began to see images, at first it was a city, then her vision focused on a compound. She mentally noted down the address of the compound, but her vision wasn't done. Going into the building Eureka saw an underground portion of it, then a small dark room. There in that room was Izuka bound and chained by violet colored cuffs. Then in walked a person that Eureka dreaded to see, walking up to Izuka was Toga in her star sapphire uniform. No. Then the images went away, Eureka, what did you see, asked Izawa. The symbol of the violet corp faded from Eureka's eyes, I saw where they were keeping Izuku. But there is another problem, Toga is back and she has her powers again and if she's there, Shigaraki won't be far behind. This just became a bigger problem, alright I'll call the heroes and move out tonight. Izuku just has to hold on for a bit longer said Izawa. League of Villains Base The sound of loud thuds was heard through the halls, opening one of the doors to a room Izuku was seen cuffed by his hands and hanging from the ceiling by violet colored chains. Has he been broken yet? asked Shigaraki, walking into the room. Toga looked back with blood splatter across her face, not yet, but he will. My darling GL will love me soon enough. Shigaraki walked up to the bound Izuku, lifting his face he saw cuts going across it. He then looked down to see blood drip from his open wounds. Even with no more power in his ring, he still refuses. This one really does have a strong will. Izuku slowly looked up as chains rattled in the background, and to Shigariki's surprise Izuku smiled. Blood was seen coming out of his mouth before he closed it and spit in Shigariki's face. Retaliating Shigariki's fist began to glow yellow, he then delivered a powerful punch to Izuku's stomach causing him to spit out even more blood. That was rude, sorry Toga I'm going to have to teach your boyfriend some manners. Toga sighed, fine but make sure not to break him, I want him in one piece for tonight, she said, licking her lips. Izuku was taken into another room, and was forced to sit down on a chair. With his head dangling Izuku could hear a small voice heading his way down the hall. Immediately Izuku recognized who it was, and no. P please don't make her do it. However Shigaraki ignored him, and suddenly in walked over hall with Eri. Get in there, he said, shoving Eri into the room. Eri fell to the ground but once she looked up she saw Izuku broken and bloody, Papa, she tried to run to his side but was stopped with overhaul grabbed her hair and pulled her back. Not so fast, Eri fell on her butt with tears in her eyes. This made Izuku mad, did Auntie touch her? Shigaraki responded in kind by punching Izuku across the face to shut him up. You will be silent, unless you want her to go through the same thing you are. Izuku gritted his teeth, good, now Eri we are going to have to run some tests with your quirk. And GL here has volunteered to be our lab rat. Said Overhaul. Eri shook her head, and no, I don't want to. Overhaul smiled underneath his mask, oh Eri, you won't have a choice. That's when Shigaraki created yellow construct knives and began to plunge them into Izuku's body. Izuku yelled out in pain as the knives cut deep into his skin, some even damaging organs. Eri watched on in horror, S stop it. Shigaraki then waved his hand up and began to pull the knives out of Izuku's body allowing the blood to flow. You better hurry up Eri, he'll die if you leave him alone, said Overhaul pushing Eri towards Izuku. Eri watched as the blood ran down Izuku's leg and smeared the floor. With shaky hands Eri placed them on Izuku. I, I am sorry Papa. I it's alright Eri, you can do this. I believe in you, said Izuku as his consciousness began to fade. Tears began to fall as Eri's horn began to grow and glow. That's when lightning began to crackle around Eri as she activated her quirk. Izuku felt a pulse course through his body then the sensation of something pulling him from the outside in. Letting out a scream Izuku clenched his hands, Eri was forced to reverse the damage to Izuku's body. The knife wound suddenly began to close up, alright that's enough yelled out Shigaraki as he created a construct which pulled Eri away from Izuku. The lightning around Eri's body began to fade as she fell asleep from overuse of her quirk. Astonishing, so this is how you make the quirk erasing bullets, said Shigaraki. Overhaul nodded, yes, Eri's body is unique, with her we can cure this world of its infection. How are your injuries? asked Shigaraki. Overhaul lifted up his shirt revealing his entire chest and abdomen area wrapped in bandages. I'll live, but by God does he hit hard. Another second and I could have died. Are you sure Eri has it? She shows no signs of a quirk mutation. It's not a mutation, it's something else that's inside her, something powerful. 
All we have to do is draw it out of her, said Shigaraki. In the meantime, continue making your bullets. She is at least useful for that now. Shigaraki. Are you done with my darling GL yet? Asked Toga peeking through the door. Shigaraki sighed, yes Toga, you can take him now. We are done here anyway. Yay. Thanks Shigaraki, oh before I go. Make sure no one disturbs me tonight, GL will be mine tonight said Toga as she dragged Izuku away. That night. Outside of the compound Yurika landed on the roof across with her star sapphire uniform, all right guys, things look clear she looked up and from a violet platform the heroes began to jump down. Izawa, Lemillion, Sir Naitai, Ryukyu, Fatgum, Kiri's Hima, Tsu, the big three, and several other heroes landed on the roof beside Yurika. Good work, from here we can take the entire compound by surprise. Stick to the plan and we rescue them both, said Izawa pulling down his goggles. Lemillion, Yurabidi, wake them up, said Sir Naitai. The two heroes looked at each other and nodded, right, can you give me a lift, asked Lemillion. Yurika nodded, let's go, she then covered Lemillion in a bubble and flew up into the sky. Now several hundred meters in the air Yurika created a violet colored hand which gripped Lemillion. Batter up. Acting as if she was throwing a ball, Yurika flung Lemillion down towards the compound at super speed. Yurika quickly followed behind allowing herself to free fall, I'm coming Izuku. Down at the compound a henchman was outside trying to light his cigarette, come on, why won't this thing work, he asked frustrated that his lighter wouldn't light. Finally getting it to light he was about to light his cigarette when he saw something on the ground, what the? What is that, he asked seeing that it was a violet light. That's when he looked up and dropped his cigarette, oh hell. Is all he could say before Lemillion came crashing down. Smash, with a loud boom Lemillion smashed the ground into pieces. This sent a shockwave that broke every window in the compound and made a giant hole in the ground, exposing the underground portion of the compound. Lemillion fell through the ground, Eurovide, he yelled out. Eurica quickly created a construct hand and lifted him up, sit tight, I'll get the others here. Pointing her ring towards the building Eurica created a violet colored slide, one by one the heroes landed inside the compound. Team 1 search the inside of the compound, Team 2 go down with Eurovide and Lemillion to find and secure the hostages. If you encounter Shigaraki or Overhaul you are free to use whatever means necessary to take them down ordered Naitai. Everyone nodded and split up, Kiri's Hima and Fatgum, along with two of the big three, Tsu, Ryukyu all ran into the building to take down the henchmen inside the compound. While Eurika, Eraserhead, Lemillion and Sir Naitai all went down the hole that Lemillion created. As they landed on the ground Eurika lifted her ring, ring, where is GL, the ring created a construct that pointed to the left. Where is Eri? It then created another construct that pointed right. All right, I'll go with Eurovide to rescue GL Naitai and Lemillion go rescue Eri said Izawa. Meet you back here and you better have GL with you, said Lemillion as he and Naitai took off to the right. Let's go Izawa, said Eurika as she smashed through one of the walls. Eurika and Izawa ran down the halls and checked every room for Izuka but found nothing. That is until they hit the end of the hall, take it down Eurika, said Izawa. Eurika pointed her ring at the door in front of her and created a construct hand that ripped the door right off of its hinges. The two rushed inside, Eurika flew inside the dark room, the only source of light was Eurika's violet glow. Nothing. That's when they heard the rattling of chains, Eurika lit up the area where the sound was coming from, there they saw a chained, badly bruised, and bloody Izuku. GL, yelled Eurika as she made her way to him. Izuku's eyes were empty, my god, what did they do to you, she asked cutting him loose. Eurika caught him in her arms, GL, can you hear us, asked Izawa. Izuka was trying to say something but his mouth was too dry to make a sound, come on let's get you out of here. Eri. Eri, she's getting rescued by Lemillion and Naitai right now. For now we should focus on getting you out, said Izawa. You're not taking my GL anywhere, said a voice coming from all around them. Izawa pulled out his knife as Eurika readied her ring, Toga, I thought I destroyed your power. Oh you did but my love for GL or should I say Izuka couldn't be extinguished by you. No, it only made it stronger. Isn't that right darling, said Toga as her voice echoed through the room. Enough talk, said Izawa. Show yourself so we can finish this. Toga giggled, well if you insist. Suddenly two violet knives dug into Izawa's shoulders, Toga had appeared from within the darkness. Izawa fell to his knees but still managed to turn around and slash his knife towards Toga's direction. Izawa. Eurika yelled out as blood poured down Izawa's back. Enough of this, Eurika lifted her fist to the roof and let out a pulse of violet light. In the corner of the roof Eurika saw Toga with a twisted smile on her face, long time no see, Okako. Not long enough, 
Yurika then pointed her ring at Toga and fired a blast of love at her. Toga's body was thrown through the wall. Izawa, can you still move? asked Yurika. Izawa reached behind his back and pulled the knives from his back, yeah. Good, take Izuku and get out of here. I got some unfinished business with Toga. Yurika said handing Izuku to Izawa. Izawa was about to walk out of the room but stopped and looked back, Yurika, kick her ass. From the broken wall a beam of violet energy shot towards Yurika which she quickly blocked with a shield. Izawa was leaving the room and about to call for backup but was stopped by Izuku, and no, not yet, need, need one more thing. He said pointing to one of the rooms. Toga slammed into Yurika causing the two of them to burst through a wall. Yurika brought her fists up before slamming Toga in the back. What did you do to GL? asked Yurika as Toga broke the ground on impact. Toga pushed herself off the ground, nothing, I just made him bleed a bit. I love him more when he bleeds. Yurika clenched her fist, why you, you sick monster? No, I'm not a monster, I'm in love. Toga lifted her hands and fired a blast of love at Yurika which knocked her through another wall. Toga then created several construct cats that ran towards Yurika, they jumped through the hole in the wall. But before they could reach Yurika she created a minigun and began to gun down the constructs. Yurika then created a construct train and managed to hit Toga with it. While she was getting pushed back Toga created two construct hammers and smashed the train into pieces. However that's when Yurika kicked Toga hard in the stomach forcing her to the ground. Give it up Toga, you can't beat me. This isn't like last time. Yurika said as she pressed harder on Toga's stomach. Toga grunted in pain, I I wasn't trying to beat you. I was trying to stall you. Stall me? What for? asked Yurika, confused. So I could get here. Said a voice from behind Yurika. Before she could even look back Yurika was blasted with yellow energy. Yurika's body was thrown through several walls before ultimately coming to a stop and being buried by rubble. You good Toga? Yeah. Man what took you so long, asked Toga, picking herself up. I had something to do, so do you think that finished her off, asked Shigaraki. Suddenly violet light began to shine from underneath the rubble and out exploded Yurika with bruises all over her body. Shigaraki. Shigaraki saw Yurika appear from the broken wall, oh look who's back, it's the little girlfriend. Sorry but I have no time to spare for you, Toga if you will. With pleasure, Toga then flew at Yurika. But as she was in mid-air Toga was suddenly swatted away by a construct fist. Shigariki's eyes went wide, oh, what's this? Your power has increased dramatically, how is that possible? Yurika glared at Shigariki, you hurt GL, and for that you'll pay. Please, if you really think you can take me on, you're more delusional than Toga. Mocked Shigariki. Pointing her ring at Shigariki, Yurika fired off a massive blast of love that shook the entire compound. Shigaraki simply put up a shield thinking that it would be a repeat of last time, how wrong he was. As the blast hit his shield it immediately shattered. What? With no time to dodge, Shigaraki was hit by the full force of Yurika's blast. As the blast dissipated, Shigaraki appeared with parts of his costume burned off. This power? How did you get it? Shigaraki asked as Yurika's eyes showed the symbol of the violet core. My power comes from my love for GL. And love is the strongest force in this universe. That's where you're wrong, fear can take anyone down. Let me show you what true fear is. Shigariki's ring burned bright with yellow energy. The two fired blast at each other as they flew into the sky. Yurika was giving it everything she had, but it was taking everything to hold back Shigariki. You hurt my love, for that you must pay. In the sky Yurika outstretched both of her arms and created an entire fleet of battleships with their guns pointed right at Shigariki. Oh hell! Is all Shigariki said before the constructs began to fire. The sky was lit up by violet volley of artillery shells. Shigaraki formed a bubble around him as the explosions rocked the air. At first it was holding up but soon cracks began to appear around his yellow shield. Impossible. Love is stronger than fear. Just then the shield around Shigaraki shattered, exposing him to massive explosions of violet energy. The volley continued for a few seconds but Yurika couldn't maintain her focus. The construct slowly began to fade as her breathing became heavy. As the smoke cleared Shigaraki appeared with blood running down his wounds and his costume torn to shreds. That was for GL, said Yurika out of breath. Shigaraki wiped the blood off his lip, I may have underestimated you girl. If you are capable of this power then that means so is Toga. Waving his hand Shigaraki repaired his costume, now, let's see if you can withstand this. Raising his ring to the sky Shigaraki began to create. Yurika looked up to see the yellow light of fear shining through the clouds. Then it came down the head of what can only be described as a parasitic demon appeared from the clouds. It let out a powerful roar, 
it brandished its razor-sharp teeth. Eureka flinched at the sight of the construct, W what the hell is that? The construct then began to fly down, its claws appeared followed by its massive body. The entire city was bathed in yellow light as the beast fell from the sky. Now, what will you do? Asked Shigaraki floating beside his creation. Eureka gritted her teeth, can I even fight against this? No, I can't think like that. Izuka wouldn't give up and neither will I. Clenching her fist Eureka began to charge up her ring. Her eyes burned with violet light as Eureka focused hard. Then before she could even think of creating a constructive voice called out to her. Yes, yes. This is good, you are truly worthy of being my host. Just then a massive construct of a long-faced alien creature, with razor-sharp teeth appeared beside Eureka. Its multiple arms stretched as its massive body wrapped itself behind Eureka. Who are you? Asked Eureka. I am the embodiment of love, my child. I am the thing that gives your ring power, but now it is you that feeds me. If you can help me defeat Shigaraki then I'll take all the help I can get. Said Eureka pointing her ring right at Shigaraki. With a blood-curdling screech the construct began to fuse with Eureka's ring. The power she had collected was beginning to shake her arm, this ends now Shigaraki. For you, not for me. With a flick of his finger Shigaraki made the construct race towards Eureka. With sweat dripping from her forehead Eureka fired a massive blast of love at Shigaraki. The massive yellow construct opened its massive jaws as the beam smashed into it. The impact of the two clashing caused a massive explosion of yellow and violet light. The ground beneath them shook from the sheer impact. Both ring bearers were thrown down, crashing through several buildings in the process. The violet aura around Eureka's body faded as she laid unconscious. It seems like your body is not ready to receive such an increase in power, I will buy my time. But you will become my host. Shigaraki was no better, he lay there between the rubble. As so much power. Not even the Green Lantern had such power. Love really is strong. That's when violet light appeared from behind Shigaraki, you. Toga had appeared, me, look at you. Flat on your back and defeated. I haven't lost yet. Said Shigaraki trying to force himself up. Yeah yeah whatever. Kurojiri, get us out of here, said Toga through an earpiece. Suddenly a black mist portal opened up behind the two. Toga dragged Shigaraki into the portal and disappeared. I may have lost GL today, but I won't rest until he's mine. I at least have his blood. With Izuku. All this time Izuku was searching for something, what are we doing here Izuku? We have to get you medical attention. Said Izawa holding him up. Izuku pointed, T there, inside. In front of them was a sort of safe, what's in it? Our ring. All this time Izuku didn't have his ring on. Izawa set Izuku down and proceeded to unlock the safe. Opening it he found Izuku's green ring and a book. T take both, and whatever you do, don't open it. Quickly stuffing the book into his pocket and giving Izuku his ring back he finally made his way to the extraction point. As they were lifted up the two saw the massive explosion light up the sky. Eureka, come on Izuku let's get you out of here. With Izuku over his shoulder Izawa ran down the street and handed Izuku over to the EMTs who were waiting. That's when Izawa heard something over his communication, hero down. I repeat, hero down. We have the girl, but Sir Naitai is down. Damn it, I need to get him out of here, it was Lemillion. Just then the entire compound suddenly turned into pieces of rubble, Izawa turned to see something shoot into the sky, followed by a trail of yellow lightning. The heroes that went into the compound all ran out onto the street. What the heck was that, asked Izawa. That was Lemillion, said Nejire. Mirio. What about Naitai, he said something about Naitai. That's when Izawa saw a bruised and bloody fat gum carrying Naitai. He had a cement spike in his torso, no. But right at that moment something crashed into the ground sending a shockwave that knocked down most of the heroes. Everyone turned to find Overhaul knocked out, then a streak of yellow lightning appeared in front of him. Lemillion was carrying Airy on his back, the horn on her head was glowing white with power, H he did it. However before anyone could celebrate Airy began to lose control over her quirk, black sparks came off of Airy and bathed the area in complete darkness. Even the light of the moon seemed to be sucked up by the absolute darkness. Izawa thought that it was part of Ari's quirk, activated his own and cancelled it out. Ari fell unconscious as did Lemillion. The heroes had won but it came at a price. Just as the heroes were about to place Shigaraki into a police transport, several dozen armored vehicles appeared surrounding the heroes. What is this? Asked Izawa. Armed military personnel then suddenly exited the vehicles and pointed their guns at Shigaraki. The heroes readied for a fight but that's when a voice cut through it all. Hold your fire. We only want the criminal, nothing else. Said Inko, Izuku's mother. Eureka, 
who was now awake, saw Inko, her eyes widened. You good for nothing, bit. Before she could finish that sentence the military personnel all trained their guns at Eureka. Back off, we aren't here for you or my son today. I have orders from the Prime Minister to take this villain into custody. Said Inko. Like hell you are. Not after all we went through to get him, said Izawa. Eureka began to charge her ring, give me the word Mr. Izawa and I'll drop them. Izawa raised his hand, don't do anything stupid. You say you have orders, got any proof? Inko handed Izawa a piece of paper, reading it over he grunted. Let them go, it really is signed by the Prime Minister, Eurovide, stand down. Eureka lowered her ring and the military personnel lowered their weapons as well. They began to take Shigaraki away, Inko began to follow them but was stopped by Eureka. Aren't you going to ask how Izuku is? Inko stopped but didn't bother to turn around, I don't care, all I care about is that ring around his and your fingers. So I suggest you hold on to them while you can. With that Inko left. During the aftermath Izuku was taken to a hospital, there they found out that he was severely malnourished, dehydrated, had broken 18 of his 24 ribs, had infected cuts and bruises around his body, and to top it all off he lost 32% of his blood. The doctors were amazed that he was still alive but somehow he pulled through. Eureka had a few cuts and bruises but nothing recovery girl couldn't heal. But she did however have a massive headache that just wouldn't go away. Eri passed out thanks to overusing her quirk but she would ultimately be fine as well. She did however ask for her papa and mama, who were Izuku and Eureka. Although, Naitai wouldn't be so lucky. The cement spike had all but destroyed his entire digestive system. No healing quirk could repair that much damage. The only thing keeping him alive were some machines but even those wouldn't last long. Mirio went to visit Naitai one last time, Sir. Sir. Please don't die on me. Cried out Mirio. Naitai smiled through the oxygen mask, Mirio, sorry, sorry I have to leave you like this, but... He then reached out and touched Mirio's face. Activating his quirk Naitai saw Mirio's future, I see, well I guess the future can be changed. Make sure you become an amazing hero, alright Mirio. I will sir. I swear, I'll become the best damn hero the world has ever seen. With tears in his eyes Mirio held Naitai's hand for the last time. As he took his final breath, he turned to All Might and motioned him to come closer. He then whispered something into his ear that made the former number one hero eyes go wide. With that Sir Naitai passed away surrounded by his friends and fellow heroes. His funeral was grand, all the top heroes made sure to show up for this fallen hero. At the end of it all Izawa found All Might standing on the ledge of his former sidekick's hero agency. What's on your mind All Might? Asked Izawa. Everyone is downstairs celebrating his life. I was just thinking it's all. Said All Might. About what happened or about what he said to you before he died? Asked Izawa leaning against the rails. All Might sighed, both actually but it's what he said that scared me. What did he say? The blackest night is coming. Izawa felt a shiver run down his spine, does that mean what he saw in Izuku's future will come true? I I don't know, but there is a strong possibility that it will, so we have to prepare. Said All Might gazing at the stars. Izuku didn't know where he was, looking around all he saw was nothing, it looked like he was underwater but he wasn't too sure. Hello, he called out to the void. Nothing, Izuku was starting to get worried but not for himself, Eri. I need to get out of here, they still need her. He tried to use his ring but found that it wasn't working, oh come on. It doesn't have any more power. Come on just one more time, give me power the ring did not power up. Izuka gritted his teeth, please, I need power. Give me power, all the power, in order to save everyone, all the power needs to be mine for a split second Izuka's eyes flashed orange. However before he could be overtaken by emotion a bright green light suddenly appeared in front of him. Blinded by it, Izuka put up his hands, W who are you? The light then began to shape itself to a large basking shark, Hello Izuku. Izuku's eyes widened, this voice, I've heard it before, back on OA. The giant green basking shark swam around Izuku, so you remember, yes it was I that spoke to you. I believe you have some idea of who I am, don't you? Ion, the green lantern entity of will said Izuku. Ion smiled, that's right. But why are you here, asked Izuku. Ion faced Izuku, I have always been here Izuku, or rather there. Ion pointed at Izuku's ring. Izuku looked down at it, my ring. Yes, since the beginning and even before you had the ring I have watched over you. I've seen you grow into a powerful Green Lantern but most important I've seen you grow as a human. You struggled in life but you never once even thought of resorting to crime. Even when you had the ring, you never used it for your own benefit. 
your will to stay on the good side was strong even then. Said Ion. However, things are changing, there is something growing within you. It's a dark and powerful force, so powerful that even I can't shine my light in it. Ion swam behind Izuku. So what does that mean? Am I becoming evil? Asked Izuku. That is, hard to tell. It seems rather you are becoming a host of sorts, for something. I sense its presence around you but I can't seem to tell who or what is causing this. Regardless you must prepare, train both body and mind. Recent events have proved that you can remain strong-willed even after taking such a beating. Hate my words Izuku Midoriya, you are strong but not invincible. With a blinding green light Ion took off into the sky. Wait. I still have a question. What were they looking for in Eri? Asked Izuku as he reached out. Ion looked down, death. Hospital. It had now been three days since they rescued Izuku, recovery girl had already healed him but he still wasn't waking up. Eureka and Eri would visit him every day to check on him. Mama? Is Papa going to be okay? Asked Eri as they sat at the bedside. Eureka smiled, of course Eri, Papa is strong, he won't be asleep for long. Eri nodded, D do you think he'll blame me? For what? Asked Eureka. For this, if it wasn't for me. Papa wouldn't be so beat up. Eri looked away in shame, the poor girl was blaming herself for what happened to Izuku. Eureka got up and picked up Eri, he would never blame you. So don't think for a second that he would. Just then there was a knock at the door, and in walked Izawa. How is he? Better, but he's still asleep. Doctors don't know when or if he will wake up. Said Eureka, placing Eri on the bed. The villains really did a number on him. But Izuku is tough, he'll wake up soon enough I'm sure. Eureka smiled. As the two were talking, Eri saw the green lantern ring around Izuku's finger. It's not glowing anymore. Reaching out she tried to touch it but as she did a green flash of light began to emit from the ring. The flash of light managed to push Eri off the bed, but before she could hit the floor Eureka created a violet colored pillow. What's going on? Asked Izawa as he shielded his eyes. Eureka pulled Eri close to her and created a shield around the three of them, I don't know. The ring is reacting to something. The green light began to die out, now fully gone Eureka began to approach Izuku. As she was just inches from the bed Izuku suddenly opened his eyes, Midriya. Izuku blinked a couple of times before looking around, W where am I? Just then Eureka threw herself onto Izuku. Grunting in pain he saw Eureka's face across his chest, you Eureka? Wait Eri, where is Eri? He asked frantically looking around. That's when he felt a small hand on his hand, looking to his side he saw Eri. Peepapa. Izuku sighed, thank goodness you're safe. Glad to see you're awake now, said Izawa, walking over the front of the bed. How long was I asleep for? Asked Izuku. More than three days, we started to think you wouldn't wake up. Said Eureka, wiping away a tear. Izuku's eyes widened, three days, what about Shigaraki and Toga? Gone, we only managed to bring in overhaul but we were forced to hand him over to the government. By your mother, said Izawa. Izuku was surprised, mom? She was there? Did she ask for me? Eureka had a sad expression on her face, Izuku saw this and understood. Oh, figured as much. Whatever it doesn't matter, as long as Eri is fine, I'm fine. Patting Eri's head, Izuku smiled as he laid in bed, so when can I get out of here? Doctor said once you wake up he just wants to check up on you one final time before letting you leave said Izawa, but that's when he noticed something was wrong with Izuku. Eureka, can you go call the doctors, and take Eri with you? Eureka was confused, huh, why? I'm sure the doctor will come by soon. Eureka. Izawa's demeanor changed, and it sent a shiver down her spine. All right, come on Eri. Once we get the doctor, Papa can get out of here, said Eureka, grabbing Eri and walking out of the room. Izuku watched them leave, all right, now they're gone, what's on your mind, asked Izawa. Shigaraki didn't kill me, why, asked Izuku. Don't know, maybe just to mess with you. He wants you to see that he can get to you whenever he wants said Izawa, but Izuku shook his head. If that was true he would have taken me already, no this was different. They wanted Eri, or rather something inside of her. The book, where is the book, asked Izuku in a panic. The book. Oh that one, the police have it. Izuku's eyes widened. No. Get me the book, it's not safe, I need to destroy it said Izuku getting up off the bed. Midoriya, relax it's only a book. What harm can it do, asked Izawa. Izuku's muscles were weak, as he tried to stand up but his legs couldn't hold him up. 
After trying to take a step he collapsed but Izawa caught him in time, I it's not just a book. I don't know how but while I was being tortured they pulled something out of Eri. It looked like emotional spectrum energy but it was black in color. Only one core is that color, the black lanterns. Izawa remembered Night Eye's final words, blackest night. If someone reads that book then there's no telling what would happen said Izuka trying to force himself up. Midoriya, no one is going to read the book. It's locked deep within the police station where not even you could break into it said Izawa. I still don't trust it, I need to destroy that book no matter what insisted Izuku. Izawa sighed but agreed that after the doctors checked him out they would go to the police station to retrieve the book. With a little help from Lemillion, Izuku was able to charge up his ring once again. Yurika and Eri followed Izuku and Izawa as they flew over the city heading straight to the police station. They landed on the roof where they were met by Naya Mesa, GL, glad to see you're all right. Thanks, sorry but it's all business now, take me to the book. The group followed Naya Mesa down to the underground part of the station. You had to go down an elevator that scanned your retina, reaching the lower floor the door swung open. As you can see the walls here are reinforced, not even a nuclear bomb can penetrate it, said Naya Mesa. It may not be enough said Izuku as they stopped in front of a vault door. Punching in the code the vault began to open, the book, it should be in this box. Grabbing a key, Naya Mesa began to open the box only to reveal that the box was empty. Izuku's eyes widened, no, it's too late. They got it. Planet Riot. The area was dead, not a single tree, animal, or building was in sight. The only thing that stood was a man with his back turned, he then suddenly reached out to his left. As he did a black portal opened and his hand went through. There it is. Pulling his hand back the man held a book, the same book Izuku was looking for. The book suddenly began to change, on the cover the symbol appeared, the symbol of the Black Lantern Corps. This is a good read, the man said jumping into a hole. No, rather it was a grave. Oh eh. The guardians were all in session discussing the events that unfolded in Sector 1295. Well it seems we were able to stop the world from getting overtaken by those pirates, said one of the guardians. Ganthet nodded and just in time too, if the lantern didn't stop them the whole planet would have gotten enslaved. Before Ganthet could finish his sentence he suddenly felt that something was wrong. Ganthet, what is wrong, asked another guardian. No, the prophecy, without saying another word Ganthet took off towards the armory. Once there he went to the deepest part of it where the guardians held it, the Book of the Black. Or at least it should have been there, but by the time Ganthet got there the book was gone. It's gone but where and who has it? Just then the other guardians arrived, Ganthet what's wrong that's when they noticed the book was missing. Inform Lantern Izuku that he is not under any circumstances to leave the planet, we can't allow the prophecy to come true, said Ganthet. Earth. The book was gone and any attempt Izuku made in finding it resulted in nothing. He contemplated leaving for OA and asking the guardians about this but they ordered him to stay. So Izuku went back to UA, the teachers were concerned about his mental health but it seemed he was already over it, or he was just really good at hiding his pain behind a smile. A week had gone by and Izuku was enjoying his time with Eri, she was actually living with Class 1A now. Izawa pulled aside Izuku and Yurika one day and told them that they were now responsible for protecting Eri, the two accepted this responsibility. They let her down once, they weren't going to do it again. One day Izuku was told to join class and bring Eri with him, once there Izuku created a small green desk for Eri to sit on while he created a hammock and laid down. That's when Izawa walked into the room, alright class, quiet down, we have something important to go over. Looking up he saw Izuku laying down on the hammock. What are you doing? Who me? I'm relaxing said Izuku. Get down, ordered Izawa. Izuku created a green construct X, sorry but I'm tired, besides I'm not one of your students remember. Izawa groaned, just try not to distract anyone, Izuku gave a thumbs up. As I was saying, I'm here to announce that the UA school festival is about to take place in two weeks time. However things are going to be a bit different, GL here is going to be participating said Izawa pointing at Izuku. Izuku fell out of his hammock, what? The class laughed at Izuku's expense, you heard me. Eri ran over to check on her papa, Izuku patted her head, thanks Eri, also why? It's like I said, I'm not a student here. Yes we are aware, but given what you've gone through, we thought this would be a good chance for you to relax and act your age said Izawa. Izuku stood stunned, act my age, haven't done that in a while. Feel free to not join. Just know that if you don't, you'll be joining us in protecting the campus said Izawa with a grin. And you already know how boring that can become. Come on GL. It will be fun, said Mina. Yeah. You deserve this break said Kiri's Hima. I agree, with your help we can make this a festival people will remember for years, 
said Momo. Yurika simply smiled at Izuku, you know what, all right, I'll do it. I could use the break and I could enjoy school life for once. Good, you have two weeks to prepare, so think about what you want to do said Izawa. After class, all of 1A and Izuku went back to the dorm to talk things over, everyone started throwing around suggestions. Mineta suggested they do a lewd mate cafe, Izuku quickly locked him in a green construct cage before the girls could kill him. Although, he wouldn't be opposed to the idea of seeing Yurika in a mate outfit. What about a concert, suggested Mina. We can do something like the famous bands. A concert, not a bad idea said Yurika. But can we pull it off? The backbone to any concert is the drums. Can anyone play the drums, asked Jiro. Everyone stayed silent, wait Bakugo, didn't you say you knew how to play, said Kiri's Hima. Bakugo turned away, yeah, but that was a while ago. Perfect, there is your drummer boy, next said Kiri's Hima. Bakugo glared at Kiri's Hima but said nothing, I can play the piano, said Momo raising her hand. Perfect, and I can play bass. That just leaves two guitar players and vocals, any takers, said Jiro, no one said anything. I know how to play guitar, said Kaminari. I also can play, said Tokoyami. Perfect that just leaves vocals, said Momo. That's when Yurika remembered something, hey GL, you can sing right. Izuku stopped and turned to Yurika, W what are you talking about, he said embarrassed. Yeah, I've heard you singing once while we were out patrolling said Yurika much to Izuku's dismay. Why you must have heard wrong, said Izuku. You can sing GL? Show us, said Mina. Izuku blushed, I I can't sing. Come on show us. Show us. Show us, said all of class 1A, even Eri got involved. Izuku sighed, fine, just don't expect too much, let me pick a song. Mina tossed him her cell phone, Izuku quickly loaded up a video, he took a deep breath and prepared. Just then the song A Whole New World began to play. Izuku. I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess. Now when did you last let your heart decide? I can open your eyes. Take you wonder by wonder. Over, sideways and under. On a magic carpet ride. Izuku then created a construct carpet underneath his feet and began to fly around the room. A whole new world. A new fantastic point of view. No one to tell us no. Or where to go. Or say we're only dreaming. Jiro. A whole new world. Everyone then turned to Jiro, she was singing. A dazzling place I never knew. But when I'm way up here. It's crystal clear. That now, I'm in a whole new world with you. Izuku. Now I'm in a whole new world with you. Jiro. Unbelievable sights. Indescribable feeling. Soaring, tumbling, freewheeling. Through an endless diamond sky. Jiro, Izuku. A whole new world, don't you dare close your eyes. A hundred thousand things to see, hold your breath, it gets better. I'm like a shooting star. I've come so far. I can't go back to where I used to be. Izuku, Jiro. A whole new world, every turn a surprise. With new horizons to pursue, every moment red letter. Izuku and Jiro. I'll chase them anywhere. There's time to spare. Let me share this whole new world with you. Izuku. A whole new world. Jiro. A whole new world. Izuku. That's where we'll be. Jiro. That's where we'll be. Izuku. A thrilling chase. Jiro. A wondrous place. Izuku and Jiro. For you and me. The entire class were stunned, they didn't know GL or Jiro could sing that good. That, was, amazing, yelled out Mina. Izuku blushed underneath his mask, you really think so? Yes, they all said. I guess that settles that, we have our two singers said Momo. What do you say GL? Want to be my singing partner, asked Jiro, also trying to hide a slight blush. Izuku turned to look at Yurika, then down to Eri. Eri nodded repeatedly, ah heck, why not? I'm in, I can also create constructs to speed up the work we have to do. Alright then, now everyone else will be on the dance team or behind the scenes. Mina can help you out there, said Jiro. The class then began to talk about how they were going to put this all together. It was now about 10 at night and Eri was starting to get sleepy. Izuku and Yurika went to put Eri to bed. Once they saw that she was asleep they left the room, so, I got to ask. Why Aladdin, asked Yurika. Izuku blushed, it was one of the few movies we had back at the orphanage. The twins really liked the movie so we must have watched it at least a million times. Yurika smiled, well let me just say that it was amazing. 
Now get going, I know you're itching to get back to patrolling. You knew her. Guess I can't hide anything from you. Izuka leaned in and kissed Yurika on the cheek. I'll be back. Yurika nodded, you better. Izuka took off into the night sky to patrol, but as he flew around he couldn't help but feel like someone was watching him. I need to know what exactly Shigaraki wants with Iri. With Shigaraki. Did you get what you need from the girl? Asked Kurojiri. No, I didn't. But I did however, find something amazing. Something dark resides in that girl, and it's powerful. If I can just have that power then nothing will stand in my way. Said Shigaraki, as the yellow glow of his ring shined. Planet Riot. The mystery man was about halfway done reading the book when all of a sudden he turned the page to find it blank. The man got up from the grave, where is the rest of it? I need to know how it ends, he said closing the book. The man closed his eyes and focused, Earth. Japan, the author of the final pages is there. I must go and force them to finish the book. The man opened his hands to reveal a black lantern ring around his finger. Just then the ground around him began to shake before breaking apart and reforming into giant hands made of the ground itself. Turning around the man looked at a giant black lantern central battery, the blackest night falls from the skies, the darkness grows as all light dies. We crave your hearts and your demise. By my black hand, the dead shall rise. The lantern battery began to glow black and cover the entire planet in a dark shadow. Then everything began to get pulled in, the man raised his hand. The black light was being absorbed by the ring, once finished the man stood looking at his ring. I will read the final chapter of that book, said the man taking off into space. But first I need some troops. The class began to get ready for the festival, Izuku and Jiro were working together to come up with a song. Jiro worked on the lyrics, while she was doing this Izuku was helping the props teams come up with a plan. The two weeks were going by fast and soon it was the night of the festival, the whole class and Izuku were all downstairs relaxing. Man, I can't believe we got everything done in time, said Mina on the couch. It would have taken us a lot longer if GL wasn't helping us, said Kiri's Hima. Everyone agreed, that's for sure, thanks GL. Izuka raised a bottle of water at the class, anytime, that's what friends are for. You say we're friends but we haven't seen your real face, said Mina. Yeah what's up with that? If you're our friend you should be able to trust us, said Kiri's Hima. I do trust you, it's just that, I want to remain anonymous. Said Izuku. Tell you what, if everything goes right tomorrow, and we pull off the best show in UA history. I'll take off my ring and show you who I really am. The class all smiled, really. Izuku nodded, yes really. No more secrets, no more masks, sound like a deal. Hell yeah. Said Mina. The whole class was now more excited than ever about tomorrow. Izuku smiled at his friends. Well it's better if they found out through me and not somewhere else. Izuku got up, alright well I'm ahead out on patrol, make sure you guys get plenty of rest. Later GL, try not to stay out so late, said Aitsa. Izuku nodded, yeah yeah I know. Going upstairs Izuku went up to his room. Grabbing some snacks, Izuku was about to fly out of the window when someone called out to him. You're just going to reveal yourself just like that. Looking back Izuku found Yurika standing at the door. Yeah. I mean they are going to find out eventually. This way they have better incentive for tomorrow, said Izuku. I'm not quite sure if I agree but it's your choice and I won't stop you, said Yurika walking over to him. I won't, but I wonder how the girls will react when they see me, said Izuku with a smirk. Yurika reached up and pinched his cheek, you're still mine remember. Ow ow ow, I know I was just messing around. Please let me go, Yurika let go of Izuku, she then leaned in and kissed him on the lips. After a few seconds she pulled away, just wanted to make sure. Izuku smiled, swear on my ring. Now go get some sleep, tomorrow is a big day. Yurika nodded, what about you? Will you be alright for tomorrow? I'm not staying out for long. I just need to do something and I'll head right back. Said Izuku. With that Izuku took off into the night sky and headed towards a specific direction. With Izawa. Izawa was out on patrol tonight, you would think as a UA teacher he wouldn't have to but he did. It's good to stretch out once in a while, he said on top of a building. Just then Izawa heard the sound of an alarm going off. Looking down he saw some thugs trying to break into a store, some things never change. Jumping down, Izawa kicked one of the thugs in the back. The others tried to rush him with crowbars in hand but Izawa took care of them. Pulling out his cell phone he called for the cops, but as he had his back turned one of the thugs got up. You're mine. He yelled out lifting the crowbar. Izawa tried to turn around and counter but just as he was about to throw his capture weapon a blast came in and knocked the thug out. Izawa recognized it, I had him. 
Just then Izuka came floating down, I'm sure you did. What are you doing here? You're not usually around here. Said Izuka. I was looking for you actually, said Izuka wrapping the thugs in a green chain. Me? What for? Asked Izuka. I want to show you something, come with me. Izuka didn't wait for a response, he simply created a green hand and picked up Izuka. Traveling a bit away they landed on an empty hill overlooking the city. Okay, now I'm officially pissed off. Why did you bring me here? Izawa turned around to find Izuka removing his green lantern ring. Holding it in his hand he showed it to Izawa, put it on. Izawa looked at the ring in Izuka's hand, no. Said Izawa plain and simple. Why? You scared of the ring, it won't hurt you. Said Izuka still holding the ring. My ring is powered by emotional energy, so I can sense if only a bit, the emotional state of someone. Having seen fear I know when someone is afraid and you Izawa are afraid. Not of the ring, but of something else. You've helped me so much, so let me help you. Izawa looked at Izuku and grabbed the ring, and what, this ring is going to help me? It's not even working. Clear your mind and picture something, instructed Izuku. Izawa did just that but nothing, the ring still wouldn't work. I read your file Izawa, we both saw something we wished we could have stopped. The ring helps overcome your greatest fear, let it help you. Said Izuku. You have to think of your greatest fear to make it work? That's just insane. Said Izawa. You don't think of it, said Izuku. What, you have to forget it? Asked Izawa. Izuku shook his head, you can't forget it, but when you use the ring, in that split second, you can learn to live with it. Remember why you became a hero, why you continued to be one even after what happened, remember why you became eraser head. Izawa focused hard, gritting his teeth a flash of green appeared. Just then the ring began to take over Izawa, his costume became green in color. Then came the constructs, green versions of his capture weapon began to glow out of the ring in every direction. Izuka shielded his eyes, take control. Put that day behind you Izawa. Just then the constructs began to reshape themselves, into the image of a young man. Izawa looked up to see his old friend standing in front of him, a friend he lost so many years ago. The construct of his friend smiled and reached out a hand. But as Izawa reached out to grab it the construct faded away. I'm sorry, but I can't. Not yet at least. With a tear running down his face Izawa got up. He removed the ring and handed it back to Izuku, thank you though, for trying to help me. It means a lot to me. Izuku grabbed the ring and put it back on, you're welcome. Izawa wiped away the tear, enough of this, let's go back to the city. With his green lantern uniform appearing around him once again Izuku took Izawa back into the city. The next day, day of the festival. Izuku got back to the dorms around 2 a.m., this meant he had 7 hours of sleep. Just enough to recharge his batteries, all right everyone. Time to get up. A voice called out from outside the door. Aitsa was rounding up everyone to get them ready for the show. Izuku got up and headed down the stairs, there he found the class eating breakfast. Joining them Izuku sat down to eat, as he was doing that Jiro walked over to him, Hey GL, you ready for today? Izuku turned, you bet. Let's rock out today. The class had three hours to set everything up, Izuku helped by creating constructs to help speed things up. As he did, himself and Jiro practiced one final time before the show was supposed to start. The dance team got into their dance costumes while the backstage people got set up. Eri sadly couldn't join them on stage but Muriel was more than happy to keep her company while they performed. It was five minutes till curtain rise and everyone was ready, you guys ready to do this, asked Izuku, sporting a green uniform with the UA logo on it. The entire band nodded, let's do this, said Bakugo on the drums. Izuku smiled, all right then, let's burn down this house. That's when Yuriko walked over to Izuku, hey GL, nervous. She had on a yellow jacket with a blue shirt underneath, and a skirt with blue leggings. Me nervous? I fought villains before and you think a concert is going to scare me. Izuku laughed. You're really nervous aren't you, said Yuriko. Izuku quickly quieted down, yes. Yuriko smiled, don't be, we are all here. Besides if we do bad at least you'll be able to keep your identity a secret. Izuku rolled his eyes, thanks for that pep talk. Anytime, now come on, let's get this done, said Yuriko walking over to the other dance members. 30 seconds everyone, yelled out Momo. Izuku composed himself, well no turning back now. Oh eh. Ganthit was with the rest of the Guardians welcoming a new member of the Corps. However as the ceremony was going on Kilowog came bursting through the door. The Guardians were shocked, Kilowog. What is the meaning of this, questioned one of the Guardians. Forgive my rudeness Guardians but it's an emergency. 
We have detected the Black Lantern said Kilowog. Ganthet's eyes went wide, where? We spotted them heading to Sector 2814, said Kilowog. How many are there? asked the Guardian. Only one, sir, we also pinpointed the location they are heading, said Kilowog with worry on his face. Ganthet's eyes widened, Earth, call Lantern Izuka right now. Kilowog send the lanterns to Earth now. Kilowog nodded, how many? All of them. Earth. Izuka was ready, the curtains rose and it began. Bakugo let out a massive explosion that rocked the whole of the auditorium, the beat began to play and the dancers began to dance. Thank you all for coming out today, yelled out Jiro. Izuka was going to sing the first verse, stepping up he stood in front of the large crowd with a smile. And boy were they surprised to see the green lantern in front of the stage. Izuku. What am I to be? What is my calling? I gave up giving up, I'm ready to go. The future's left unseen, it all depends on me. Put it on the line to follow my dream, yeah. Izuku and Jiro. Tried all my life. I've tried to find. Something that makes me hold on and never let go. Oh. Jiro. Hero too, I am a hero too. My heart is set and I won't back down. Hero too, strength doesn't make a hero. True heroes stand up for what they believe. So wait and see. So wait and see. Izuku. What do they think of me? Who do they think I'll be? I could not care less, I don't want to know. Am I doing right? Am I satisfied? I want to live my life like it's meant to be. Yeah. Done with the second verse Izuku began to create a green construct trampoline, that Sayoyama came in and jumped off of it and began to spin around in the air firing off his laser. The auditorium was lit up, However as Izuku was creating more stuff his ring began to flash green signaling that someone was trying to contact him. Izuku looked down at his ring but chose to ignore the call. However it kept flashing, this frustrated Izuku and kept ignoring the call. Finally whoever was calling somehow managed to bypass Izuku's rejection and get his voice through. Izuku. Izuku, can you hear me? It's me Kilowog, listen you need to get to a safe location. The B are coming. I repeat the B are coming. Izuku couldn't make out the word through the music, that was Kilowog, he said something about getting somewhere safe. And something that starts with the letter BB? B. That's when Izuku finally remembered, the Black Lanterns. Just then Izuku got a warning. Danger danger, black emotional energy detected. Death, has arrived. Izuku's eyes widened, just as it was his turn to sing he dropped the mic and pointed his ring to the sky. The class was confused by this, and so was the audience. It was only after he fired a beam of green energy into the sky that they understood. The beam of energy broke the roof, focusing Izuku created a bubble shield all around Yue. He then turned to the class, take cover. However before any of them could move the green shield was shattered by something hitting it from the sky. Pieces of green construct fell on the school, sending people running but that wasn't the worst part. Izuku fell to his knees as his construct was shattered, Yurika rushed over to him, by this point the music and dancing had stopped. GL. Izuku looked up at Yurika, why you need to run, grab Eri and get as far from here as you can. Yurika was confused, what? No. Izuku said snapping at her. But that's when he came crashing down through the roof of the building. Floating down was a man all dressed in black, with a black lantern ring, and symbol on his chest. It's too late, he's here everyone in the auditorium began to run for their lives. The man looked around at the terrified crowd, he then looked at Izuku. You, Green Lantern. Tell me, where can I find the author of the Book of Black? Izuku floated up to meet the man, I have no idea what you are talking about. The man approached Izuku, don't play dumb with me, I can see it within you. You are close with the author, so much so that death has a hand around your neck. Izuku's eyes widened, enough with the crazy talk, leave Earth now. Right, I never introduced myself have I? You can call me Black Hand the man said, introducing himself. Don't care, now leave, Earth, now. Izuku yelled out as his ring began to glow green with power. However Black Hand ignored him, instead he looked around and spotted Eri in the crowd as they ran. There you are. Black Hand was about to leave when Izuku created a cell block around him. You aren't going anywhere. Black Hand looked at the green bars, emotional energy, and strong too. Your will must be amazing, however. Black Hand reached out and touched the green bars, as he did they slowly began to turn black in color. What the? Izuku couldn't believe it. His constructs were getting destroyed. Izuku tried to repair them but found that no matter how much juice he gave it they wouldn't repair. Just then the bars began to crumble into nothingness, that's when Izuku was hit by a feedback of black energy which knocked him through the wall of the auditorium. 
With a sudden wave of his hand he teleported in front of Eri with a twisted smile. Hello. Mirio shielded Eri, what do you want? Black hand glared at Mirio, I wasn't speaking to you. I was speaking to her. Pointing his ring black hand blasted Mirio with black energy, sending him crashing out of the auditorium. As a result of this, Eri was now face to face with black hand. Eri was shaking in fear as black hand towered over her, so you're the author of the book. How fascinating, you're so young but you have encountered death on multiple occasions and are still alive. How is that? I I I don't know. Said Eri wanting to look away but couldn't. Black hand eyed Eri, I see now, in order to finish the book you must die. And I can make that happen. Reaching out black hand was about to touch Eri's face when from the stage, a violet colored beam forced him away from Eri. Get away from her. Eureka was on the stage in her star sapphire uniform. Flying over to Eri she picked her up and began to fly out of the auditorium. We need to leave. But what about Papa? Asked Eri, as they flew higher into the sky. He'll be fine, trust me. Izuku won't be beaten so easily. Said Eureka. Back in the auditorium Black Hand dusted himself off, love, a strong emotion, especially true with that one. I wonder who it is that she loves. Pointing his ring into the air Black Hand began to create several ghoul constructs, which then took off after Eureka. Bring me back the little one my creations, I must finish reading that book. Kill the other one. Without saying anything Black Hand created a spiked shield and blocked a beam of green energy. Your focus is on me. Yelled out Izuku. Black Mask looked at Izuku, your presence is a nuisance by itself, but now with two lanterns of different emotions, things could get difficult for me. That's when Black Hand looked towards the sky. We have company. Just then Izuku got another message through his ring, Izuku do you read us, asked Kilowog. Kilowog? Yeah, I hear you said Izuku. Good, we are on our way kid. Stay put and don't do anything stupid. I brought help, said Kilowog passing by Venus. I hope you brought a lot of people, we got a black lantern over here, said Izuku, staring right at black hand. Kilowog smiled, don't worry, we are bringing a planet. Flying behind a squadron of green lanterns was Mago, the living planet. His size was smaller than Earth but there was no hiding this member of the lantern core. Back on Earth Black Hand created a giant construct hand which ripped the roof right off the auditorium. Looking up he could see the outline of Mago approaching the Earth. This is troublesome, I don't want any interference raising his ring, Black Hand fired a beam of black energy into the sky. From space scan that could see the light, no, he's putting up a shield around the Earth. Mago, fire a beam. Kilowog was shocked, but sir, the planet. Ganthic gritted his teeth, I know that, but if Black Hand gets what he wants the whole universe is at stake. Mago fire. Mago began to charge up a beam, after a second a large beam of green energy shot out of the planet, the entire solar system was bathed in a green light as the beam rocketed towards Earth. On Earth Izuku watched as Mago fired, F asterisk CK. Just then darkness fell on the Earth early. It went from midday to midnight in a matter of seconds. Only the lights of the festival and the city illuminated the area. All of UA watched as darkness blanketed the school, what's going on, asked Jiro. I don't know but I bet it has something to do with the guy who crashed our festival, said Aitza. As they ran around the school they came upon a fallen Mirio, hey Mirio. Are you alright, they asked picking him up. Standing up, the third year student looked at the beam of black energy, where is Eri? Eri? She's with Eureka, they took off into the sky after you got hit, explained Bakugo. Go get your hero costumes, and get ready to fight, said Mirio. The class was stunned, go, he yelled out, they jumped and ran towards the lockers to get their costumes. Why did he want Eri? Eureka was currently flying over the city with Eri in a violet colored bubble, Mama where are we going, asked Eri. I I don't know, somewhere far from here, that's when Eureka heard the howls of the black constructs. Looking back Eureka saw the ghouls flying towards them, oh you gotta be kidding me. Twisting her body Eureka pointed her ring at the ghouls but the violet energy simply bounced right off of them. Mama, I'm scared said Eri covering her eyes. Just then one of the ghouls got in close and using its long sharp claws it swiped down at Eureka. She tried to put up a shield but the ghoul destroyed it with ease, as pieces of the shield were sent everywhere another ghoul came in and slashed Eureka across the chest. Eureka yelled out in pain as blood began to drip from her chest, pushing through the pain she created construct boxing gloves which managed to knock the ghouls back. Mama! Mama! Eri yelled out as her mom got hurt. I I am fine Eri, come on we need to keep moving, However that's when she heard the sound of her constructs shattering. Looking back the ghouls were eating away at her constructs. They then again lunged at them but this time they weren't after Eureka, this time they aimed for Eri. 
Eurica saw this and immediately got Eri out of the way, you won't touch her. Suddenly the sky above them turned black, what is this, asked Eurica. However she didn't have much time to think about it before the screeches of the ghouls were heard once again. Eurica tried her best, she tried to get Eri out of harm's way but it wasn't enough. The ghouls shattered the bubble around Eri, much to Eurica's horror. Powering up her ring Eurica tried to create more constructs but the ghouls all began to swarm her. Eurica continued to fire blasts but they weren't doing anything, she watched as one of the monsters went after Eri who was falling toward the ground. But it was no use, the ghouls were beginning to cut her across her body with their claws, and no. Not like this. Not like this. Eurica yelled out as she was completely overwhelmed. The ghoul that chased after Eri managed to grab her, it then began to take her away back towards Yue. At the same time the ghouls were about to rip Eurica to shreds, however at the last second a beam of yellow and violet energy blasted the monsters away. Eurica's uniform was ripped in multiple locations but she was alive, looking around she wondered who blasted the creatures away. Who did that? That would be us, said a voice appearing before Eurica. Looking up she saw Shigaraki floating beside Toga, you. Easy Okako, we aren't here to fight you, said Toga in her star sapphire uniform. Then why are you here, asked Eurika. As unbelievable as it may be, we are here to help, said Shigaraki, much to Eurika's surprise. Why, asked Eurika. Because if we don't stop this guy, the whole world will be plunged into darkness. And I for one, will not let another take over this world, said Shigaraki. Eurika narrowed her eyes, I don't trust you. That's when Toga floated towards Eurika, listen we will help, but after this is over it will be business as usual. The ghouls then roared and went to join the other who took Eri, you wouldn't happen to know how to kill these things would you, asked Eurika. No, not yet. However everything has a weakness, we just have to find it. So where is the black lantern ring user, asked Shigaraki. Back at UA, GL is there fighting him right now, said Eurika. Come on we should hurry, he won't be able to hold him off forever. The three ring bearers all flew towards UA at top speed. Back at UA Izuku was creating massive constructs in an effort to take down Black Hand but nothing was working. Izuku even created a giant green Godzilla that fired atomic breath at Black Hand but it didn't even phase him. If long range won't hurt him, then what about close range? Izuku yelled out as he created a green sword and flew at Black Hand. Izuku swung the construct sword and hit him but the sword shattered on contact. I am possible, said Izuku. That's when Black Hand reached out and grabbed Izuku by the neck. Your will is strong, I'll give you that. But will can be so easily broken, or rather taken, said Black Hand. The green light around Izuku began to flicker and fade, almost as if it was being absorbed. Izuku's eyes widened, he's taking the ring's energy. I have to think of something. Just then a massive explosion hit Black Hand's back. Crashing to the floor Izuku saw that it was Bakugo who caused that explosion, bring it on, you creepy mother asterisker. GL. Are you alright, asked Momo, running up to him along with the rest of the class. Izuka groaned in pain as he sat up, guys. Why are you all here? You should be evacuating. We aren't going to leave you to face this guy alone, said Kiri's Hima. Izuka looked around to find everyone agreeing with him, no, you have to leave, it's too dangerous for you. Then what about me, asked a voice as it zoomed past Izuku. Smash. Looking up Izuku saw Lemillion, with a loud boom he managed to hit Black Hand directly in the head. With a loud snap his head twisted back, his body fell to the ground motionless. All right. He got him, said Kaminari. Izuku stood up and shook his head, no, no he didn't. As the class looked at Black Hand his body began to stand up, his head was still twisted but then his hands grabbed his head and repositioned it back to normal. That hurt, your power can also prove troublesome. I think it's time I call my army. Opening his mouth the class was shocked when Black Hand began to throw up black lantern rings. Izuku's eyes widened, no, pointing his ring towards them, Izuka created a dome around the school in an attempt to stop the rings from leaving. Hundreds, if not thousands of rings flew into the sky, as they hit the dome the rings were stopped. Izuka smiled, yes. That's when Black Hand turned back to Izuka with black liquid dripping down his mouth, you can't stop it Green Lantern, no one can. It is one of the few things that will always remain true in this universe, death. Just then all of the Black Lantern rings began to absorb Izuka's green light. With the dome now completely gone the rings flew off in every direction. The rings all went to the place they were called to, graveyards. In one particular graveyard one ring stopped in front of a tomb and spoke, Marai Sasaki, Night Eye of Earthrise, the ring then began to sink into the ground. After a second a hand rose from the ground with the ring around a finger. Another ring found itself off the coast of Japan, on an island that was reduced to nothingness. 
it stopped in the middle of a crater, Nana Shimura of Earth, Roz. Then three rings stopped at a hill overlooking a city, one of the three rings stopped above a makeshift grave with flowers, Maria of Earth, Roz. The other two rings stopped side by side, Lisa, Levi of Earth, Roz. However there was one ring that went to a place all might dreaded, one ring found its way to Tartaru's prison. Smashing its way through the compound it stopped in front of a man, a man that shouldn't have any more power. Shigaraki, of Earth, Roz. All throughout Japan one word was heard echoing in the night, Roz. This was the worst case scenario, it seemed as if Izuku couldn't do anything to stop Black Hand. Not to mention the Black Lantern rings that flew into the sky, Izuku went down to his class. Listen up everyone, you need to get ready. Those rings, those rings have the power to bring back the dead. The class couldn't believe it, bring back the dead. That's just crazy, there's no way anything in this universe can do that, right, asked Aitsa. Sweat dripped down Izuku's forehead, there is, and you are looking at him. Listen, those rings are going to find hosts and when that happens they will begin to spread their poison throughout the world. You have to fight back. How? You couldn't take him, why would we be able to, asked Kiri's Hima. Izuku thought about it, light seems to have an effect on them. Aoyama, Toru, the two students looked at GL both of your quirks are light based right, use it against them. Aoyama, use your laser and fire at them. Toru, use the super move we practiced and let the star shine. The two students nodded, you got it GL, said Toru, giving him a thumbs up with her glove. What about us, asked Momo. You protect them, Bakugo, use your explosions to keep them off of them. Momo make as many bright lights as you can. Everyone else throw everything you have at them, and whatever you do. Don't let them get in close. The class nodded, right, they soon all took off. Only Lemillion stayed behind, I'm guessing you'll need my help here right? Izuku nodded, yeah, I need you to get me close. If anything I'll blast him with everything I have. Right? Let's go then. However just as they were about to take off Lemillion was hit in the chest by a black energy beam. Lemillion. Izuku looked at Mirio to find that he crashed into the school. Then Izuku turned to the source of the blast and his eyes widened. Oh god. Lemillion quickly jumped back and looked up, and a look of horror fell on his face, S sir. Floating in the air was Sir Night Eye wearing a black lantern ring around his finger. Izuku then got in front of the two, Lemillion, let me take him. You shouldn't have to do this. However Lemillion shook his head, no, he was my mentor. I should be the one to do it. Go take on the big guy, let me handle this. Are you sure, asked Izuku. Lemillion nodded, yes, now go. Izuku took off into the sky to face Black Hand once again, however as he was flying he heard the words, 15% charge, 16% sea charge. What is that, he asked himself, but before he could dwell on the question Izuku was suddenly hit with a black construct bat, sending him crashing to the roof of Yue. Izuku laid on the broken roof rubbing his head, oh great. Who is it this time? Getting up Izuku found a tall slender woman, with black hair. She wore a black cape and had the symbol of the Black Lantern corporate on her chest. Who is that? Just then the woman flew at Izuku and tackled him through the building. Crashing through several floors they finally stopped on the bottom floor. The woman was now on top of Izuku, she then began to snarl and bite at Izuku. Grabbing her shoulders, Izuku tried to force her off of him. Get off of, me. Izuku yelled out as he managed to kick the woman off. Izuku then got up and blasted her with a beam of willpower. The woman yelled out in pain as the left side of her stomach was blown off. However, just as Izuku was about to fire another blast. The woman began to heal, and after a second it was as if nothing happened. Super regeneration, this could be troublesome, said Izuku. The woman then jumped at Izuku once again but before she could reach her a voice was heard. Master. The woman stopped and turned to find All Might. All Might, what are you doing? Get out of here, it's not safe. Izuku created green construct chains and wrapped them around the woman. But they proved useless as the woman snapped them. She then flew at All Might, Master, I don't know how you came back. But I always hope to see you again one day, but not like this. What you are now, I know you would have been disappointed to look at yourself. But I know this is not your fault, but don't worry, all will be well. Just as the woman crashed into All Might a flash of blue light shined across the roof. Izuku shielded his eyes and as the blue light dissipated he saw All Might in his buff form, with the blue lantern core ring in his finger. I thought Saint Walker took the ring back, how did you get it back? asked Izuku. All Might stood holding back the fist of his former master, after the fight, Saint Walker came back to hand me back the ring. He feared that one day I may need it to stop a powerful threat. Seems like he was right. 
Now then, sorry about this Nana. All Might then grabbed Nana's arm and flung her into the air, GL, go I will deal with her. I won't let her legacy be tarnished by this. But you will need help, so here. All Might waved his hand. Just then Izuku's ring began to glow brighter than before, ring power at 125%, 135%, 140%. Izuku smiled, thanks All Might. He then took off into the sky. Black Hand was floating in the air looking around at the destruction, no, the death he was causing. Heroes were falling, and Black Lanterns were rising. Suddenly a beam of green energy came barreling towards Black Hand. Raising his hand Black Hand swatted the blast away, it seems you have returned Lantern, but you are too late. The rings are already finding hosts, and soon this entire planet will know the mercy of death. Not while I'm still standing. This world is mine to protect, and I will protect it. Izuku said as the ring flashed brighter. Black Hand twisted his neck back, then try it. Izuku gritted his teeth and with a battle cry he flew at Black Hand with a green construct battle axe. Swinging it down Izuku prepared to end this, but suddenly Izuku's construct stopped dead in its tracks. Izuku eyes widened, it as I said before Lantern, you will be broken. Izuku let the construct disappear, and no, please, not them. Floating in front of Black Hand were two small Black Lanterns, Lisa? Levi. The twins had a twisted smile, welcome the newest members of the Black Lantern Corps. I assume you are familiar with each other. Izuku's face began to fill with despair, the closest thing he had to siblings were now alive again and fighting against him. What will you do Lantern? Fight them. Or will you let them kill you? Just know if you fight them, the only recourse is to destroy them completely. Izuku knew these weren't the same twins that he knew, they were just puppets for Black Hand, but why? Why was it that he couldn't find the heart to attack them? Izuku's hands trembled as he fought back the urge to use his ring. But slowly but surely he began to raise his ring and pointed it at the twins. I I know they wouldn't want to be this way. For that reason, I'll let them rest again. Charging up his ring Izuku fired a beam of green energy at the two. However just as it was about to reach them, a black construct shield appeared in front of them. Izuku looked up to see another black lantern float down. If those two couldn't stop you, what about this one? Asked Black Hand as the other lantern stopped in front of him. Izuku ripped off the mask he had over his eyes, his pupils dilated. M. Maria. Maria, the person who took care of him, the person who treated him with respect even after finding out he was quirkless. The person who he thought of as a mother, was floating in front of him wearing a black lantern ring. Izuku was so focused on Maria that he didn't even notice the ghouls arriving with Eri, my creations, you served me well. And now, you will write the end of the book. Black Hand then began to reach inside of Eri, as he did a light of pure black energy shot out of her. Izuku's eyes began to water, Maria, I, I. However before he could finish Maria jumped at him, ready to rip out his heart. Izuku did nothing as she reached out, ready to kill him. Just as she was about to, a beam of yellow energy hit Maria, sending her crashing to the floor. Followed by two violet beams that hit the twins. No. Izuku yelled out as he looked up to see Yuriko with Toga, and Shigaraki. GL. We're here to help. Yuriko said, floating beside him. Izuku looked down at his family, why? Why did you do that? Yuriko was confused, W what? They were about to kill you. No. They wouldn't do that. They are my family, said Izuku. Shigaraki then floated towards Izuku, your family is dead, those things are not them. If you don't have the guts to do what's necessary then I'll do it for you. Shigaraki then pointed his ring at the three black lanterns and was about to fire when Izuku grabbed him by the wrist. I said no. GL stop this, we have to get rid of them. Yuriko said trying to get Izuku to let go of Shigaraki. Just then Toga was about to fire a beam when Izuku saw her. Before she could fire Izuku created a battle malice and cracked Toga across the face. You won't touch them. Toga reached out to where Izuku had hit her. GL what the hell. Izuku then floated below them and got in between them, if you hurt them, then I will fight you. Yuriko's eyes widened, GL, we are trying to save the world. We can't let them roam free. And I'm trying to save them. Izuku yelled out, causing Yuriko to flinch. There has to be another way. I won't let them down a second time. Yuriko looked at Izuku with sorrow, Oh Izuku, I'm so sorry. But this has to be done. However, before any of them could move the three black lanterns came crashing into Shigaraki, Toga, and Yuriko. Damn it. Forget GL, we have to do this by ourselves. Shigaraki said blasting one of the twins in the chest. Toga created several violet shields in front of her, but the other twin smashed right through them. Is it just me, 
or are these guys getting stronger? Asked Toga. Eurika created a net and threw it at Maria, their powers must be linked to something. But what? Izuka looked up to see Eurika fighting Maria, as she was captured in the net, Eurika was about to go in and punch Maria across the face. Izuka saw this and quickly flew up and caught her punch, I said no. Eurika's eyes widened, GL, these things aren't your family. These are just the outer husks of them. However before she could say anything else Eurika pushed Izuka out of the way and created a wall in front of them. Only to have Maria smash it into pieces, sending the both of them crashing towards the ground. The two lanterns crashed into the ground, the two seemed fine and got back up in no time. Eurika dusted herself off and walked over to Izuku, Eurika, look if we could just get them to slap. Izuku had a red mark across his face as a result of the slap. Surprised by this Izuku looked at Eurika, why? With teary eyes she glared at him, because you are being an idiot. Izuku took a step back, W what? Look at them. Eurika ordered. Izuku slowly looked up to see Maria and the twins fighting against Shigaraki and Toga. They let out animalistic growls as they created black colored constructs. Are those the same people you knew? Is it? I I, they. Izuku hung his head. They aren't the same. Exactly, Izuku please, I know what they meant to you. And seeing them again must be a dream come true, but they aren't the same. So please, let them go. Eurika said placing a hand on Izuku's shoulder. Izuku clenched his fist, I can't. He then turned to Eurika. How can I let them go? when I was the one who got them killed. Eurika grabbed Izuku's face, listen to me Izuku, you did not get them killed. Their deaths are not your fault, so don't you dare for a second think that it was. You have done nothing but help us, you Izuku, are the Green Lantern of Earth. If being with you has taught me anything, it's that if there's a will, there's a way. Izuku then reached up and grabbed Eurika's hand, I don't want to let them go again. Eurika could see the sadness in his eyes, I know Izuku, but you won't. Do you know why? Eurika then placed a hand on Izuku's heart. A person's love for someone doesn't end when they die, it's always here, always in your heart. And right now, Eri, the little girl that loves you so much needs your help. They were your past, but Eri, she is your future. Izuku wiped away a tear, will you help me? Of course. As the two looked at each other the screams of Eri echoed throughout the sky. Both lanterns looked up to see Black Hand extracting something from within Eri. GL, let's go, yelled out Eurika. Right. The two then flew towards Black Hand. That's when the Black Lantern twins stepped in between them. Izuku gritted his teeth and raised his ring, Eurika did the same. They both charged up and fired a blast of green and violet light at the twins. Sorry, you two. Izuku said as the blast engulfed the two completely. In a massive explosion of green and violet the twins were sent crashing into the ground. As they got up they noticed that their rings began to crack. However they weren't the only ones who noticed, GL, you see that? Asked Eurika. Why yeah, is it because of the combined attack? Asked Izuku, confused as to why that happened. I think it's because we combined our powers. But Shigaraki and Toga have been doing that and it hasn't worked. Unless, GL, it's your will, your will combined with another must be causing the rings to become brittle. If we keep this up we can destroy them, said Eurika. Izuku looked down at his ring, will power, one of the strongest forces in the universe. All right let's go. We need to get to Eri. The two went flying at black hand, but as they flew Izuku once again heard a voice, 65% charge, 66% charge. Black hand reached into Eri, come on, where is it? The story should be here. That's when black hand felt it. W what is this? This is not what was sensed before, no, this is far greater. He then created a massive construct sword and pressed it against Eri's neck. You are now a threat, you cannot be allowed to live. As he raised the sword Eri closed her eyes, however, just as the blade was going to end her. A blast of green energy hit Black Hand in the chest. Get away from her, yelled out Izuku as he caught Eri in his arms. Eurika quickly arrived and got in front of Eri, you all right Eri? Eri's eyes watered, Mama, Papa. The two smiled, it's okay Eri, we are here now. And I promise we won't let you get hurt anymore. Eurika said as her ring glowed. That's when Black Hand returned, it seems like you are finally beginning to understand the true power of your ring. Go ahead, unlock as much of it as you want. You will not stop me from achieving my goal. That's when a horde of black lanterns began to appear from the city. 75% charge, 76% charge. Izuku's eyes widened, there's so many of them. Hey green, pull yourself together. Shigaraki said floating next to Izuku. 
We need to kill these things. Do you think we don't know that? Yelled out Eureka. With GL's ring we can take these guys down, we just have to reinforce it with our power. I get it, then how about we use it on the weird dude, said Toga. If we can take him down, the other Black Lanterns won't have someone to listen to. Izuku and Eureka nodded, I can't believe I'm actually teaming up with Shigaraki. Said Izuku. Shigaraki smiled, you need me here, you don't have a choice. Just wait until this is all over, said Izuku as he took off towards Black Hand with Eureka and Toga in tow. The four lanterns all concentrated their blasts and timed it to combine with Izuku's. The green as the main, a combination of violet and yellow screamed towards Black Hand. But before it could hit him, a black shield was put up, blocking the combined attack. Looking over the group saw the twins and Maria protecting Black Hand. We need to get rid of his bodyguards first. Said Toga. No time GL, leave Eri with me, I'll distract them with long range attacks. Eureka then created a massive violet colored mech suit and began to fire bullets and bombs towards the once alive Maria. Explosions ripped through the sky, go. Yelled out Eureka as she continued her ancho late. The three remaining lanterns then took off and went in to end this. Shigaraki created a construct serpent, Toga created knives, and Izuka created several fighter jets. With their combined attacks a massive explosion erupted in the sky. That got him, said Toga, celebrating. However her celebrations were cut short when a blast of black energy pierced her shoulder. Toga yelled out in pain as she held her now bleeding shoulder. Did you honestly believe it would be that easy? Asked Black Hand appearing from the smoke. Black is the color of death, and with each death a new lantern is born. Further adding to our power, and once we reach 100%. Then he is called forward. Just then a massive black skull appeared behind Black Hand. I wanted to give the book to him before his arrival. But what I sensed inside that child is far more dangerous than I could imagine. I need to get rid of her, I'll do that once I kill all of you. Oh you really think so? Well I for one will show you what true fear is. Shigaraki said as he raised his ring, only to have his hand stopped by someone. Look how much you've grown my son. Shigaraki looked up to all for one wearing a black lantern ring. Shigaraki's eyes widened, am eh, master. Come my son, join me, join us, and you can become part of something even greater. All for one then gave a twisted smile. Join us. One for all was about to stab Shigaraki in the chest when a blast of yellow energy pushed him away. No master, this is not you. And I have no intention of following someone who is being controlled. But don't worry, I'll free you from this, by killing you. Oh such a poor choice, all for one said, creating a black construct tiger. The tiger opened its mouth to bite down on Shigaraki but was stopped when a yellow construct serpent wrapped itself around it. You were my master once but no more. I have fear on my side. The two then took off to do battle with each other. Now it was just Izuku and the two star sapphires, GL, what do we do now? Asked Toga. As long as we have another color here, we should be fine said Izuku charging up his ring for another blast. Toga did the same, but stopped when she saw some black lanterns heading her way. Oh no is all she could say before being hit by a blast. She tried to put up a shield but it shattered on impact. Great more black lanterns, Eureka said as she continued her onslaught. Who are they? Toga's eyes widened, those are the people I've killed and taken their blood. Looks like they're back for some revenge, said Izuku, blasting them but doing little damage. Sorry about this GL, but I'll deal with this myself. Without saying another word she took off, leading them away. Izuku tried to stop her but it was too late, Toga wait. That's when Eureka appeared with Eri in a violet shield around her. Great, they just left, can this go any worse? Just then the twins and Maria appeared once again, I just had to open my mouth. Sweat dripped down Izuku's face, not good, they're getting stronger by the minute and I don't think we can catch up. Oh Izuku. Called out Maria. Come Izuku, let me hug you once again. Izuku's eyes widened, why you can talk. He could tell in her voice that she wasn't herself. This wasn't the Maria she knew. Oh but we can do more than that, Lisa, Levi. Izuku's been a bad kid. Why don't we show him what happens when someone misbehaves? The twins then smiled, yes, Maria. The two then jumped at Izuku but before they could reach him, they were smacked away by a violet colored bat. GL, I'll take these two. Take her, and remember, they aren't the same. Izuku stared down Maria, not the reunion I wanted. Come now Izuku, why drag this on? Let's get this over with. Maria said, raising her ring. Izuku sighed, very well, let's. The two then fired beams at each other, green illuminated the sky as they went back and forth. 
Izuku then created a green mirror and redirected the blast upward. Maria then charged at Izuku with a black sword, Izuku countered and created his own. The two then locked constructs, you've gotten so strong Izuku. Was it because of her? Or was it because you let us die? Maria said, provoking Izuku. Izuku gritted his teeth and pushed the blade down, spinning around he kicked Maria away from him and raised his ring. You have no idea what I felt, he yelled out blasting Maria in the chest. From the explosion Maria's voice was heard, and neither do you. You lied to me Izuku, you told me the twins were fine. That I saved the twins from the explosion, but you lied. But do you want to know the worst part? The worst part is that it was all your fault. And no, it wasn't my fault. Izuku yelled back. That's when Maria appeared in front of Izuku and grabbed him by the neck, it was, this is all your fault. But there's one more thing you should know, it's about her, your little girlfriend. Maria then leaned in and whispered into his ear, your girlfriend's last name is Yurika right? I'll let you in on a secret, my full name is Maria Yurika. I think you know what that means right? Izuku's eyes widened, why you're her mother? But she told me that her mother was dead. Maria smiled, I, I need to tell her. Izuku said breaking free of the hold Maria had on him. He quickly flew towards where Yurika was, Okako. You have to listen to me. Yurika was busy dealing with the twins when she heard Izuku call out to him. Huh, GL. Okako, I found her, she's. However before he could finish Maria appeared behind him. Behind you GL. Yurika yelled out but it was too late. Before he could even turn around Maria placed her ring on his back. Checkmate. Maria then fired a beam of black energy into Izuku, piercing his stomach. Yurika's eyes widened, Izuku, she yelled out as the green glow around Izuku began to fade. Izuku coughed out blood, and Maria. He then fell to the ground and hit the floor. Yurika quickly blasted the twins off and flew down to Izuku. 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 Hold on, I'll get you help. That's when Yurika saw the blood. Oh god, no please, not you. With his breath staggering Izuku spoke, Oh Okako, Eri. Quite, save your breath. Help. Anyone. Help. Yurika cried out, that's when she saw her friends running towards her. Eri had tears running down her face, Papa. Papa. Yurika. What's wrong, asked Mina. That's when they saw Izuku with a hole in his stomach. Momo, I need to stop the bleeding. Can you make something? Yurika said, trying to use her ring to stop the bleeding with no avail. Momo quickly created gauze pads but even with the amount she was making it wasn't stopping the bleeding. It's not working. With blood dripping down his lip Izuka reached up and touched Yurika's crying face. H hey, it's okay. Listen, you, you have to know, come closer. Yurika leaned down as Izuka whispered into her ear. Her eyes then widened, W what? That's when Yurika's nightmare came true, his hand fell from her face and hit the ground motionless. Izuka then began to close his eyes, that's when the ring spoke. Ring status report, Green Lantern 2814, deceased. The class watched as the Green Lantern ring on Izuku's finger began to slip off. Yurika reached out to it and grabbed it, no. However, try as she will the ring wanted to leave, Space Sector 2814 scanning for replacement sentient initiated the ring then began to take off into space. As the ring hit the black shield around the earth it stopped, unable to search, waiting for conditions to be met. The class watched Izuku lose his uniform and appear with his civilian clothes. H he was Izuku. Mina said in disbelief. Before they could even process what was going on a black ring hovered above the class. Izuku meet Oriya of Earth, rise. From the sky a black ring slipped onto Izuku's finger and in a flash of black energy managed to push everyone away from him. Yurika shielded Eri, as she looked up, a look of horror filled her face, oh no. Standing before them was Izuku with the Black Lantern ring and the symbol of the Black Lantern corporate on his chest. 100% charge. Black Hand then smiled, yes. The time is now, all Black Lanterns, come to me. And greet death itself, greet Necron. From the very earth itself a large figure of a man rose, his skin was decomposing, he wore a black vest, and wielded a giant scythe with a Black Lantern battery on the top. This was him, the harbinger of death itself had arrived. Out in space. Ganthit could feel his presence, Necron was here. It's too late, Necron is already on Earth. And if he is here, then that means Izuku is dead. However just as all seemed to be lost a indigo light appeared before the Green Lantern Corp startled, they all pointed their rings at this person, please do not fear me, for I have come to help. Ganthit's eyes widened, you, you can get us in can't you? The man nodded, yes, besides, 
I came to make amends for my actions. Everyone around Yue could see Necron rise from the ground. What the hell is that? Asked Kiri's Hima. Eureka took a step back in fear, death has arrived, Necron is here. The class was in shock, is there anything we can do? Asked Bakugo. There is only one way, said a voice coming from behind them. They all turned around to find Stain walking out of a portal wearing an indigo ring. Stain. Yelled out Itza putting up his guard. That's when Eureka raised her hand, he won't hurt us, not with that ring on his finger. The indigo ring forces the person wearing it to feel compassion. Stain nodded, right you are, and I know I've wronged you. Some more than others, but right now we need to stop Black Hand and Necron. And how do you propose we do that? Asked Eureka. With some help of course. We need to gather all of the emotional spectrum and bombard Black Hand. He is the only thing keeping Necron in this realm. Explain Stain. But how? GL was the only Green Lantern here, and we are still missing orange for avarice and red for rage. Said Eureka. Green is just outside and ready to help, you already have two red lanterns here, Stain pointed at Bakugo and Todoroki. But we lost our rings when the blue guy freed us. Said Todoroki. That is true, but you two still have great rage in your hearts. All you have to do is tap into that rage once again and the rings will reappear. Explained Stain. Bakugo's eyes widened, but we can't, if we wear the rings again we'll lose ourselves to the rage. Do not worry, once you change into red lanterns I can calm you down. For you see, I can channel the light of another core if they are nearby. Said Stain raising his ring. But what about orange? We still need an orange ring. Said Momo. That's when Stain activated his ring and out came an orange ring. Eureka was stunned, only one ring was ever created. How did you get one? It took some, convincing, from the soul member but we agreed that he'd create one more ring. On the condition that we destroy it later. Explained Stain. Mina smiled, all right. But who's going to wear it? If orange is avarice, we need someone who is really greedy. Stain shook his head, we cannot pick its host. We have to let the ring decide for itself. Stain then let the ring go causing it to float in mid-air. Everyone thought that it would fly away but to their surprise it stayed close and hovered over someone. They all turned to find it floating above Mineta. Oh you gotta be kidding me. Said Jiro. Minoru Mineta of Earth, you want it all. Welcome to the Orange Lantern Corps. Ha! Huh? With this ring all the girls will be mine. All mine. Said Mineta as the ring began to float down onto his finger. The area was then bathed in a bright orange glow. After a few seconds Mineta appeared with his costume now fully orange in color. You know, that color actually suits him. Said Momo, slightly impressed but also slightly disgusted. All right, one down, two to go. We only need one of you, so who's going to turn? Asked Stain. Bakugo and Todoroki looked at each other, I should do it. Said Todoroki. Bakugo scoffed, in your dreams half and half, you're more useful with your quirk. I'll do it, besides... I still have some stuff I need to work out. That's when Eureka approached Bakugo, are you sure about this? Bakugo nodded, yeah, and to tell you the truth, I still haven't forgiven myself for what I did to him, and I absolutely hate myself for it. If this is the only way I can help then so be it. That's when Bakugo's eyes turned blood red, he then fell to his knees and yelled out in agony. Red streaks began to appear throughout his body. Katsuki Bakugo of Earth, you still have great rage in your heart. Welcome back to the Red Lantern Corps. Bakugo then began to vomit out napalm blood from his mouth as his heart was being destroyed, he fell to his knees in agonizing pain. The class all took a step back, Eureka was ready in case something happened. However before she could do anything, the puddle of napalm blood began to reform into a ring. The ring then found its way to Bakugo's finger and a red lantern Bakugo was born once again. He stood up with napalm blood running down his mouth, he's losing himself, yelled out Eureka as she pointed her ring at him. That's when Stain's ring turned into a staff, the staff had an opening at the end where indigo light shined. However once Stain tapped his staff a blue light began to emit from it, he then pointed his staff at Bakugo as a blue light covered him. After a few seconds Bakugo returned, his rage slightly less severe. T that hurt more than last time said Bakugo. It should, others may have forgiven you, but you still haven't forgiven yourself for your actions said Stain. Alright, we need a green lantern. You said they were here, I think it's time they show themselves said Eureka. Stain agreed. Tapping his staff Stain opened a portal behind him, and out walked a tall creature with a bulldog-like face. All right, it's time to kick some ass. Eureka's eyes widened, Kilowog. Kilowog turned to Eureka, oh hey I remember you, yeah you're the lantern's girlfriend. I almost didn't recognize you with that ring on. 
Are you ready to kick some ass? Yurika nodded, of course. Although I'm not looking forward to this, I don't want to fight them she looked over to where Black Hand was to see Izuku and Maria floating next to him. Kilowog's face turned sad, that kid, the only thing we can do now is make sure he doesn't suffer anymore. Yurika wiped away a tear, I know. Come then, we need to gather the other two, remember, blast them with all of the emotional spectrum energy we have said Stain. Minetan nodded, heck yeah, I can't wait for all the women to be mine. All of the lanterns took off into the sky towards the blue lantern. All Might was busy fighting Nana, his former teacher. The two fired beams of energy, the two beams struggled against each other. Give it up Toshinori, you won't be able to hurt me said Nana with a twisted smile. All Might's blue beam was being pushed back, he gritted his teeth and poured everything he had into the blast. You failed me once, you let me die Toshinori. No I didn't. I wanted to save you, but you told Gran Torino to get me out of there. I wanted to stay. All Might yelled out as the beam inched closer. Then repent by dying by my hand. Nana yelled out as the beam was now feet away. All Might's signature smile returned, I'm sorry Nana, but I can't die, not yet at least. I have students that still need my guidance, for they are the hope of the future. I won't die until I know all will be well. With his hope rejuvenated, All Might's eyes burned blue with power, this gave his blast the final push it needed to finally overtake Nana's. However, before the blast disintegrated her, a black shield appeared in front of her. All Might looked over to see All for One and Nighteye protecting her. Weak as always Nana, that is why I killed you all those years ago said All for One floating beside her. Now stand aside while I finish this. All for One created a giant black snake and launched it at All Might, All Might braced for the attack and was surprised when a giant yellow construct eagle came in and picked up the snake. Sorry master, but if anyone is going to have the privilege of killing him, it's going to be me said Shigaraki appearing beside All Might with his yellow lantern ring. All Might's eyes widened, you. Yet it's me, now tell me, do you have what it takes to take down your master, asked Shigaraki. All Might stayed silent for a second, yes, if it means that she no longer is in this state then yes. Shigaraki nodded, very well, then we'll need help then. You guys ready? Just then Yurika, Bakugo, Mineta, Stain, and Kilowog all appeared beside All Might. When did you all? No time, we need to get rid of them and move on to Black Hand said Yurika raising her ring, the rest of the lanterns did the same. All Might nodded, right. Together now. The rings of the respected core began to glow with power, fire, yelled out Bakugo. Each core member fired a beam, the blast left their rings and colored the sky in all of the colors. The black lanterns tried to put a shield up but it proved useless, with their combined power the two black lanterns yelled out in pain. While in the beam the ring around their fingers began to crack before ultimately shattering, in her last moments Nana smiled, thank you Toshinori. All for one forced himself to look at Shigaraki, you've done well for yourself my son. Naitai at the last second used his quirk one last time to look into the future, as he saw the future he smiled. So be it, say goodbye to Minori for me. With that the bodies of the reanimated heroes and villain all fell to the ground and became inert. All might look down at their bodies, come, we still need to take down Black Hand. The core of lanterns all flew at Black Hand, ah looks like the entire emotional spectrum is here, how delightful said Black Hand. It's over Black Hand, with all the colors here you don't stand a chance said Eurica standing beside the rest of the lanterns. Oh is that right? Did you forget that I still have the army of undead? Black lanterns. Attack, yelled out Black Hand. Just then a swarm of black lanterns appeared from behind Necron. However before they could do anything the group fired off one massive beam of energy, destroying over 90% of the black lanterns. Izuku, Maria, and the twins were one of the few black lanterns that survived. Haha. <laughs> we already know how to defeat your puppets said Bakugo. Black hand's eyes were wide as he glared at the group, you dare. Necron. Show these flies who they are messing with. The entity of death raised its massive black lantern side and slashed down at the group. The lanterns created a shield composed of all the colors but it proved useless as it completely shattered. The lanterns were thrown to the side as a result, All Might composed himself, everyone fire at Black Hand. They did as they were told but before they could fire Izuku came in and tackled Eureka. Bakugo turned to find that the two crashed into the ground, taking down several buildings in the process. Eureka. Eureka created a violet pole, stopping Izuku from taking a bite out of her, keep going. I'll catch up. Izuku then pointed his black ring and fired a blast of energy right into Eurika's chest. Eurika yelled out in pain as she was thrown through more several buildings before hitting the side of one and falling to her knees. She slowly looked up to see Izuku floating down towards her, I Izuku, it's me, don't you recognize me? 
Izuku stopped just inches away from her, oh I know who you are. You are the girl who was only with me out of pity. And no, you're wrong. Yurika yelled out. Izuku then proceeded to kick Yurika in the stomach causing her to spit out blood, you lie. You never loved me, you only ever saw me as a sad, helpless guy who was so desperate for attention that I actually thought you liked me. Yurika managed to stand up grabbing at her stomach, I love you Izuku. Even now I still love you, but this isn't you. Izuku then created a black construct minigun, what if this is the real me? Did you ever think of that, asked Izuku as he pulled the trigger. Yurika quickly created a violet colored steel wall in front of her. However as soon as the black bullets came her wall began to crack, the Izuku I knew was kind and caring. A facade, to hide my true emotions. Do you honestly believe after everything I went through that I wasn't hurting, asked Izuku, throwing away the minigun and creating a black sword. Izuku flew at Yurika and swiped down, Yurika dodged out of the way and created her own sword. I knew you were hurting, but you never let me help you. How am I supposed to do that when you won't let me? The two then locked swords, I waited for you to help me, but you never came. I felt more lonely with you than I ever did in that orphanage. Yurika's eyes widened, she dropped her sword. Why you rewrite, and I'm sorry. I should have been there for you, but I failed you. Even so I still love you and that won't ever change. I thought I could reach you with words but I see that it's useless. Then stay there while I drive the sword into your heart said Izuku as he readied his sword. However before he could do anything the ring around Yurika's finger began to glow. I didn't want this to happen, but you left me no choice Izuku clenching her fist a wave of violet energy fell over Izuku completely covering him. What is this, asked Izuku, he then noticed that the light began to harden. Izuku, seeing that it was Yurika who was causing this, flew at her with his arm outstretched. However just as he was about to reach her the light fully crystallized stopping him dead in his tracks. Yurika then floated over to the now crystallized Izuku, I'll find a way to turn you back to normal, I swear. Yurika then leaned in and kissed the crystal. Yurika then flew back to the other lanterns as they fought off the remaining black lanterns. Guys I'm here. Good, then we are ready to take this clown down. Bakugo set spewing napalm blood everywhere. They quickly got black hand into their line of sight, fire. Yelled out Shigaraki. The beam of light screamed throughout the sky, however just as it was about to hit black hand, Necron blocked the blast with his scythe. No one will touch him, he is my tether into this world. But rest assured, I will leave soon once I find the entity and kill it. Proclaimed Necron. The entity. What's that? Asked Mineta. The entity, the source of all life in the universe. But how did he know it was here on Earth? Asked Kilowog. That's when Eureka pieced it together, the Book of Black. It disappeared a while ago and we couldn't find it? The location must have been written inside. That's impossible the book was blank, said Kilowog. No it wasn't, when Airy touched it must have written itself. Said Yurika. Where is this girl? Asked Stain. We need to find her. She's somewhere down there in all the wreckage. Said All Might. Why do we need Eri? Asked Bakugo. Because she might be housing the entity. With death comes life, without the one the other cannot exist. Each emotion has its entity, and in order to keep the universe going they have to be together. If Necron is here that means the entity is nearby. Explained Kilowog. So that's why Black Hand called her a threat. He must have felt the entity within her. We need to find her and fast. Said Eureka panicking. However before they could do anything Maria and the twins came in firing black beams of energy. Damn it, we have incoming. Yelled out Shigaraki. While they were fighting Black Hand turned to Necron, the girl, the one who wrote half the book. She has the entity. Find her and bring her to me. Ordered Necron. As you wish, with that Black Hand took off to find Eri. Back on the ground Class 1A was doing the best that they could against the Black Lanterns. Aoyama and Toru were doing damage to them thanks to those light-based quirks and with the help of everyone else they managed to destroy some of them. However quirks have their limits and they just reached it. Aoyama stomached her thanks to overuse of his laser. And Toru wasn't doing so well physically, she was taking some battle damage. Momo helped the two by creating bandages and energy drinks to keep their stamina up, but even that wasn't working that well. We need to take a break soon. Said Toru sitting down on a rock out of breath. Aoyama followed and laid on his back with an aching stomach. We can't rest now, we almost have them beat. Said Todoroki. J just two minutes and then we'll jump back in. Said Toru. Fine, two minutes but no more. We'll keep them off of you in the meantime. Said Todoroki creating an ice shelter for them to be in. Class 1A all needed this break, how do you think Eureka is doing? Asked Jiro. 
The class fell silent, not good, with Izuka being how he is, I doubt she's feeling good, Ribbit. Said Tsu. You can't blame her, GL dies right before her eyes and then comes back as one of those things. I can't even imagine what's going through her head. Said Mina, obviously concerned for her friend. That's when Kaminari looked around to see someone was missing, hey, where's Eri? The class looked around but didn't find her, Eri. Eri where are you? Yelled out Momo, she got no response. Damn it, we must have lost her in all of the confusion, said Kiri's Hima. We have to find her, said Aitza. I agree, let's go before it's too late, said Toru, forcing herself up. However before the class could leave a black lantern came crashing through the ice. F asterisk CK. No more resting, it's time to fight again. Said Todoroki, activating his fire. With Eri. Eri was walking down the war-torn city, buildings were down, power lines were sparking, and all the while you could hear the screams of people in the distance. Eri was understandably scared, Mama, Papa. However as she was walking down the street she heard a voice, Go straight. Eri looked around to see no one near her, W who said that. Go, there isn't much time. Said the voice. Eri didn't know why but she felt that voice was one she could trust, so she followed its instructions. This led her to the violet-colored crystal Izuka was in. Papa. She ran over to the crystal, inside she could see Izuka with the black lantern ring around his finger. Papa wake up. Mama needs you. Even though Izuka was in the crystal, he could still see and hear what was going on around him. He slowly but surely looked down at Eri. This girl, she's the one who Black Hand wants. If I could only break out of this. Touch the crystal the voice said to Eri. Eri looked at it and slowly began to reach her little hand towards the crystal. However just as she was about to touch the crystal a black beam of energy knocked her back. Hitting the floor Eri looked up to see Black Hand flying towards her. Get away from him. Black Hand yelled out. Eri, you need to touch the crystal. Do it now. With cuts around her body Eri quickly scampered up and ran towards the crystal. As she got closer the horn on her head began to grow and glow white with power. Now inches away Eri was on the verge of touching it when Black Hand came crashing down in front of her. Black Hand then reached down and grabbed her arm, preventing her from touching the crystal. Eri yelled out in pain as he squeezed her arm hard. Not so fast girl, Necron wants to see you, so you're coming with me said Black Hand. Eri struggled but try as she must, she couldn't break free from his grasp. Izuka saw this through the crystal and his eyes began to widen, what is this feeling? I am not supposed to be feeling anything, so why? Black Hand was about to take off into the sky with Eri in tow when he heard the sound of something breaking. He turned to find the crystal Izuka was in beginning to crack, the crystallization of a violet lantern should be unbreakable, how is he breaking out, asked Black Hand. Just then a large crack opened up right down the middle, and in an explosion of energy Izuka bursted out of the crystal. Let her go, he yelled out punching Black Hand across the face, causing him to let go of Eri. Izuka and Eri fell to the floor, while Black Hand was sent flying back. Regaining his composure Izuka crawled towards Eri, E. Eri, are you alright? Papa. Eri scampered towards Izuku. Izuku smiled seeing that Eri was alright, good you're safe, now get out of here. Eri shook her head, no, I need to do something first. However before anything else could happen the black lantern ring around Izuku's finger began to crumble into ash. Izuku could feel it, the power of the black lantern ring was disappearing, the only thing keeping him alive was fading away. Emotional energy detected within Black Lantern, leaving host. Eri listen to me, you need to take care of mom. Promise me you'll take care of mom said Izuku as the ring began to slip off of his finger. Eri managed to reach Izuku, and to his surprise she shook her head, no, I won't do that. Izuku's eyes widened as the ring fully came off of his finger, leaving only his lifeless body on the ground. Eri then reached down, with glowing white eyes, cause you're going to be the one to do that. Placing a hand on Izuku's chest a white beam of energy suddenly shot into the sky illuminating the area around them for miles. Eureka and the rest of the lanterns turned towards the direction of the light. What is that? asked Mineta. It's white light. What does that mean Kilowog? asked Eureka shielding her eyes. I don't know. Someone's quirk maybe, but I've never seen anything like this said Kilowog. Black Hand was getting up from the punch Izuku had delivered and looked up to see the white light, no, he then flew at Eri who had her back turned ready to kill her. However before he could the pillar of white light collapsed in on itself and spread in every direction. Black Hand was thrown through several buildings as a result and Necron himself screeched in pain. That's when a voice was heard within the light, Izuka Midoriya of Earth, live. From within the light Eri could see the outline of someone. 
Just then the outline touched her head and instantly the wounds around her body healed, I don't know how you did it Aerie, but thank you. Aerie's eyes began to water, go get M Papa. The light disappeared and from it Izuku stood wearing a white suit with the symbol of the white lanterns on his chest. Clenching his fist the white glow of the white lantern ring was seen, it's too dark here, so why don't I change that? In brightest day there will be light, to cleanse the soul and set wrongs right. When darkness falls, look to the skies a new dawn comes, let there be light. Izuku then threw up his fist towards the sky, as he did a beam of white light shot out of the ring and towards the blackened sky. As the light beam hit the black dome around the earth it began to crack before ultimately shattering. The earth once again felt the warm light of the sun and saw the blue color of the sky. But that wasn't the only thing they saw, far above the earth everyone saw Mago and the rest of the Green Lantern Corps. Everyone go in and save who you can, ordered Ganthet. Looking down on the earth Ganthet could see a white light shining, is that what I think it is? He then smiled. You are just full of surprises aren't you, Izuku? With the darkness that once covered the earth gone and Izuku standing up once again it was now time for a counter-attack. Eureka and the other Lantern Corps looked to the sky, what's going on? Did that white light do all this, asked Bakugo. That's when from off in the distance Eureka saw something white approaching, what is that? Everyone turned to see the ball of white light, and in a blink of an eye it stopped in front of them. Eureka's eyes began to water as she saw who it was, I Izuku. Floating in front of all the lanterns was Izuku donning his white lantern uniform, Hey Okako, miss me. Eureka flew towards him and hugged him, Izuku. How? We saw you die. Izuku broke the hug and held Eureka by the waist, I'm not so sure myself, it was as if death was a dream and I just woke up. But that doesn't matter now, what does is making sure this guy doesn't kill everything. What's with the new color Izuku, I thought you were more of a green type of guy. Said Bakugo. Izuku looked down at his hands, I don't know, it feels like I'm possessed. I don't know if this power is only temporary or even its limitations. But I do know that right now we have to protect all life. Kilowog smiled, then what are we waiting for? Let's kick some ass, now that the barrier is down the Green Lantern Corp will take care of rescue and recovery. Izuku nodded, you guys go ahead, I still need to deal with some people. Just remember, blast him with all the emotions. And aim for Black Hand, take him out and Necron loses his connection to this realm. The others nodded, and quickly took off towards Black Hand, but one lantern remained. Okako. What are you doing, you need to be with the others. No, I need to be with you right now. I know where you are going, and I want to be a part of it. She is my mother after all. Said Eureka looking directly into Izuku's eyes. I didn't want you to do it, but alright, let's go. The two then took off towards Maria and the twins. Maria looked down to see White and Violet heading their way, A-H-H, look who's finally decided to show up. It's my bastard daughter and the man who let me die. Izuku raised his ring, time to see what this white light can do. The twins snarled as they rocketed towards Izuku, only to be stopped by a white construct shield. Crashing into it the twins tried to break it but found that they couldn't. They tried blasting it with black energy but found that their attacks did nothing. This ring is awesome. Said Izuku, he then reshaped his construct into two hands which grabbed the twins. Lisa, Levi. Forgive me. Focusing, Izuku's constructs began to glow white, as they did the twins yelled out in pain. That's when the black lantern rings around their fingers suddenly shattered. Their bodies went limp as the rings no longer controlled them. He then gently put their bodies down onto the ground and refocused on Maria, who was currently fighting with Okako. The two fired beams at each other, but none of them could get a shot in. Seems you are more powerful than you let on daughter. Said Maria. My love for Izuku only makes me stronger. Said Okako as her ring glowed brighter. Then what about the love for your mother? Asked Maria. Okako flinched, I I loved my mother, but she chose to abandon us while I was still young. Even so, I still love you mom. I just wish you told us why you left. Maria smiled, wouldn't you like to know? That's when Izuku appeared behind Maria and placed a hand on her back, I would like to know, so let's find out shall we? With glowing white eyes Izuku activated his ring's abilities. That's when Maria's entire body was coated in a white glow. Okako watched as the black ring around Maria's finger broke into pieces. Maria, why did you abandon your husband and your daughter? Asked Izuku. I I left because I was scared, I was a broken human back then. I knew that if I stayed I would only bring her to my daughter. So I left, but then I found you Izuku. Through you I thought I can repent for my sins, for my past mistakes. Now I know that if I wanted forgiveness, I should have gone back and watched my beautiful daughter grow up. Maria said as tears ran down her face. With tears in her eyes Okako flew towards her mother and embraced, 
I forgive you mother, and don't worry about dad, he knew you loved him. Just as I love you. My beautiful daughter, live your life to its fullest. And Izuku, don't make this one cry, I won't forgive you if you do. Said Maria. Izuku nodded, I won't, that I swear. Pulling his hand free from Maria's back Izuku deactivated his power. Catching her, Okako placed Maria down next to the twins. She then turned to Izuku, let's go, the others are waiting for us. Izuku nodded and took off towards the other lanterns. Black Hand was trying desperately to defend himself against the other lantern core. Clapping his hands together Black Hand caused a shockwave of black energy to shoot out, knocking all of them back. Damn it! Even with the other black lanterns gone, he's still this powerful. Said Shigaraki. Do not give up everyone, hope will always find a way to shine. Said All Might. Enough of this. Necron. Kill them now. Yelled out Black Hand. That's when the entity of death itself turned to the group and raised its massive side and swung it towards the group. The others tried to block it but anything they created would shatter on contact with the side. Closing their eyes he group waited for the impact, but it never came. Opening their eyes they found a white sword had blocked the attack. So you have finally shown yourself. Said Necron looking at Izuku. Entity. Necron, this ends now. The killing stops here said Izuku. You will not be enough to defeat me boy, said Necron raising his side once again. He then proceeded to fire a blast of black energy at Izuku. Izuku fired his own blast of white energy but once the beam made contact with the other the black beam began to overpower Izuku's. Izuku gritted his teeth, I will stop you Necron. Izuku's white beam suddenly began to grow and began to overpower Necron's, the blast inched closer. Necron tried to put more power into it but before he could he was engulfed by Izuku's beam causing a massive explosion. The entire battlefield was bathed in a large fireball, the Green Lantern Corps that were helping around the city put up shields protecting the people they were around. Bakugo was shocked, did he get him? That's when Ganthit himself flew down towards the lanterns, no, his power is not enough. The other Lantern Corps couldn't believe it, but they had to face reality when from the smoke Necron emerged unharmed. T that's impossible. Ha 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 ha. What's wrong White Lantern? Did you honestly believe the power of life was enough to take me down? Where there's life, there will always be death. I am eternal. I am all-powerful, said Necron, pointing as Izuku. Izuku hung his head, you may be eternal Necron, but the only reason you exist is because life goes on. Without life there is no death, and without it you wouldn't exist. Why do you even care? About life, about this planet? There are millions like it in the universe. Humans kill each other every day and no one bats an eye. Life has no meaning, there is only death in the end, said Necron. Izuku then lifted his head and pointed his ring at Necron, I care because this world is beautiful, yes it has flaws but what doesn't? Life isn't beautiful because it lasts, it's what we make with our time here that makes it beautiful. And there are those who would give up their own lives to protect others, those are heroes. Every hero, every student in class 1A is ready, willing, and able to give up their lives for another, that's what gives their lives meaning. Then you can die alongside them. Much to everyone's surprise instead of fighting Izuku, Necron turned around and flew away. Where is he going? Asked Shigaraki. That's when Izuku noticed, Eri. We have to stop him from reaching Eri, if he manages to extract the entity within her then we are all dead. Izuku quickly took off after Necron, the other lantern core quickly followed behind. Eri was making her way back to class 1A when all of a sudden a black beam of energy landed in front of her, knocking her off her balance. With a loud thum, Necron landed in front of Eri, so this is the host, such a small child. However you may be the greatest threat in this universe. For that I'll kill you. Necron then began to reach down to grab Eri, but just as he was white chains began to wrap around Necron's arm. No. The white chains were then reinforced by every color of the emotional spectrum. Don't let him break free. Yelled out Kilowog. Fools. I will not be restrained. Everything in this universe will die. Fighting against the chains Necron began to inch his way towards Eri. Seeing this Izuku turned his head to the others, when I give the signal, fire everything you have at me. The others were surprised. Are you crazy? Why would we attack you? Asked Bakugo. Just trust me, said Izuku. That's when Shigaraki pointed his yellow ring at Izuku, I don't have a problem with that. The others hesitated but they soon joined Shigaraki and pointed their rings at Izuku. Now. Each corp fired off a beam, the sky was filled with all the colors, and headed straight for Izuku. With his back turned Izuku closed his eyes and began to create. With his white ring glowing, he successfully diverted the beams upward. He then pulled them back down aimed right at Necron. Each blast hit Necron, 
causing him to grunt from the damage. However that's when Izuku opened his eyes revealing that they were white in color. This ends now. Emanating from Izuku's body was a blinding white light. Necron turned and watched as this light began to overtake him completely. The other lantern core shielded their eyes, Izuku. Yelled out Okako as the white light engulfed her as well. The light was so bright that you could see it twinkle from outer space. Silence fell on the battlefield as the white light disappeared. Looking up, Okako saw Izuku floating there with bruises on his face and Necron nowhere to be seen. I I think he did it, for real this time. The others began to cheer as they thought that this was over. Izuku turned around and gave Okako a thumbs up. However Okako's eyes widened as she saw something appear behind Izuku. Izuku. Look out. Behind him, a black rift in space began to open up. From it the black scythe of Necron appeared, smacking Izuku and sending him crashing through several buildings. What followed was Necron's fingers appearing through the rift and making the rift much bigger. Not long after Necron reappeared virtually untouched by Izuku's attack, that was a close one white lantern, if I hadn't escaped into the void, it would have done some serious damage. What kind of comic book bullshit is that? Asked Mineta. Izuku appeared once again grabbing at his head as blood ran down his face. I can't do another blast like that, I need help. We need more white lanterns. That's when a voice was heard, Izuku Midoriya, you have done well protecting life. But it seems now you need some help. Necron knew that voice well, Entity, show yourself coward. Where do I find this help? Asked Izuku. Look around you, Izuku looked around and saw nothing but destruction. What, all this destruction, all this death? How am I supposed to find help in that? Questioned Izuku. Look past it, see what the people are doing. Izuku narrowed his eyes and saw people helping others, firefighters putting out fires, heroes helping people trapped. People were helping people live. Life, it's what helps us grow as people and shows us who we want to be. Now use that and let the light shine. Izuku smiled, you're right, and I know just who to call. People who got another chance at life but couldn't do anything with it. Raising his fist into the air a white pillar of energy shot into the sky. Everyone watched as from the light, white lantern rings began to appear. For your crimes for playing with life, we will use the very people you made into black lanterns to defeat you. That's when the white lantern rings began to fly off in every direction and landed on the fingers of all those who ever became black lanterns, except for one. Marai Sasaki, Naitai, live. Nana Shimura, live. Lisa, Levi, live. Maria Yurika, live. All throughout Japan the once black lanterns began to switch colors and wield the powers of the white lantern. The power of life itself. Kiorn watched as the white light lanterns began to converge towards his location, T this cannot be. Oh but it can, said the entity through Aerie's body. And now this boy and the people around him will take you down. Aerie regained control of his body, Izuku smiled, oh yeah, everyone ready. That's when Levi and Lisa approved and appeared beside Izuku, big brother Izuku. We are here. Izuku looked to his left to see the twins with the white lantern rings around their fingers, you too. Hey don't forget about me, said another voice appearing on Izuku's right. Looking over Izuku saw Maria wearing a fine white dress with the symbol of the white lantern over her chest. It's good to see you Izuku, you know without trying to kill you and all. Izuku's eyes began to water, it's good to have you three on my side again. Let's make it a family reunion, said Okako appearing beside Maria. Let's do this mom. Okako is right, let's finish this, said Izuku, raising his ring. Everyone, give him everything you got. Let's show this bastard the power of life. With the legion of white lanterns and members of the other core behind him, the sky began to light with the white light of life. Guys. Pin him down. Izuku yelled out to the other lantern core members. Bakugo smiled, let's finish this. Hey 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 hey. With the last bit of power they had the other lantern core began to chain up Necron. Red chains wrapped around Necron's left arm. Blue around his left arm. Orange around his left leg. Indigo around his right. Green around his waist. Yellow around his neck. And violet around his side. With their powers combined the other lantern core were able to hold Necron down. However they wouldn't be able to hold it for long. Necron was already starting to crack the chains, come on Midoriya, finish him off. We can't hold him down for long. Izuku nodded, lanterns. Let's finish this. Izuku flew high into the sky, the other white lanterns followed, all right everyone, let's blast Necron with everything we got. Now above the clouds Izuku and the white lanterns began to free fall down. As they fell trails of white light began to flake off of them. Pointing their rings at Necron they lit up the sky in a blinding white light. 
Necron broke the yellow chain construct around his neck and shattered the one around his side. You cannot defeat me White Lanterns. I'll use everything to make sure you stay dead this time. Raising his scythe into the sky Necron fired off a massive beam of black energy. Instead of creating something, the White Lanterns would instead face it head on, literally. As the black beam collided with them it engulfed the White Lanterns completely. While in the blast Izuku could feel his connection with the White Ring fade. No, not yet. However that's when he felt something warm on his back, turning around Izuku saw that Lisa and Levi were giving him power. Come on Izuku. You have to finish this, said Levi as his white ring began to dim. You better kick his ass Izuku. Said Lisa as her ring too began to dim. That's when Izuku felt someone touch his shoulder, we believe in you kid, looking at his shoulder Izuku saw Maria. She was channeling the energy of every white lantern into Izuku. Izuku could feel it, the power in his ring was growing even more so than before. Gritting his teeth Izuku began to fly faster down towards Necron. I won't fail. From the outside everyone watched at the twinkles of white inside the blast began to disappear, before reappearing in one giant white light. Come on kid you can do it. Said Kilowog as he looked on. Okako being a violet lantern could feel Izuku, I know it hurts Izuku, but push through it. You always have, always will, that's why I love you. Inside the blast Izuku's body began to turn completely white. With one final push Izuku let out the white light building around him. This caused the blast of black energy to shatter. Necron looked up in disbelief, I am possible. Now it's my turn. Yelled out Izuku, grabbing his ring arm and fired a massive blast of white energy. Black hand tried to put up a shield to protect his master, Necron no. But as the white light made contact with the shield it completely broke it. Black Hand's body disintegrated, this meant only one thing. The tether holding Necron to his realm was now broken, that means there was nothing holding him here. The blast then completely covered Necron, he screamed out in agony as the white light burned him. How can this be? I am death, I'm not supposed to be defeated. That's when from within the blast Izuku appeared in front of Necron, you don't belong in this realm, Necron. Be gone from here. Reaching out Izuku placed his hand on Necron's head. After a second white light began to shine from within Necron himself, this isn't over entity, not by a long shot. I will return. That's when the entity took over Eri and responded, and will be ready. With that Necron's body began to fade from this realm. Izuka floated there as the beam of energy disappeared, it's, over. Izuka felt his consciousness fade, his eyes rolled behind his head as he passed out falling to the ground. Oh no, Izuku. Yelled out Okako as she watched him fall. She was about to go catch him when a white bed formed underneath him. Maria and the twins all floated down with the bed at his side. Now it's not the time to rest Izuku, there's something you still need to do. Said Maria putting down the bed onto the ground. Eureka quickly landed beside them and the white bed faded, Izuku. With his eyes half open Izuku saw Okako's face, oh hey, Okako we won. Eureka smiled as tears fell from her face, yeah, we sure did. The other lantern core landed beside the pair, nice work kid. I knew you were special. Said Kilowog. I told you all hope was not lost. Said All Might. That's when Maria and the twins landed, Izuku, you feel it don't you? Asked Maria. Izuku nodded, I do, but I think you should talk to her first. Maria turned to Okako, her daughter. Mom, what's going on? The entity, it's calling us. We've died before all this, soon we will go back. Said Maria. Go back. Go back to what? Asked Bakugo. Okako gritted her teeth, back to being dead. She then turned to Izuku, no no no, please no. Izuku wrapped Okako in a hug, hey it's okay, you won't be alone. Eri will be there and everyone from class 1A as well. Tears ran down Eureka's face, but I want you. Please Izuku, don't leave me. I know, I don't want to either but it's the natural order. I died Okako, I'm not meant to stay here. Said Izuku rubbing the back of her head. Okako. I'm sorry about everything. I never should have left you and your father. Said Maria. I was never the mother you needed, I do hope you'll forgive me one day. Okako wiped the tears from her eyes, I already have mom. I love you. Maria nodded, that's when the twins then came in and pushed Izuku from behind. Oof, hey kids. Izuku could hear their sniffles, hey you two don't be sad, come here, let me introduce you to someone. The twins came from behind, this is Okako Eureka. She's Maria's daughter and my girlfriend. Okako smiled, I is she nice like Maria? Asked Levi. Izuku nodded, super nice, 
she's even taking care of a girl about your age. Papa. That's when Ari's voice cut into the conversation. Ah, there she is. Izuku looked over to see Ari running towards them, with Class 1A quickly following behind. Ari, meet Lisa, and Levi. They are like my little siblings. Ari waved shyly, hi. The twins waved, you guys would have been amazing friends. Izuku. Maria called out to Izuku, turning around he saw the ring around her finger almost completely off. It looks like it's time, Izuku stood up, and faced his class. Well it seems like this is goodbye again guys. Don't worry about a thing Midoriya, we got things covered. Said Mina giving him a thumbs up. Izuku nodded, thanks guys, it means a lot. He then turned to Okako, I just want to say. However before he could finish Okako leaned in and kissed Izuku on the lips. After a few seconds she pulled away, you don't have to say anything, I know. I love you Izuku. Izuku looked directly into Okako's eyes, I love you too Okako. That's when the sound of something breaking was heard, everyone watched as the white lantern rings shattered. Severing the dead's connection to life, the white lanterns then began to fall to the floor one by one. The twins were the first to collapse, followed by Maria, and finally Izuku. His body went completely limp but Okako caught him from hitting the floor. She gently put Izuku down, goodbye Izuku. As everyone mourned the loss of their friend once again something particular happened. A white being with long arms and long legs appeared in front of everyone. The entity had arrived, this one truly appreciated life, he was young and still had much to learn. And thanks to the girl, I have learned from him. W what's going on? Asked Kaminari. He still has an important role to play in what's to come. Reaching out its massive hand, the entity projected light upon Izuku. Yuriko was in disbelief, what are you doing to him? The entity didn't say anything, but once the light faded it spoke, take care of this one, for he is the key to everything. I gave him this power but it is only temporary, he must learn how to master the other powers if he wishes to take on what's coming. Without another word the entity disappeared leaving no trace. Well that was strange. Said Mineta. Looking up Kilowog saw something approaching, is that? That's when the green object stopped above Izuku's body, Izuku Midoriya of Earth, you have the power to overcome anything, including death. Welcome back to the Green Lantern Corps. The ring then slid onto Izuku's finger and in a wave of green energy Izuku appeared floating a few inches off the ground. WH where am I? Okako had the biggest smile on her face, Izuku. Is it really you, or are you actually alive? Izuku looked at himself, Okako. But I thought I was. Grabbing Eri, Okako flew right at Izuku and wrapped him in a hug. Izuku. 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 W what happened, asked Izuku. That's when the other members of the Lantern Corps walked over to Izuku, the entity gave you life explained Kilowog. Why he did it is the real question. When the white ring left my finger I could hear the entity's voice, it was distorted but I could hear one part clearly. Anti-life, I don't know what that means but if the entity said it, then it has to be important said Izuku. Whatever it may be, I think it will pale in comparison to the destruction caused today said Kilowog. Izuku looked towards the sky, I know but for now let's focus on helping everyone here. He then turned to the class, you guys ready? Class 1A nodded, let's do this. They took off towards the destroyed city to help whoever they could, Izuku stayed behind with the other lantern members. Thank you everyone, I couldn't have done it without you. Kilowog laughed, we know, now come on, let's help these people. Every color except for yellow went to help everyone, Shigaraki didn't want any part in this. So Izuku shall we go, asked Okako. Izuku reached out and grabbed her hand, yeah, let's go. In the aftermath of the fight UA was left in ruins as well as the surrounding city. A squad of Green Lantern Corps members stayed behind to help with the cleanup which was a big help. There was also the matter of the orange ring Mineta had. Izuku, Okako and Bakugo had to forcibly remove the ring from Mineta's finger. But eventually they removed it and handed it over to Stain who swore that he would destroy it, or if he couldn't, give it to its one member. Now it was Bakugo's turn, he liked having the ring but it made him unstable. He wanted this ring off of his finger now and All Might was just the person to do it. With the blue light of hope All Might removed the ring but this time instead of destroying it he gave it back to Bakugo. There may be a time when you need this ring again. Said All Might. Bakugo looked at the ring, I'll keep it as a reminder of my failures and one day, I hope I can control the rage inside me. Two weeks later. Okako was helping out by moving building supplies along with Class 1A, when Mina noticed someone wasn't helping. Hey Okako, where's Midoriya? Asked Mina. Okako looked around, he should have been here. I'll go find him, will you guys be alright alone for a bit? Mina gave Okako a thumbs up, you bet we will. 
Okako nodded and took off into the sky, ring, scan for Izuku. The violet ring blinked a few times before speaking, Izuku found, east 10 kilometers. Okako turned to that direction and immediately knew where he was. She took off towards the direction and after a moment, Okako landed where the orphanage once stood. Standing in front of her with his back turned was Izuku. Izuku, what are you doing here? She asked curiously. As she walked closer Okako could hear the sound of sniffling. Izuku quickly wiped away his tears, Hey Okako, nothing I was just, thinking about them. He said standing in front of three graves. Are you sure, because to me it sounds like you were crying. Said Okako. Izuku sighed, it's not fair you know. Okako stopped beside Izuku, what's not fair? Me being here, they should be the ones standing here, not me. Said Izuku. Okako's eyes widened, W what? Maria was your mother Okako, and I know for a fact that she would have wanted to be standing here with you. Said Izuku, he then looked down at his ring. When I had the white lantern ring, I could have done it. I could have brought them back. I could have used my powers to bring back your mom, Lisa, Levi, and everyone else that lost a loved one, but I didn't. And because of that people had to relieve the trauma of losing their loved one again. That means you too. Izuku, it's because of you I got the chance to say goodbye to my mom. If it wasn't for you, I would have still been looking for her. But now I know that when she loved me. You gave me, my father, and many others a chance of closure Izuku and for that I can't thank you enough. As to why you're still alive, well I can't answer that. You were dead when he said it but the entity said that you were going to have an important role in what's to come. Said Okako. Izuku turned to Okako, what's that supposed to mean? Okako shrugged, I don't have the slightest idea. But whatever it is, we'll face it together. You have me, Eri, Bakugo, All Might, and everyone in Class 1A to back you up. Izuku smiled, thank you Okako, I couldn't have asked for a better girlfriend. Okako smirked, yeah, you got lucky. Oh I got lucky? You must have it backwards, you got lucky having me as your boyfriend. Said Izuku. Okako's jaw dropped, excuse me? Are you sure being dead didn't affect your mind? Izuku laughed, let's just say, we both got lucky. How about that? Okako smiled, that sounds fair. Come on, the others are waiting on us. Okako then began to fly upward. Izuku quickly followed suit, the two flew towards class 1A holding each other's hand. Izuku and Okako got back to helping people, the day turned to night. It was about time to call it for the night. However as the class was heading towards the dorms Gantit appeared, Izuku a word please. Izuku looked at Okako, go on ahead, I'll be right there. Okako nodded and went into the dorms, she's grown strong, hasn't she? Asked Ganthet. Izuku nodded, that she has. So what did you want to talk about Ganthet? It's about what the entity said. It said you were important for future events. I want to figure out what it meant by that. Said Ganthet. I agree. Ever since I got the ring back I felt something approaching. Said Izuku. That is most troubling. Said Ganthet. I'd like for you to return to OA with us, but I think it's safer for you here. Us guardians will look further into this matter and contact you when we find something. Izuku nodded, thanks Ganthet. It is not a problem. Now, the squad of Green Lanterns will be moving out tonight. After that Japan will be left to rebuild. Explained Ganthet. Already, well you already helped us out by clearing out most of the mess so it's enough. It's going to take some time but we will rebuild even better than ever. Said Izuku. Izuku flew into the dorms, landing on the ground he looked at the building. He took off his ring, walking inside he found all of class 1A sitting around a table eating some pizza. Hey Midoriya. Come join us, said Mina as she grabbed another slice. Izuku smiled and walked over to the table where he put his arm around Okako's waist, this is great. What's great Izuku, asked Okako. The class all quieted down, all of this, never in all my life would I have thought that I would have this. Friends, a girlfriend, and an adorable little girl. Most of my life I thought I was lonely, unwanted, but now, now it's all different. So I just want to say thank you, for being in my life. The class smiled, it's not just one way Izuku said Okako. Everyone here is grateful to have you in their lives. You saved us multiple times from danger, without you here we would have gotten hurt or worse. And you can rest assured that you will never be alone again. Besides, you still have a lot to teach us. Remember you're still a professor here at UA. Uh, is it too late to quit? I think I should quit, you know what, where's Izawa? I need to give my two weeks now said Izuku, walking towards the door. The class glared at Izuku, hey. Get over here. 
they all yelled out. Izuka turned around and jumped at the sight of all of the class running towards him, oh shit. Reaching into his pocket Izuka put on his ring as he got outside. His costume appeared as he jumped into the air and began to fly away. Looking down he saw the class looking at him angrily, just because you can fly doesn't mean you can escape. Okako, get him, ordered Mina with a smirk. Okako looked up and smiled, with pleasure reaching around her neck Okako grabbed the violet lantern ring of love. Now in her costume Okako flew after Izuku as her class cheered her on. The two flew across the night sky, however after flying into space and back Okako finally caught up to him. The two embraced in mid-air as the light of the full moon hit them, you caught me said Izuku. Okako giggled, I sure did. So do you regret it? Izuku tilted his head, regret what? Having that ring, asked Okako. Izuku shook his head, no, and the reason why is you. If it wasn't for this ring I wouldn't have met you. Yeah the fights it got me into were intense but they were all worth it in the end, you were worth every punch, every kick, and every injury I received. And I would go through that again if it meant keeping you safe. Okako blushed, you do know I have a ring too right? I'm not weak. Izuku smiled, I know, but still, I love you Okako. I love you too Izuku, the two looked at each other and without speaking a word the two kissed. After a few seconds they pulled away from each other, come on, the class is waiting. No more fights at least not for now. The two flew down to the class, the night went on as normal. Life was good for Izuku, are you watching Maria? I swear that I will take care of Okako, now and forever. Two years later. The class had grown over the years, both physically and mentally over the last two years, however that didn't matter right now. Today was the day, the moment of truth, the class was now in their third and final year at UA. They were about to find out if they passed the final exam to earn their hero license. The class was silent as Izuku walked back and forth in front of the class, Hey Izuku, can you stop? You're making us more nervous said Okako as she sat at her desk. Izuku stopped, right, sorry. Just nervous that's all. Why are you nervous? We are the ones who are finding out if we wasted three years or not said Mina. I'm nervous because I was the one who trained you, your failure and successes show how good of a job I did. Besides, if anyone fails, Izuka is going to have my head, said Izuku, taking a deep breath. You got that right said a voice behind the door. As the door opened Izuka walked into the room holding a clipboard. Now it's time to find out how you all did. Class 3A all nervously watched as Izuka looked at his clipboard and looked at the class. Well, it's what I expected. Oh come on. What does that mean? asked Izuku. Izuka smiled, it means, you all passed. Congratulations everyone, you are now full on heroes. It took a second but the news finally registered, as soon as it did the class erupted in cheer. They hugged each other, cried out of happiness, and congratulated each other. Izuka fell to his knees as a result, t they did it, they actually did it. That's when Okako came in and hugged Izuku, Izuku. I did it. I did it. Izuku hugged his girlfriend back, I knew you could do it. Congratulations I'm so proud of you. Later we have to go to my dad and tell him the great news said Okako. Izuku agreed, besides, he had something to ask of her father. Izuku wanted to celebrate everyone's success, so he agreed to take everyone to the moon, literally the moon. Izuku wrapped the entire class in a green bubble and flew to the moon. There they explored and played around with the green construct spacesuits Izuku had for them. It was now night time in Japan and about time the class went back home but before they did Izuku had something to do on the surface of the moon. He told the class not to look back at the moon as they went back to earth. Now on earth he told them to look up at the moon, there in all its green glory was UA symbol with class 3A under it. The class was amazed, so how much trouble do you think I'll be in, asked Izuku. Okako laughed, a lot. Can't argue with that, but it will be worth it said Izuku as he held Eri in his arms looking at the moon. Two weeks later, Commencement Day. The ceremony for the class was small and private, only family of the class were allowed to enter. Okako's father sat in the stands with Izuka right beside him as they watched Okako walk onto the stage. Okako Yurika, do you swear on your life to protect and serve? Okako stood up straight, I swear. And do you also swear that you will put others' lives ahead of your own in order to save someone? I swear, yelled out Okako with pride. Then on behalf of UA and the Hero Council. I am pleased to give you your official hero license said All Might as he handed her the card. Okako grabbed it with tears in her eyes, thank you so much All Might. Izuku and Okako's father cheered as Okako grabbed her license. After celebrating her father sat down, so, are you really going to do it? Izuku sat down, yes, I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Okako's father smiled, good, 
then you better treat her right or else no ring in this universe will save you from me. And what I'll do to you won't be nothing compared to what my baby girl would do. Got it? Izuku nodded, yes sir. After the ceremony was done the class was let free in the quad area, Okako found Izuku and her father. After some tears were shed Okako's father told them if he could get a picture, they agreed. The two then posed for a picture but as Okako's father was counting down Izuku suddenly went down to one knee. Okako's expression turned to one of shock, the entire class was now seeing Izuku on his knee. Reaching into his pocket Izuku pulled out a small box and opened it revealing a diamond ring. I Izuku. Okako Yurika, over these years you stuck with me. We've gone through a lot of things, I even died but yet you stayed by my side. So I want to make sure we spend the rest of our lives together. Okako Yurika, will you marry me? Okako was speechless, I I don't know what to say. This is all so sudden. That's when all of the class began to yell out, do it. Say yes. The two blushed, see Okako, even they know. So what do you say? With tears in her eyes Okako nodded, why yes. Yes. Grabbing her hand Izuku put on the ring onto Okako's finger. Standing up Izuku hugged his now fiancé and kissed. They pulled away as everyone cheered, I love you Izuku. I love you too Okako, and hey, now you got two rings said Izuku. Okako laughed, guess I do. Mom, Dad. Eri suddenly appeared and hugged her parents. Hey Eri, where have you been, asked Izuku. I was with Kota, we were talking said Eri motioning to Kota. Izuku looked at the young boy and nodded, they grow up so fast. Izuku suddenly felt his hand get pulled, come on Izuku, the class wants a picture with you. Okako grabbed Izuku and dragged him to the class who were standing next to each other for the picture. Izuku and Okako fell in front and center, everyone ready, asked the photographer. In 3, 2, 1. The click of the camera was heard as he took the picture. The final result was the entire class showing off their diploma and Izuku with his ring glowing green.